you're going to get the kill. Esim needs to start mixing it up. Mm -hmm. He, uh, you know, Esim really had like a very dominant first stock. He only took like 50% on his first stock, but this is Rafi running it right back, only taking 50% on his second stock now. Yeah. Good damage in, but again, he's a little bit cornered. He's going to use that neutral air, that Rafi neutral air to break out. There it is. He's the expert, the master of that move because he invented it. There he <laughs> goes. He lands with it every single time. There's a 40% differential between the two. And like you were saying, man, the percentage was way uh, much like this in the last game, but Rafi finding these down tilt combos and fair strings, he's able to bring it right back. You know, this might be one of those rare moments where you see Isam kind of not overextend. Like, I usually, like, he's one of those players who always impresses me because, he, like, he always goes really far for yeah, edge yeah, guard yeah. and stuff like that. But he kind of paid the price for it in game one, and so we might see him play a little more conservatively trying to find a way to seal the stop. Rob is one of those characters that I think at most levels can do, can you can kind of get away with that, kind of chasing him off the edge. But Rafi, character loyalist, the specialist for so long. Isam, I think he incorrectly DI'd that. He almost died off the top there. It didn't work there, but if he gets grabbed one more time, that could be it. If who gets grabbed one more time? <laughs> <laughs> that almost cleared Rafi off the top of the so robot. is pretty close. heavy, but the second follow-up, it will do it. Barely. And you see Rafi kind of reel back in his chair. That was barely it. He got so lucky that he wasn't hit on the right side of the stage. He got kind of got, you know, heaven's blessing getting hit on the left, but it still was enough to take him out. And right there you can see MVD, uh, Esam's partner in crime. Got a little, a little bit, bit of coaching. consulting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is right in that rule that was pioneered at Frostbite, looks like. Maybe the, mm. uh, the 30 seconds per set entirely sure. of coaching. Uh, Rafi, though, he's going to be the, the lone warrior out there. He's just all, all lost in his thoughts all alone. Yep. Thinking about what he wants to do. Like we said, man, Rafi, just kind of a Rob warrior for so long. Character specialist, he knows exactly what to do with this character, so I'm sure he's going to make the right adjustments he sees fit. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Isam and Rafi having a nice chat. He's really able to maximize, like, the opportunities that he's given to him, too. Yeah. Because, like... You're not going to be given many when it comes to these quick characters versus the slower, heavier characters. Yep. So you have to really maximize the damage you get. And we're seeing Rafi do just that. It's about optimization. Optimization. Shout out to Malcolm. <laughs> Here we are on Dreamland for Game 3. Uh, I do agree with this, this counter pick. You're going to be getting the uh, that lower ceiling a little bit. You're going to be able to pressure these tri platforms as Rob. Uh, very excellent as a, as a platform pressure character. Yeah, definitely. But Pikachu is so quick, though, and you can use like some quick attack cancels as well. So this 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 counter pick does cut a little bit both ways. I agree. Ooh, falls out of that a little bit. Uh -oh. oh, whoa! He has enough fuel. He's gonna make it back. He's gonna run out. Is he gonna run out? No, he's got a little bit more juice in the tank. And I'm glad to see nobody was pineappled there. That was so close. Somebody almost ate the ice cream cone. His fuel is still low, so this edge guard on the right side, or I'm sorry, the left side might be affected by the one that was going on on the right. But yeah, Rafi will land. Wispy just wants both of them off the stage. He just <laughs> get off. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Breath of the Wild the uh, the flower shrine? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say any more than that. But if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But oh, there we go. We got a kill confirmed coming out for Esam. The uh, the up throw to Rar Thunder landing. Gonna get that Rob stock out of the way. Esam one win away. Once oh, but again, Esam air dodges at the exact time. You gotta stop doing that. I need to see him mix it up. Even if he just held on to the air dodge and he just kind of fast fell past him. I don't know if Rafi would respond to it. Rafi is literally just waiting for him to hit the R button and then come through with that up air. All three in a row. Rafi's got big damage. But now Esam, look at how persistent he is using all of Pikachu's tools to continue that edge guard vertically. Fires right back. Esam jumps right into that Raffi Nair. He lands, unfortunately, with a little bit of landing lag. Gets hit by that up air. Esam, I don't think, has a jump here, so he's going to be able to recover on stage. So much percent. This is just a slugfest now. Oh, and Esam looking for a forward smash. This might cost him. Okay, he's going to double he jump He jumps away, and he should have been doing that for three games now. <laughs> Finally pulls out the double jump. Rafi going very high and falling with that up. <gasps> uh oh! Goes the wrong way to get Pineapple, so he uses that back air to get a little bit of juice back. Isam covering for the forward smash. It's not going to happen. Gets him with the thunder, but the platform's in the way. Right now, Rafi fighting for his life. This is so close. I'm wondering what this window might be watch here. It, Does watch he it, watch have it, watch it. it? Oh! Good air dodge. And this is so much scarier for Esam than it is for Rafi, I think, just because the kill setup is so much easier for Rob than it is for Pikachu. But Esam has shown to be able to thrive in these kind of situations. He has the top now, throws it up, covering the aerial option, grabs it again, uses it again, and he's got such master item control yeah, that, that he eventually does item. drop it. 
Ralph, he's still being edge guarded, but he's gonna sneak back into neutral, and this grab might do it! Watch it. No, oh, he's too well high. He's too high, yeah, but now we have the other problem. If Rafi gets a grab, he might be able to go for the up air, er, the up throw instead and get a kill, and you can see him going for it! This is very scary here. Isam, <gasps> oh, that up tilt came out just in time, and the Thunder finishes the job! Isam clutching it out in this game. Three last stock, last hit situation. Panda just Global moving on. Barely. That was so close. That could have been disastrous for Isam, but he's able to take it out just barely. And you have to imagine, Rafi's so disappointed that the percents worked out the way that they did because he got that down throw, and he went for the up air, but he was just so slightly, slightly too high, and he wasn't able to link it up. So awesome stuff to Isam, who will barely... Barely, by the skin of his teeth, <laughs> take it past Rafi. Awesome stuff. That's another situation where this non-PGR player, Wi-Fi warrior, Rafi yeah. X, I mean, he's very well known, again, for that Wi-Fi pedigree, yeah. but not very known for traveling, coming in and almost making a huge upset in, like, the first two hours yeah. of Civil War Saga. That's just unreal. These were the kind of matches we wanted to see, man. We wanted to see these, you know, the top 50, the established PGR players against players that may not have been snubbed, but, you know, just not thought of as highly regarded. Uh, we saw it happen with Arvark earlier. We saw it happen from DJ Flip Hop, and we almost saw it there happen from Rafi. We're going to have some more matches just like that coming up for you guys very soon. Guys, looks like we will be going to a commercial break, though, so please stick around, support the stream, and, you know, right where we're going to be. So tune in soon.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to 2GGC Civil War Pools Wave A. We're coming to a close with these pools. I, of course, am Silent Doom, and with me we have... Vicky Kitty. How are you doing, guys? So, the matches that we've been seeing on stream so far, we're going to be seeing a lot more matches for you guys. Mm -hmm. We currently are in, like, winner's, winner's semis for Wave A pools, for those of you who are just tuning in. Uh, and I think we are going into it right now. Yeah, double Mega Man. Mega Man... Winners fight, winners semis between Scat and of course Kamehameha. So early already in pools. Can you believe how stacked these pools are right now here at Civil War? It's a shark tank out there. Absolutely. Just the level of talent that we've been seeing is immense. Scat off to the early lead. Great placing on that back air. But Kamehameha, of course, going back and forth. But Scat just trying to find a way of landing here, but Kamehameha is just not having it. Keeping him off stage with that back air. This is, uh, it's interesting to see this matchup. Uh, it's not exactly one that we see very often, and I think these, this is probably one of the first times that these two have played, particularly at a tournament uh, as stacked as this. Yes, and you know, the two most highest representatives for Mega Man, too. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful confirm of that uh, Metal Blade, using Leaf Shield as well. Kamame is just, he has a slight edge at the moment. The Scat just coming at him at the corner. Ooh. That Leaf Shield is going to help him out there. Kamehameha Beautiful. finding his footing back onto the stage. Beautiful pressure at the ledge, but Kamehameha just tossing him aside. Catching his own Metal Blade. It's like we have good Mega Man versus bad Mega Man. <laughs> Blue and red. The, uh, the Proto Man Mega Man. A nice red and white. Great read on the roll with that grab. Kamehameha, of course, asserting stage control. Doesn't get the confirm off the leaf shield, but the back throw is still not quite enough. Not gonna do it even with Rage. He wasn't so close to the ledge there. Oh no! Oh, it's quite caught. unfortunate. We're seeing Lilat at its finest. Scat, unfortunately, clipped by the ledge there. Mm -hmm. Caught just under the lip. Great edge coverage from Scat, making use of the leaf shield and the metal blade to cover all of Kamehameha's options and finishing off cleanly with that back air. Scat evening this match up. Scat's going to want to be careful by the ledge there. He does not want what happened to him the first stock to happen to him once again. Yeah, once again, even though this is a pretty even game at the moment, it does feel like Kamehameha has had the edge in terms of overall stage control. Kamehameha just trying to find his way in. Both these players just walling each other out with these pellets. Yeah, it's interesting to see these uh, these two typically known for uh, defender. Obviously, Mega Man's a pretty defensive character, walling with his uh, with his lemons. But how the two try and infiltrate each other's defenses with those lemons is uh, is interesting to see. It's like a collision of wall pellets. It's just each other just going at it. But Scat in the ledge here, he mm. does not want Kamehameha to try to make it back, trying to edge guard him as best as he could. But Kamehameha jumping over him, getting caught with that up air. Yeah, that was a really great sequence overall from uh, MBG Scat. A lot of damage and a lot of pressure put on Kamehameha. Goes for the ledge trump Ooh, to get the ledge trump and the re-grab. Beautiful re stuff from Kamehameha, making sure to hold on to that second jump so that he's able to recover back, even with the amount of pressure that MVG Scat was putting on him. Once again, two frames. Still has that can jump can at the ready. Can make it back? Yes, he can. Oh, oh my oh. goodness! And more retaliation with another up smash to that up smash. This is such a close, intense set. A moment of silence between the two. As Scat waits his shield, goes all the way deep for that back end. That'll be a clean finish from Kamehameha. That was wow. a really, really that close was, game one. That was incredibly close amongst both these characters as well. When you get the ditto and it's as close as that, it's so exciting just to watch how each player decides on where to be at the stage at all times. Uh, Scat was actually looking for the air dodge multiple times there on the ledge uh, to try to get Kameme with a back air, but Kameme was smart and he was at it first before Scat was able to do so. And Kameme takes game one over Scat in this Mega Man ditto. Mm. So I see that's just a testament to the, the caliber of both of these players. They, they were so evenly matched, even though we know that Kameme has had a, a little bit of an edge in terms of results. Oh, are, are we switching? thinking about a character switch right here? Kameme does have quite the roster of characters. We've seen his Yoshi, we've seen his Sheik, we saw his Dark Pit. He's kind of smiling, thinking about it real quick. I'm pretty sure the crowd would love to see double Mega Man. <laughs> mm. And... He's sticking with his OG character. Sticking with the rock. That, of course, is Kamehameha's rock, keeping him solid within this bracket. Running it back to Lila. Mechanical stage for mechanical characters. 
very fitting for the setting. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Scott finding himself at a pretty hard disadvantage right now. Going He's able to land above him. Yeah, going super high with that recovery. Contrary to Kamame, who was typically going as low as possible, but saving that jump where he could. Great spacing there on Scat. Mm -hmm. way that these two are managing uh, how they space around each other. <laughs> <laughs> the clashes with these lemons. There's pellet clashing right there. These two recognizing how they must approach in the neutral. In a very patient mentality. He gets stuck by his sticky bomb there. Yeah, one of the key things uh, in this matchup definitely is that the... Oh no. I would say that the Mega Man within neutral with the Metal Blade in hand is at somewhat of a disadvantage because the other Mega Man has access to those lemons which would just nullify yep. that Metal Blade immediately. We've been seeing this from Scat uh, in, a, in a number of places throughout this game so far. Yeah, so you're ultimately losing stage control at the same time because they're able to pressure you with the pellets, but mm -hmm. Scat answering with a back air there, keeping Kamehameha off stage. Kamehameha make it back? Oh! Oh, what and a forward air! Oh, but he still managed to clip back, but the back air from Scat good stuff to him. Yeah, Scott was trying to expect that to stage Spike, but unfortunately he doesn't, but it doesn't matter. He manages to take the stock anyway. It's looking like a much more controlling game from Scat at the moment. I think the key thing is he's just finding those openings, uh, particularly whilst Kamehameha is in the disadvantage, and he's capitalizing, getting his stage control tools up where he needs to. Now, it's interesting to see that Scat uses Leaf Shield a lot more frequent than Kamebe does, and he uses it in very situational positions where he kind of gives uh, Kamebe in a sense where, especially like by the ledge, he caught his two frame a few times for that, too. Mm. That, was a, that was a beautiful display of patience from Kamebe uh, before just holding <gasps> onto the ledge. Oh my gosh. That Z drop blade. It's a back air there. Yeah, Scat is definitely starting to run away with this, holding that center stage and. Getting these hits to send Kamehameha back and forth. Kamehameha needs to look for this back air. It's kind of difficult for Mega Man to get the kill sometimes without that back air. Yup, and he has the rage to do so, but Scat is like, oh, if you're gonna whiff up smash, I could do it too. Mm. Yeah, it definitely feels like Kamehameha is also getting a bit antsy with these kill moves. He's, he's whiffed some of those quite hard punish kill moves, but he finally finds that back air. And takes advantage of the ending line that Scat had there on the ledge, and he was pretty vulnerable, and Kamehameha was able to retaliate back. Just the awareness from Scat at the moment uh, when he gets those Z drop metal blades. Just getting those back airs where he needs to. That's a good chunk of damage. Never want to jump out of that. That would be very scary. Yes. If you jump out of that, the win box can risk pushing you all the way up to the blast zone and you can see an early. <laughs> meet an early fate. It's looking a lot better for Scat this game. Oh, that's mm. there's that jump. You do not want to be in that position. Yeah. But Kamehameha all the way with this 170% rage. Tries to go for the low edge guard, but Scat once again recovers high. And, and there frame. was that two frame that Scat got. Wow, that oh was fantastic. Goodness. Making use of the rush to get as high and quickly as possible to catch that back end. Beautiful stuff from Scat. That was a much stronger game from him, absolutely. And Kamehameha was considering switching characters there, so Scat showing, all right, all right. You won game one, but we're still in here. Mm -hmm. Taking game two over Kamehameha. All right, we just got a report what? that Zero is currently in losers of 2G GC Civil War. He lost to Exax in pools. This isn't the first time that we've seen Zero get knocked out, knocked into losers relatively early. Zero in losers. Zero in losers? Already. Civil War, ladies and gentlemen. Civil War, these pools are not to fool around with. Oh my goodness. This seems to happen. This is, this is twice now where Zero has ended up in losers whilst we've been on the mic. Actually, though, yes, it's a sign. <laughs> All right, but Kamame switching to his Sheik. Definitely a, a strong pick versus Mega Man. Mega Man does struggle quite a bit versus Sheik due to the fact that she does have a... Oh, my goodness, already so early. It's a jab lock. Whoa, 43% right off the bat. He does not care. Scat making Kamame switch off of his own character. Mm -hmm. That's got to be... Uh, Got to be a slight dent in your pride, you know. You're you're here to stand out as the best Mega Man in the world, and then the one that people see a second takes that game rather rather dominantly. And you're forced to make the switch, but Kamehameha, of course, is a competitor. He wants to win first and foremost. 
Scat is here to stay, but he's off stage right now. He needs to be a little bit more careful, patient, mixing up his landing like right there. That was a clutch spot dodge. I actually thought the uh, the mega upper was about to come out. That up tilt so so powerful, especially on a stage like Town and City would have possibly taken cheek stock very early. Scat just trying to find his way back into the stage. Commitment pressuring him all around. Mm. Just the way she kind of oppresses you with that superior frame data of hers. It just oh, makes yeah. it really hard for a lot of characters to function. It's uh, really important to have the right mindset when you play against Sheik, especially because if you get hit by one fair, you have to really mentally prepare yourself to get hit by another four fairs. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was very, very clutch with that forward wow. air from Kamehameha. That was absolutely that was been a stop. absolutely perfect trade for Kamehameha. Mm -hmm. This guy is keeping this incredibly close. I would say he's at the, I would almost say he's at the advantage at the moment. Sheik, uh, of course, having that hard time getting those kills sometimes. Scat does not air dodge instead. He maneuvers himself around commitment to make it back safely onto the stage. Ooh, misses in there, bouncing fish a little bit too high on the percent. As well as good DI from Scat. Going away. Incredibly close game here. Mm. And these needles, very, very difficult for a lot of characters to get around. Just infiltrating the defense. Great tech coming from Kamehameha. Fantastic tech, that would have been stock. Sitting at 150, the first to take the stop will really, really Needles. have the opportunity to uh, expand their lead. Yeah, Needle's really showing how much they can take advantage of Mega Man per versus Pellets. Mm -hmm. Having that uh, range advantage versus the Pellets, as well as Sheik's mobility, just makes it really, really difficult for Mega Man to function in neutral the way he wants to. Scat once again, finding himself on the ledge here versus Kamehameha, but he gets the back throw, yes, and excellent. that is going to be the stock. Excellent power shield coming from Kamehameha. He really needed that power shield in order to get that grab, and that'll be enough. Now he's sitting on max rage. It's kind of scary for uh, Kamehameha if he allows him to loot. If he allows him to win neutral just a few times, he could be in death percent. Oh, oh no! Oh, falls a little bit too deep with that, and... That'll be the stock. Once again, an even game. He's kind of shaking it off. He does yeah. not want to let it affect him at all. He's still in this even game right now. Scat taking a moment on that platform to compose himself. Scat reversing the roles here, keeping commitment off stage. But finally finds his footing to go back and just carry Scat across the stage. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this absolute assault of aerials coming from Kamehameha Sheik at the moment. It's just tacked on a huge amount of damage, but didn't quite get him too much stage control. He wasn't able to force Scat off stage, which helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Just trying to feel each other out once again at this mid-range. Kamehameha got the stage control once again. I feel like he's going to focus on looking for uh, Kamehameha's more, not Kamehameha's, uh, Scat's higher recoveries and his uh, his ledge jumps in particular. Scat's been going for that quite a bit. But Kamehameha riding on his wave of momentum. He was doing a fantastic job of spacing his fair so that way he does not get hit by pellets. Oh, he's looking for the Z drop blade. The Kamehameha special, oh my goodness. He was expecting Kamehameha to roll there. There to Bouncing Fish, beautiful catch on that get-up attack. He finds the opening and takes the set. Excellent stuff to Kamehameha. He will be moving through the pool on winner's side. That was such a close game. Look at him smile. Fantastic sportsmanship right there. Yeah, these two hugging it out. They know fellow Mega Men. They had a great set together. They have to stick together. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that he switched off, but it definitely worked in his favor, and we take those. You yeah. Know, we have to take advantage of what we get. So, we are here at Civil War, and as the news was brought to you guys, Zero is in losers. Mm -hmm. This is this early. That means we're not going to see the uh, the ally versus Zero in uh, winner's semis. I, it was winner's semis or grands, but, I mean, Zero could mm -hmm. definitely bring the run back through loser's bracket, and I feel so sorry for whoever is in loser's bracket, because oh, it yes. is the stackest loser's bracket that I have ever seen attending any tournament. <laughs> mm -hmm. We are going to have players, top caliber, top caliber players, players that were likely flown out here. They're going to be, some of them are going to not even make it through pools. That's how stacked this tournament is. It's actually insane. 
And we just currently saw Commitment versus Scat on stream, and that was an incredibly close match in the Mega Man Diddle, too, at that. Mm. It was one that we were not very familiar in seeing. And unfortunately, Scat being sent to losers, another force to reckon with as well. Yeah. Right. So? So I know, uh, I think we might still be looking to see the end of these wave, uh, a? wave a yeah piece. i know we're going to be carrying on to the wave b as well we're going to see lots of great games from that uh from that set we are so we're going to be seeing a few high caliber uh matches and then as we enter into wave b pools we're going to be seeing a lot uh more beginner entry level uh matches so that's going to be one to look at i like to differentiate the two mostly mm -hmm. you can definitely see the different types of play styles but even early into the bracket for these pools like you're seeing these crazy amount of players performing at the highest caliber that they could perform, and it's fantastic. Everything going on here at Civil War has just mm. been amazing so far. So for those of you who are tuning in, thank you so much for supporting the stream, and please give 2GG a follow and retweet the stream. That's another thing. That yeah. helps immensely, guys. A lot. Coming up next, it looks like we have the Buzz versus Arvok coming up. Arvok recently sponsored by BB Smash Dudes. Mm -hmm. And I believe he caused an upset earlier within this bracket. Uh, I'm not quite sure who it was, but I know this wasn't the projected uh, winner's semis of this pool. So good stuff to Arvark. He's doing, obviously, he's been improving uh, exponentially as time has gone on. Him and the Elegant have been really, really coming into their strides as competitors, and they're just doing a fantastic job. Of course, the Buzz, top caliber player, top five in the world. He is the... Uh, he's still, in, in the eyes of many, one of the best Roses in the world, if not yep. the best. And it's fantastic. I like to see players like Arvok and Elegant really putting in so much work and making these waves and really showing, hey, you know, don't sleep on me, man. Mm -hmm. You don't know what I'm capable of. It's the young blood. And they are the new generation. These kids are not to be slept on. Actually. Really, really, it's really not. Like, we have kids, we're just like 15 years old, like, making waves out here. Mm. You know, MK Leo, he's a fantastic example of that. And it's scary. It's really scary to think that all these players have all this capability as they grow and they learn from this game. Yeah. And here we are going already into game one. Three, Starting off the final destination. Go. This matchup, of course, is a uh, tricky one. Tricky one <laughs> for, for Villager. villager. <laughs> Having that, of course, that gravitational pull coming from uh, Rosalina just really can nullify a lot of uh, village tools, but it looks like they're doing a button check at the moment. Yeah. But as you mentioned, Gravitational Pool could be quite a tricky one in this matchup. It could be very, a, a kind of like a nuisance to deal with, but mm. Arvok is going to have to try to pull his weight through here. Yeah, the trick is, is he's going to have to try... He's going bait to have to try it. Gravitational Pool. Yeah. He can bait out Gravitational Pool and uh, punish it accordingly from there. Yeah, he's going to have to try his best to sort of condition uh, the buzz into wanting to gravitational pull and then find the openings where he can finally uh, work his way in and apply pressure. The buzz, of course, is not going to let that happen easily. Nope. The purpose baits, though, will definitely come in clutch here for Arvok. <laughs> <laughs> the invisible fist pump. That was, uh, that was a little awkward. <laughs> quite the awkward look on his face right there, but moving straight into things. Going to battlefield. Battlefield it is. Right, Renegade the Buzz versus recently sponsored BP Smash dudes, Arvok. And already <laughs> we're starting off straight away. The first thing that the Buzz does is that gravitational pull. It's hitbox, well, it's gravitational box, shall I say? It's active for so, so long that even, even right at the end, it can be very, very tricky. And now Arvok put it ready at a disposition. Right on the ledge versus the Buzz. How he's gonna may find his way back with Luma covering the ledge like that. Mm. Yeah, the combination of course is of this gravitational pull. That was really, really wow. clever by uh, Arvok. the gravitational pull there too. Was able to follow up. Yeah, not often do you see that uh, the Lloyd, the ride, the Lloyd ride uh, from Villager. So that was a really, really ambiguous and good option to go for there. It was like if you're gonna take my Lloyd rocket, take me too. <laughs> Right, finally managing to work his way around that neutral air from Villager. Such a good move. Arvok has a mountain to climb at the moment, 61%, and the Buzz holding center stage and just poking away at Arvok at these opportunities. And there was the lag that we saw from Gravitational Pool. Arvok was finally able to find an opening to come in at the Buzz and take more stage control for that. Mm -hmm. Because although uh, the active hitbox of the gravitational pull is super, super active, 
Rosalina herself, it's a very long-lasting move, and Rosalina herself can't really do anything during that. So if you're already there in her face, you can get the punishes, of course, with that Nair from Arbok. That was great spacing too. The buzz immediately was going to act out of that gravitational pull to punish Arvok's approach, but Arvok managed to step aside and hit him with Pillet. Mm. And I observe the space that uh, the buzz is constantly holding between him and Arvok. He's making sure that he's at such a range that he can still react to all of Arvok's options and punish accordingly. As well as abuse Rosalina's fantastic pokes. Not quite oh my goodness. Jab. Yep, that jab. Doing so much knockback. Beautifully placed Luma back air, taking the stop from below the stage. And I believe he extended his hurt box for sending up that Lloyd Rocket as well. Mm. Now once again, the buzz, just this fortress, this incredible defensive wall. Just Arvok just cannot find his way in. He just cannot get anything really established at the moment. And the buzz finding a great opening every time he sees Arvok empty hop. Yeah, beautiful use of the cool just to kind of space himself back. Rosalina's ability to microspace is just really, really strong. Hitting him with the Lloyd Rocket from the gravitational pull. Unfortunately, misses that grab. Put on the ledge once again. The buzz just making sure Luma's the one covering him at all times. Misses that up smash too. Mm, yeah, the buzz's defense has just been impeccable this game. Arvok just cannot find a way in. He's having trouble landing. He's just having trouble getting anything started. Even though he's being, he's making sure to mix up his options where he can. But the buzz just seems ready. The patience actually that the buzz is showing. He's not jumping so much. He's just waiting in place and waiting for Arvok to commit to something first before he's able to do anything. And just like that, that downer is going to take Arvok stock. Yeah. The buzz takes game one. Absolutely dominant game one from the buzz. Winning with a very strong two stock, it did not look like he was going like he was going to lose any anything in terms of momentum right there. Debus playing so patient that entire game, he just stayed grounded, recognized that Arvok really wanted to go in and hit him, and just stayed in place and waited for the approach the entire time. Yeah, and Arvok just wasn't able to get the hits that he wanted. I mean, Villager is able to convert quite a bit if he's able to land those slingshots, but. The buzz was not allowing him, and I'm really liking this also from the buzz, keeping low to the ground so that the so that the slingshots go over him a lot of the time as well. Oh, he gets a footstool. Okay. Mm, very nice Down from, uh, from Arbok right there. Once again, the buzz is trying to keep his mid range, but Arbok just. Luma is literally a body shield for those slingshots. Arvok was anticipating an approach there from Devuz with that bowling ball. The juggles begin from Rosalina. And it's Luma and her just absolutely relentless. Not letting Arvok back onto the stage with those triple up airs. Alright, Arvok finally getting something started. Chipping him away with these slingshots. Really smart recovery from the buzz there, recognizing that bowling ball was in the situation there, so he had to recover onto the platform. Mm -hmm. And just seeing that the platform was center stage at that point, catches the rolling with that forward smash, but not quite going to take the stop just yet. And we saw a similar situation right there as we did the last game when he extended his hurt box. Ooh, and Luma is gonna hit right through the Lloyd Rocket and take Arvok's first stock. Yeah, the hitbox of that Luma forward smash is pretty huge, but Arvok finding these openings. Well, yeah, it's really difficult for a Villager to chase down those high recoveries from the bus. <laughs> ah, poor Luma. Luma did not exist at that moment. <laughs> All the way back to space <laughs> for that poor little star. Beautiful wow. punish on that up smash with the axe catching the last few frames of its uh, That was of really its good existence. mix mm. And that was really, really good. Once he had the Luma out the way, he, uh, he was demonstrating a lot of sort of empty pressure. He had the buzz kind of scared in the corner, and that's what really allowed him to get that stock in the end. And that's the unfortunate part of this matchup is uh, Villager really doesn't have any easy means of getting Luma away from Rosa. Mm -hmm. With that gravitational pull, of course, being such a huge factor, he can't really get the Luma away with his projectiles because they're just nullified. He has to sort of force his way in with that neutral air, but Rosa, and particularly with how the buzz is spacing himself, it's really hard for Arvark to kind of get into the buzz's zone. 
This seems to be the situation that we see constantly in these matches is Arvok always on the ledge there, anticipating the buzz to try to approach, but the buzz with immense amount of stage control. Now Arvok in the air. Very scary position to be in. All right, finally Arvok getting a few hits in with us with that slingshot, but... And there goes Luma. Mm. All right, now this is absolutely Arvok's chance to capitalize. It becomes a lot harder for, uh, for Rosa to cover sort of villagers' approaches without that Luma. But as Debuzz getting that dash attack in from all those empty hubs. Arvok retreating back to the platform, just trying to find his footing once again, create some space. That's exactly the sort of situation that Debuzz also wants. Throwing out these forward smashes, trying to catch him with one oh my bowling goodness, ball. Very, very close. Wow, fantastic DI from Arvok. Yeah, the range of that back air is actually pretty insane. I'm even shocked that it hit in that situation. And there was absolutely nothing Arvok was able to do in that situation yeah, the with that poke, Rosalina jab. The shield poke was inevitable there. It was just applying so much pressure to his shield. He's trying so hard. It was fantastic. So oh my goodness. And yeah. that O smash is going to take it. Mm -hmm. That was really smart play from Arvok around the end there. Recognizing where the platform was at all times. So that way he was able to cross him up with an air into bowling ball on the platform. And bowling ball being so incredibly strong. And Rosalina being so incredibly light. It definitely would have worked in his favor. Yeah. Especially with the amount of rage that Arvok oh, had as yeah. well. But for those of you tuning in, you're watching Civil War. I'm Vicky Kitty. And I, of course, am Silent Doom. And we have some more matches coming up for you guys soon. Wow, that match, though, Arvok was putting in a lot of work around the end, especially. But unfortunately, that matchup just seems so incredibly hard for Villager. I just don't really see any opportunity for Villager to just keep Luma away from him. Yeah, it just becomes so difficult once uh, once Rosa is able to set up her wall, once she's able to create that perfect amount of space. She just shuts down a character like Villager. And Villager's overall poor mobility and poor speed means that he can't really effectively rush down Rosa in the way that he'd ideally like to. Coming up next, it looks like we have a QB up on, I think, is this, is this John Numbers? Yeah. Are you saying is this is Wave B or Wave A? Uh, oh, we're still in Wave A, yes. QB versus John Numbers. We Fit Trainer. This is so exciting because we do not ever get to see We Fit Trainer put in some representation mm. at any nationals. Uh, so. John Numbers being the number one person with Wii Fit Trainer. Yeah, his Wii Fit Trainer is so, so good. He's so good with all his setups. Wii Fit Trainer having... the One one of the things that Wii Fit Trainer has, not only does she have a good camping game, but she also has really good damage output. That neutral air in particular leads into so much. It leads into itself. Up air, side B, and just... Even the first hit, you can get those first hit combos into the up smash, and she... She hits hard. Similar to how we were watching Villager earlier, Wifi Trainer really likes to camp the ledge a lot uh, to force the opponent to come to, to her. And I've seen John Numbers do this thing where he did like a, a double nair into a spike soccer ball. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, no, that is, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. So if you're really alienated when it comes to this type of matchup, you just have to understand that it, it just expect the inevitability. You have to like to educate yourself on the yeah. character. But QB, being a player from the Japan region, they are no strangers to obscure matchups. Yeah. Have we, you, we have witnessed this firsthand. <laughs> Quite the plethora of characters <laughs> they have in, uh, in Japan. Yeah. And we just have the zero curse. Every time we're on commentary, <laughs> something happens to zero in bracket. You know, like, I think it's you, man. <laughs> I think it's you. Why just, me? I, it's the Spider-Man getup. I see, I see those colors. <laughs> I've done nothing wrong. I shall not be. Uh, I am. I am part of Team Zero. You are not going to blame this on me. You're the team ally representative here. <laughs> oh, dang, I got called out right now. <laughs> All right, I'm put on this spot. <laughs> we are going already. Game one, Smash Hill. QB versus John Numbers. Bayonetta versus Wii Fit Trainer. And now one of the center centerpieces to that Wii Fit Trainer camping game is, of course, that Sun Salutation. Such a solid projectile. You know, it charges pretty fast, does respectable damage. It's not quite as explosively powerful as, say, the Mewtwo Shadow Ball or the Samus Charge Shot, but it does have quite a few advantages for, uh, for itself. Like that self-healing, as well as the fact that if she gets hit whilst uh, releasing the Sun Salutation, she actually keeps it, unlike those other characters. Yep. Oh, mixing around the soccer ball.
beautiful empty hop with that forward tilt. That's another thing about Wee Fit Trainer. She has a lot of hitboxes that are able to just cover both sides of her, so it's difficult to fight her with cross-ups. Again, we're seeing so much work from John Numbers, just covering so many areas of uh, QB's approach. He's really having a lot of trouble at the moment finding an opening. And yeah, John Numbers doing a fantastic job at covering all the aerial space that QB has around him. Mm -hmm. And that soccer ball is an active hitbox, by the way, every time John Numbers hits it. Yep. It's active for the entire time. It doesn't do too much damage, but it just oh forces your opponent to respect that space. And just we're seeing such fantastic control coming out from John Numbers at the moment. He is he is on fire. Oh, he got <laughs> additional <laughs> damage from the ball yeah. as well. And John Numbers is able to hit it down so that way it could lead to a potential stage spike. So, so crafty, but finally QB getting something, a little something started. Catching the landing lag of the specials with that forward tilt. Really funny looking forward tilt too. We Fit Trainer just straight up kicked him off the stage. Mm -hmm. A potent move nonetheless though. It is uh, one of We Fit Trainer's, one of our best moves overall, I think. One of our best normals. And with kill potential too. Mm -hmm. Especially with that deep breathing. Yeah, QB does have to look out for that. QB finally finding himself back inside the comfort zone of John Numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great patience catching that air dodge from John Numbers and uh, beautiful stuff uh, anticipating the DI as well. He's seeing that John Numbers, not only is he using a floaty character, he's DIing up quite a bit, so he's making sure to go for those jump side Bs to catch the DI. It's really interesting to see all the respect that QB has for John Numbers off the stage there. He does not want to try to overcommit versus Wii Fit Trainer. Mm. And there it is, finally, with that back air off stage. Yeah, beautiful drop zone back air. It is, even though. Wii Fit Trainer does like to go super deep in those situations. It can be hard for her sometimes to sort of actually deal with other characters that are able to go super deep too. Yeah, QB definitely picked up on that as John Numbers kept recovering from the low part of the stage. Yeah, this is this is really this is where uh, John Numbers is getting a lot of his damage. He's finding those anti air opportunities. He's seeing when QB is about to jump, and he's just capitalizing beautifully with those up airs. And there was that forward tilt you mentioned earlier. Really good move, racking up a good amount of damage. Oh, that and was once fantastic. again, fantastic! <laughs> Forcing the air dodge, using that bowling ball, and then catching him with the forward tilt. This is a beautiful performance from John Numbers at the moment. Yeah, he did a fantastic job at catching QB's landing there. And the animation of forward tilt just—it's <laughs> so goofy looking. Everything we've it sounds does like a slap <laughs> when you get hit. It's like a slap, and he just dies. We fit Turner showing that she is indeed we fit Turner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta get fit, man. She's a, uh, she's been seeing that bayonet has been slacking on the cardio, and she's, she's a, uh, she's putting in the work. Once again, that up throw to up air. We fit doesn't get too much off of those grabs, but at low percent, she does get the. Oh, oh my goodness! What? Cutie! With the overextension from the fair, John Numbers was put in such a bad position. That was ten seconds. There. It was in the first ten seconds of the match. That was ten seconds and. <laughs> Two fares and he was gone. Okay. Don't After ever linger on the platform <laughs> on the side there. After all that fantastic work John Numbers put in the previous game, it's just snatched away by two forward airs. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, John Numbers retaliating back saying, you know what? You can try to take me away for the first 10 seconds of the game, but I make sure you won't make it back onto the stage. That stage tech. That was, that was amazing stuff. <laughs> These two such explosive players at the moment. They are... They are just going at it. And this is what Civil War's about, Silent Doom! This is a war! <laughs> catching with another fair, managing to combo into the side oh, B2, again Chubi catching that DI. doing a fantastic job now, making sure John Numbers struggles a lot more in the air this game. Mm. So, seeing a lot more of aggressive play from QB. Yeah, we're also seeing a lot more uh, full hops to try and avoid these anti-airs, go super high to get around them. It looks like we're playing soccer here. Bayonetta hitting the soccer ball back. Yeah, she does have those long legs. I'm pretty sure she's uh, she's got some skills when it comes to the game. <laughs> Again, the jump side B into uh, the up air. That, that, what? That was Chris. That, they took that out. <laughs> they took that out. That's not uh, a thing anymore. <laughs> that was interesting. All she, right. She's still got the juice. She's still got the kicks. And that'll be game two to QB. What a crazy game that was. Wow. And that match lasted... You, if you compare game one to game two, hmm. game two was honestly like a good two minutes, whereas game one was nearly the entirety of six minutes. Like, 
Yeah, it was a much, much faster game. Just those, those explosive kills right at the start definitely <laughs> set the tone for the whole of that game. Oh no. Oh, he's keeping oh, no. do it again! <laughs> he does not, not do it again! Good John guy coming from Gun up. on numbers, but this aggressive off stage play from QB at the moment. Switch twist. Great wow, tech. fantastic. The tech. stage oh, bite, but goodness. not again. QB being so aggressive off stage, stage psyching him again. What a sequence coming from QB. Didn't even take a hit, and now he is in the driver's seat. Oh, so super strong game one. I think John Numbers might be shook a bit. Bayonetta, QB's Bayonetta finding a lot of the answers too. Can John Numbers make it back into the stage? QB applying so much pressure on the ledge here. Yeah, the beautiful spacing of these down tilts. Going for the, committing to the jab this time, expecting John Numbers to uh, work out a shield versus that down tilt. Oh my goodness, there's that stage tech again. John Numbers really on point with these. That said though, he just cannot get back to stage. He cannot establish any kind of control at the moment. Tries to shield grab that space back air. Definitely not, definitely gonna get punished for that. There is back air, very, very safe on block. Taking him up off stage from that down tilt. Ooh, very, very close with that up air. Again, seeing that John Numbers is going for this upward DI. He's going to need to mix it up a little bit in order to catch QB off guard and actually get some stage control once again. This is a completely different game from the last games we were seeing. Mm. QB with only 43%. Oh, he does not get the jump up air there. QB is just doing an impeccable job, just getting around all of John Number's options, the tricks that we have, that we saw in store from John Number. <gasps> oh my goodness, Whoa! there's a near to all there. That killed it like 70. It's definitely a thing. I've seen him do that and the, with the soccer ball. It was incredible and the soccer ball was spiking down. That, that rage coming from Wii Fit Trainer. That was such an early kill. Beautiful anti air once again. He's finally getting back into the groove, getting these hits. Oh my goodness, John Numbers right now finally maintaining stage control and put riding all these all this pressure on QB. Mm. The Nintendo World Champion is not out of it just yet. He's some scare trainer. <laughs> oh my goodness, that up air missing. Oh wow! The hitbox there. This is, this is such this is such strong play from John Numbers. He's really riding the crowd at the moment. And it's scary to think QB is actually at kill percent right now. Mm. Forward throw, not going to take it just yet. QB going off stage. Trying to get the up B. Oh, is this going to be punished? No punish with the dash attack. Oh my goodness. John Numbers containing stage control. QB now off stage. This is a scary, scary situation. Oh my for goodness. Both players. He gets the forward throw. Oh, yes, that, takes that is going to be it. Ooh. Such a close game. Good job to John Numbers bringing it back nearly so close. Yeah, John Numbers was making a statement in the latter half of that game. He was playing exceptionally well, but QB managing to find the holes and get the grabs, and that forward throw was the set. What an obscure character, but really showing his spot here. John Numbers showing what we think Trainer is capable of doing. Mm -hmm. And that is the character representation that we need in this game with 57 different type of characters. Yeah. Yeah, that was only, so close. Not only do we have such a high caliber of players, we have such a fantastic character variety as well. So with so much representation from across the nations, like, mm -hmm. what, what can you expect but just the best? Man, yeah, we, we do not know what kind of characters that we're gonna, we're gonna see. It could, be, it could be anyone. We were seeing so much more character representation too. We have Lucario representation at this tournament, mm -hmm. you know, and that's another character that recently has been on the uprise. Yeah. Thanks to Sue's performance. Sue's performance at, uh, Frostbite in particular was something exceptional. But we have Komori Kiri up on stage. I'm not quite sure who his opponent is. Yeah, I'm. Ooh. All right. So Komori Kiri also doing a fantastic job in doubles, by the way, with his static Renai. Mm -hmm. They're a very scary team together. So Komori Kiri finally showing up for singles. A lot of people have been waiting for something like this. So yeah, he's been uh, he's been performing well at quite a few tournaments uh, as of late. You know his his performances at uh, Frame Perfect, Frame Perfect. Uh, what else at uh, Midwest Mayhem Saga as well? He got third in that. He was he's definitely been showing his strength and consistency as one of uh, the top Japanese players. Formerly ranked number one, now ranked number two underneath Ken. Ken. Sonic. Yep. 
a Sonic player, another player that I would actually like to see, you know, put in some work here. Mm. Yes, uh, he Ken did. is one of the only players of three current PGR players who is not at attendance at this tournament. Yes. We have 47 out of the 50, the other three being, of course, Ken, Hyuga, and Taihata from, uh, Taihata from uh, Japan. Right. Uh, Ken actually has come through to the United States, and mm -hmm. I believe he placed 13th at the tournament that he attended. Yeah, he was at, uh, I believe, Frostbite. He performed uh, very well there. His Sonic, one of the best in the world, if not in the eyes of many, the best Sonic in the world. Yeah. I'm getting a button check. Always the best thing to do. You know, something that I definitely have learned from the recent events that have happened in uh, tournaments is always check your settings, ladies and mm -hmm. gentlemen. You do not want to be put into a bad situation. There was a time, actually, uh, I believe it was the tournament Tampa Never Sleeps, that I participated in a money match versus a cloud player. Mm -hmm. And we found out after my up throw didn't kill a cloud player. 150, 160. Like, we continued on. I thought it was just, you know, oh, Smash 4 being Smash 4. We find out later after the set that the knockback was actually set to 0.9. And I was like, you know... <laughs> oh my goodness. I actually I actually don't ever want this to, to experience this ever in my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always make sure to check your buttons, check your settings. You don't want to... You don't want that Smash Stick enabled when you wanted, you know, you wanted that up That's tilt. another thing. That is You've actually that high another very common... That's a very common mistake that happens... Uh, uh, a lot of players say that other players change their controls and stuff, when in reality, sometimes you don't even see that you didn't switch your C-Stick to attack when you don't yeah. play on Smash Attack. And resetting your controller, that is also another very important thing. Mm. Alright, so we have uh, Karasby, the Ness. I hope I didn't butcher that name, I'm very sorry Karasby. if I did. Versus Komori Kiri. Starting off straight with a PK fire, gets a quick up throw combo for his troubles. Now, Komori Kiri already starting that with starting with that early lead, exhibiting the uh, his tried and true patience. Staying out of range so he's able to adequately. Oh, oh my goodness, fantastic stage tech though from Komori mm. Kiri. That would have been a very bad situation for Komo to be in. Yeah, I think that would have that might have even killed at that percent, although Sonic does have a very good vertical recovery with that spring. Well, holding that center stage, very aware of the spacing between him and Karasby. We have a catch on the back air where we see the committed offstage edge guard. The spring. Yeah, unfortunately, Crispy did not have a jump there, yes. and Como was that was the reason why Como uh, overcommitted off stage there to take advantage of the disposition that Crispy was in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a beautifully paced spring, just putting him just out of range to get Ness out of uh, out of range of that uh, PK uh, PK Thunder. Ooh, doing a pretty unsafe PK fire right in front of Como's shield. Yeah, Como is catching quite a few of those. Uh, He's trying to, I feel like Harrisby is trying to catch buttons that Como is simply not going for. Como is an exceptionally uh, reserved player in that regard. He does not press excessive buttons, particularly with his Sonic. Again, once again, just sitting in shield, Harrisby trying to catch uh, a button press. Wow. That back air is very strong. Ness isn't the lightest character out there. He's a, he's a pretty uh, middleweight character, but... That back air being strong enough to take the game, a very strong showing from Komori Kiri. Kirisby was playing really aggressively, especially around the end there. Unfortunately, um, throwing out a move like that when you're off stage and you're kind of not at the advantage, Komori Kiri was able to capitalize off of that with that back air and closing it off. But we're seeing a character switch, it seems. Going to the Mario, interesting pick. <laughs> Definitely something that a lot, of, uh, a lot of Mario players have said that they do not like fighting Sonic. Hey, hey Silent Doom, say Mario again. Mario. Say it again. Mario. <laughs> Mario, I love it. Let's go. Game two. Go! Nintendo versus Sega. The, uh... How fitting. The battle that everybody wanted to see ever since the, the early days of Brawl. Finally a thing with uh, both these characters being very, very strong contenders in this game. And look at these walkways that we're seeing from Como and these power shields. Mm. Como really showing he is a very defensive player when he seems fit. He does not need to get hit by these fireballs. He's like, oh, okay, you can keep throwing them out, but I'm only at 11%. And Grisby, knowing this, he's just like, all right, I got you with the up tilt. Yeah, with the double fair. Trying to catch with the back air. 
Oh, Kirsby expecting a jump there from Como. <laughs> Very nice up smash. Kirsby definitely doing a lot better this game uh, than he was the previous one with the Ness. Interesting back there. He looked like he was trying to shift his own momentum with it. Yeah, and once again, Karasby just try, trying to catch uh, Komori Kiri's button presses, but if, if Komori Kiri is in that kind of disadvantageous position, typically he'll go for a spring or he'll just try and land and shield. Uh, Karasby definitely needs to go for a, a lot more sort of grabs and try to find those openings from Komori Kiri. Good trade coming from Komo. He doesn't quite get the two, two frame with the forward smash. Here's that disadvantage that we saw from last game. Komo taking control by the ledge there. Mm. Great patience once again, just waiting for that down smash. Karasby probably expecting a roll, but again, he's trying to read options that Komori Kiri is simply not giving him. Kirsby's just not finding his way back onto the stage. I'm really liking uh, Komori Kiri's use of the forward tilt from Sonic. That's a very, definitely his best tilt overall. He's got good range, pretty decent active frames, and it's just really good at catching at the ledge like that. It's uh, Sonic's, probably Sonic's best round poke. And it seems like Crispy, he, he's just getting punished so many times for just pressing so many unnecessary buttons. Mm. Yeah, that is absolutely the critical difference in the play of these two players. Uh, Komori Kiri's play at the moment just seems a lot more streamlined. That said though, Karaspi is has still tacked on a good chunk of damage, especially compared to the last game. 109%, probably nearing that up smash death percent, even though the battlefield boundaries are a little bit larger. Up smash now will most likely take the stock. Yeah, unfortunate ledge pressure attempt there. Oh, just holding on to both of these stocks pretty strongly and now just playing as patient as possible, uh, making Crisby approach him. Mm -hmm. He does not need to approach whatsoever with only three minutes on the clock. I know what he's looking for. He is camping that top platform to look for that, that up throw. Up throw. Up B up air. <laughs> Karasby is doing a good job poking. Oh, oh he gets the pivot grab! And he gets the, yes, and <laughs> that's exactly what you mentioned. We called it! Silent Doom. Fantastic. This is commentator's curse. We called it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the commentator's blessing. I knew exactly what was going to happen. That was fantastic <laughs> awareness. Yep, he was looking for it. Did you see the length of that pivot? Mm, that, yeah, right, Sonic's, right below the, the platform. Sonic's grabs are something else, man. You've got those big clown hands. He's able to grab you from way farther away than you'd expect. And... Even though it looked like he was safely pressuring with those up airs below the platform, he managed to find that opening nonetheless. Yeah, he was trying not to over approach and he was trying to just stay beneath the platform to so that way he was safe basically. But unfortunately, that pivot grab really caught him off guard and managed mm -hmm. to get him right underneath the platform. Yep. Oh man. It's it's beautiful. This this tournament right now has just been fantastic. With yeah, the amount of matches incredible. that we've been seeing and the quality of those matches, mm -hmm. we only have the best of the best coming up for you. I feel like we just have had so many good players on stream. It's like this bracket has been made on purpose. Just so that way we guys could have you entertained and that way we could be entertained as well. Yep. <laughs> Alright, so next up we have Mars versus Bizarro Flame. The melee Ganondorf. Bizarro oh, yeah. the melee Ganondorf. Mm -hmm. I was like, he sounds so familiar. He's the Ganondorf. Th wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> He's the Ganondorf that up tilted the orange oranges <laughs> in, in on a YouTube video. He just up tilts a bunch of oranges, and I saw that. I was like, this man's a god. <laughs> I was like, He's what is happening? Money. He's the easy money god. <laughs> He's here to show up in Smash 4. I really hope he plays Ganondorf. He does. He does. Oh my goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> right, but of course, Mars being an incredibly, incredibly strong player. Top 20 in the world currently. And just an incredibly consistent Zero Suit Samus. Well, he is of course within the top 20. But with the help of the PG, PG Stacks playbook. Oh, shout out to PG Stacks for honestly doing a fantastic job of putting together so, so much information. Mm. Mars currently ranked 15th on the PGR between Renai and Zenoto. Yeah, but yeah, shout out to the PG Stats playbook. It is a fantastic resource for commentators. Just, uh, it's got so much. It's, it's amazing. It's a lot more than the common knowledge that you could possibly get mm -hmm. at any other tournament. And it's the more the common knowledge that you could gather from just recent information. You have information detailing back to regions. You have the information detailing back to ranking, player, yep. uh, character, set wins. Which, like, it, it's incredible. It's incredible. And it's honestly the future. It's the future for this for this scene, this thriving mm -hmm. scene out of that. Um, and it's going to help commits to the growing part of it. Yeah. It's definitely going to help just streamline 
the overall process and just keep keep track of everything. You know, when we have these debates of who's better, what's better, we got the playbook. It's like let's not have a facts. debate. Let's look at the facts, mm -hmm. and then you know you just open it and it's like show us the facts, not the car facts. <laughs> Alright, so already the players <laughs> taking their stand. Look at that. Very the neat. Crowd, crowd savvy. The crowd behind Bizarro Flame. They want to see him. I want to see, see him, him up tilt. I want to see that up tilt. Bring an orange up there. I want to see an orange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bizarro he, Flame just laughing. If he catches, if he catches the Mars with an up tilt, I don't, I don't know. Man. Oh my goodness. I would actually jump off the seat. <laughs> that, move so, that move is so slow. That is by far the slowest normal in it, the game. It's, it's slow, but it's the hitbox is honestly, I feel like, deceiving. It's huge. It's humongous. <laughs> like, it covers an entire platform. And it hits below the ledge. Yes. Yeah, up to And it, I feel like if Bizarre Flame was able to make it work in melee, you know, don't sleep on a character like that mm -hmm. in Smash 4. It, it's sad, actually. You know, Ganondorf is portrayed in the Legend of Zelda games as this big, scary guy. You know, mm -hmm. recently we, had, we just had uh, Breath of the Wild Calamity Ganon, and he's so scary. And then Ganondorf in this game comes in, and he doesn't have a sword. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> not the most powerful character out there, but still one that you have to, uh, have to respect. respect the strength of his normal attacks. Yeah. You don't want to just hold forward in that matchup. Mm. You can find yourself taking so much unnecessary percent. Yeah. It's like, oh, Ganon hit me four times and I'm at 60%. Well, um, all right. Now he can kill me with a fair at the ledge and my or stock near. is gone. Yeah. Or near. That neutral air from Ganon. So, so good. Very active. Huge hitboxes. 19% damage. That's ridiculous. Mm. That amount of knockback is so silly. Where has Bizarro Flame gone at the moment? He seems to have uh, vanished. He's he's on the way to get an orange. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm confident. <laughs> he I heard see it, me. I see it. He heard me. <laughs> oh, I'm disappointed. Oh. <laughs> and Mars just with a smile on his face, getting ready, mentally prepared. It looks like both of these players are about to have some fun. With his pajama pants on deck. I'm still waiting for the denial pajama pants. He needs those. Oh, that's right. You know, the Mars <laughs> special, always in pajamas. Mm -hmm. You know, someone who's been doing that a lot recently is actually Das. I'm like, Das, is this a trend now? Is this, is this the new meta? Is this the Next thing you trend? know, we're going to be seeing uh, Smash players coming to tournaments wearing socks and sandals. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure that already happens. <laughs> Oh, wow, Bizarro Flame puts in this tag. Guys, if you are watching the stream right now, please retweet the stream. Show some support. 2GG has been doing such a fantastic job at keeping this tournament running with the production. So shout out to them mm -hmm. for putting in so much work. Really appreciate it. In addition to retweeting the 2GG stream, make sure to check out the ESA Smash stream, the, uh, the alternative stream uh, for being hosted by Esports Arena. We have a lot of great sets going on there as well. That's happening inside the venue itself. And, you know... Get that multi Twitch up. Multi Twitch. Oh, multi Twitch. Multi Twitch. It's multi -twitch. Broken. Yeah, multi Twitch <laughs> TV slash 2G Gaming slash ESA Smash. Silent Doom coming in with the stats here. I see you. With the knowledge. I'm always out here with the PG tips. That's a T joke. You know, it's PG knowledge. stats. They're influencing you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I see you. Well, PG stats, absolutely. PG stats influences us all, but great influences though. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm so happy that the weather out today. It's it's not. It wasn't as sunny as yesterday because I got sunburned. Oof, Ooh, it was that really sucks. Bad. But it doesn't matter. Right now, we are going onto battlefield. I love seeing characters <laughs> like Ganondorf on stage already getting the first hidden. Trying to zone out with these neutral airs. That, uh, that neutral air from Ganon, remarkably safe on block actually, particularly against a character like uh, Zero Suit, who doesn't have the strongest out of shield options, barring that up B, of course. Oh, oh but these up airs coming in full force from, from Mars. And Ganondorf being as heavy as he is and as big as he is, Mars is not going to be struggling to find all those up air opportunities. Mm. Oh. oh my goodness, but is he even going to be able damage. to? Oh, he's going to up to it already! Bizarro Flame, <laughs> Calm no down. for his ability to up to all their opponents. Still Bizarro Flame. Currently with a 2% lead. 
Oh, great back air coming out from Mars. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be it. Ganondorf. Oh! Oh, my goodness. The buried <laughs> down and the taunt. The <laughs> unnecessary flip kick there that, and the taunt. That Mars really mean. showing what he's here to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ganondorf is one of a handful of characters that once you knock him beyond a certain point off stage, it, it becomes impossible for him to recover. Him, like Little Mac, uh, Roy in some instances, even Cloud in some instances, but Ganon is definitely one of the most most, uh, most vulnerable to that. Zarflin really showing how aggressive he is as a player as well. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, Mars is kind of taking a step back. He's just trying to find the openings in Bizarro Flame's uh, defense. Oh, but no stage check there. He tried to overcommit off stage, unfortunately. Yeah. Despite uh, Ganon's rather solid edge guarding tools, he's got that fantastic up air that I call that the Nightmare Wheel. Yep, Shout he out did. to Yu Gi Oh! But Mars managed to actually recover over Ganondorf and instead retaliate back with an opportunity that he saw perfectly as Bizarro Flame overcommitted off stage, putting yeah. himself in a very vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zero Suit definitely has quite a versatile recovery. It is uh, tricky to edge guard that character sometimes, so you have to be careful. Oh, oh my goodness! What pace did he get the lock? Oh, this jab block oh. right now, using the platform to his oh. advantage. What a that sequence was by! <laughs> what a sequence by Mars! Beautiful stuff. Huge damage coming out. Oh, and the up air up beat. Oh, oh, Mars was able to extend oh. himself right there as Bizarro Flame unfortunately tried to do a down air unsafely. That was filthy. Oh, it's Mars, calm down. All that startup lag that Ganondorf has. Yeah, Ganondorf, overall, it's kind of funny. It's because of that up tilt. He has overall the worst uh, startup frame data in the game. But a lot of his moves actually aren't too bad, particularly uh, his aerials. You know, they're not as slow as you think. That Nair, I believe, is frame 7. Up air is frame 6. Back air is also respectively quick too. He definitely has some things he have to look out for, but Mars is just not having it. Mars has taken 1%. In fact, he hasn't taken 1%. He got that from the blast zone. Zara fully, please. Oh my <laughs> goodness, right there. And Mars I actually <laughs> aired on a little like, okay, no, 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 I got it, I got it. Oh, great landing with that up B, and that is going to take the set. A quick 2-0 from... Uh, Denials Mars only took 1%, not quite the JV3. Almost, almost the perfect, almost the perfect. Cheated out of the JV3 from his own boost kick. Oh my goodness, Bizarre Flame, you know, shaking his hand, the champ. Mars doing a fantastic job there and having fun with that taunt that we saw in game one. He All is right. definitely feeling himself in that, in that set. Absolutely. All right, so let's check out these highlights right now. We've been seeing some fantastic stuff. There Mars, seeing where Bizarre Flame was, knowing that Bizarre Flame wasn't going to make it back, and he was like, you know what, I don't care, I'm here for the flash. Just dunked on him. Bizarre Flame getting the stage control here, but Mars reversing the edge guard with this flip kick. And that's where he was put at a disadvantage there, and Mars, you know, recovering from a very high altitude. And here we see the beautiful catch with the tech roll. Locks with the paralyzer. Oh my goodness. What a fantastic jab lock there. Off the platform too, knowing where Bizarre Flame was going to slide off the platform. So that way he was able to extend on his damage. Mm -hmm. Man gets grabbed at 50. Taken all the way to the skies. Beautiful yeah. stuff. He tried it. to do a down air. Mm -hmm. Did not work. What was that jab lock though? I'm still really amazed. That was fantastic. That was beautiful. That was crisp. And uh, Coming from, out from Mars. Ganondorf nonetheless. Like Ganondorf is such a very... As we mentioned, slow startup on a lot of his moves. So Bizarro Flame still not counting himself out. You know what? He was kind of like, I'm, I'm not going down without a fight. Mm -hmm. So, but Mars having fun with the match overall. Yeah. He's witnessed that already with he got that taunt there after <laughs> the overkill. He was having a good time. I think Bizarro was having a good time as well. He seemed to be enjoying himself, you know, despite the despite the nature of that game. Yeah, one percent. Game two, <laughs> game two was, a, was a little Oof. was a little harder to watch yeah. rather than the game one. Game one, he was doing a pretty good job, and when he had Mars off stage with that up tilt, I was like, oh my goodness, the up tilt, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit short on the mark, unfortunately. Oh, unfamiliar faces. But we have Hikaru, the best heavies player in Japan. Very, very strong player, I believe. Uh, if he's not ranked within the top 10, I think he's uh, he's either bordering the top 10 or ranked within that top 10 in Japan. He is very, very good. And it was really thanks to uh, 2GG for being able to get Hikaru here. Hikaru really mm. wanted to come here, and thanks to everyone who made it possible to 
do so, he is now on the stage. Yeah, one of many players uh, who was flown out courtesy of 2GG. We have quite the uh, quite the selection of top level players uh, from all around the world. We have top European players. We have top three from Netherlands, uh, Mr. R, I studying, and S1 all here. We have uh, Glutony from France, best. Uh, Current best player in France, I believe, as well as the... Yes, and that's another character representation that we're going to be seeing soon, Wario. Ooh, but we have a DK ditto coming out from these two with the respect on the... Ooh. What a fantastic idea. Look at the <laughs> skins, too, that we have going on we here. Got, we got the Yeti versus the uh, the King Kong coming out. Who <laughs> tries tries it his shield with that with that don with that giant Donkey Kong what punch. Are these matches that we've been commenting. We had a double Mega Man and now we have double DK. This is fantastic. Ooh, but uh Mac currently with the lead, 25% lead, but that is not much to a character like DK particularly versus himself. He gets that grab and huge damage. It's going to come out. Ooh, Malk just trying to find his way back onto the stage, trying to make some of his recovery there with the platform, but Hikaru was not having it. Hikaru trying to rack up as much damage as he possibly can now, knowing that DK is heavy. Yep, oh, getting in with that <laughs> the cargo up throw into the up air, taking the stock from Malk. Now Malk is going to need a little bit more to take Hikaru's stock. Hikaru here to do what he does best. <laughs> wow, fantastic pivot grab there from Malk. Mm -hmm. Now, DK being a very heavy, fast-falling character, he's going to have to look out for that... Uh, he, he might still be in range of that cargo up throw up air. I think he's finally out of it at the moment. Oh, but he catches wow. the landing with the slaps, the claps, coming out from Malk. That was right. a fantastic empty hop turnaround into down mm -hmm. now, I feel at the moment, definitely, what is setting these two oh, DKs apart... At the moment, it's just the difference in neutral. Hikaru is definitely doing a better job with his pokes, with that jab, with that down tilt, and finally closing out the game Hikaru once again. Hikaru acting like an elevator, honestly, with these cargo up throws. And Malk really doing a pretty good job, too, at containing stage control. You know, he's trying to be as safe as possible. Unfortunately, mm. around the end there, he had whiffed a grab that he was looking for to do the same thing as we saw Hikaru do to him the last two stocks. Yeah, for the most part, he was doing a good job keeping up with Hikaru's DK, but this is what separates the men from the boys. How is he going to adapt? The top players separate themselves with their ability to adapt. Oh my <laughs> goodness, <laughs> the same time what at the same time? Start. Are they communicating right now? The synchronization. All right, you do forward smash, <laughs> I do forward smash. Ready? Oh, reads the oh arrows and dunks him down with that down air. <laughs> oh, what a Malky's start. Malky's not going to be able to come back from that. Hikaru is here to stay. Oh, oh massive damage coming out from that so up That is so much damage. 72%. Oh, this should be... The oh, misses out on the up air. Hikaru actually DIing behind Malk there. Hmm. Wow. That was a very quick game. 50 seconds. DK. Donkey, Donkey Kong. Kong. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there you go. Look at Hikaru. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. I like this shirt too. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic play. That was a very fun match to watch. I like these dittos. I want to see more of these dittos. Mm. Please. That, was, that happened so fast. It did. It you, did. No, you the blinked and you missed that game. The air dodge read. The air dodge read around the ledge there mm. really sealed the deal for Hikaru that game. Um, yeah. Malk was not doing a bad job. He was at most of the time on stage, but the moment that Hikaru had him off stage and pressured him on stage, he was able to get that downer and run away with the game basically. Yeah, Malk had that fifty-five percent lead. He was off to a strong start, and then one thing off stage, gone. One bad air dodge. He he Finish. pressured him. It was it was understanding. If your opponent is playing uh, defensive or aggressive, and he was like, okay, he's put into a defensive role, he's, he's off stage. I'm going to wait. Oh, air dodge? Down here. <laughs> yeah, such a, such a strong showing from Hik uh, Hikaru right there. That was a great set. And I'm so happy that we were able to fly him out here. Uh, when I found that Hikaru was coming, I was like, yay! Because <laughs> we, have, we have so many players with the, the, that play the same character that basically provide that representation for those characters. And for example, we have DK Will here, yeah. actually. You mm -hmm. know, we have uh, multiple players here really trying to show what their characters are, are with making, you know? Yeah. All right. So just like that, we're going to be going to a break, ladies and gentlemen. Please stay tuned. Mm -hmm. See you soon.
Hey guys, Suji Bam here, and welcome to Dare Down. I have my guest of honor, CLG Boyd. Boyd. <laughs> What the? That's f bullshit. Bayonetta takes no f skill. They put a freaking Marvel character in Smash. Just up B, side B, up B, side B, up B, up B. Dang, I'm really hungry. What should I eat though? I'm really feeling Popeyes. I think I'm feeling Popeyes. Is there a Popeyes near here though? Who would know that? I guess there's nobody around that would know that. I guess I'm not eating today. That's unfortunate.
can kill both of them. And that Music is going to cut it out. What a fantastic doubles tournament we had mm -hmm. yesterday. For those of you who had tuned in and watched, that was incredible. The yeah. amount of synergy that we saw from each team, the way they would follow up after each other, it was intense. As mm -hmm. you guys saw on the highlight, oh my goodness. Yeah, and of course we had uh, MK Leo and Javi take the tournament. Uh, definitely not the team I was expecting, but their, their synergy with the double cloud or the sheet cloud was absolutely fantastic. That's, that's that family synergy right there. Uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> you, you can't ever sleep on family synergy. A uh, good example of that actually would be yes. Supergirl Cults and uh, her brother, Jay. Mm -hmm. You know, don't sleep on family. Family's thicker than, than you know, anything. And of course, the, the, Mug, uh, the Mars and Pug West pair that we usually Here, see, but yeah. we didn't see this tournament. We uh, didn't. Mars was teamed with Zenoto. EG, Evil Genius is Zenoto. E Evil Spon Genius is Zenoto. Newly sponsored just prior to this tournament. And Mars showing up with the Lucario too, speaking of, you mm -hmm. know. Mars showing, you know, this is probably one of the best characters in doubles. And I'm going to show you why I don't need these stocks, because my aura is more important than anything else. Yeah, Lucario in dubs is insane. We saw uh, the Su Kome team in top eight. They had a very, very close set uh, with Abadango and Kameme. They just, they, they were just short, but, you know, some of the teams that we saw, like, Lucario Shulk in top eight. <laughs> we saw Double Lumac, remember that? I saw Double Lumac at one point uh, in Double Tournament. I'm like, oh my god, these kids are having so much fun. Mm. Didn't we see Double Mega Man at one point, too, I believe? Um, maybe? I'm not surprised. I, uh, I recall seeing a Double Mega Man team as well. Because the ABBA, ABBA, uh... Kamehameha team, they, they have so many characters. I know Double Mega Man is one of their pairs, uh, I Yeah, that, that was actually that team. So, mm. yeah, that was that was another uh, duo that we saw. All right, next up we have Anti versus Nico. That means Nico must have beaten Gluttony in the bracket. Wow. Which, uh, for those of you who may have tuned in to Beast 7 that happened just in January, um, Gluttony had lost to a European sheet called M at that tournament. Uh, he was the one that sent Gluttony to losers. So him losing to a Shulk is, that's two sets now. That's already two times he's lost a Shulk? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. He's, he needs to read up on those notes. Wario does have a hard time versus Shulk's incredible range. He just has a hard time getting in, getting those hits that he needs to. But of course we have Anti with his tried and true Mario. I know he's been playing a lot of Cloud lately as well, but he's going Mario at the moment versus Nico's a Shulk, one of the best Shulks in the wild. Yeah, Him very smart pick actually from Anti to, it, to pick Mario versus Cloud because Shulk would jump. His, his ledge pressure is just so much greater and he's able to follow up passing you and making sure Cloud does not have a jump to make it back into the ledge. Mm -hmm. Nico currently spacing incredibly well. This is one of the, uh, the strongest elements of Nico's play. Just his fundamentals with Shulk are absolutely fantastic. That said though, a caliber, uh, a player of anti's caliber is not going to make it easy for Nico whatsoever. Alex the finally <laughs> getting that grab that he's been looking for. Yeah, just this barrage of aerials, even with all all that zoning that Nico had done right there, just right. quickly, quickly made up for. Now he's quite a notable deficit. I really like the temporary jump art that he had put on to kind of ease his way around anti and maneuver himself to put himself into speed art. Yeah, Minato jump. Is he going to get the purge? No, goes for the forward air instead. It's a, it's a little bit easier to land that forward air after the up throw, but missing it on that point. And now, uh, Nico maybe recognizing that Anti went for the air dodge there. Maybe he'll look for it next time he gets the grab. And already anti whiffing one up smash. Nico puts himself straight into shield art. Does not want to risk losing his stock this early. We're going to be seeing him transition a little bit more now between shield and jump art. Ooh. Yeah, the, the tried and true defensive... Uh, Defensive Shulk player, high percent. Oh my god. Very, very nice. The air dodge super, there, knowing super that Anti only had one direction to go in off stage and taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Right, back to Monado Shield we go. And now Nico is just going to set up his wall. He's going to play super defensive. He does not need to commit to trying to uh, 
force his way in versus Anti. Now this is the really hard part. Once Shulk gets your first stock and he's basically doing intervals of just shield and jump, it's going to be very hard to take that stock from Shulk whenever he is in the shield art, but he wasn't in the shield art there as he yes. was in the process of switching to jump art. Great awareness from Anti there. And we're going to be seeing almost a dead even game. Yeah, fantastic anti-air up smash coming from Anti. Ooh. Ooh. He's without a jump. He caught his jump with that forward air and that was enough. What a gimp coming from Nico. 1-0. My goodness, Nico already a game over Anti. Anti needs to be aware. He needs to save his jump off stage, especially versus Sho. Mm -hmm. That that sword is so big. And yeah. You can't underestimate it whatsoever. You have to understand. He wasn't in jump art there, so he wasn't able to continue going on. But he recognized, I don't need to because I'm in speed art, and you now you don't have a jump. Mm -hmm. All right, it looks like Anti might be considering the switch. He was having he, he was having a hard time getting around Nico's defense. Will we see the cloud here? Or will we see a different character altogether? Anti, of course, having so many characters under his belt. Yeah, Going I, for the Zero Suit Samus. I don't expect Anti to switch to Cloud. Mm. Not, not, not in this matchup. As you just saw, actually, la la last game when he was off stage with Mario, it was very hard for him to make it back. And I know Nico definitely will not let Cloud make it back for free like that. Now this is actually quite an interesting pick. I personally believe that Shulk does pretty well versus Zero Suit because uh, Zero Suit's neutral isn't all that crushing versus Shulk. And so he's able to get uh, a lot of hits in with his uh, larger, larger aerials. See, 74%. This time going Buster. He did not opt for Buster pretty much at all last game. And this time going for it. Nice strong 50% uh, lead up throw. Fair once again. He opts to go for the fair. He doesn't want to go for that up air yet. I believe uh, what we saw right there was the reason why uh, why Anti decided really to opt for Zero Suit. You know, not having to fear Shulk off stage as much. So that was really interesting. He has switched to shield in the middle of Anti carrying him with up airs up above by the ceiling on purpose to mix up his weight. Mm. But wow! All right, already taking Anti's first stop. Punishing the air slash with that, uh, well, punishing the grab with that air slash. And now Nico is on his, uh, well, Anti is on his winner side stock. Potentially. By going into that Monado Buster, seeing the lead that he has and knowing that uh, he'll be able to just get those huge damage aerials and apply a lot of pressure to Zero Suit. Oh, that was oh, fantastic. Awesome. Oh, the oh, down there, down there. Woo! Oh, he Zero still makes it back. back. He still makes it back. Oh, Anti has a ton of work to do if he wants to take this game. Right, beautifully placed back air. Oh, big commitment yeah, of the down He tries smash. to get a roll there. Mm -hmm. All right, getting the trade, but still not taking Nico's stock. Still I, hanging in there. He 100. isn't even in shield dart either. Mm -hmm. This is a scary situation. Yeah, Anti is looking down death's door. Nico this is wants very, to very scary. Oh, he drops out of the up tilt. Either that or that was fantastic DI from Nico. And now this is really, really difficult for Anti. I don't even think our B will kill from like center stage here. He needs to switch a jump. He cannot make it back with shield. Manages to make it back onto the stage. Great patience that we're seeing from Nico. Beautiful cross up with that back air. Back air is going to shield poke. Yeah, excellent sequence of pressure from Anti there. He is still not out of this just yet. He needs to be very careful of that uh, Monado smash up till it will absolutely take his it stock. It will. Ooh, I can smash, smash are on. Nico just wants to close out the stock already. All right, finally, Anti is working his way around Nico's defense. He's infiltrating those spots and getting the hits where he needs to. Very clutch jab, getting the clutch, but the air slash out of shield taking the set. Oh my goodness, what a Nico taking it over Anti. That is huge for Nico. He'll be making it out on winner's side if I recall correctly. That is a great, great win. The First Glutiny and now Anti. The crowd Two going oh. wild right now. Shulk representation coming through mm. for Civil War. Winner's side top 96 for the Monado boy. That is the power of, of the Monado. Monado. <laughs> Whew, that was that was something else. That was a really, really strong showing. Anti was he was he was gradually making it back. He was finding the holes in Nico's pressure, but Nico managing to clutch it out with that air slash. And that's that's part of why it can be difficult for Zero. So if if she's not able to kill you with those grab combos, with those big uh, 
you know, those big explosive combos, and, and Shield Shock has a way to mitigate that. It becomes really, really hard for her to get the kill. And we yeah. saw we saw uh, Nico living to like one one sixty yep. on his stocks. Great awareness from Nico to recognize that if he was in Shield Art, it would really help benefit him from being prevented from getting carried up by those up airs for mm -hmm. Anti to take the stock. So it was really hard for Anti to honestly close out whenever Nico would inter interchange between Shield and Jump. Yeah. And Nico carrying it on through Winter's side. Ooh, that's crazy. Nico has honestly been putting in so much work recently, and I'm so happy it's finally being recognized. He's a fantastic shock player. Probably mm -hmm. the best shock player that we have in the U.S. now. Yeah. You know, we have a few shock players that represent the character really well. We have Tremendo Dude. We mm -hmm. have uh, Cerrone from SoCal, if I do yep. recall. Uh, NorCal. Oh, NorCal. NorCal, NorCal yes. Uh, she's a fantastic shock player. I had played her at Genesis 3, actually, and mm. she, I was like, yeah, she's so good, Cerrone. Like, I loved it. I love playing her, and the character does definitely have its stuff. I do recall Zero mentioning that the character is very... Uh, Slept on. Yeah. Yeah. The character has a lot of potential to be really good. And Nico showing that right now with that game versus Anti, putting so much pressure on Anti offstage. The interesting thing is, like, we've we've heard that Shulk has a lot of potential mm -hmm. uh, from, you know, a lot of people. But what I find so interesting about Nico's Shulk is that it's very fundamental. He's just so good at just abusing Shulk's huge hitboxes. And that's what really kind of sets him apart. He is arguably fundamentally the strongest Shulk, even though he's actually not all that tech heavy. He's, he's got a few uh, Monado Art Landing Lag cancels here and there, mm -hmm. but like he, he doesn't have the sort of level of tech that uh, a Shulk like Tremendo Dude or M has. Like He plays a uh, very neutral base and likes mm -hmm. to use his arts in a very situ situational basis. Um, like it's really interesting. Like, there's little like gimmicks where you know, like, if you take Shulk to Lilat, for example, and he's in jump art, mm -hmm. the way that he lands could actually slide depending on the tilting on the stage, and yep. that's something that could catch a lot of people off guard. Yeah, it makes it difficult to sometimes punish a lot of his aerials because he'll just like ambiguously cross you up with that nair, having only 10 frames of landing lag. It's actually exceptionally safe when you use it correctly. Right, but who do and we have coming up? We have Abba Dango. Luminosity Gaming's Abadango, one of the top Mewtwo's in the world. Probably still in the eyes of many as the best Mewtwo. Oh, yeah. most definitely. I mean, yeah. We also have, you know, Rich Brown Rich putting Brown, in as much work fantastic. as he possibly can. Wadi, of course. Wadi, yes. Absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic player as well. Another character that we, we saw rise on after Pound, after he showed his performance at Pound, mm -hmm. and Abadango really taking that crown there and showing what Mewtwo is capable of doing. Yeah, Pound, of course, being quite a while ago, almost a year ago. Yes, I know. Almost I can't believe it. Ago. I actually wow. can't believe it. Time is flying by, mm -hmm. and the amount of things that are happening for this community is insane. Like, look at this tournament, for example. Probably the highest quality tournament that I've ever attended. Yeah, this tournament has been absolutely exceptional. Big shout out to 2GG for creating this. This is this is a legacy that we have here. This is fantastic. This is this is something else. Most definitely, and it's going to be a followed example now from here on. I can't wait to see what the future holds for Smash 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the players situating themselves currently on the stream. This gentleman has a Pikachu shirt. I wonder if he'll be playing Pikachu. See, but that's the strat, though. What you do is you, you walk up to a stream with your name uh, Mario Kid, like <laughs> 2000, and then you pull out Cloud. And it's like the mind <laughs> games before the game even started. <laughs> I would love to see a Pikachu, though. I'd love to see a good old-fashioned Pokemon battle. Yeah, you know, we currently have Isam here as well, putting in some representation with the character. Isam being a really good player, especially when it comes to pressuring his opponents off the stage and keeping them there for a very long duration of time. Yeah, Isam's ability to edge guard and just his aggressive overall play style is just Oh, you see? Fantastic. You oh. see? Look at these mind games. It's like you can't trust anyone nowadays. <laughs> AC, the Falco. This is going to be good. New two versus Falco. We saw this matchup, um, I believe, was it between these two players? I'm not entirely sure, but I know. No, I believe it was Rich Brown versus AC, and Rich Brown was able to take it, but AC definitely put up a good fight. Falco, no slouch against Mewtwo, actually. He does have his fair share of fast buttons. He's got that nair, he's got that, uh, that frame two jab. So once he gets in, he's able to do a lot of work. But... Big damage coming out from Abadango's Mewtwo, 36% off of a down tilt. Abadango already with this lead, very strong lead at that. Mm -hmm. You see, putting himself on the ledge there, 
And Abadengo with all this spacing too, he's not he's not looking to hit, he's actually looking to microspace there. That was really interesting. Um, Mewtwo's down tilt being so large, larger than Mars forward smash. Ooh. Oh my goodness, <laughs> AC recognizing that Abadengo is going to get hit back into the platform, so he wanted to get that smash attack going. Mm. I'm really liking AC's use of forward tilt just to try and contest uh, Abadango's mid-range zoning and mid-range pokes. That up air on the ledge is incredibly large. Mm. Down tilt catching him from that side B there. And now this is actually kind of scary for Abadango. Whoa! Scoops him up out of that side B with the neutral air. Great stage positioning there. He knew immediately where AC was going to be. Mm. But yeah, this is actually a scary position for Abadango because a clean back air out of shield or something of those lines from AC will probably take his stock. That back air is ludicrously strong. But so is that forward air, and you have to look out for it. Mewtwo's forward air, definitely one of the best forward airs in the game. That was a really smart delay from AC. Oh, goodness! The one, two, three into the up smash, catching the jump back. Mewtwo's jump is kind of, you know, he ascends into it slowly. So that was a really, really good option coming from AC. That said, though, the uh, phase forward air taking his stock back very, very quickly. Yeah, Abadango was like, okay, that was really nice and all, but I have to retaliate back. Oh, oh, goodness, oh, oh, oh that's going to be it! Yeah. That's going to be it! Oh, my goodness! Getting the fair on the blast zone there, taking advantage of the platform, carrying him. Oh, my gosh! What? That was incredible. AC. He prefers the air for a reason. I'm going to get you a Falco shirt, my man. <laughs> that, that was fantastic. That boy was flying. And Abadango doing such a fantastic job in the neutral until he was put off stage in that mm -hmm. position. Yeah, just as soon as he was put onto that Smashville platform, and this, this is a wise choice from Abadango going to Town and City again, not having to deal with that Smashville taxi platform. Right, once again, a strong start coming out from Abadango. These neutralized doing so much work. Oh, the bad the eye on that. Force recover oh, low AC, and all the way down. Oh, quite unfortunate there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a bit too late on that up B. Even though he, he did do the side B, that he probably could have recovered back. Great patience um, in shield there. And again, using those... Uh, sort of short range pokes and mid range sort of boxing options uh, from Falco up around even. Those are one of his only options too. He has to get in pretty close wise. Abadango really does not have to really concentrate on getting too close to AC. Abadango is gonna need to watch out with these shadow balls there. In this matchup I feel like it could be a little bit too predictable and be mostly in AC's favor. And again that huge back air coming out. <laughs> he was at 81% with no rage and it and it killed. Cannot sleep on that move, and it's super quick too. That laser just stopping him in the middle of the jump too. And I really like the usage of AC's jabs. Constantly trying to bait it out that way he can get a jab into grab mm -hmm. or a jab into anything else. Yeah, Falco's jab, frame two, good hitbox. Not quite the move it was in Brawl, but it's still pretty fantastic. Against a character like Mewtwo as well, who doesn't have the fastest buttons in the world, it's very, very solid. Abadango keeping AC up in the air here. Is he just trying to find his footing to get back onto the stage? Yeah, Abadango's juggle game at the moment has just been fantastic, and he's very, very close to getting that up, air, uh, up throw kill, even. Oh, uh, what? Wh what? Uh, oh, okay. He went a little bit too ham with that with that edge guard. He uh, anticipated Abadango to go low and instead goes way too I'm, low himself. I'm I'm a little upset about that actually. Yeah, that was uh, he was doing a fantastic job and then so Abadango was not even anywhere near that space. Mm -hmm. So he went to go for that down air unnecessarily and he ended up fast falling, unable to make it back and result in an S D. And he was doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Quite unfortunate there. Hopefully he doesn't uh, alter his momentum in the game and his mindset. And he could just go into game three. Yeah, now we do have... a similar mindset from after game one. We do know that AC also has a Meta Knight, but it looks like he'll probably be sticking out with the Falco. Going for that nice sky blue Falco. Sky blue with the red boots. Dash tag there from Abadango. I'm surprised. I feel like that may have been a misinput, possibly an approaching Nair instead. Look at this 
Jab, 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 jab. That is yeah. really interesting because I've personally I've never noticed uh, how how much he kind of stuck in the jab too, and so he's able to commit to an action right after it. Yeah, Mewtwo really doesn't have an option in that scenario. None of his aerials are fast enough, and he can't air dodge because he'll be stuck in lag and just get caught by another jab. Yeah, exactly, and it's like a basically you're forcing a situation to happen. Mewtwo being light, yeah, but Dango really needs to look out for that. It's not what we put into a, a really tricky situation. Mm. Yeah, pretty much Abadango's best option is to try and DI up and away and then get the jump out so that he's able to uh, try and land. But even then, that you know, he's wasted his double jump and he's going to have to find a way back down. Yes, the side B trapped with the up air into the back air, almost taking the stock. Great patience from Abadango. Mm. Not getting hit by that forward smash by the ledge there. And I'm liking the Shadow Ball spacing, even though AC is getting the reflects. Uh, on the Shadow Balls, he's spacing himself such that he's still able to shield them even after the Reflect. What oh. a cut now with that back air killing center stage at a sub 100, I believe. That's one of the strongest moves that Falco has in this game. Back air mm. is definitely a fantastic move you want to take advantage of as a kill potential option. Yeah, a fantastic uh, tech chase coming from uh, Abadango right there. He has all the stage control and all the momentum. Great grab, down throw. Good, uh, good DI away coming from AC. It's down tilts, just covering the ledge beautifully. Yeah, he's just trying to struggle. Oh, he expected the tech roll as well, but that up throw is going to do it. Yep. Very strong up throw that Mewtwo has, More. killing roughly around 125%. More than enough, even on Battlefield. Again, these jabs, just tacking on these little bits of damage. Beautiful spacing from AC, just keeping just out of his range. Beautiful space from Abadango. Oh, oh, oh the footstool! Whoa! Something. All this percent that we're taking 56%. right now, Abadango off of a footstool. That was incredible. That's was the kind of footstool jab. It was like a footstool shadow ball, a jab lock. That was fantastic. I would yeah, love to he, see that later with our replay. That was like an optimal lock because he had his. Even though his shadow ball was charged a bit, it was enough such that he was still able to get the lock with it. That was quite the play from Abadango. Now Abadango flexing his own reflector with that side B. Okay. Ooh. All right, we're, we're, we're gonna <laughs> Back play, and forth. We're going to be playing baseball here. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he air dodges. Ooh. And Abadango was waiting for it, but mm -hmm. he air dodged really late. Yeah, wasn't able to get that up till. Great recovery coming from Abadango. Recovering high on the platform. Great stage awareness, recognizing the platform was there for him to cover his own landing. I'm surprised that AC wasn't ready for that ledge cancel. Abadango, of course, very often goes for them, and uh, he was in prime position to punish there. <gasps> oh, oh he tried himself to get a jab lock there. Yeah, very, very close to that laser lock. Abadango does have to be careful. Uh, if he's at the ledge, a back air will take the, <laughs> will take the game. So he's holding center stage. Uh, and just being very weary of uh, the space around him with the drop zone. No, not the drop zone. The phase fair still alive. Fantastic DI from AC, but that up air isn't going to do it just yet. AC still in this, trying to find his way back onto the stage as Abadango covers all his landing options. Yeah, Abadango being relentless. Oh, oh no. Very, very ambitious with that up smash, and he's going to get punished yep. accordingly with that up throw into the skies, and that'll be sets 2-1 What a Abadango. fantastic play from AC, honestly. Mm. Fantastic showing with Falco. Um, unfortunate, unsafe up smash there that was going to cost him the set. Yeah. That said, though, I, I can understand the risk. He went for a hard approach that mm -hmm. probably would have taken the set as well because with all that rage, he has nearly max rage and Mewtwo obviously being very, very light. And very big, so mm. his hurt boxes are exceptionally larger than others in the game. Yeah, I think he was likely trying to scout maybe some kind of an empty hop from... Uh, from Abadango at that range, but Abadango kept very sort of grounded and was just keeping at that mid range to prevent that from happening. That was a very close game. And that the, the last game too, the game three, Abadango with that footstool combo? That was crazy. That made loads of difference. Yeah. Did you see the amount of damage that he, he got racked up? 56 I, off, I, of that, that was off of that. That was ridiculous. Wow. That, was ridiculous. that was a setup and a half. That was ridiculous. That definitely shifted the momentum of the game as well. Um, and in the, after that, AC just struggled to land after that because mm -hmm. Abadango was just covering his line getting these with up tilt, up air. And it was so difficult. But when he regained his momentum, it definitely could have been in his favor as well. Yeah. Just... That was really good play from both players, honestly. That, <laughs> that game won the explosive, the triple fair offstage. The off triple stage. fair offstage, catching Abadango on the side of... Oh my goodness, the side of the last zone. He sets a wild. <laughs> it's civil war, baby! Let's go! <laughs> it is a war indeed. Everyone's fighting for their lives out here. 
All right, so let's check out these replays, please. I want to see some of this from the set. There is oh. that. Look at that fair. And the third one for third. good measure. And you got a third one just there. We go. Oh my goodness, that the, was bird of, the bird of prey coming out. Going for this fast forward oh, there. No. Oh no! <laughs> I love how that's the highlight. That's <laughs> this is so you know we all have a moment like this. Yeah. At Here times. we go. The foot and here's that footstool to shadow ball. Landing there. down there. Okay. Down tilt. Just recognizing, recognizing the character that he was facing. Recognizing the sense. Just oh, the technical prowess of Abadango's Mewtwo is what a just incredible. Fresh fifty-six percent there. He is leading this character's meta forward, and yes. Once again, trying to catch with that up smash, but Abadango rolling back. And that was, yeah, that was a really good defensive option from Abadango's part, rolling back, recognizing, oh, he's going to go for the aggro approach after getting hit so many times mm -hmm. and getting that up throw finally. Yep. So, guys, if you're tuning into Civil War, please retweet the stream. Please follow the stream. All your support is so greatly appreciated. This tournament... We just wouldn't be able to have yeah, all this crazy stuff without 2G Gaming mm -hmm. uh, and without you guys for being able to help us bring so many players nationally uh, here to get recognized. Yeah, Honestly, we had a uh, Lutni, we have uh, we saw the DK all on the stream. Hikaru, Hikaru. Lutni, I studying S1, John Numbers, uh, uh, Benia. It's just been so many players so that 2G has been able to fly out thanks to the. Thanks to the generosity of so many people signing up, so many people just supporting 2GG. And yeah, it's thanks to the overall community. Thanks to you guys watching for being fantastic. Yes. Honestly, this tournament, they see you guys. We've been able to fly with so many great players so that way they can get their opportunity and shining their own characters. And that way we could push the meta for all these characters that we've been seeing. Yes. I feel like every tournament that passes by, a new tech is discovered and people just approach with that character and that's when you go on full glory and you see the same character played yeah. <laughs> over and over again. Uh, remember those Marth days? <laughs> the Marth days. How many Lucarios were on full glory oh after, after Sue came back in I didn't actually go on full glory Frostbite. for like a good month because of that because I was, I knew, I already knew. <laughs> I already knew before even going the, on. The inevitability. <laughs> Who do we have next? Speaking of, is that Sue? Is that Oh, we're so, we're so good at, at, at <laughs> we're so good. Yeah, that was, uh, that was very much intentional of course. Yeah, guys. Yes, Sue versus 100%. Fallen, I believe. Lucario versus Rosalina. Fallen, uh, still very much a relevant threat. Very, uh, very strong Rose indeed up there as one of the best, just short of like the Buzz and Kirihara, I'd say. Yeah, Fallen is actually a very good player. I feel like he he should get a lot more recognition than he does right now. Yep. Uh, don't ever sleep, as I say. Yeah, power ranked in SoCal, I believe. I believe he's within the uh, top 5 to 10. He's very, very good. And of course, Sue, the best Lucario. Look at the stage. This is incredible. Every time I see it, it's, it always kind of blows me away because I'm definitely not used to such a production quality like this. <laughs> Annie, are you okay? Shout out to that smooth criminal tag. You know, Sue recently being the player that has been putting in so much work. He, uh, unfortunately, had fallen to Kashmir at Frame Perfect Series, mm -hmm. and he's here to redeem himself. Yeah, Kashmir and uh, Daya in losers for 25th, despite his very strong performance at, frame, uh, at Frostbite beforehand. Frostbite, yes. Second place, taking that set of zero, just really, really performing. And even before that, uh, the Tokaigi, he did exceptionally well at that as well. And I remember he beat Mr. R uh, in the loser side of that. Yeah, but you know, you can't sleep, as we mentioned, and Fallen being a really good player, placing 13th at CEO 2016, 65th, unfortunately, at EVO 2016, but recently at 2GG Zero Saga, placing 13th. So we are definitely going to be seeing some great high-level play from Fallen as well, and Sue cannot be sleeping on this type of player. Mm -hmm. You know, you may not be able to hear them that often, but you never know what you're going to find. Yeah, and in, turn of, in terms of these two characters that we have on screen, the Lucario and the uh, Rosalina, you know, Lucario, he's so threatening once he gets those high percents. But Rosa also has the tools to kill early. She's got those huge hitboxes to off occupy off stage and try and edge guard. He's got, uh, she's got those up airs, just snatch stocks really early if you're not careful. So Tsu is going to have to really, really be careful in how he, how he's able to survive. Because if he's able to survive, that's when it becomes really scary. It is, and Rosalina being really light character will probably die at like 15%. Yeah. I really would not be surprised. That back air, man. That, uh, 
And that back here and the command uh, side B. It's also a very scary move. And we saw already Martyrs representing Lucario yesterday in doubles. The the aura and what it could provide. He was taking advantage of that fully. And in doubles, you know, it's a little bit different because you're also uh, it also it changes with your uh, teammates' stocks as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only that, but the amount of stocks that you've lost. So if you manage to share stock, that's even more aura for you. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite an interesting dynamic with how the aura works in doubles. Um, when Lucario is at stock deficits, he gets a lot of it. That's why sometimes you'll see uh, Lucario's SD at least one of their stocks right at the start of a set, yeah. mm -hmm. just to get that aura, you know, kicking right from the get-go. But then also, if a player dies, if a player loses all their stocks, Lucario's aura is significantly weaker in doubles. But here we are already, game one, Smashville, Sue versus Fallen. And already disposing of that Lumen, not even 10 seconds in. And this, I believe, is what sets uh, Sue apart from the other from a lot of other Lucarios, his neutral is super, super good. His awareness and his ability to get those grabs. I would, part of me would almost say uh, Lucario is a bit of a grappling character. He has a really solid grab and he gets a lot off of those throws. Yeah, he gets a good amount of conversions when it comes for a, girl, a, a throw, just like as we're seeing right here, following Fallen. Although the key difference being, uh, unlike characters like Bowser and DK, he's not really able to get the kills off the grabs. He gets a lot of damage and a lot of reward off of them, but, um, not so much in terms of uh, kills. That said, though, Sue only on 17%. He is proving his strength with the low aura Lucario, getting so much damage and really asserting his dominance at the moment. Yeah, he really is. He's continuously keeping Fallen either in the air or off stage, and not falling the victim to those up there's either. Mm. A fantastic Make job at keeping safe. Making use of uh, stuff like his down air as well as his aura sphere to make his landings a lot more ambiguous. Uh, but falling, falling, falling. Bringing this back bit by bit. Beautiful use of the lunar landing neutral air. The lunar landing, of course, uh, when Rosa is able to auto cancel one of her aerials, and then Luma still does the attack. Rosa has no lag, so she's able to act immediately whilst the Luma has a hitbox right there. Right, and now Sue's put in a pretty bad position right now. Fallen kept, continuously kept Sue in the air there by the ledge, mm. but Sue's just not having any of it. And I really like the idea with the, uh, the Luma shot that Fallen had there, trying to create space, trying to occupy as much, uh, much area as possible. Uh, Fallen is a very, very technical Rosa player. He's fantastic in terms of his Luma management. Now, despite the very strong start we saw from... Oh, Luma, where did you go? Uh, oh, you're with Rosalina right now. <laughs> being sent to the heavens from that jump cancel up smash. Okay. That aura sphere to up smash. And now this is this is where it becomes truly terrifying. 100%. Uh, this is this is high aura. This is pretty high aura for Lucario. Disposing of that Luma immediately. It kicks him immediately off stage. Lucario does not like stars. We're just going to stick with Pokemon Sun and Moon. We don't need the stars. That's what Lucario <laughs> is saying. Ooh, tries to read that spot dodge and go for the sort of uh, the, the side B, obviously having quite a late hitbox, but he was just out of, just was in, not quite in the right position. And Sue going for a lot of these headshots too, always missing Luma and going straight for Sue. Uh, sorry, for Fallen. Great down air coming out from, uh, from Fallen right there. That was quite the interesting angle that he was sent out super, super low. He was in the middle of recovering too, and because of that down air, he just got sent immediately at like a horizontal angle off stage. Mm -hmm. And that's another tech uh, that Fallen just used there. Uh, kind of like the dash attack cancel grab. A lot of characters kind of have that to extend their grab range of their dash grabs, but for Rosa Luma, it's particularly potent because the Luma still attacks while mm -hmm. on shield. Again, Sue to, doing something unsafe on Fallen Shield. Yeah, trying to be ambiguous once again with that down air, but Fallen was ready for it this time. Yep. Immediately kicking Luma out of there. Yep. Gone. Gone like the wind. Oh, and complete jumping out of that situation. Does not want an air dodge into Sue. Oh wow. my goodness. That was fantastic. Completely flipping the situation on its head, using that first hit of down air in, uh, to confirm into the side B. Really effective in that situation because 
Fallen was forced off stage from that down air, so there was very little he could really do, and it's definitely not something he was expecting either. Fallen was looking to edge guard there, and he was actually trying to fish to the down air, but unfortunately, the entire situation was reversed on him once mm -hmm. Sue was able to break it, make it back into the stage and get that command grab side B. All right, now, taking it to town and city this time. More breathing room on the stage, and of course that lower ceiling. Now Sue trying to maneuver himself around Fallen. Finds his opening right there without Luma being in the way. You have to be careful when you grab Rosalina, especially when Luma's already there. Mm. Really good use of the forward throw right there. Very, very quick throw coming out from Lucario, allowing, to, allowing him to quickly get rid of that Luma immediately afterwards. And I believe the winner of uh, this game will be progressing on to winner side of top 96. Very big deal in a tournament at this high caliber. Mm -hmm. Tries to catch the landing, but again, Sue really ambiguous with how he uses those down airs to just delay his landing and just make it so that it's really hard for Fallen to really catch him. Yeah, that was a fantastic delay there. It really mixed up his recovery and back up to the stage. And the way he sort of punctuates those uh, those aura spheres into his landing, calls that jump out with that powerful, powerful back air. You know, showing what Aura is really made of with that back here. Mm -hmm. Now Sue understanding that now Fallen's playing a really defensive role and completely reacted to that role. <sighs> Reading that get up with that forward smash was just a little bit out of range. That might have. No, I don't think it would have taken the stock just yet. Lucario is incredibly powerful. Reads the air dodge, but not quite in range for the back air. Ooh, great mix up in the recovery there. Looked like he was going to go for the platform, but instead tricks you and goes down back but underneath the stage. Mm. And what I feel it's coming down to at the moment is Sue is just really. He just has Fallen's number at the moment. So many of these uh, kind of overall plays, Sue is just making fantastic reads, just making these fantastic calls and preventing Fallen from really getting Ooh. anything going. That said, though. Yeah, he definitely needs to watch out where he lands. He does not want to land on top of Fallen, especially with Rosalina's up smash being pretty strong. Yeah. That down air getting rid of Luma almost immediately. Mm -hmm. Quite higher, based on back on the first hit of that down air, enough to get rid of it. Oh, you have All to these watch juggles. out on these air dodges. You do not want to linger above Rosalina that long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very difficult to punish that back air. Once Lucario has some aura going, it is positive on block, so it was quick enough such that uh, uh, Fallen wasn't able to shield grab it. Well, Fallen was expecting a roller to go to, into a grab. Very interesting option to get off the ledge, using the Luma shot to uh, cover Fallen. the distance yep. and allowing uh, Fallen a lot more space to work with. Down air to side B once again. Force Palm. Not all that good in Pokemon, but very good in this game. Very, Taking set 2 0. Very good. And that was really interesting. He got it out of the down air, too, mm -hmm. immediately into a combo. Finishing game two, just like how he finished game one. And Sue is going to be progressing in the winner's bracket. Mm -hmm. Fallen, you know, he can't sleep on. Unfortunate for him. He's still in the tournament, though. Yeah, but he will have to deal with all the monsters that are currently lurking in Losers. The Great White Shark himself being in Losers. Mm -hmm. TSM's zero. And Sue really, you know, showing these waves, especially in this tournament. He's doing a really good job ever since his first visit to America. Mm -hmm. uh, putting in so much work with Lucario. And another Lucario representative we have is Day, you know? Day, so yep. they've, they've both been able to get the ability to communicate and uh, basically exchange these hidden texts with these mm -hmm. Lucario players. Yes, indeed. The Lucario meta has definitely been progressing uh, since he's come to the US. It's great to see uh, more characters being fleshed out, more, uh, more players really showing up. And the doubles meta too that's because yes, yes. honestly doubles is one of my favorite modes like in this in this game mm -hmm. i like i love singles but doubles is so fun to play and you can see it I, specifically because it requires uh two people to communicate mm -hmm. so you can it gets a little creative with the combos and stuff that you see out of grabs so to basically expand on the doubles meta as well because that's what ricardo is really good with yeah absolutely all right now we have elegance 
versus, I'm not quite sure who else. Pug West. Elegant versus Pug West. Elegant, you know, recently sp uh, sponsored as well by Beefy Smash Dudes. Hmm. And Beefy Smash Dudes picking up Ar Arvok and yeah. Elegant. I personally have met um, Elegant at Genesis 4. He's a really nice individual, and mm. he honestly is pushing Luigi to the highest potential he could play. Yeah, just his punish game is absolutely absurd. He gets a grab, and... Oh, that's it! He has stole the fear of God! You free, you're at like 80%, <laughs> and the character, the hitboxes of the character has actually ridiculous. He's got a like, down throw, down air, nair, down air, re-grab all the up is oof. It's crazy. Even at the more mid percent where it becomes harder to get those crazy combos, he still has those reverse up air to back air uh, after the down throws on point. Yeah, Elegant's been definitely doing a lot of work recently. So here we are. We're going to finally see Elegant on stream versus Pug West. Pug West being another, another player mm. really known for his Marth. Yes, one of the uh, strongest players in New England. His Marth is definitely a top caliber Marth. Uh, recently did very very solidly at uh, PAX East, defeating Anti uh, at that. Definitely demonstrating a uh, an overall improvement. Yeah, currently on the PGR, he is ranked 39th. So he's, the PGR is so stacked, and you do mm. not want to sleep on anyone there. And Elegant has obviously put his mark on the book here, so. Yeah, even though Elegant currently isn't on the PGR, he is making some incredible statements to justify being on the next he one. He scared me a little bit, because I saw him grab him. I was like, oh, wait, is this not a bunch of Are we, are we <laughs> really going to go here? Let's go. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty cool Omega. Yeah, I like the music. I n mostly determine how good a stage is based on the music. I agree. <laughs> One of my favorite stages, actually, uh, Gamer. I love the Ashley song. I really do. Japanese version, of course. <laughs> I'm all about that. I'm all about the Gao plane. Being a former Shulk player myself, every every Shulk player loves that stage. It's, it's a fact. Oh, you play Shulk? I thought you just played Formally. Charizard. Form Formally. 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 Okay. I used to play Shulk. Okay. That was a time long ago. Long and long time <laughs> ago. I also like the uh, the Colosseum, the stage on that. The, the remixes there are great. But we're not starting on either of those stages. We are starting on Smashville. Absolutely. Pug West and Elegance. There's power shields coming out from uh, Pug West at the moment. And Very keep in mind, this is only pools. Mm. Pools win a semi. Ooh, what a forward smash coming from Pug West right away. And perfectly spaced one at that. Yeah, this is really crisp spacing coming from Pug West. And there is that grab you mentioned. He does one not grab. Extend. Okay, straight away, so he even. Covers, he covers Pug West's landing there. Yeah, Luigi's damage output is crazy. The, the damage on his aerials, how fast they are. It's pretty, pretty insane. Of course, a landing mix-up coming out from the Luigi Cyclone. You've got to be careful of it. Yeah, very smart of Elga. He does not want to be put into the situation, though, where he's so far by the ledge on the platform. Immediately tried to DI back into the stage. And I like, I like that he really went for the back air over there to try and get the trade because the Wii's damage output is so high that going for those trades, especially when he has the lead as well, is definitely a good decision. Oh, oh my the shield break! Wow, fantastic space! Thundercats! Oh! All the oh way to my the sky to that up smash. Pug West is not having any of this, but neither is Elegant, apparently. Beautiful. We are at a dead even game right Beautiful now. Beautiful Cyclone game coming out from Elegant immediately. What a fierce response. That is exactly the kind of thing that we uh, that we can expect from both these players. Uh, it's getting a little bit hard for Elegant to get all these grabs, and that way he could basically convert off of them, but Elegant's just not allowing it to happen. Oh, oh my, my goodness. Oof. He was waiting for an air dodge there. Gets the back air. When he stood off the platform there, I was really scared he was going to be put into a jab lock situation. Yeah, so was I. But Luigi kind of lacks a oh. lot of the jab lock options, barring his fireball. The down angled chop coming out. Yeah, that was a misinput on. Oh my goodness, that was and a misinput on Pug West's part mm -hmm. on the ledge there, and that actually costed him the game. Yes. Strong star coming from Elegant. Great uh, trade with that Cyclone. When he limits your options like that off stage, that Cyclone is inevitable in so few characters. A lot of characters really have a hard time getting around that. Even characters with stronger recoveries than most. Yeah, no, it's definitely a tricky situation to be in. You don't, I don't ever want to be below the ledge against Luigi. Yeah. Period. Unless you're a character with like an invincible or armored recovery, yes. it's so hard to get around. And even though uh, Marth does have those startup invincibility frames on that up B, it's it's only at the very start, and it's not really enough versus a character like Luigi. Yep. Um, we got the brother coach here. Mm -hmm. 
instead of Brother Bear to Brother Coach. Mars coming through with some advice. Do we see an Arvark anywhere to Coach Elegant? He is talking to an individual, I believe. Here we are. Have that 30 second rule implemented in. We are going to game two. Taking it to Battlefield this time, Marth, of course, thrives off of these tribe platforms. He's so able to, he's so good at covering so much space with his giant, giant aerials. But Especially with Elegant was such a huge start, 67% in 10 seconds. And that is what he's known for doing, especially after getting one grab. Mm -hmm. Do not want to sleep on any of these aerials, making sure that Pug West struggles to land. Oh no, oh, do not my counter, goodness. my boy. Do not counter As in those situations. Counter, what a very vulnerable situation oh. to put yourself in. Pug West cannot spare to do that again. Yeah, that boy got lit up with that up B. It may seem like Elegant oh, here we go, the down pressing air. all these buttons, but he's really not. He's being as patient as possible, following up right when Jeez. he's expected. He can Pug West make it back. It has only been, oh my goodness, and it's only been a minute. It was only a minute, Elegant! After after that close game, what, what was that? He was off stage. That and, boy crushed him! And, and and he got hit by lots of aerials, and yeah. then he attempted to counter, and it didn't work. <laughs> just the way he was able to string all of those aerials into each other, just, oh, the damage. Elegant taking it over Pug West, really showing up with the Luigi. Pug West got crushed that game. That was <laughs> not even close. Jeez. Silent, Pug, West is dude, so, please. Pug West is so good. He's such a high caliber player, and... Elegant just danced all over him. I definitely was not expecting that match to just last. It was less than a minute, actually. It was at like five minutes and like, like 15 seconds. Like, oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Luigi is so scary. And you know, I actually knew a few Luigi players that were really do pushing the meta as far as they could. And then mm -hmm. when the nerf came, they just didn't want to try anymore. They were like, no, no, no. All right, yes, we but are getting some replays of that. Crazy, we, we crazy. Want to see, we want to see some crazy, crazy Luigi play. Why this character is still viable, but Pug the beautiful West shield break, really showing up with that shield break was perfectly spaced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always got to be conscious of that uh, of that shield breaker. It's such a strong tool. Elegant, quickly responding with the cyclone gimp. And unfortunately, Pug West was not unable to reach the ledge there, mm -hmm. and it cost him the stock. Luigi versus offstage adversaries. He always asks, "Will it blend?" <laughs> and a lot of the time, the answer is yes. Pug West going for the counter there. Very, very, very risky. Even if uh, Elegant had opted for an instant option, like an up smash, you know. Yeah, that was a fantastic option for Elegant to capitalize off of that. And of course, the Cyclone Gimp once again taking Pug West's final stock. I, I was expecting a down air there. I, I was expecting him to footstool. <laughs> a down air or footstool or something, know, but, but... Good guy Elegant, good guy Elegant. That was fantastic. Wow. Amazing play from Elegant there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. Whew. So he shall be moving on also on winner side of uh, top to top, uh, two top 96 of winner side. Beefy Smash, he's really happy right now with Elegant's play. I, could, I, I know you guys are watching. I know you guys are happy right now. That was a fantastic play from Elegant. Honestly, we, I hope we get to see him again in yeah. a little bit in the future for this tournament. Absolutely. Yeah, such a strong up and coming player. Let's see how he does in the bracket overall. Yeah, you know, I actually, uh, we had done some friendly doubles back in Genesis, uh, and he was just a terror. You you, <laughs> you get a grab. You throw it to him, and he'll do everything as if he got the grab. Yeah. I'm just like, you need to relax. <laughs> 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 he was doing a fantastic job at that, and you do not want to be offstage against that player. It's a very scary situation to be on. I just, like, I don't want to be offstage against Bayonetta. Mm -hmm. those, uh, those drop zone nares. She's just spinning around. And or Witch Twist. Which twist, which twist to Nair is something else. That, why does Nair kill? <laughs> Nair is a very, very powerful move. And it looks a little deceiving, too. You know, you wouldn't really expect that, but the knockback is greater by her heel. Who are we going to have next? I don't know. Ooh. The amount of sets that we've been having for Civil War have, honestly, each of them have been crazy in mm -hmm. their own ways. I have not, I have no complaints so far. Each player that has gone on the stream has done a fantastic job at holding their own, honestly, and providing such a hype set. No. And this is pools. This is pool. We're not even up to bracket yet. This is pools. This is not even. Uh, what is happening? This Which, tournament. I mean, we should have expected this though. This was definitely yeah. expected for Civil War. We knew that this tournament was going to be played at the highest caliber with all these fantastic, talented players that are here in attendance. Mm -hmm. 
we're seeing uh, matches that we'd see in like top eights of regionals. Yeah, being actually. played in pools. Sometimes not even the game to make it out of pools. Just you know, like winners quarters of a pool or losers, like the round before you make it out of losers. We like, have incredibly amount of crazy. like talented players in each pool. So each pool that I've seen has seen I have seen at least like five players in each pool that have the potential of always topping at like at least 15 at a tournament, mm -hmm. like top 32 at a tournament, and, and national, not just any tournament, a national. It's like, oh yeah. my goodness, these players have to play so early in the bracket because this entire bracket is insane. Mm -hmm. Just such, such talent on all ends. Mm. Most definitely. And as we wait for our next match, how did you do? Me, personally? Um, I lost to NC Jacob T, very solid. He, he plays a bunch of characters. Uh -huh. Like Bayonetta versus me. But um, I also lost to I Studying, my European brother. I losers. Studying. Come all the way to SoCal just to lose to a fellow European player. It's a curse. Yep. It followed you. It was attracted to you like a magnet. But I Studying, you know, putting in a lot of work as well recently. Yeah. He managed to make it out of pools on the loser side. He lost to Scat in the winner side, but he mm -hmm. still managed to make it out. You know, the last time uh, I saw I studying. It, it, it feels like it, it's been a really long time, but I saw him. He was uh, teaming actually with HBox, mm -hmm. and they were trying to do some Greninja. They were trying to do the Pokey combo. Yeah, we saw some jigs and, and Greninja going on. And I'm like, okay, I see you guys. HBox, you know, kind of <laughs> uh, dabbling with the game a little bit, which is always fantastic to see. You know, new players always joining into the scene. Yeah, it's great to see like these established players from previous games. You know, yeah, we had the Zoro Flame. You know, mm -hmm. Bizarre Flame being a really well-known Ganondorf from the melee community. Yep. And that was a fantastic surprise for me too, because I actually did not know Bizarro Flame uh, competed in Smash 4. Yeah, he's been he's been on and off it for a little while. I know, uh, just having a look at his Twitter feed, you know, he, he enjoys the game, so it's That's good to fantastic. see him here, definitely. And it just shows that this game is so well diverse to accommodate to so many different types of players and their styles as mm -hmm. well. It's yeah, it's so many characters, like, well, 57 characters in this game, mm -hmm. and a lot of them just so much more viable than they were in previous games. You know, we have. We have uh, melee with like it's it's eight supposedly viable characters with a little bit of breathing room here and there with characters like Samus and you know Pikachu, mm -hmm. Axe. That guy's crazy. Axe, yeah, he is Axe so is good. Actually insane. Um, but then Brawl, of course, you, very very heavy with like MK Ice Climbers. Then you have like Olimar and Diddy Kong as well. But then this game, we just we just see so many different characters. And it's still growing. It's it's definitely still a working process. You know, now with the newest release of the Nintendo Switch, who mm -hmm. knows what could be, you know, possible. Smash I'm, switch. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Nintendo, Sakurai, I'm saying, Smash switch? I'm saying, you know, it'd be a really smart idea uh, to p basically put in like as an incentive with the release of a, a similar game uh, as Smash Brothers from the Wii U version into the Switch version. So, uh, I could possibly see uh, Ice Climbers being in this game, you know? Yeah, um, I could see Although, it. although you, you can't grab, just as you know, you see Ice Climbers grabbing melee, uh, but I could definitely see some, like, footstool play into jab lock Ice. Mm. Oh my gosh. I, I just like mentally thought about it and I'm like, I could see the because the character be in the game. Yeah. You know, not, you know, you don't have to worry about the 3DS version too much. Oh, okay, hi. Ooh. So we're actually gonna be throwing it back to the stage, guys. Check this out. A birthday announcement that is. Alright, here we go. Alright, um, I just got some interesting news today, yo. R. Bart, can you get on stage, please? Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> where, the, where the man R. Bark at? That excellent coaching that he did for Elegant last set. Sorry, Pug West, I still love you, though. But, um, R. Bark, can you get on stage, please? Can you get on stage? Yo, yo, someone told me it's your birthday today. So... Your parents, your mom and your grandma, created a cake for you. So can I get the entire crowd to sing happy birthday to our bark? All right, y'all know what it is. Let's do this in three, two, one. You want to say to your fam? Say something. Huh? 
Hi. <laughs> Birthday boy says hi. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, congratulations. What? Open it. You wanna, yeah, show Stop it off, show it off to the kid. Yeah, I'll go to here, let me help you out, let me help you out. You good, you good? Happy birthday, Harbart. Enjoy the rest of the event, man. Give me some! Fo, calm down. You're a mess. <laughs> oh, you got a plate, too? Oh, well, then go sit down and get ready for your set, man. The cake will be in the back. Congratulations. Happy birthday again, fam. Give it up for Harbart. What a fantastic birthday announcement that we have here at Civil War. <laughs> I want to talk to Arvox mom because I want one of those birthday cakes. I have a birthday next weekend. I need that cake. <laughs> that looked fantastic. Mm -hmm. So fitting for the event. Oh, congratulations, Arvox. I hope yes. you enjoy your birthday and keep progressing through bracket. Yeah, I think he's about to play one more uh, set. I don't think he's going to be on the stream this time, no. but he'll be playing through his loser side game. Mm -hmm. So that was fantastic to watch. I'm actually not quite sure what we have next. Um, we oh, might be currently uh, still setting up. Yeah, we might be closing off fairly soon, but yeah, I, th I believe so. But Silent Doom, this was fantastic too. It Our blocks, wonderful. Yes, of course. We, we, you know, we had we come a long way. <laughs> you especially coming from the UK. It was a long flight. It was almost twelve hours. Oh my goodness! Long How many movies did you watch? I only watched one. Oh what? But I have my Nintendo Switch. Oh, get one of those. The strats. It's very you very good. That? Nintendo Switch coming in clutch, really showing as to why it's so convenient to have one. If you are constantly traveling, it's so it's nice amazing. to have one. Like I, I I had it set up on the, my tray, my plane tray. And I was just have a little Joy Cons just playing around while the lady next to me was like, <laughs> like she was looking at me like, what is that? <laughs> it's the future. Revolutionizes the the. the Plane meta. It, it really revolutionizes like the weight meta. Like you don't have to like be so impatient all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. Especially if there's no Wi-Fi provided within the plane. Yeah, get yourself a portable charger though. And look who we have here on stream, Tweak, Ooh. getting ready to set up. Player one's Tweak. And who shall be his opponent? Who shall be his adversary? Likely in the. I'm going to assume the winner semis of this pool. So. Sure. Now Tweak currently representing his sponsor now, Phoenix One. Mm -hmm. Very big sponsorship too at that. Fantastic on Phoenix One picking up a spectacular player. Now Tweak putting in so much work. Really well deserved. So I said player one before this. That's my bad. I just <laughs> see the I just see the P1 and the instant thought is player one, right? I, I when, when you've been playing Smash way too much this weekend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but at least you're getting good practice, right? You're gonna go back to the UK as Charizard. <laughs> Ugh. Let's check this out here. All right, so that tweak has. Tweak has been a very like, consistently solid threat throughout uh, Smash Bros. lifespan. Even when he was playing Bowser Jr., having shifted to Cloud right at the moment, he is doing pretty pretty dang well. He got he, second at Midwest Mayhem Saga. Mm -hmm. um, He's placed ninth, I believe, at Genesis 4. He did. Unfortunately, though, at the most recent tournament at Frostbite, he did place 33rd. So he does have a mountain to climb for this tournament, you know, mm -hmm. really proving himself. Nonetheless, though, we do know uh, what Tweak is capable of. He is very, very good. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have Kome, I believe. The uh, the other best shulk. One of the best shulks in Japan, alongside uh, shulk players like Masha and uh, Kurage. Uh, I love adding Vader. all the shulk representation that we're going to be getting from this tournament. It's fantastic. Oh, the, the shulk discord must be going crazy right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Battle of the, the Blonde Anime Swordsman, starting off on, I believe, Smashville. Now, this is a matchup that, uh, although in the eyes of many, Cloud does win, it can be one that he struggles in, but with an aggressive uh, aggressive Cloud like Tweaks, uh, he'll make sure that Kome is not, any, not able to get anything started. And now uh, it's going to be really interesting to watch the different types of playstyles that we saw transitioning from Nico to Kome. Mm -hmm. 
One of the strongest elements of, uh, of Shulk in this matchup is his ability to hold advantage. Cloud just, he really has a hard time getting around a lot of Shulk's tools when he gets, uh, when Shulk is able to win the neutral. Shulk's edge guarding versus Cloud oh, also no. is, is also very strong. Uh, but... Kumu intended to do a turnaround grab there, but unfortunately whiffing it in the opposite direction. Mm. Oh, oh what, my goodness. A, what a great display of patience coming out from Tweet, just waiting slightly at that space range, then rushing in with that limit cross slash. Yeah, he definitely saw the opportunity arise when Kome jumped there right in front of him as he held limit. Beautiful catch on his approach. This is uh, this is where it can become difficult in the neutral for Shulk. Cloud obviously having that superior frame data, but comparable range. He can just kind of quickly respond to whatever Kome is doing. I feel like Tweak is definitely reacting to... Uh, Kome's attempts at approaching and he just has the answers ready. Tweet just waiting around, waiting for Kome to overcommit to something first as he jumps around. Continuously empty hops a lot as well, but he is in buster mode, he needs to watch out. He's not when you put into an offstage situation against Tweak while he's in buster art. Yeah, and this is a... Uh, when you're stuck versus Buster Shulk, when he gets that hit, he does do a ton of damage. Definitely does. That's something that a lot of shows like to do around the beginning part of the stocks. But now, roughly, as we come into a really high percentage, he wants to watch out and kind of maneuver himself around the stage as we see him switch to jump. We we'll probably be seeing him switch his shield a lot more often now. Alright, catch him with the fair, forcing him to burn limit. Oh catch him goodness. once again, but he two framed him with that forward air, so he has to. And then he tried to get the down air below the ledge there, but it's not going to be enough. Tweak with that down smash, and yeah. he's going to be taking it over Kome. Game one. Yeah, very, very strong showing from Tweak right there. He just, I feel like he was just playing uh, so well around that slow frame data of Shulks. He just had all the buttons at the ready to contest everything that Kome was doing. He did a very, uh, a better job at keeping a Tweak off stage and taking advantage of that moment um, than when he was in the neutral. Mm -hmm. I felt like he was struggling and finding his landing, but Cloud is also a very good character at taking advantage of those situations whenever an opponent is just trying to land. Those up airs could be a force to reckon with. Yeah, and that is what he kind of has to focus on uh, in this matchup. He just needs to focus on getting Cloud off stage and capitalizing in those positions, forcing him into situations where he has to do stuff like burn limit uh, and, and the like, you know. Fair, uh, Shulk's fair versus Cloud off stage is very, very potent. This time, however, Kome with the uh, with the lead, using the huge damage coming out from Buster. Even jab combo does about 18%. Yeah, that was in a fantastic mix-up option from Tweak, landing behind Kome into an up air and managing to capitalize a lot of percent because of that. But Kome is basically doing the same thing with these up tilts, making sure that Tweak struggles on finding some foot in here. Yeah, that up tilt is such a fantastic anti-air from Shulk. It's super hard, even for a character like Cloud. That's that down air. It becomes very difficult for him to land. Oh, the footstool. <laughs> okay. Well, going for the fair. Interesting option. Not something that uh, you typically see from a Cloud versus a Shulk, because actually Cloud's fair is slower than all of Shulk's aerials. It's so interesting to see how aggressive a player Coleman is. He's constantly just looking for these opportunities to just get a hit in. That's why we constantly see him switch between speed and jump, so that way his maneuvering option is a lot more improved with Shulk. Yeah, I definitely think the... Uh, the choice for FD here was uh, very, very helpful for Kome as well. Just preventing uh, Tweak's overall movement mix-ups. Switching to that Monado smash. He wants the kill, yes. and that's already going to be crisp it. back air coming out. Even center stage, that is more than enough to take the stock. Smash art really coming in clutch there. These neutral airs. This is good stuff coming out from Kome at the moment. Beautiful patience, expecting the spot dodge, but still respecting the option afterwards. Very nice dash back from a uh, tweak. Oh, unfortunate slide there. Coleman was covering the ledge pretty great. All right, now tweak manages to make his back to the stage. Tweak is going to have to be careful around the um, Monado Buster Shot, particularly when he's at this deficit. And now I like the uses of shield. He's holding shield a lot more. We, I actually didn't see him use shield that often last game. I believe I saw him only use it like once. So now recognizing the percent that he's at, he just wants to live as long as possible. And with the stock, in the stock lead, mm -hmm. it's very doable. Yeah, now he has to burn limit. Good reversal of the up B to catch that. Komi does a very good job at making sure Tweak burns out limit, but it's not going to be enough as Tweak lands that down smash on Komi. We saw once again the power shield into the down smash.
Oof. He caught his double jump too. Oh, Great delay on that fair. Much. This could be it. That's it. Very nice stuff. Oh no, the limit came through. Oh, oh but it isn't enough. Oof. He just barely, so barely. If those magnet hands have come in clutch, he definitely would have been able to make it back. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And even after the, after the very dominant game one from Tweak, Kome definitely displayed a lot of strength in that game too. He was, uh, even with Tweak's really good movement, he was just spacing just outside of it, making really good use of the Monado speed and Monado buster to tack on a lot of damage. Yeah, right there, what happened to Lesnar was the main reason as to why we didn't see anti go cloud versus Nico. Alright, so clearly this was a, a, an accident. Okay? This is a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if you were going to pick a non-legal stage, uh, don't, I don't advise on a, on a walk-off non-legal stage. You can, uh, that's just asking for trouble. It's asking for some fun camping shenanigans by those walk-offs. And we are going to game three. This is be really exciting. Koma doing a really good job at second game, readjusting himself, de determining how the first game went. Mm -hmm. Right now we are going to Dreamland, of course, stage Cloud loves, but also Shulk is uh, pretty able here too, that up till on those platforms is just such fantastic pressure. 18%, 41 coming out, three hits from Shulk. And that is the power of Buster. Mm -hmm. Buster doing a great job at wrecking. Really high damage at yes. early percents. 70%. And Tweet, despite all his uh, crisp movement and uh, attempted baits, he's just not catching Kome out. Kome is just keeping with the outside of that cloud range. As good as it is, it's not quite the Shulk range. Wow, Kome's movement though. He's not overcommitting to anything right now, and his the speed just allowing him to maneuver himself around Tweet is yep. fantastic. Oh, the quadruple up air coming from Tweet, quickly evening out the game though. Yeah, can he land? Tweak is making sure that it's not going to happen with that pivot grab. That was a very pretty perfect pivot back into the pivot grab. And now Kome is having a lot of trouble landing. As soon as he got that first up air, Tweak just got so much damage just from those juggles. A full soft stage. I really like uh, Kome's use of Shulk's walk, particularly in Minato's speed. Uh, Shulk's walk speed, his max walk speed in Minato's speed, is incredibly fast. It's actually faster than Yoshi's run speed. And it's a really, really convenient, especially since you have all your tools basically up for grabs. Oh my goodness, and he tried to catch his recovery there with that down air, but unfortunately was unable to connect. Up throw, waits for the air dodge, but doesn't get the, uh, the up air afterwards. And he followed DI as well. Beautiful weight on that air dodge, very... Great deep catch from, uh, from Kome right there. And now Tweak is on his last stock. Possibly his last stock in winners. Mm. And I know the Shulk, uh, the Shulk Discord will be absolutely elated to see two Shulks on top 92, not the uh, top 96 winner side. And Kome is here to prove himself. Beautiful Kome. juggles. Wow. He's there oh, coming out. Patience. Oh my goodness. And almost getting the forward smash on the platform there. But Tweak understanding the situation and DIing away back into the safety of the ledge invincibility. Mm -hmm. And I like that from Kome. As soon as he saw that uh, Tweak had got back since stage, he came out of smash just to remove any kind of risk. Wow. That runaway to that limit cross slash really coming in clutch here for Tweak. Mm -hmm. And we know the power of Cloud. We know that Tweak is definitely not out of this just yet. Oh, oh that was the punish. Very, that was a very scary situation to be in right in yeah, front of Tweet Chase. Yeah, I really expected something like a down air or, a, or at least an up air from oh, Tweet right there. Is off stage. Yeah, he's going to have to burn limit once again. Oh, he's jumping just out of range. Air and slash out of shield. Not enough just yet. No not rage even on in that. smash art. That's not going to be enough. All right, lands, lands with the up air. Finally gets some damage on the board. This is a very, very scary situation for Tweet. Very nice use of the wall jump right there to get the, the ledge snap from the up B. And his patient play from Kome is honestly paying him Down so much. Is that going to be it? No, it isn't. No, it Barely. is not even on the ledge yet. That was fantastic VR from Tweak. This is so scary. Another fantastic air slash out of shield, and that will be the set 2-1 to Kome. Oh, the my second goodness. Shulk making it through to top 96 winner's side. Two Shulks in top 96. That's crazy. Civil War. Whew. That is an upset if you've seen one. Silent Doom.
What are we gonna do? This is crazy. All the shulk representation that we have in this tournament, it's insane. And Kome taking it over Tweak. And Nico taking it over Anti. Mm -hmm. Anti top 10 in the world, Tweak top 20. These are very, very good players. And seeing these shulks, seeing these shulks perform makes me happy, man. Seeing shulk play really well is just making me break a sweat. <laughs> it's a really bad situation to be in when you're off stage against Shulk, especially if you're playing Cloud. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, your, your recovery isn't the best, so you're forced to burn limit most of the time if yeah. you're holding on to it. So that's the that, type of matchup where it's really important to just hold on to limit as much as you can, not only for the ground speed that you gain, but for the possibility that if you get put into a really bad situation, you have to use it to recover. Mm -hmm. But it looks like, we are yes, it looks like we will be taking a break I believe that is the end of pools. Thank you very much to everybody for tuning in and make sure not to go anywhere. こんな日が来るとは思わなかったな。a bank is that honest that's not honest okay lying to your mother no that's not honest okay good fox four air footstools and kill someone at zero percent yeah that's honest
Okay. Max Rage DK. Up throw up there someone and kills them at 40%. Yeah, that's honest. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, I'll be right back. Oh, okay. He's right here. Something wrong with him.
I mean, it's the hitting that matters. Yes. That throw. And like, you can only <laughs> get that in New England, man. <laughs> Is this Smash Four or, or, or step it up right now, man? I feel like they're just breakdancing on each other. Like, <laughs> for a minute, I thought Six Six was about to go over there and just duff him. Like, <laughs> like. One hit. I mean, it's the hitting that matters. Yes. Back throw. Get him off stage. All right. Let's see that sword. Sam from deep. Too many of them to run out. Maxi, oh, he can burn off that. The full conversion. Oh, oh and he understands. got it. How to bring a match back in the clutch. There it. it is. Wow, that up close reverse. Basically, he is cool with delivering the better pressure. This should be a stop oh, right here, though. Yeah. And it is. That's, you're the patience right yeah. there. To go for it. Thank you, Chris. Oh, he gives you stuff like that. That time he does down air and he misses the tag. Oh, that was so fast! Oh! oh. It's the Mount Thunder and oh. the Mount oh. Light. Light him up! Oh, oh my god! Oh. Look at this very nice, nice, like, soccer wire proof. Look at this, oh. that Thunder! This man! Oh my god! Man, things are heating up here in sunny Southern California with top 96 of Civil War 2G GC. It's coming be going in. down here, man. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been out here all day kind of repping for y'all. We had all type of commentators coming up. Now you got D1 Breezy about to rock it out for you here at this top 96. Definitely, man. And let me tell you right now, it's going to be a little intense because we're about to see the man that sent zero to the loser's bracket up on stage. And interestingly enough, he's not even ranked. Not even ranked. Exact's right here. Actually, you know, he even tweeted out. He was like, you know, no, no, I did beat zero, 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 but I kind of felt like 
he was, uh, you know, he's playing a little sloppy. Went up to stairs, talked to Zero for a little bit. Him and Pierce obviously working some things out. So, you know, this is not the end of Zero by any means, but shout out to XX for putting himself on the board right now. Wasn't even in the PGR top 50 uh, for PGR V2, but damn sure gonna make it to PGR V3 playing like that. Yeah, man, and his opponent, Earth, best pit in the business, man. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be a really good match to see. I mean, the fact that, man, XX, like he moved over to Northern California, and, you know, he hasn't really been in SoCal for, for quite some time, mm -hmm. right? He just came back from a trip in Hawaii, and now my man just came out of nowhere and just beat Zero. It's like, what's up? I mean, he had, to, he had to let him know. Like, he's back. He's off vacation. He's ready to play, you know? I mean, Hawaii's a nice place to be, but once you got to get the hands back, you know, got to get your sticks uh, back in the hands, start playing, you got to let him know who you are again. And let him know that Fox is indeed honest. I mean, Larry Lur thinks he's I honest. I mean, Larry right? Lur thinks he's honest. And we all believe Larry, right? <laughs> I mean, Larry's got an honest face. Whatever he says, got to go. So either way, man, as we said, you know, this is Civil War 2G saga. We have been, uh, well, there's been a lot of civil unrest, I have to say, in the tournament. I mean, there's been upsets on upsets, and we would get into those in between matches. But, I mean, if you've been paying attention to uh, PG stats, the Twitter, just all day, every day, just more names beating names you did not expect. I mean, one of the biggest ones that we just talked about, obviously, XX versus Zero. But, I mean, even uh, Leo. Leo's now a loser, you know, going true, losing true. against Meteor. Uh, you know, again, maybe that Ryu problem still kind of rearing his head, but Ryu, Meteor actually does play Sonic as well. So I was like, okay, wow, this is, uh, <laughs> you know, this is shaping up. Team Zero looking a little hard, you know, looking a little, a little difficult, a little, a little shaken, but I feel like true. they can still make it happen, you know, later on in this bracket. That's true. And all these shocks too, you know, putting yeah. in a lot of work in the bracket. Oh, we yeah. saw Kome, and also we saw Nico, right? Nico uh, over Anti and yeah. Kome over Tweak. Oh, yeah. I was like, what? And it's funny because, like, I feel like back then a lot of people would be like, Shulk, what are you doing? Like, that's, you're wasting your time, man. Just pick a better swords character. But I mean, mm. I mean, I mean, it's a couple of Shulks. I mean, I, you know, just because the character's doing well in the tournament don't mean that <laughs> you're not right about the way. You know, I saw a Ganon actually today uh, went on stream uh, in a very dominant fashion. I actually killed with an up tilt. Do I want to play Ganon now? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> of course not. But enough about that. We're going to get right into this match, man. Let's go. We got XX again, you know, the zero slayer of this tournament so far. Going up against Earth. Best pit in the nation or in the world. In probably. the world, dog. Yeah. Here see it what is, we can though. do right here. And right there you see XX jumping, just avoiding that arrow. Doesn't want to get caught with a situation where he's going to have to recover low. I want to see these edge guards that this man Earth has on Fox. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a pretty, uh, you know, standard match right here. Earth, mm. or and Pit, honestly, just kind of like a, a bare, bare bones character. What he does, mm. you should be expecting. But, I mean, if you shrink it together perfectly, you will be taking some games right here. And look at that. Had a nice little lead, but looks like XX ready to fire back. Hit him with that double up air. Get yep. himself a little percent lead right here. See what he does. Like this positioning right there, just trying to keep Earth back. You know, interestingly enough about Pit, this guy having so many jumps can make it quite difficult when it comes to comboing him. If he, you know, gets out of hit stun, he's yeah. able to just, like, basically mix up how the way he lands with all his multiple jumps. All together, man, you know, Pitt being able to have these multiple jumps and Fox and I having like to, oh, wow. Wow, he comes down with the on him. He said, you know, get up <laughs> on my face real quick. Coming back with his own near, but yeah, as I was saying, you know, Pitt having all these multiple jumps to be able to put on a lot of pressure on Fox and Fox with such linear recoveries as he's trying to check right there. Goes for oh. the down there and he gets it. Good stuff right there to Earth. That's definitely what I wanted to see in this matchup, right? You see what happens there. You can set up for the down air right as er just like Earth did right there. Yeah. You have to make sure that you don't get caught in a situation where you have to fire Fox from below. If he's able to be just level with the stage so that he can mix up with either a side beat or a fire Fox from a, um, a horizontal mm -hmm. distance, then he'll be good. But we'll see what happens here. Definitely force that situation, though, know, with that back air and the fact that uh, XS didn't like wall tech mm -hmm. and jump. He, you know, he immediately had to put him into that, uh, that uh, up B situation. But nice down smash right here from XX. Oh, back into it. We got the combo. Oh. oh, man. And let me tell you, I've seen some of XX's combo videos back then. This guy would record so many combo videos and put him up. A lot of great concept stuff for Fox. He ha he knows a lot of his footstool combos and how to convert off of them. You'll see him probably go from, wait a second, is it over? Wow. 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 <laughs> My man didn't even get me an opportunity to even keep talking. He was like, nah, man. He won. Nah, Can we start dumb. talking about my edge guards again, real quick? Yeah, just get back to his edge guards real quick. Yeah. I mean, that was a clean down air. I mean, that's actually a decently hard move to hit. Yeah. Uh, and expected to kill so early, too. I mean, it's a spike, but it's one of the weakest spikes in the game. And Earth making it look like that was a Ganon spike. <laughs> you know, I mean, put the feet on him real quick. Put the sword on him. <laughs> that was really that Indeed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only feet move he got in here is up tilt. I don't know if he's going to use that move. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Bring it back, man. Bring back up tilt. Anyway, getting into game two right here. XX is going to go ahead and counter pick over to Battlefield. Yep, definitely expected that one right there. And uh, with the way the rules are right now, even if they were to ban Battlefield or Dreamland, they both would be banned if 
you know, hope it was finished. Yeah. But anyway, so, I mean, basically try platform you know, all, all together is treated like one stage. Not really agreeing with that still, but I mean, hey, I don't make the rules. <laughs> Compensated. That's anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, okay, so he needs to watch out with those dash attacks for sure. Okay, there it is. So Exax, he notices um, Earth's, you know, how good he is at edge guarding, so yeah. he's trying to mix up the way he's recovering. You see him trying to overshoot a little bit. That was slick tech, though. He got out the rest of the up smash by attacking and rolling away. Because uh, he ended up being like that close to the platform. So that was pretty nice. Here we go. Looks for the back air. Not going to land that right there. Maybe too much rage or not uh, running far enough. Hey, wow, Earth really good on uh, punishing these side Bs right here. XX might need to find a better option to get in here. So, oh my goodness, yeah. look at all these spot dodges right there too. Uh, if you notice right now, Earth just employing a lot of shield against Fox. It's like, okay, if you get a grab on me, it's not like you're going to be able to convert a lot anyway, so I'm about to just put up the shield real quick. And that's really smart, you know? Yeah. At, at, as Fox doesn't really have the greatest follow-up on his grab, especially uh, after about like 50%, I mean, he's not going to get anything. You know, he's throwing you somewhere, and then you're resetting the neutral. That's it. I think Earth is definitely okay with that right here. Oh, the oh shot! my gosh! Sick marksmanship. Again. Oh, Again. And wait, he, this is it. He's done. Oh. oh! He could have been done right there. However, Earth's still keeping up the pressure. That is crazy, the man's accuracy. XX needs to watch out though. You see his percent right now? If he gets cornered, that forward throw becomes a big threat from this pit. Look at that back air just putting the pressure out, but again, rolling in, getting that uh, center stage yet again. Oh my gosh, There's good air knock. Yo. Yup. Okay, manages to come back again. Oh my gosh, Earth knew what was and happening he was there. Right there. He was ready for the back hit of the down smash. That would have actually been clean if he managed to connect it, though. Yeah, I, I, I kind of thought he actually wanted to turn that around to the like forward hit. Uh, but, you know, maybe miss a little input right there. Either way, you know, XX still in this game right here. Full rage at that. Oh, going to get footstool. Should be able to make this one back. Okay, good stuff. XX not using normal getup. Doesn't want to get caught with a potential forward throw. Oh. Nah, not going to get away from that. So if you saw him start the, start the dash away, but get caught by that good range of that uh, down smash right there. Earth. All right, interesting use of the neutral air right there. Wow. Earth is actually super on point right now with all, a lot of these punishes and oh, his yeah. combo game. So luckily enough, you know, I thought Earth was, or I thought x was going to have a hard time getting back down to the stage. He seems to be doing uh, quite well. Using a lot of aggressive options as well. You know, I've seen him come down with an air quite a few times. It's actually worked out in his favor. Here it is. Yeah, it's going to get that right there. Clean conversion. Definitely solid. You saw a bit of a charge in there, too, to ensure the KO, knowing that this is a bit of a high ceiling. Yeah. Right here, though, you know, only 47% right here. Nothing uh, really to scoff at. He'll still be able to get most of his combos off. Okay, it looks like he's trying to fish potentially for a footstool. You see him going for these full jump down airs. And get some dabs right here. Clean damage. Earth right oh. here still, you know, honestly, Earth really hasn't given up too much, uh, I say too much, like, control of his match so far. Even when he's near the ledge, it still seems like he's the one uh, who's in control right now. But XX, starting to fire his way back in here. Yeah, it looks like uh, one of the best ways that he's able to get like damage on Earth is with the down air. Down air has been working out for him a lot. Got the shot. Again, the marksman. Oh, He's going to wait it out right there. Try to two-frame that recovery. Go off the mark. However, the double down smash actually is going to give him that uh, little bit of damage right here. Oh my gosh. And there's a chase right now from XX recognizing that he's going to have to make something happen. He is at high percent. He's already down a game. Gonna recover again. Uh-oh. Oh boy. Okay, there it is. Very smart right there to switch it up and use the side B instead of going for another up right there. Get sniped all out of those. There's another down smash. Earth getting maximum uses out those down smashes right now. Smart another. Right mm -hmm. Pulling back. Gets the down smash. You saw it coming this time. Oh, oh tough spot. Oh, what, a, what an angle on that recovery. Just enough for him to reach that ledge, but also the perfect angle to go ahead and juke that down, uh, that uh, back air. Still oh. lose that stock to that down smash right there in Earth. Looking good. Again, though, we are top 96, and top 96, everything is 3 out of 5. Definitely a good reminder right there, TK Breezy. All right, well, 2-0 right here in the set. Earth up on Gotta the verge. Got to remind myself real rap. <laughs> yeah, but to be honest, I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put little trade seekers out there. I definitely had to remind myself it was 3 out of 5, so. Anyway, man, go ahead. I mean, this is really good stuff over here from uh, Earth. We're using a very under, I say underrepresented character, not really a, an underrated per se, but a very underrepresented character here, especially in the Americas. But uh, no slouch in Japan, you know, he's been doing quite a bit of work with this uh, since the Raw days at that, but you know, not going to trade it out. The man is a pit loyalist. And right now, he's already getting a lot of damage on XX from the beginning of the match. Yeah. Check this out. Staying grounded quite a bit, too. Looks like that, that's definitely one of his uh, main ways of dealing with the matchup. Just showing a lot of respect to Fox, waiting for those openings. Exax. All right, 
point. Yeah, XX is kind of good right here in this match. It's time around. Oh, oh my, my god! god! Who does that? Wait a second. Are we? Okay, okay he's still going to live. I mean, it's just not strong enough uh, yet. But what a beautiful oh. shield break right there. I've never seen that happen. Oh my god. I can't. I can't take this right <laughs> now. Earth is out of control. All right. All right, Earth. So I mean, he put pit on the map again, you know. Every time he comes up here, he puts a pit on the map, probably get a couple of new pit mains out here. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Either way, though, you know, XX still trying to find a way to get his first game in, uh, in this three out of five set. And you see what I was talking about, right, when it comes to, like, the multiple jumps. You saw it right there, right? Mm -hmm. He's able to just, like, jump, air dodge, jump, air dodge. It's interesting, man. Yeah, we interesting, uh, interestingly enough, also has a really hard hole in spot dodge to punish. So, I mean, that's definitely uh, paying off in his favor. You know, Fox still should be able to do it, you know, being fast enough, but it's just like, it seems like it almost has no end lag when you're playing against it. Keeping it close right here with percents. XX looking for an opening right here, but it looks like Pit Earth is just always ready to counter attack, but that up air right there from underneath. Oh, very close right there, kind of fishing that one in there. Not enough to uh, finish that stock just yet. A little bit too hungry right there with the forward smash. And yeah, not going to take too much, though. You know, I think it needs to be a bit more reactionary. Uh, I think that's what's kind of like shaking him. You know, it seems like he's being like a little shook at the same time. Doing a couple risks that uh, don't really pan out for him too well. Back here, gonna get out that situation. The roll behind down smash is gonna take it yet again. Very smart right there by Earth. It looked like Earth expected to jump. He said, "Whatever, I'm just gonna follow you all the way towards center stage and wait for that opening again." That jumping from the edge and using that backer definitely a smart option right there by XX. Knowing that the backer is rather safe, but right. Earth just waits to see what to do afterwards. Now XX again with the full stage control. Earth, wow, just gonna actually step off that ledge. However, very risky dash attack, gonna get up smash. Sent him off that stock. Got a pretty even game right here, only 20% on XX. Oh, and you saw the roll back right there. The moment he saw the, the, that full jump down there, he understands that he could get a lot of damage from that. So he's like, nope, not giving that to you. Yeah. Earth right here, kind of extending his lead. Mm -hmm. Good weight right there, you know what I mean? XX um, maybe thought he was gonna try to land on that platform instead, just throws up that back air. Catching that Ooh, jump. That looked like a bit of an nice. opening right there. Okay, Earth actually missing, missing his edge guard right there, not forcing XX to recover low. Here we go, more like pressure. A like good anti-air up smash too as well from Earth. Not allowing him to step off that ledge like he wants to. Again. Oh, wait a second. Got Coming him. down with the nair. That was an opening right there. Earth needs to watch out. That dash attack that he did earlier, even this down smash, leaving holes right now in his play, allowing XX to get more damage. But this might be the end. Man, XX just again with those good angles, just barely avoiding that back air. But Enough for him to get it back to the stage right here. So we can buy him a little more time, seeing if he can still take this set. Or game. Oh, not the whole time. It's a long time to keep that set. He definitely needs more on the scoreboard. And using down tilt, you know, pretty easily ranged attack. But that jump right there, biting him back. Good job by Earth with the 3 0 victory, sending Exax to the loser's bracket. That's good stuff right there by Earth, as you said. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Exax is kind of getting blown up in uh, multiple facets of the game right there. I mean, one of them being like, all of it, a lot of his like empty hops are just getting snuffed out by uh by up smashes. Up sm I mean, I would like to still want to see an up tilt one day, but the up smash was definitely coming through in a major way. He wasn't really doing anything to uh, capitalize on Earth rolls. And Earth was rolling quite a bit, but I mean, that's honestly, it seems like it's almost part of his game plan or movement. Like it's just such a good roll. Definitely, man. And if you notice the way Earth was playing, right, the fact that he was like avoiding these down airs quite a bit, but not really like hard punishing them mm -hmm. until that moment right there where he noticed, all right, this guy's just going to jump on top of me with that full jump. Yeah. I might get that up smash. That's going to be it. So really good stuff to him right there. Solid 3-0-2. You know, like the first thing that we said when the match started was that he's, able, you know, having the arrows, he's able to force Fox to recover. Low. And you saw that uh, him, like that ping and dividends, uh, the fact that he was able to get those downers after connecting those arrows, forcing Fox to use that Firefox. And there's more than enough time for you to react, go down there and just straight up spike him so yeah that first game definitely sent a message mm -hmm. i mean he, he was letting him know man i got the marksman of a god he was like every time you're gonna try to recover i'm definitely gonna get at least at the very least some extra damage even if i don't put you in the same position i need to try to get that spike yeah he's gonna get that extra damage off those two three arrows that hit that's making it easier for him to get, get that ko later when he inevitably gets you with a down smash or up smash i almost got the f smash kill too would have had the trifecta when he broke that shield i mean that was who breaks Ooh. shields like that man that was earth 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 yeah, I mean, breaks feels like that. Breaking shields in uh, like a like a earthquake himself right there. Mm. But as we said, what is that camera doing over here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they don't see that though. They don't, yeah, they don't they see that. They though. see us. What's up? Yeah, what's going on, guys? Man, again, you're here at Civil War 2GG Championship Saga, or I won't say a saga, but Championship Series. Uh, what we're doing right here, three-day tournament. It's been a lot of fun. We did doubles yesterday. 
Uh, the winner of the doubles being Leo and Javi, you know, all the way from Mexico. And now we're going to go ahead and try to get this top 96 whittled down to see who's going to at least make it in the top eight for tomorrow. And just like TK said before, it's going to be all three out of five. Yeah. So that's crazy, man. Three out of five, top 96. Look at that. Five, I mean, honestly, I think that some of those uh, pool sets, three out of five, we might have seen some different results. But, you know, two out of three, you know, a lot of people have been talking about that, too, where the, the discrepancy between two out of three and three out of five. And, um, you know, like, I understand where you're coming from, but at the mm -hmm. same time, you know, if you know two out of three, you gotta get that mindset ready for two out of three. So, you know, you, not 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 all not always will you be able to get those two games to mess around, you know, and then try to turn on the Jets after that. Sometimes you just get one. Yeah, that one game could mean everything. So, it's gonna be well. It's these players are not in that situation anymore. Fortunately, oh, no. right now it's all three out of five. So, I can't wait to see what's gonna be happening right now. We already hear players are picking their characters, and it looks like got Kamehameha up there. Is yeah. it Kamehameha yeah. and, L, oh, and uh, Captain Zach? Okay. Ooh, definitely yeah. going to be a really exciting match right oh, here. Yeah. We got a Mega Man possible sheet uh, versus the Bayonetta, yeah. who, honestly, man, you know, he, we know he's going to play Bayonetta, but at the same time, you know, I've seen him pull out the Wii Fit. I've seen him pull out the Peach. He's definitely got some characters in the pocket if it ends up being that way, but I don't think he's going to do that. You know, he is uh, herald, heralded as the, I guess, best conversion Bayonetta. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever he hits, usually he's going to end up leading into a stock or at least some very heavy damage. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Really, really solid play. And, you know, we were talking about some of the characters that Kamehameha has. I've even seen him bust out Yoshi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. So we'll see what's going to happen here. Uh, with the Bayonetta is already confirmed, and now we're going straight to Mega Man. All right, so here it is. Kamehameha versus Captain Zack. And we're Tyler, not Zyre, starting on Pilot Wings. Nah. We're going to be a hand warmer. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> One day, man. Nah. I mean, I, well, I mean, who knows, man? I mean, the music does kind of rock. They could be trying to... All right. Let me tell you, man. Depending on the region, maybe... What is it? Houston? I think it's Houston that mm. has... Uh, that loves those stages, right? I mean, I, like, I just like the Omega, you know? Like, oh, yeah, if yeah. they decided to go here instead of FD, I wouldn't be mad. Pilot, the song Pilot Wings is the only song that I actually have uh, on on the stage. All three versions. Or Light Plane, sorry. Light Plane. Yeah, I was waiting plane. for you to say not, Light Plane. I was like, I'm not going to cut you off. I'm going to wait it's, my it's turn. It's Light Plane. It's Light Plane. I'm All three versions, man. Got the instrumental, the vocal mix. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite? Um, I think the vocal mix, to be honest. Mm, clean, clean. Yeah. Not bad. Anyway. So we got, uh, they definitely kind of go in at the vocal. I mean, vocal definitely mix, go I mean, yeah. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> <That's> funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because we're whispering to each other as if we totally forgot we're on the mic. You know what I'm saying? Just like two homies <laughs> kicking back. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the light I mean, playing the vocal, vocal mix. Actually, yeah, exactly. cool. Anyway. <laughs> So let's get right into it, man. As we said, you know, Mega Man coming up against Bayonetta. Coming Man uh, had a very close game actually earlier against uh, Scat with this Mega Man. Then he switched over to the Sheik to actually take the set. So uh, we'll see if he has to do that right now. I mean, his Sheik has been making a lot more of a debut uh, in the last coming months, you know. Not to take anything away from Mega Man, obviously still his main, but that Sheik has been, uh, you know, taking some names. Ooh, and right now, you notice how Kamen is just showing respect, staying outside of the range of a potential witch twist, because <laughs> that's what happens, you know, you, it could potentially lead to that uh, long string of combos right there from Captain Zack. Here it is, that heel slide, and wait, I think he caught the jump right there. Definitely that's interesting. Right there. Yeah, that, that uh, up to it seeming to have a lot more range than you would expect it to have, to be honest. I mean, watch the shield right now, uh, Kamen Man. Have to get out of this situation, taking a lot of shield damage, managed to alleviate that, getting that back throw, create some space. Yeah, his DI has been like really on point. Every time I see him playing against uh, Bayonetta. Oh, oh my god! Captain Zack! Yo, what did I tell you, man? This boy has the conversion. Who, who else was, th was thinking about that? I thought we were going to get maybe a side B in there. He said, nah, let me just go ahead and end this stock real Jeez, quick. Something man. slight. Let's that was go, definitely Captain something Zach. slight right there. <laughs> something light. Something real light. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Captain Zack, I'm again, you know, just putting that pressure, long uh, cooldown right there on uh, that back air because he's using beat moves, but should be able to make this one back. Gets back to the ledge. Ooh, big like opportunity it. right there, yeah. I, I mean, I definitely like the idea. That was the strongest move he's probably going to be able to hit him with, possibly get a stop right there. Ooh, jeez. Big damage coming in. Yeah, 51 already on Kamehameha. Good spacing right there, but that rollback definitely helping with those space snares from Kamehameha. All right, I'm going to make that right back. Still putting on the pressure, too. I mean, did not even care about the fact that he uh, was going to have to have, hit that long land ledge. He was like, I can grab the ledge, or I can just keep getting more damage. Zach playing super aggressive right oh, yeah. now. Check this out right here. Just dancing around Kamehameha, and I was about to say that shield was so small. Kamehameha had an answer with that up smack. Yeah, that was pretty smart right there. I think he was really expecting that. He'll slide and gets the back. Uh, I think he caught that uh, Razor, too. Good wow. stuff right there to Zach right there. Yeah, just kind of immediately taking this game. Quick first stock right there with that up. B to down air, Definitely. and then immediately catching him, you know, kind of with that drop zone back air. I mean, people, I just don't think, think they expect 
Bayonetta didn't come through that fast. But she has a really fast fast form. That back air comes out very qu uh, quick too. Kamehameha probably just was not ready for that. Yep. But Kamehameha right now deciding not to go with Mega Man. He's like, all right, it didn't work out for me. I'm going to switch over to the Sheik real quick. Game two. Both players nodding in agreement. They're ready to roll. Here we go. Town and City. Now, you know, going into this matchup, TK Breezy, how do you feel about uh, coming in, switching over to Sheik now in this matchup? Uh, I mean, I, as I said, you know, earlier on, Sheik has definitely been making waves. I'm not going to uh, say it's even like a secondary, one of those desperation secondaries. This mm -hmm. is just, just a solid secondary for him right now. Uh, this could definitely help him out uh, in a wave because I felt like he was kind of in the shield too much or maybe he just didn't get enough space against the aggressiveness of uh, Captain Zack. And I think uh, Sheik does a better job at uh, dealing with aggressive, you know, aggressive. Yeah, right now, he pretty much just has Captain Zack stuck in the corner, keeps responding with these fares and converting them over and over again. Misses that one right there, but look at all that damage right now on Zack. 95%, way different game that we see here in comparison to the first one. I'm saying, I mean, come in, man. I'm going to make it look like, that, look like that first game, which is Ada. Definitely, look at that. Okay, oh, no up air time yet. Okay, I guess he's probably saving it. Oh, okay. oh, take he took the damage. Wait a second. Zach right Ooh. there just kind of sending a message back. Right there. Only getting the 10, though. Yep. Managed to get a lot off of this, possibly. Oh, oh my god! god! He got a whole stop off the top, and right there, Captain Zach manages to just steal the lead right there. And wait, we're almost done. Is uh -oh. this about to be the end of the next match? Oh my, oh my god. god, Captain Zach oh with the 2 0. Oh my, what, what did I tell you, man? Wow, Captain Zach, the conversion king, right yes. there. Yes, literally got one hit. Into yes. a stock on both those uh, stocks. What? Definitely strong, strong conversions right there from Captain Zack taking Kamehameha straight to the top. And, you know, it was so interesting seeing how the Sheik was working out, you know, holding Zack on the left side of the stage that entire time. But right there, you give Zack that one inch, man, and he will just go very, very far with it right there all the way to victory, taking the second game right oh, there consistently. Up. What's up? Dark Pit? Wait, did you? Oh, really? no, he, he was, he's highlighting. He's highlighting. He has a bunch of characters, man. Yeah, he does like, have a bunch of characters. At Wednesday Night Fights, we were talking, uh, I was with Bam, and we were talking about how deep this man's pockets are, man. He has, like, Yoshi, Sheik. Like, we, we just saw him. Think about Dark Pit. Wait, oh, Wario? Okay, hold up. Hmm. I might be about this action if we get some Wario right now. I'm going to hold my breath real quick. Yeah, let me just, let me not say nothing. Let me just put the prayer hands up. Oh, wait, we got people chanting for Yoshi. I'm not sure if he's going to do it. <laughs> Wishful thinking, people. I mean, that's definitely got to be a little discouraging, though, coming in yeah. from, uh, from Kamehameha. Mm -hmm. To have, like, such a solid lead like that, he literally did not get hit for, like, 130% like, of Zack's stock, and then Mele gets hit and lose two stocks. Yeah. Like, like, uh. That's definitely what happens when you have Rage Bayonetta. You got to show respect to the character, man. Yeah. It's rough. It's hard, though, because there might be, even though they say don't get hit, right, there are just those times where you inevitably do get hit, and... With the rage coupled with that, the knockback just gets crazier and crazier to the point where you you be done under fifty percent, man. Hmm. Right now, still waiting on coming in to choose his character. Is he getting uh, it or looks or like he still like talking to I the think. Oh, he's not actually yeah. not talking to anyone right now. Okay, dark okay. pit, dark pit. Here we dark go. Dark pit. All right. Hmm. I mean, do do I like this pick? Find out. I mean, I, mean I, I like Dark Pit as a I character. I like Dark Pit as a character. Definitely. You do? Yeah. Over Pit? Yeah. Me too. All right. Something about that side beat, man. <laughs> Something about that angle. It just gets me hyped. <laughs> that was actually rather interesting decision making right there from Captain Zack. You know, going for all three of those four tilts. I wonder yeah. if he was probably trying to bait coming in to, to run into, to run in after the first one and attempt to punish. But regardless. So that's one thing he's definitely going to have in this match that's a little different than the other two characters played. That up air uh, in multiple jump shit. Oh, hold on. Oh, my God. Okay, he's getting back. Okay. Yeah, the up air is uh, going to allow him to at least snuff out a lot of Zach's uh, like landings and recovery, especially if Zach's trying to get back down to the ground with a dad kick. He's not, he's not going to allow that. You know? Up air being disjointed should be able to snuff that out uh, and uh, send him right back out with a little extra damage. Okay. Again, landing with the up air right there. Okay. Oh. oh. Conversions. Uh, doesn't get the back air right there. Dark Pit looking a little nice right now. Ooh. All right, don't, don't, don't reach, though. You know what I mean? Like, right when I <laughs> right. say he looking nice, he's like, yo, let me show you this reach real quick. Okay, the fourth throw. Not going to finish just yet, but again, still keeping this uh, stage pressure up all on his side. Yep, and just like we saw with Pit, you know, that fourth throw is definitely a big threat as well with this character. Going to have to keep your eyes open. Coming in, holding the corner right here. Let's see how Zach escapes. He's going to have to re-grab the edge. Where's the punish? Oh, nice. Doesn't even go for it. However... Doesn't go for the uh, the ledge grab. However, coming Mate was super ready for both of those attacks right there. Power shield of both the afterburner kick and the back air after that gets the first stop. Good stuff to Kamehameha right here. Okay, 
next up. And he sneaks right behind. Good DI. Out yeah, of that, was, that was a nice little cross up. Yeah, it definitely that, was. It was clean. That back air definitely hit on the front of his shield. Like, <laughs> my man over here playing a little Street Fighter right now. Nice patience right here. A good wait right there. We saw he wasn't going to be able to get the uh, afterburn kick right after that, so. Oh, smart. Kept the Zach right there just basically catching him right out of the skies with those guns. Gonna have to be careful. And if Kamame decides to like Ooh. crouch, he could just hold down tilt and get the bullets. Alright, so Kamame, I mean, definitely playing a more patient uh, game right here, but still, that patience is netting him a little bit of a lead right here. Mm. Only picking and choosing the right spots to get these attacks. Dash attack right here. Fourth throw. Right now, Zach trying to come back on stage again. Forward throw. I feel like that absolute Zach. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Woo. Thought he was going to get that actual neutral air to hit, but. Had to let it go a little early so he can get that recovery back. The fourth throw, still not going to take that stock yet. That was actually a really good setup right there by Zach, though. Didn't manage to get the stock. Zach actually got pretty lucky he was still over the stage. That could have been a stage spike to end the game. Just like that might be a stage. That is definitely going to be a stage spike to end that man's stock. Good stuff to Zach right there, dropping out that neutral air. Long-lasting hitbox if you hold oh, the button. Very good DI right there by Kamehameha. When I saw that heel slide connect, I thought it would have been something big right there for Kamehameha. Ooh, up throw, okay. Very, uh, rarely seen throw right oh. there, but... Oh! oh! Okay, just barely getting out of there. Thought that was gonna be it. Okay. Good wait right there. And I've always wondered why, like, you know, the bayonetas will ever do that. You know, you know, someone's usually like mashing uh, air dodge to try to get out of that situation. So if you wait, you know, you just get another confirm right there. Zach almost taking the game off that. Yep. Look like Kamehameha is scheming right now for a grab. And if Zach leaves himself open, you might see that down tilt. But wait, fourth throw. He's done. All right. Okay. Taking Kamehameha. the third game. Yeah, putting himself on the board right here. Two one. At the switch of two characters, Dark Pit might be the answer. Let's see what happens here in this game four. Very, very, very crazy picks right here. You know, yeah. Dark Pit, I didn't quite know if it was going to be able to uh, help him out, but it, def it paid, paid yeah. off. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we were thinking that that could have been the desperation pick, but that ended up being the pick that uh, ends up netting him a game right here. So, Let's see if we can net him too as we get into this fourth game on Zach's counter pick. Zach most likely going to stay with the Bayonetta. But again, you know, he does have some extra characters too. It was crazy that the one setup that you saw Captain Zack try to go for would have worked out, right? We saw the witch twist. He jumped and tried to see if he could connect that second one. Managed to get it, but no KO after the up air. Here we go. Game four, guys. We're on Battlefield. And Zack already taken this pit to the skies. There's no stranger to flying, though. I mean, shout out to, shout out to 2GZ, man. Rashido. <laughs> it's Take not even the end of the stream, man. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Right, kind of fighting his way back over here, chase him down. But we're gonna see uh, Kamen may actually roll in right there, get away from that situation. Ooh, I just realized uh, Zach switched it up, got a haircut real quick. Yeah, had a, Look at we that. Got, a, got a new game coming out. I would actually really like to see Bayonetta on the Switch, uh, Nintendo. Anyway, you know, it's crazy. I never played the second one. Uh, one wow, day, that's crazy. Anyway, <laughs> I played the first one. All right, these up tilts right here doing a lot of shield damage, but Woo! Zach, hey, again, that aggression starting to pay off for him this time. Yeah, seeing into the future right there. A, a bit more aggressive too, I, I feel like, at this game. The second one, he was doing a lot of hopping around. I always get surprised when Bayonetta's get away with like a roll. Because she has like a really, like, as far as the frame rate goes, her roll's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. you see he that. managed to get away with that. Uh, now he's still living. Oh! Okay. Forward smash to the back of the head. Managing to take that stock. Yeah, getting Jeez. a little, uh, little antsy right there with that side B. A lot of... Uh, a lot of cooldown on that, so a lot, literally allowed Zach to just land and then F smash right there. That's how much cooldown was on that. So Zach gonna be able to take that first stock oh. in this fourth game. And um, I think, okay, great DI, but Ooh. Zach, oh my God, Zach said I don't care about your DI. Okay, and still, I like how I think he really knew where he was right there in that switch too. He did the down air, yeah, and then immediately stopped right near the ledge. Oh, good setup right there. Went for a fair one two. Tried to get the grab afterwards. Nice response right there, coming me. Still trying to stay alive here in this game. Hey, it's Zach. Mm -hmm. Straight up off stage acrobatics right here. Even though it looks like he's about to lose that, uh, that stock to himself, you know, ends up still saving that. Oh! Okay! Six setup. Caught that air dodge down. I mean, usually you see that into an F smash, but this time maybe he thought uh, he would just light enough uh, to finish him off the top, or he just wanted that extra damage. There it is right now, Zach. Great lead here. I'm trying to see if he can just intercept this recovery, but. I'm gonna get back up there. I mean, that that in that situation, I thought he was actually gonna just drop off a neutral air. You know, uh, Dark Pit does not have a hitbox on his up B, so him recovering like that should have been an easy uh, stage spike situation at the very least. But Zach's still moving around. 
Look at that. that ledge real quick. Yep. Applying all of that pressure. Wow. wow. He, wow. Said, he, he stay made away that, he made from that the edge. Edge. He made that yeah, safe. He made that safe. He's like, you know, I'm going to keep hitting you until you're too far back. He's like, stay away, dog. I'm going to just stay here all day. What's up? Hitboxes. What? <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> He's dancing on him right He's here. He's actually dancing on the shield right now. Oh, oh what a good tech. tech. Okay. Zach. Wow. Still living on this stock right here, still. Got the ledge acrobatics on deck. Look at this, man. Catches him, sending him out. Okay, we'll be able to cover right there. here. See what Zach did. Oh, oh not that, is that angle. It. Yes. 3 not 1 victory. Angle. Great job right there by Captain Zach. Especially right there in the fourth game, man. All those tricks that he had at the edge. Amazing, amazing play. Always a crowd pleaser with the did win. We, did we get the dance? We got the dance. Oh, we? you missed it? Oh, okay, I'm, I, I looked down it, real man. quick. Ah, man. Keep your eyes open, man. Stay woke. That's it. They be creeping. 2017. 2017 and 2GG again, man. We are here. 2GG C Civil War, where we just saw Zach style all over that ledge. <laughs> and all over Kamehameha on that last match. You know, Kamehameha actually had to switch two times to get the character that was going to take one. Got the Dark Pit out there. It just wasn't enough. Just wasn't, I mean, I still like to see it, though. You know, we got some nice uh, pit representation coming in from uh, Japan twice now. You know, we got Dark Pit uh, from him, and then we had Earth actually go with the 3-0. Uh, a game before with the regular pit. So, you know, I, the beauty of this game, right, is the fact that we get to see so many people play with characters all over, you know, from different parts of the tier list, right? Yeah. Mid, high, sometimes even low, and excelling with them, and make, make it keeps things fresh, really exciting. But you know, unfortunately, right there, coming man, even though he is able to use a lot of characters, Captain Zach was able to eke out that win. It was crazy too. Like that game two, that game two definitely looked like. Was it a game two with the Sheik? We were like, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah, game I feel, two. Yeah, I kind definitely of feel looked like, like he was about to uh, make mm -hmm. it happen. Like, he was, again, one, it was like zero to like 120. And uh, then Zach was like, all right, wait, hold on. All I need is one hit. Mm -hmm. Got that one hit, got a stock, did it again, got another stock. I'm, I'm wondering, like, if he should have just, like, possibly stayed with the Sheik. Because the Sheik was not doing too bad. Like, oh, no. if you get hit by Bayna, that, that's just what happens, right? Yeah. You die. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you Bayna might be out. Bayonetta that, too. You know, there, um, I was talking to Pink Fresh earlier, and he said that, so the uh, Bayonetta with Rage, actually, like, the combos are, like, way easier now. You know, like, mm. that level of SDIing and, uh, and DIing up and out of those uh, combos yeah. gets increasingly harder just because of the increased knockback. So she's always able to catch you. But, yeah, we're about to check out some replays right now from the last match. Oh, my gosh. Right, right. there. That was that first yeah, stock right there in that first game when he was like, yo, let me go ahead and get this stock and record time and up B to a down air. Clean stuff. And then, again, that drop zone back here. While catching the uh, saw blade. Well, one thing I like about the way Captain Zack uses that down there too is that if people try to air dodge out of combos, mm -hmm. you could just follow them and get that sick knockback right there. But here's the witch twist manages to get that air ABK and right off the top. That was the moment that we were talking about where I really thought, you know, the Sheik was the Sheik was doing well. He just managed managed to get hit. Yeah. But again, you know, still managed to bring it back here in this <coughs> one game and that uh, neutral layer finally managed to do it. And, and of course, Zach. Been practicing these moves all day, every day. Schmooze. Still got him down. Get him. Get him. You know what's crazy? When you saw the Dark Pit get stage spike, mm -hmm. he actually used his jump. You saw him jump, yeah. right? But then afterwards, he just exploded. Well, I mean, like, I, I, Dark Pit, uh, it might have been his last jump. You know, his mm -hmm. jumps actually get uh, decreasing height yeah. uh, throughout him. He was probably, like, that close to the last zone at the time that just a little bit of distance going down, and he was gone. Done. I'm surprised he didn't immediately do that into an up B, though, you know. Just yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Would have been interesting to see right here. But up next, uh, it looks like from what I can see, we actually have, okay, 9B, or QB, uh, on, the, on the stage, uh, going up against Elevate's Mr. R. Whew. I think it's going to be a really fun one to watch. Yeah. Another instance of Sheik versus Bayonetta. We're yeah. probably going to see both of these guys stick with these characters during the entire set, so get ready. Interesting enough, uh, actually, QB actually had a very close set with a, uh, another low tier. Yeah. I mean, himself, John Numbers, you know. Uh, John Numbers almost on putting that man in losers. Woo. I actually got a game right there, but then QB just remember, uh, apparently remember how to play. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then went ham, so... <laughs> Let's see what he can do right here in this top 96 to get elevates on Mr. R. Mr. R is known to actually, uh, was known to play a little bit of Bayonetta himself, so it's not like he's uh, any slouch in this matchup or not knowing what his character's options are. But QB, you know, he's been, uh, he's been a DLC uh, monster for a bit. You know, he had a Ryu for a bit as well. And now True. he's out to the Bayonetta. And his Bayonetta actually did really well at Wednesday Night Fights. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, that a bat within. Get him out that situation. Ooh, okay. So we're gonna trade, but we're still going in there. Yeah, man, QB. So it's really, really good with these conversions as well, man. I'm like, oh, when I watched him play last Wednesday, I was just really amazed. Man. You know, it's crazy because, like, this cat, he does so many things in the community and is still able to keep up with all these players. Like, yeah. you can't, he can't use the fact that, you know, he's so, he's such a busy man. Um, you know, I guess he can't use it uh, as an excuse, basically. Yeah. Sorry, something just almost fell on, fell on me. You about to die, man. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But back to the match. All right. And now, slowly but surely, you know, Mr. R is trying to get himself right back into this match. But as we say, you know, 144 already. It's going to be like one up air to uh, up B. Or up B to up air. And that's all he really needs to do to get the stock off. Mr. R, kind of fire back. 150 right here. You know, honestly, if he gets, uh, he can get a neutral air up smash. Maybe a, even a neutral air bouncing fish if, he, if he's close enough to the ledge. Patience right here again by Kiwi. Waiting to strike, and I love his setups, man. How he likes to basically mix up how he's gonna land next to his opponent. Good stuff right there, getting that neutral air trade in his favor. But yeah, back, going back to some of his like tricks, I see him go for a fair one, two, three, and then pull back, making it look like he was gonna cross up Mr. R, but then landing in front of him. Okay, Mr. R, nice little uh, reverse neutral air to back here right there. Did you do the back throw? Probably looking for that DI mix up, get immediate bounce and fish had he uh, not been DI in the right way. And I was really good avoidance right there by QB, recognizing that the threat of the needle bouncing fish was there. But good stuff, Mr. R with the setup off the up throw. Getting I haven't seen that in a minute, yo. Mr. R, you know, pulling out the old old school playbook right there. I mean, back then, that joint used to just be like down throw, but, you know, yeah. the nerf. So now, you got everybody else just mixing it up. But, oh, right there, QB showing that if those combos aren't true, he's going to be able to break out with that witch twist. Man. And oh. the bat with him. <laughs> oh, oh, what? the footstool from deep. Oh, <laughs> that's face. Just, yeah. Oh, all right, man. That was yeah. a. All right, man. You got it. Yeah, I actually felt super bad for him right there. I honestly thought he was about to get that footstool from the weight because uh, it looked like not, QB was actually under him mm -hmm. at first. And the next thing you know, he footstool him right back to that ledge. And uh, Mr. R was out. QB, man. Shout out to that fresh style, too, man. Definitely. You know, Japan always come through with the freshest style. Ever since the brawl days, man. Yup. Shout out to Rain. He was the first Ooh. fresh one, man. Original fresh. <laughs> <laughs> man, I love that Falco, man. Good old days. Here, here it is, though. Mr. R. Back at it again. No Mr. switch. Mr. actually going to get him to... Uh, we're, we're in here first game, are we? Uh, again? We're going to smash first game, right? Smashville. Might have been, yeah, so we got a quick switch over here. Smaller blast zones here in the town city. See if that really pays off for him. I mean, that should be able to help him at least get some early, earlier bouncing fish kills if he gets them off stage like that. But again, you've seen all the bouncing fish he's done against QB so far. It's kind of all been uh, bat within um, and, and the situations where they would kill. Here we go. Long combo, getting some big damage. Trying to. Oh, still extending it. Get a little Jeez. more off that one. That would have been nice. Oh, but getting trapped on that platform. Wow. QB said, I'm not even going to try to get caught. I'm out. That witch twist, man. It's almost like uh, get out of jail free. Not exactly, but it almost seems like one. You know, he's able to uh, witch twist, and then you can just, like, dive kick in another direction just to kind of make your landing safe. I definitely can't be that get out of jail free car. Okay, that needle kind of bounced him just a little farther back. Still going to be able to make it back, you know. Bayonetta was such a good recovery. Back on the ledge, but no punish off of that one. I think he, uh, he might have thought that uh, dash check was actually going to scoop it. Or maybe even a perfect pivot down tilt. Oh, okay. Yeah. QB man at the edge. Very good punish right there by Mr. R though. You're noticing that, you know, there's a lot of cooldown after those guns. So he was like, nah, I'm gonna get this quick hit real quick. What a uh, quick hit real quick. What a back <laughs> hit. I was like, I don't know if he's gonna be there. I'm gonna just stay quiet. <laughs> quick back air right there coming in from uh, QB right there. And still keeping this pressure up. Mr. R though, gonna fire back just one misstep from QB. Almost losing that stock, but. Still living just barely. Nice DI. And escape it right there, too. Wait, but almost to the top. Still sending this man up. Look at him keeping that pressure up. Gonna get that back air just to push him away. But you can see him using these after burning kicks now to position himself better to ch chase Mr. R. Mr. R with another, another back air to take that stock. Good stuff to him. Here comes Mr. R. Try not to get hit by any of these stray attacks. 
you know, looking at the neutral game, I definitely feel, feel more confident in uh, Sheik, but the way that QB is playing, it's almost like he's untouchable at a couple times, too. Yeah. Mr. R doing a really good job of punching these aerials, though. I mean, Bandana definitely has some decently hard aerials to punish at that. And he seems to be doing a stand-up job at it right now. Okay. Patient stuff again for Mr. R? Man, Mr. R going to step back right here, not trying to have any parts of that. <gasps> However, these traps right yes. here, man. Nice. And just waited out that get up attack. Okay. You can see QB actually playing with a lot of confidence right now mm -hmm. in the way he's using these traps. You know, those situations when you just jump up into someone's face and don't hit any buttons until they do something, that's that's all confidence. Because you don't expect them to actually do anything. Here's a question I have for you, man. You saw how QB just like whiffed the forward smash and went for the witch twist afterwards. Yeah. That kind of made me feel like it was a bait. Do you feel? I feel like it was a little bit of a bait. Yeah. I was like, so it's like calculator risk bait. Like he was like, all right, man, you can either run into this fourth smash or you're gonna try to punch him right after. And I might be able to wish time. I'm with it. Uh oh. Ooh. Like the quick end of that neutral layer so he can get that up B. So trying to carry him off. Mr. R, roll him back in. Got the good stage control right here. He be showing no fear jumping right back towards center stage like that. That was a little scary. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh oh. Didn't like the dab kick right there. Oh, he got hooked up. Just <laughs> barely. Setup right there. And Mr. R definitely doing a good job of actually challenging these dab kicks, too. I mean, uh, uh oh. Oh, I thought he was going to try to go from up, up air after the first one, actually. But, okay, trying to hit him with the tomahawk. Not going to get it uh, get it in that situation. Yep, Mr. R is going to have to watch out if he gets, if he keeps staying grounded and shields. He's going to leave himself open to a KO right there from QB. Oh, there it is. The throw and slapping her yeah. up. I mean, Jesus. Doesn't manage to get the KO as he was in the center. Oof. Very scary though. Okay, right. could yeah. be right back there in the fray. This is a very close game, and there's the wait. Good stuff wow. to Mr. R waiting for the air dodge and pulls that one out. Gets back into this set right here. One one between Mr. R and QB right now. Pretty cool too to see the people, you know, showing some love to Mr. R right there, getting the second game. You don't think he gets <laughs> enough love, man? Yeah, well, I think I feel like he never thought he got that much love. You know what I'm saying? No, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, no. He's definitely, uh, he, doesn't got, he doesn't have the international buff like most of the others, you know. Mm. International buff is when uh, <laughs> you come from, uh, you know, you come over to America from international territories and everyone loves you. Mr. R, I think maybe he's just been here so long that they just treat him like he's part of America, yeah. so they don't want to, <laughs> 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 they don't want to root for him no more. <laughs> but right here, you know, definitely get some loves for taking that game. Let's see what he can do here in this game three. Out to Dreamland right here. That uh, should be pretty interesting. Still uh, decently, well, I'll say smaller blasts, but because the, uh, Platform's a little higher. You die off the top a little easier if you didn't get caught on them. There you go. Okay. So it looks like here in this matchup, you know, Mr. R definitely not going to be trying to use needles from afar that much. Yeah. Just to stay up close and personal. Try to limit this character's movement. Knowing that, you know, Bayonetta does have like a myriad of options to use in the neutral. We try to basically get an opening, oh. put that up, smash, oh and my the KO! Oh, so nice. And I was looking for that for uh, quite a few uh, moments in this set. And, you know, you've seen a lot of uh, Sheik's actually go for that situation. I mean, neutral layer to up smash. Just kind of throwing out the up smash if they think someone's going to try to land on top of it. And he oh. did it right there, but there's the witch time. What's he going to do with it? Let's see what QB has, but impressive DI right there by Mr. R. Just getting right out of there. I think that was just one too many uh, up tilts right there. You know, he went for a third one. and was missing that. Kind of messed up his time on time. And maybe, uh, Woo. maybe double up tilt to up air would have been a better option. However... Uh -oh. Got good options coming out from Mr. R. Yeah, man, it's definitely a different game in comparison to the ones we saw before, especially the first one, right? Here we, here we go. Game Kiwi's definitely going to have to watch the way he's landing on these uh, platforms again, you know, not to allow what happened in, uh, to him on the first stop because he went for another afterburner kick that literally landed on that platform. And if uh, Mr. R was looking, that could have been the end of this game about a good 20 seconds ago. Oh, th that soft neutral light definitely could have led into something else. Yeah, quick bounce of fish, possibly. Smart, Mr. R, pushing, just getting as much damage as possible right now from afar. Yeah, Demon definitely reminiscent to uh, pre patch sheep right there, <gasps> the way he's using those needles. That, that. Up air. Wow. Wow. Okay. Mr. R, game three, 2 1 right here. I mean, Mr. R is definitely up. firing back. He elevated. <laughs> <laughs> he elevated for real. That was nice. <laughs> I respect it. All right, so we're over here, figuring out what we're going to get the band coming up next. I don't, I don't, I don't know if. Uh, uh, I don't think uh, that platform layout really helped out uh, 9B. I think he might want to take it away from the triple plat layout. But knowing that a lot of sheets, how much they like Final Destination too. Yeah. Well, I mean, 
He took it back to Town of City. That's the yeah. best bet right here. That I was thinking. I didn't think he should have taken it to Final Destination by any means. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, just maybe not to Battlefield or something like that. But we're going, going right back to Town of City. Um, which is pretty interesting because I think he actually lost his first game here. So, you know, maybe he feels this one a little better than uh, the Dreamland. Yeah, looking and, at uh, this game, you could just see how familiar Mr. R is with this character, right? Like, he has a Bayonetta, like we mentioned before. Yeah. So. It's definitely uh, showing, you know, showing that he Woo! still has this matchup on lock right now. Clean combos right here, too, by Mr. R. Yeah. Clean up tilt right there to kind of extend that one. Still, keeping up this pressure right here. Clean 80. Gets the ledge trump and some needles to boot. Oh, wow. This guy is definitely looking like he's in rare form now. This is like the mid-star that we knew way back, you know. What you trying to say, man? He fell off? I'm not trying to say he fell off. That's crazy. What you trying to say, man? Now, what are you trying to say? <laughs> <are you> trying <laughs> to say? <laughs> I'm good. Here we go. I just feel like people were sleeping on him, you know? I mean, people were definitely sleeping on him for a little bit, but he's definitely uh, trying to make a name for himself right here at Civil War yet again. Time 96 and it's three out of five. He's already up two. Takes this game right here. This could be it. I really thought he was going to go for the bounce of fish, but honestly, he was, she, uh, QB was so far away, there's no way he's going to reach that. Yeah, I don't think he wants to take any risks off stage running into any of those hitboxes from Bayonetta as she tries to recover. But good up there, Mr. R. Up. I feel like uh, right now, uh, QB's like, conversions off his up Bs are actually getting him punished more than helping him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's missing a lot of these uh, afterburning kicks after the up B is hitting, and maybe that's just the mix up of Mr. Uh, or his DI that's throwing him off. But every time he goes too high, he ends up getting up there for it. Uh-oh. Okay. But he up here, you know, up there for your troubles too right there. Let's go. Manages to, to keep right back in here. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Trying to chase him down. This is Mr. R. He, keeps, he manages to interrupt QB actually pretty well with these neutral layers, it seems. This frame data right here from Sheik paying out. There we go. Wow, okay. Clean right actually sneaks in that back air as he uh, crossed him up. But. And, I, and I definitely like the idea of having this as a stage for him as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. The, oh, okay. I thought he landed on a platform. I was like, that's going to be game. It's over. But managed to get that jump out just in time. But no, I mean, it just gives him uh, another space for him to land. You know, I understand why he wants a triple plat so he can land, uh, you know, better and not have to worry about getting punished after using upbeat and side beats. But this place still gives him that option too at times when the platforms are around. And if you notice right there, that conversion that he got. Off of the neutral air. Yeah. Yeah, it just looks like straight up neutral air has been the best answer for him in this matchup. And it, whenever he sees the dive kicks, if ever uh, QB is too close to him, he'll try his best to avoid. But good DI. See, the DI is working out really well for him. And the fact that he's been able to just keep cutting off QB anytime yeah. he's trying to get some started like that. Uh, DI is definitely cursed right now. Uh huh. This is going to be R, it. That's definitely going to be it. What a great job. Mr. R, 3 1 victory over QB. Clean turnaround right there. You know, that first game, I mean, it wasn't even like too far to his. Uh, his reach or anything in the first game, but he definitely took these next three games uh, with a little ferocity. You know, just hey, this is me. I need to. I need to move on in the winners bracket right now. And of course, you got your man boy in the back as well. And guys, okay, it looks like Zero might have the possibility of being knocked out of losers. He is down two, two one. one. Who? Who? Oh my gosh. Make sure to check out the secondary stream, twitch.tv slash ESA Smash. Who is this opponent? Um, who, does anyone know his opponent? Possibly? Maybe? Luti. Okay. Lutai. Oh, actually, you know, he actually had a couple upsets earlier today, if I recall from the, uh, the PG stats. If you haven't been checking them out, uh, make sure you go ahead and <laughs> hit them up. Lutai beat Raffi X, you know, the inventor of the Raffi Nair. And who does so. Lutai play? I have no idea. <laughs> From Arizona, and he plays ZSS. Okay, Look so ZSS that. coming through in a major way. We got Ally in the back. <laughs> Yo, my man the, Ally. Yeah. Ally got the stream up <laughs> right Shut now. Up He's Ally, definitely man. making sure Team Zero's going down. <laughs> Let's go, Ally. But again, we're getting this live reaction to see what happened. I mean, this is a very intense moment. You see, Look at the crowd right here. You can see so many people. Uh, crowd around just trying to see if Zero's going to go down. Except for the chick right here on her phone that obviously does not care about what's popping right now. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably checking out the chat. Oh, I'll check out the chat too. Let's check, check out the, out the chat. Yeah, let's go ahead and get, so. in, let's get in here real quick. See what's going on. Oh my. But first, yeah. So apparently uh, also from PG Sass, the first match confirmed for tomorrow's winner's top 32 bracket is Earth versus Captain Zack. So both those guys making it. Good stuff.
was crazy, man. Secondary stream. Oh, okay. So we're actually a little behind, but we still have the gameplay uh, that we can see right now. And uh, from what I just saw, Zero managed to take a game. So now we're in a 2-2 situation. 2-2 situation. All right. To game five. Okay. Whew. That's crazy, man. Dropping to Exax. Oh, I know this guy from Arizona. Okay, I couldn't see him from the side there. Oh, Lutai? Yeah, 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 that's the homie, dude. I mean, if you don't know him now, if you didn't know him before, you're definitely going to know him now. Zero's having some a lot of close calls right here, though, uh, uh, in this tournament. Just you know, He's already in losers right here, so it's it's just so much more pressure on him, and hopefully he's not cracking under it because, you know, we want to see that, that photo finish uh, Zero versus Ally somewhere in this bracket at some point in time for Civil War. Also from PG Stats, uh, only two Diddy players are on Civil War winner's side going to Top 96, and that was Lycan and MVD. And Neotono, apparently, if someone said. But Neotono switched mains to Sheik. So, you know, can't count him now at all time. I like, <laughs> is, this, is this the live feed? <laughs> 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 all right. Here it is, guys. <laughs> we, <laughs> that's dope. Got the live feed out here for y'all as well. So yeah. now you don't have to. I mean, if you were in the other stream and you somehow still hear this one, you can definitely stay there. But if you're here now, hey, what's up? <laughs> Look at this, man. And the funny thing is that this guy, Zero, he has a lot of... Oh, wait a second. He has a lot of experience already playing against Nairo, right? Right. So I'm like... Nairo, Mars, like Zero, you know. Zero suit Samus? Uh oh All right, there's that risky grab that we always see. Are we supposed to commentate this, man? I don't... Uh, I think... <laughs> I think <laughs> I'll just point out some stuff. Wait, like, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> just point out a couple things as they have. <laughs> if you want to hear the commentators, you can check out twitch.tv slash ESA smash. Show some love over there. But I mean, this is kind of ridiculous, though, to be honest. Zero. Oh, okay. The classic, the classic, the classic. <laughs> the banana toss down tilt up smash. But the fact that low time, my man is still here, though. So I guess we're ah. kind of sort of commentating. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as I said, I'm just going to point some things out as, as they go on. Like, okay. I understand but why Zero could possibly be losing this match, basically. Pretty close. I mean, at this point in time, he's definitely oh. rage up B percentage. Yup. And Lotai looked like he was trying to get that set up right there, but I think we have. Uh, this is this is his counter pick too. So you know, all those all the odds stacked against zero right now. Oh, oh, he tried for it. Still got the. I like the fact that we have the uh, crowd on the side too. Oh yeah. So you can see everything. Live reaction if he wins. Live reaction if zero pops off. Oh zero, that was smart though. The way he just walked up, he's like, I. Right. Just waiting for like a. Uh, I think wow. he wanted to see if there'd be like an up B, you know, boost kick out of shield. Oh, that up tilt though. Still chilling. <sighs> Probably might be one of the scariest moments for him too, knowing that this is like, the event that he wanted to win. Sometimes I feel like when Zero goes for that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he does the banana. Yeah. Uh, or the flip kick banana or B reverse. Mm. I feel like sometimes he probably should just like not do that. Because I, I, sometimes it almost feels like it puts him in a bad position, you know, when he's like uh, B reverses back Ooh. in. There's the fourth though, sending him out. So one on one though, you know, not. Anything to scoff at? Looking for that grab. Unfortunately, no. ZSS, you know. Are we getting to... I think oh, we, we actually, got a match. I think we actually right. have another match. So we're right. going to so switch gonna keep back. <laughs> or maybe it's a hand warmer? Yeah, yeah. Hand yeah all right. We got a hand warmer. Hand warmer. All right, sick. All right. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> Is that it? Boost kick. No, not Made enough. Up. Oh, oh. Low tie. What the? My man came through with the Castlevania real quick. I can't... You know it's crazy, man. Like this is a homie. When I used to live in the Sky House, they used to just come through with SS. Mm -hmm. Like I, I swear I've seen him play zero before in the past, and he's never done this good. This is a new low tie, dude. Oh, I thought you were saying SS like, has never done this good. No, 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 no. Like the, the, in the friendlies that I've seen him like way back, but a lot uh, of these I think zero catching on the juice, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, game five zero. That's a whole different beast. Oh, and I think yeah, yeah. I feel like. Wait, 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 wait. I, I didn't I'm going to fix my face. I didn't look. Grab. Did he hit him with a down tilt down smash yet? Because that's no. actually the set the set determiner. No, no. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. <laughs> Whew. But I agree. I'm there with you. <laughs> okay. Oh, Zero's trying to edit quick, man. But if he gets grabbed, dog. <laughs> if he gets grabbed. <laughs> <laughs> oh! 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 my God! Zero is gone! Zero eliminated! Oh my god!
Wow! Wow! Arizona up on their feet. Lotai can't even believe it. Those up airs, man. You said, oh. you said if he gets grabbed, he was like, he didn't even need to get he grabbed. Didn't need grab. All right, TK, get your mic, dog. Take your mic. Take All right, man, mic. I'm back. Take your oh mic. Take your mic. Guys, I can't, I can't. I can't. I can't. Believe it. Uh, bro, Twitter's got to be blowing up right now. Yeah, Twitter. <laughs> this is literally the lowest place in Zero's ever had in any tournament ever. <laughs> like, actually what ever. What is this? I mean, I, this, had, this has this to be, a, like, 33rd, the, like, the best. <laughs> oh, my. Oh. At 49th. Okay, PG Stats comes through. Zero is out at 49th. His lowest placing ever. At I least in Smash 4. I actually have a headache right now. Oh, wow. All right, man. Let's. Yeah, right. So if you guys want to talk about that upset, go definitely go check out the other stream. Uh, but we are going to get right into it. As you can see, we have foes sitting up, ready to play Neotono. I and everyone's coming back out too. So let's go ahead and get this uh, good shot of this uh, crowd. <laughs> Come on, gotta get my Snapchat popping. This is just after Zero lost. Everyone's coming back. Uh, someone please find Zero. Damn. All right. Well, here we go. Okay. So getting right into it, man. <laughs> if the, if your hype was gone for a little bit, we are right back, man. We have uh, Team Zero's leader. Zero out of the tournament now. Now let's see what the rest of his team can do right here. Uh, you know, Foe actually being on his team, is he going to be able to take out another member of Team Ally or put him in the losers? Or uh, is this going to be like just spelling imminent doom for Team Zero? Is there going to be Discord in Team Zero? Discord. TK, I'm, I'm in pain. But I'm back. Let, let's just, just got to roll with the punches, man. D did you see? Man, Lutai's pop off was just so like he was like I don't even know what happened. But I love about him. All right, he got, oh, man, right, destroying Fo. stocks right now. All right, Fo with got the PKT us too. Oh my god, I'm sorry, Fo. Man, I wasn't looking, but now you got my me bad. back, man. My bad. My we bad. back. <laughs> but here it is, Fo. No stranger to connecting those uh, the PK Thunder two on his opponents. Uh, I've seen some of his setups whenever people are trying to land. Definitely a crowd pleaser too, man. Whenever I see this guy play. Be ready, man. His pop-offs are great. Yeah. It, like, that Ness play is just ridiculous, too. And one of these days, man, I just hope to see him stream. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. I miss yeah, man. Streams, come on. Man. Bring it back, Th folks. Those are deadly, man. Come uh, on. You, were, you were the original Smash. And his, man. <laughs> his emotes are so good. But, yeah. Way. Also, more respect to Neotono as well. You know, an amazing player. And wait oh, a minute. Okay. He was close. But Neotono managed to step up in time still. Folk Whoa. Uh, what? All right. <laughs> a little bit too far from the ledge right there. That was a situation. blooper moment right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> right? Next time. Next time. Next time. That was almost about to be like a next game situation right there. But either way, Ooh. still back in it. We still got a little bit of lead right here. Look for that grab. Notoriously, Fo actually used to have a problem. Uh, well, I won't say with all Sheiks, but you know, I remember back in the days when Zero was playing Sheik, and he was making fun of He had no idea what to do in this matchup. Yep. It seems he had much. So, uh, got himself back into this game right here. Trying to recover it. Nice. Again. Just making sure he grabs that ledge and also put a little hitbox in front of him. Not allowing uh, Neotono to do anything as he gets next to him. I know. Neotono. All right. Well, I was going to say, Neotono actually playing very smart near those ledge. But then he runs straight in there and drops shield for the... Oh! Wow! That back air is extra strong. That, that, it's just ridiculous. Uh, the way Neotono was playing, right? He started to catch on to the fact that Fo likes to approach a lot with these neutral layers. And so he started, like, pulling back and counterattacking them. But at some point, he just saw Fo came through with the trade. He was like, all right, if you're willing to keep trying to go air to air with me, I'm going to just take this gamble here with this back air. And it paid out. Yeah. So there Definitely paid off for him right there. Yeah. I mean, I... I <laughs> TK Breezy still recovering? I'm, I'm still, still recovering. recovering. I'm sorry, man. What the heck? <laughs> Whew. Why Austin tweet take down the posters? Don't do that, Austin. <laughs> Come on, Austin. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> anyway, so Neotono, you know, gonna try to get himself back into this game, you know, thinking pretty hard about what he has to do to get past this uh, this nest right here. Obviously, one of the top two nests in the world between him and I think, uh, what, Shaky at this point in time. Him and Shaky definitely be home. I'm in shambles, TK. I'm sorry. I'm still out here. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yo, can, can we get a, a commercial break after this? I need to refresh. All right. But anyway, game two. Game two right here. As we said, we have uh, oh, we have uh, Fo with the uh, game one right there win. 
And I, but as I was saying earlier, you know, we definitely saw him sitting, sitting near the ledge. And I thought Nia Tunnel was actually going to run over there and just get grab back throw. You know, you got to watch out for situations like that. Ooh. Oh, my. Oh, oh my that God. That was so nice. Oh, <laughs> and that was, like, so risky, too. I thought he was going to uh, end up, like, getting his PK Thunder stolen right there. No! Oh, oh okay. God. It was smart, though. You saw what he was doing? Yeah. He, so, when Nintendo tried to air dodge past him to uh, take his PK Thunder, but he actually zoomed it a little farther out so that he could still hit himself and then try to hit him with the, uh, you know, the, the wall bounce, but he didn't get enough bounce off of it. Unfortunate. Back and forth right here with these first two stocks. Yeah, uh, I think what happened, the PK Thunder just straight up, like, got caught in the wall. Yeah. Yeah, he was gone. Yeah. Uh oh. Here we go again, though. Carrying him off the platform. Oh, nice. the clean head. Yeah, I had to get that extra, extra damage right there. right there, man. Jeez. <laughs> but, uh, I'm telling you, man. That's is, that is ridiculous. I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the best moves up there in the game, free. Okay. Land it down. Still trying to get this air dodge through, but he's not having any of that. Quick step back forward here. That air dodge, man. A really hard air dodge to punish. I mean, it's not even like uh, the level of invincibility on it. It's because it stays off the Z-axis for so long. But even so, you'll still miss a couple moves uh, even when it's done. Oh, my God. I saw it. Yeah. Smart. Whoa. Wait. That might be a stock. Yep. Good stuff right there. Really good step between Nintendo and Foe so far. Yeah, I thought I thought he was going to um, – I thought he did that on purpose, honestly. That hit his PK Thunder into the ground, so instead of him getting chased down by uh, Neotono, Neotono was probably going to try to run past him, but his reaction time was so good to see that Ness didn't go anywhere that he ran and immediately stopped, shielded, waited for Foe to get up, finish that game. Smart. Smart stuff. Are you going to see, honestly, all you're going to see in top 96 is smart stuff. <laughs> you know? Smart stuff and a lot of uh, risky gambles that might pay out really well, too. Um, here we go. Game three. Foe. It looks like the going back to Final Destination. Okay, I was about to say, you know, going back to FD helped out Neotono, but Fo looks like he likes FD as well. So. Yeah. Okay. Tom Tomahawk jabs, though? That's what I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> we inventing the game right here. Look at this movement right here from Neotono, yeah. though. Looks like Fo trying to see if he can just lead in with a dash attack, but... Look at the spacing right here from Neotono. He's not getting grabbed at all. Yeah, beautiful spacing right there on that forward air. Still caught him. Caught full reaching with that uh, grab. Ends up getting his own right there. Oh, a oh. little bit of a mistake, but doesn't get punished for it. Yeah, he kind of was like right back in a neutral afterwards. <laughs> Good spacing right there by Fo. Looks like trying to go air to air, which she might be the order of the day. But these fares, definitely difficult to deal with. Yeah. Okay, oh, to walk up on her. That was close, but still gets the uh, jabs right there. Okay. So, you know, getting elusive enough to avoid that follow-up of the uh, Bouncy Fish. Uh-huh. Going to chase him down as well with the PK Thunder. There comes Fo trying to get back on stage again. I have yet to see him get a back throw, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's not been in his repertoire so far because Nintendo, the way he's been playing around these grabs, yeah. uh, he's not so. allowing, you know, Fo to even get that situation. He hasn't played risky near the ledge. At any situation, the only time he actually even goes off stage like that is when he knows he's going to get that confirmed. Got the needles straight into that bounce fish, taking that stock right there. The internal looked like he woke up. Bo oh, trying to see if he can just guard against the ledge jumps from the edge. That's why you see him going for the jump. Nice. That's the setup. Beautiful stuff with that PK Thunder 2 connecting right there. Yeah, he knew he cut off uh, enough of his options that that was going to be... Uh, the next move that was going to be able to allow him to take that stock. That was very smart on him. I think the only thing he might have been able to do was, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I saw it, but he might have been able to bounce the fish away. Maybe, no. like, riskily up B just to avoid it, but who's really thinking about that in that situation? He was oh! A, oh, trying to get it again. That was close. Almost had that opportunity. Yeah. Newtono's going to have to watch out if he gets caught in a juggle situation against Foe because Foe will pull out that PK Thunder setup. Gonna make it back to stage right here. Yeah, I mean, Fo has definitely been known to get a lot of stocks like that with those PK Thunders, so. Woo! Okay. okay. Still caught him with the tail of it. Just getting a little extra damage, also creating a little space. But at this point in time, I feel like giving uh, Neil Tunnel that space is just gonna allow him to set up for the needles. Covering extra low. Neil Tunnel actually forced that though with the grenade. Very smart. Yep, and good Don't stuff. really get to see a lot of grenade usage, so. True, true. Okay, I thought we were gonna probably see an up air right there from Fo, but I thought we were not ready. Right there too. Wait a second. Look at the percent. Yeah. Got to watch himself now. I mean, one grab from Fo should be able to take it. Fighting his way in here. Neotono. I mean, even with him still playing, like, oh! Jump oh! straight over those needles. Too close right there. 
uh, with the needle throw. I mean, that is a very punishable move if you are not, if you don't have that max distance. And so Foe got his Vegas homeboys, sister in the front. We got Neil, all the Vegas homeboys in the front right now, cheering on their uh, Vegas counterpart right there. Foe, man, trying to make it happen. Trying to get himself in the top 32 here. That's very respectable, too, you know, still sticking with Ness. I, I love his uh, secondary, though. He has a Falco. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> his Falco's pretty good. I don't know if we're going to see it in this set, but his Ness already got him two wins here. He needs just one more, and he's out of this game. Went with a W, though, of course. All right. Okay, not even going for a grab. Respected the fair right there. Understands the mix-ups that she could go for, you know, on shield afterwards with single jab or even double jab. Or just let's repeat another aerial. Okay, chase him down yet again. Yep, just catching him in the skies. He understands his flow, it seems. Nice. Again, mm -hmm. you know, just getting those BNBs right there. You're going to see those quick uh, combos into the bounce fish to add on that early damage. And now, really controlling the stage or controlling where Foe goes right now. Foe just trying to fight, figure out a way to get down. And Minnesota not allowing any of that. Managing to sneak in that back air. Already pushing the Atona to the corner like that. It's crazy. Okay. Oh, interesting right there. Instead of going for the up air, actually goes for the neutral air. Probably not wanting to stale it out. And actually chops through both of those. Wow, we're way off stage. That bouncing fish. My Woo. boy, my boy going, up the, going up the river like a salmon. What up? <laughs> but there's the grab right there. <laughs> Air dodge? No, he actually goes for that jump escape. Does not want to get caught. Jeez. Just managing to get as much damage as possible. With all these small little interactions that he's able to get with Bo. Yeah. Okay. Whoa! From wow. the shield! And that, man, that looked like that was actually going to hit, too. Like, the whole thing. Like, he was going to get it all the way for the tail to hold him in place. Wow! The drop zone <laughs> up air! My man jumped off stage. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, you know, he's like, I'm going to do whatever it takes, you know? It doesn't matter. Got the big head coming through. Here we go. So, again, you know, he's doing a good job. Oh! The oh, okay. Peep the, trip. the trip. Peep the trip. Woo! Hey. Got the regrab two off the fair. Another one? All right, not bad. He's still got the decent damage right there. Nitsono escaping That's with the right there, man. Uh -huh. I see, you know, usually you see them go for the full hop forward air and hit him twice. But this time, he actually wanted the re-grab. Very smart. Coming in from foe. Oh, he oh. missed the tag. Oh, I oh, wanted to get the jab. He needed that jab block, but it's all good. See, that that in that situation, had he got the um, the short hop of that? Yeah. Yeah, that definitely would have been the, the game right there. Went super low right there. Okay. Nitsono missing the forward tilt right there. So trying to fight his way back in here. Yep. Nitono just trying to find a way to end this game as quick as possible. There's the up air, not enough, but the next one should be able to do it if he gets that situation again. Good drift right there by Foe, too, avoiding any potential uh, setup that could oh, reach into an edge guard. Oh, my God, Foe! Oh, good attack! It's oh, a oh. He threw a PK fire instead of the PK thunder. Oh. That's unfortunate, but that was a really good tech. Really good tech right there. Nitono looked like it didn't quite... Like that win, nobody likes to have a win where they feel like they didn't quite deserve it, you know? Yeah, so no, I like definitely that. understand that. But, uh, again, you know, following the game five right here. Give him the thumbs up. <laughs> Yo, my man back to Final Destination. It's almost like Sakurai knew, you know? He's like, see, I knew y'all like Final Destination. Look at the set. I mean, y'all was all y'all was all complaining earlier, <laughs> talking about some wild Omegas, and now y'all just keep using Final Destination. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, Sakurai. We love you, man. Anyway. Whew. Getting into this game five right now. Yeah, DNG is the internal by the way. Against uh, it's, it's full, uh, is phone now unsponsored. I mean, he's he, yeah, yeah, he been back and forth for coming on and off. So I mean, uh, if he keeps his consistency up, I, I definitely expect to see a tag in front of his name yeah. pretty soon. Definitely, anyway, definitely a free agent, but yeah, shouldn't be. But. Yeah, definitely not. Either way, we got a uh, foe again. You know, uh, getting uh, kind of ran over at the beginning of this game. However, you know, a, lot, a few of these games start like that, and he still managed to get two games on the board, so you can't count him out by any means. I think he's just got to get, as the set goes on, just more and more creative. You know, that's definitely one of the, another one of those characters that you should be getting hit by the same thing more than once. You know, uh, and to piggyback off of that, you yeah. saw Foe do that when he got knocked off stage, right? He hit ear dodge, the setup that kept helping Nitono get the stocks, which yeah. was the Aerial Needles to bounce oh. fish. Oh, my gosh. And I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised, wondering if that would have killed <laughs> Like, if he would have got, like, the sweet spot of that. Real nice. At 53, probably would have put him around 70-something. Oh, man. Uh-oh. 
tough situation again for Full. Let's see how he gets back. Okay. Having that double jump definitely helps. Gonna have to push Newton off stage. Okay. Get some extra damage right here. Oh! He uh, that was it, though. Yeah. yeah. That, I wonder if he, you know. <gasps> yep, there goes Full losing that stock. Final stock here in the set. Wow, that was so unfortunate. I, feel, I really feel like he would have got that stock if he uh, managed to get that PK Thunder to go across yeah. the stage like yeah. that. So However, though, you know. Hopefully he doesn't get too flustered right here, missing that opportunity. Oh! Oh, that was nice! Beautiful job right there by Fo And Neotono and Fo right here. One stock apiece here. This is an exciting set. Neck and neck. Only yes. 24%. Again, that's like one grab combo coming in from uh, Fo if he can get it. But immediately Neotono getting the BMBs yet again. Yep. Good grabs right here. Uh-oh. Fo can't seem to get inside. These four tilts, these nares. Pushing Fo off stage. Is the double jump there? Yep. Saved it. Fo now. Okay, what he can do here. Opportunity, but Neotono escapes. Another one. Okay, forward air. Oh, and the neutral air. And a little extra. Oh, left himself a little open with that PK fire right there. Good stuff, Neotono getting that grabbed. Yeah, he hasn't really been able to capitalize off those too much, or at, if at all, uh, in this set so far. But, you know, shout out to him throwing it out, still letting uh, Neotono know that's still an option that he has. Okay, and now. That he does get it. Oh. Notice one thing. Notice one thing. Neotono has full. He has needles. Yeah. Fully charged. Oh, getting Fo so many grabs right here, but that rage actually not allowing him to get any follow-ups. Woo! Okay, good, good air dodge stuff. in right there. Yep. Oh, yeah, he's going to have to watch out, man, because Needles to Bouncing Fish could. It's a threat now. Yeah. Okay. He, he, he got rid of them, so now. Still, still getting scary. a scary. Yeah. All right. I had to get rid of that other ones, too, but got three Needles on deck right here. The Wait down smash. Second. Sneaky set up with the down smash. Okay. Is Fo going to try to set up to a grab and up air? Oh, Neotono attacks with that back air. Neotono saying no fear right there. Oh! Okay, he doesn't need the tech right there, but he still needs to get back to stage, and Neotono going deep for it. Wow, what a game. Neotono moving on. Oh, Woo. man. Oh, man. Really that's good set. Really, really good, good set. set right there. Yeah, man, that game five uh, coming in from Neotono had to win those last two games, actually stay into it. You know, he was down 2-1 at, at a time, and Fo. Just could not manage to clutch up the last time. It was looking like a good comeback, though. I have to give him that. He was definitely uh, bringing that game all the way back to a very respectable game. All he needed was one grab. Yeah. Or that up air that he could try to throw out. But maybe expecting the air dodge, Neotono was like, nah, I don't do that. Me? I'm throwing out a hitbox. What's well, crazy. When I saw the PK Thunder, I thought that the tail of the PK Thunder would have been able to maybe, like, catch him oh. after getting hit by the bouncing fish. Yeah. Well... You mean uh, catch Neotono or catch? No, catch Fo after getting hit by the bouncing fish, you know? Does but, that uh, work? I don't think that works. I don't think that I mean, works. I, I mean, I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen the tail actually help. I mean, run, run the tapes, uh, man. And melee. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but regardless. <laughs> run the tapes, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> what, what a set, though, man. Definitely a, a set, set man. A big shout out to the crowd as well. Really getting into it. <sighs> crazy, yeah, crazy, crazy so, match. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I've been giving the uh, SoCal crowd... You know, kind of all kind of like uh, guff for a long time because I feel like whenever I'm watching like some of these more hype events, they don't want to get hype. But today, you know, y'all proving me wrong, and that's good because I'm liking to see uh, a little level of excitement out here in the crowd as well as on the stage. You know, we can't be the only ones hype. Can't be the other ones happy. Everybody got to be happy. You know, this is Civil War. One half of this. <laughs> I ain't go I'm not going to do it. 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 You got it. You got it. What man. team are you, man? Me? <laughs> ally, uh, speaking of Team Ally, <laughs> there he is up on stage. What's, good? What's up, He's ally? on stage, ready to go. C9 All right, man. Ally. C9 Ally in the building. So let's go ahead and see how this goes for him. And now he's still on the winner's side, and he's going to have to go up against another Canadian in himself. Ooh. Yeah, the Ryu Monster. Okay, now I actually had a conversation with Lucas. He mm -hmm. said the last time that he played Ally, he was supposed to win. Mm -hmm. But then what happened was that the platform actually ended up giving Ally the win. I think it was Town and City, and like he got, and then, like he got stretchered off, basically. And, oh. then, mm -hmm. and then, um, Locus was, uh, Locus said that Ally was actually, uh, he popped off a little bit. But then afterwards, he said, "Yeah, I shouldn't have won that." So you know, good stuff to him. We're gonna see if Locus is able to have his revenge right here. Hopefully, you know, the same thing doesn't happen to him again. Well, yeah, I want to see. I want to see a solid set. You know, I'm always down to watch some Ryu gameplay, bro. Like, like mm. Ryu. Ever since his introduction to the game, I know people are like are always want to complain about how early he can kill, how it, it's always even if he has full rage and you're at like 50 percent or whatever. But like Ryu, honestly, just brings the hype, dude. Like Street Fighter in Smash. 
I'm still over here processing that. I mean, that, that character came out almost a year ago. <laughs> you know what's really hype about this character, Ryu, though? His combo game, right? Um, his damage output, too. Mm -hmm. You look at a lot of the other characters in Smash 4, when they connect attacks, like, it's always in, like, the low, you know, single digits. But this character, Ryu, every time he's managing to connect the hit, it's like, you're getting hit by a truck. And, he, and he's able to, like, connect all those moves together. I don't know if you guys ever seen uh, tweets from this one player called Nando. I think his uh, Twitter's like Nandissimo or something uh -huh. like that. He put out some ridiculous, ridiculous combos. And I see my boy right here from AZ that took out Zero saying what up to me. Hold it down. Hold it well, down. But here we go. We're going to go back and go into the match. Locust right here versus Ally. And immediately saying your combo is not true. I'm going to show you can right out of there. Right, that was actually interesting. I've, that's like the first time I've seen someone try to go for that. That's crazy. I mean, if you think about it, right? If yeah. You, if you go for a sure you can make combo. Oh, wait, wait. Whoa! Oh, my Ally! Okay. Set straight. Okay, uh, whose war is this really, though? Straight. Like, <laughs> it's <into> the <platform. laughs> Whoa. Oh, my. Again. If Ally ends up going down uh, earlier in this tournament, too, this is going to be a crazy one. We're going to have to have another saga for who wins. <laughs> 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 Who's in grand finals? They deserve a civil war if, if Ally doesn't get there, That's man. That's what I'm saying. Oh, my. All right. Okay, smart, smart. Putting out the multiple hitboxes to beat the focus. Nice. And I love how Ally uses the walk just to stay out of the range of an opponent's option. And if he sees them swing, you see the forward smash come out to punish them in the nick of time. I mean, honestly, a lot of uh, a lot of people, I think walking in this game is, like, very underrated. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it still gives you options, to all, like, or it gives you access to all your options. And a lot of people just always never do that. Sometimes you walk back, and you're out the way. Nice little combo right there. Duffing them up, though. I actually really love that animation. That was really clean. Yeah. Nice, managing to break out of the grab right there with the attack. Probably was a down tilt. Yeah, probably a down tilt. Mm -hmm. Soft down tilt, by the way. <laughs> My man has two tilts. Yeah. Well, okay, not, not just two tilts. Well, it, two it is variations. two tilts, man. Yeah, that's, oh, you, know what I'm, you know what I'm you, you got it, man. Anyway, <laughs> back to the match. Sure, you. Nice. Oh, wow. my gosh. And look at Locus. He's like, yeah, see? Uh, I had that conversation with him. He was very, very confident. Oh, Lucas going has into, that look like he knew that match. was the exact percentage, though. Like, yeah, he man. just knew at 95, Mario will die. <laughs> like, okay. All right, Locus. Again, though, no, as you said, you know, he's no slouch in this match. He said he was supposed to uh, beat him last time. Now, this time he's trying to prove it. Yep, yep. And this guy practices a lot, too, you know, just uh, streams a lot. Streams, uh, too. Got, yeah, I was going to say that. Sub button not too long ago. Uh, shout out to him for that. Yeah, hit me, hit me, with, the, uh, hit me with the raids. I hit him with a couple raids back. You know, Locus definitely. One of the uh, nice people in the community to watch and or learn. Oh, from, so here we're we go. already right into the, the game. Yeah, dang, I missed a lot of action already. Right. Damage on the board, but <laughs> here we go. Allies seem to be able to fire back a lot better this time. Nice oh, wait, a really good movement off. Okay, almost, almost. I don't, I don't know if you saw yesterday, but in dubs, the ally did the same thing and <laughs> ended it with an up B. Killed himself, but he also killed his opponent at the same time. So I was like, all right, man, risk first award or send a message. And he definitely sent that message last time. But yeah, you know, we're look, we're looking at Ryu versus Mario, if he's able, he, he's actually able to land against this character a bit easier. Even though you just saw him get caught by up smash for a short hopping against Mario, he does have focus, right? Knowing that up smash is a single hit attack. Yeah. Wait, smart ally said, you're not going to get that down there right there on me. Yeah, yeah I definitely sure saw him, saw the hand coming out too. Like the beginning action was coming out before he got up beat. So ally though, got the lead this time around. Oh, you saw that? That was smart by Locust. He was like, I'm going to put him in the air, but I'm going to wait to see if he's actually going to try to jump out and drift towards center. A lot of players tend to do that to get out of combos. Yeah. And regain control, too, of stage. Okay, Locust putting out those long limbs right there. Mm -hmm. Trying to basically take away Mario's grab option because Mario's love to get grabs. They get a lot of damage off of it. So, Bro, What if he would have got that spike, though? Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. That was like a rising one into that. Usually you see him kind of just sail through the air and then immediately go for the uh, down air, but this time he actually did a double jump into the down air, almost getting it. Oh. the sour spot. Beautiful combo coming in from uh, Ally. A second? Let's see. Okay, I thought he was going to go for that funky up B that has like, that really crazy knockback. Yeah, the one hit up B. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Ally waited. He's like, I know you're going to focus. I'm going to wait. Focus. Ah, going to get snuffed out right there. Yeah, picked so. out a little bit above the edge, giving yeah. him that opportunity for that down smash. And here we go. Ally actually doing pretty good. Yeah, that game, that guy, time around, he definitely uh, took some variations from that first game. Figure out what he needed to do. Go ahead and win the second game. So let's see what he does here in this third game, though, or is Locust going to be able to go ahead and get that momentum right back on his side? <clears throat> so. Battlefield is the pick. All right, so one and one. Set moving pretty fast, too. Both yeah. of these characters basically combo the crap out of each other. <laughs> Definitely some quick <laughs> games coming in through right now. 
Nice. Don't really get to see too much Tatsu combo combos right there. Ooh. Very nice DI right there by Lucas. Good combo as well by Ally. You know, again, trying to discourage the usage of focus attack using these multi-hit moves. Oh my Ooh. gosh, Truck. What am I telling you? <laughs> the back airs, man. Uh huh. They be doing some damage. Hit hard, too. The animation. Okay, here we go. Get himself a grab right here. See what he does with this. Still Ooh. carrying this up. Huge damage coming in from Ally. He to gets himself back into that lead. Scheming, trying to find a way to... Oh, actually intercepting Locust right there with that really quick neutral air. Knowing that Locust... Oh, okay, so he's noticing that Locust likes to lead in with neutral air a lot, so he's trying yeah. to just beat him to the punch right there. And you can definitely see that level of patience yeah. starting to pay off for Ally, too. Look at the way he's like... He kind of quit approaching, but he's always staying around that range to where if Logan decides to do something, he's, gonna, he's able to punish it. Exactly. Smart stuff. He's racing him right here. Ooh, look, oh, oh, Locus. Very oh. good DI. Okay. And that's probably... <gasps> okay, yeah. yeah, I was like, yeah, he's definitely <laughs> done. I don't know where he's going to land for this one, but that up beat was a little reckless right there. And the double back roll actually gets him out of that situation. Oh, boy. Here it is, man. Locus. Already putting himself in a really good spot. 134 Rage Ryu. Wow. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I was wondering if he had a jump, but yeah. Well, I was. I was, I was wondering if he was going to try to go for the uh, for the tattoo after that, but I think if he tattooed back to the stage, it was still going to be reversed, and he didn't want to do that. So there's a little bit of time before you stop reversing your controls after the uh, cape. So. Oh, interesting. Forward throw. Probably try to get a combo off of the DI. <laughs> uh, but looking at Ryu, like. Who's that, like zero? Right away. Okay. Patience right here. Locust waiting for Ally. Oh my gosh. Ally basically trying to see if he can get something started, but these up tilts. Again. I feel like I feel like with the way the Locust is playing right now, I'm kind of expecting to see him try to go for the uh, shield break pretty soon. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I, he definitely wants the up tilt and the up B, obviously, but if Ally's standing next to him. Wait. I can, oh my. Uh oh. One more. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Locust is out. Woo. And now Ally, look at the, look at his oh. DI though. Look how far up he gets off of these up tilts. Yeah, th th you know this is one of the reasons why you don't see as many reuse in Japan anymore, especially like QB, right? Because people yeah. are smash DI out. <gasps> oh dear. We could if he would have released that earlier, that could have been game, dude. Eighty percent here. Okay, Mario gonna have to keep on racking up damage so he could get maybe a back throw KO because I don't know if he's gonna be able to get an up smash. Ally playing with fire here. Oh okay. yes, there it is. Focus attack into the shore, you. For game three, Locust, two, he just one. Barely outspaced that uh that S match too. Like I saw what I mean, I saw what Ally was going for. I mean, he still would have hit him and then died anyway because you know focus. But I definitely saw what he was going for. You know, he's waiting for Locust to kind of mess up on his uh his focus and then immediately punish it with that great range on F smash the sweet spot, but just didn't have it. So Locust now up two one over Ally right here. Right now, can do. Yeah, speaking, talking about counter picks. Yeah, I'm talking about kind of picks. I mean, I, I, I don't even know where Ally really want to go. Mm. Like, he could take an FD, sure. Um, but is that really going to help him? I mean, it's going to make it harder for Ryu to land if he knows how he's going to try to land. You know, focus obviously is very, uh, very telegraphing, I would say. But <laughs> if you don't have the tools to handle it, then it gets a little hard. Mario definitely has the tools to handle a uh, uh, focus. He, al he could also uh, run it back to Battlefield, too. He could just run I it mean, back, yeah. I felt like that Battlefield match. Wasn't that bad, but looks like right now they're. What are they talking about? Maybe talking about some rules right now. Okay. Unfortunately, <laughs> we can't. Lux has definitely gave the camera a look like uh, like the office. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that show is so good. Okay. Z fly. What's going on here? Are they trying to back? regulate? By the way, shout out to uh, Spit Space. Yeah, those keeping awesome. everyone outfitted with these nice hoodies. Mm -hmm. They're clean. Yeah, man, if you're here right now, you haven't got yourself a Spitz Bay hoodie, or at least a Spitz Bay shirt, go ahead and check them out. They're inside, right to the left. And I believe they're on at Spitz Space? On. At Spitz Space. Yes. Yeah. S-P-I-F Space. On Twitter. Yeah, they put out a lot of sick stuff. All right. Yeah, and so. hi, we're back. What's up, uh, guys? <laughs> seems like. Okay. Seems like we're having, like, quite a bit of a slight audio problem. So we are going to go ahead and throw it to a quick break. We'll be right back with an exciting game four coming up for you.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and the match is already happening, so we might as well just cut straight to yeah, it. Let's just go ahead and cut to that right now, man. I didn't even know that they were they going <laughs> to keep going. They were like, yeah, we have time to wait, so let's go ahead and get right into it. As you can see, uh, Ally apparently even switched colors right here to the purple. And now we got uh, Locust still, you know. Locust up 2-1 right now. If he ends up winning this game, he will be able to put Ally into losers. But, yeah, but it's already looking like Ally is in a really good position to take this. But, again, it's Ryu, yeah. right? I'm mean, Ryu. He hits hard. Yeah. What did I tell you, yeah. man? The, yeah. you, you see? Um, the down the down air, very good anti-focus move. Yeah. But as far as, like, a lot of his grounded attacks, can, can we talk about it? The up tilt, the up smash, the down smash, uh, like... Most of his, yeah, all of yeah. his moves are literally one hit. And, and the only way he's going to get that down switch to hit twice is if he's, like, literally inside of Ryu. So okay. he's getting boxed up. He can't even get back on stage. Locus. Okay. Woo! Managed to get that, like, footstool right there to get yep. himself back on stage. And a turnaround, too. So now he's got the stage control. But Locus is going to immediately get that center stage right back. Uh-oh. Again, just drop the foot right on top of him. There it is. Ally. It's just waiting. Oh, man. Uh-oh. Okay. Locus very patient there. Not even going too hard on the tech chase. He's like, I'm in a good spot right here. I'm going to just... Ray is definitely out to play today, man. Yeah. Focus also holding the focus the entire time. I have yet to... Ooh. Oh! All right. We really wanted that Shoryu conversion right there. Okay. Pretty even game yet again right here. But, I mean, as said, Ally definitely has to watch out for the way he's trying to attack because that focus can come through and end this game immediately yep. if he gets a little reckless on that sh uh, shield, or at least on his pressure. Oh, very smooth stuff right there by Ally. But Locus is out of there. Okay. Yeah. And he's not trying to get caught by Focus. He understands what happened when he... <gasps> okay. And Locus. The double roll getting out there. Yeah. Okay. There's the dash back from Locus. I was... Oh! Oh, Big my punish. gosh. All right. So, I think the game plan here, if he manages to oh. get hit and Locus goes for the Shory and misses, yeah. that's when he finally... Oh! Ally. That's it! You're ally. Oh, my God! Did you see the quick pop off when he turned around real quick? Like, yeah, hold up. <laughs> Let's get it! Oh, my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> the upsets here at Civil War, ladies and gentlemen. They just never stop. Great job by Locus. Great job over <laughs> Ally. Wow. Wow. What? <laughs> that was so wow. good. Wow. What a tournament, man. All right. So Ally now on losers. Zero out. Civil War. Civil War. Civil War. Wow. Team Ally works. and Zero about to be carried by not Ally and Zero. So. Whew. Some action being done today, but the action does not stop. Guys, we are here at Civil War again. Team Ally, Team Zero, going at it. And it is getting real hectic right now. It really is. It really is, man. That last match, it really looks like, you know, Ryu versus Mario is rather difficult. Because the way that you saw Ally was playing, he was just, he was kind of like treating Locus like hot lava that he didn't want to, you know, he was mm -hmm. just dancing around him. Didn't really want to get caught with any of those tilts because you notice what happens, right? Locus manages to connect one of those attacks and he gets tons of damage off of it. And the fact that Locus is able to be sent into the air and then just land with focus makes it very tough for Ally. Like grab, he, he could grab it, but also it's, it's still a bit of a risk, right? He doesn't want to get caught trying to go for a grab and then getting hit by the focus. But in any event, guys, thank you for sticking with us. This is D1. It's TK Breezy. And we're going to go to a quick break right after these messages.
How's it going, everybody? This is Max Ketchum, and I'm here with the man of the hour, Latai from Arizona. First of all, congratulations on your victory. Uh, thank you, thank you. So you just took out number one in the world, TSM Zero, in a matchup that most people think is actually pretty heavily favored for Diddy Kong. So what do you have to say in regards to the Zero Suit matchup and just about your day in general? Um, well, I've had a pretty crazy day. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I did not expect that to happen. I don't think anyone else did, but... Um, the Zero Suit Diddy matchup is definitely in Diddy's favor. Um, I feel like Zero was playing a little scared and nervous, and I feel like kind of the pressure of this whole event got to him. And I feel like I was just doing a good job of capitalizing on his mistakes, and I think that's what Zero Suit does best. She just, she's really good at punishing, and she doesn't have the best neutral, but I didn't really drop any punishes, so I ended up winning the set. Right, and you said you didn't really know what to say. I mean, that look on your face after the set just said it all. Like, you literally, like, did not know what was going on. Yeah. So... You're a relative newcomer to the Smash scene. You've only been playing how long? Uh, I've been playing for about a year now. I started in uh, the end of last February, and I've kind of been coached by uh, one of my friends, uh, PGS, uh, not PG anymore, but uh, SS Shane Bruce, which is K9's okay. brother. Mm -hmm. And he's been really helpful to my progress and everything, and I credit a lot of how much growth I've had in the past year to him. Well, shout-outs to SS for that, and, you know, just the Arizona community. I know you guys have kind of like a reputation for being very close-knit and helpful to each other. Yeah. So you're ranked fourth in the state currently? Yeah. Awesome. What are your immediate goals, just short-term in Smash right now, especially after this, but also just, you know, independent of your win on Zero? Uh, well, I'm trying to win my next match. I think <laughs> I, I think I play Foe, um, so that's going to be pretty difficult, and I don't want to just beat Zero and then lose because that would look really bad. And... My goals in Smash, just in general, is just to improve as a player because I feel like when you're improving as a player, the ones will come. But if you're so focused on getting the results, that you're not going to improve. So I, I just want to improve as a player and just become a much better player than I am because I have a lot of bad habits. And that's the kind of attitude you need to take zero out in your first year of playing. Uh, so where can the fans find you? Uh, I have a Twitter. It's uh, Latai SSB, which is L-U-H-T-I-E-S-S-B. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I got to start using Twitter a lot more. <laughs> I mean, I did, I did not expect any of this to happen, so it's pretty surreal to me. Yeah, you just jumped up from, like, 70 to 1,000-something followers and probably a lot more by now. That was, like, 10 yeah. minutes ago when I last saw. So, also, you were on Team Zero for this event. Yeah. What led you to that choice? Like, why would you make such a grave, grave mistake? <laughs> so, um, about, um, I'd say about eight or nine months ago, uh, I went to the Sky House. And it's actually when Zero just came back to America when he went on his like break or whatever. And I, I played him and he destroyed me. He was playing Sheik and he was just obliterating me. But he, you know, he actually sat down and played with me for like nine, like nine or ten games. And like he gave me some good advice. And I was like, I just think he's a really good dude. And I also really like Ally. But just the fact that Zero like t took time, like he just got back and he, he was down to play with me. Like, that just says a lot about Zero to me, and a lot of my friends support Zero, and I, I support Zero as well, and I want to see him do well. Well, I guess you didn't really support him throughout <laughs> this bracket. But anyway, Latai, congratulations once again, uh, man. Thank it was you, a pleasure you. watching that set. Uh, are there any last words that you've got for everyone watching? Uh, just to everyone watching, if, um, if you're a new player and you're stressed about not improving or anything, just it takes time, and that everyone works at a different pace and that anyone can do it. And we're playing Smash 4. This game is incredibly inconsistent, and you can do it if you, like, put your mind to it. All right, well, you guys heard it from the man himself, Latai. Further in the top 96 of Civil War, you guys can catch him later today, and we're going to cut to a quick break.
how do you dive? I want to be the very best Like no one ever was To catch them is my real test To train them is my cause I will travel across the land And we are back, guys. Welcome back to Civil War, a.k.a. Upset Central. I'm Max Ketchum, and I'm here with my evil twin. Sean Pluto. What's up, everybody? How are you enjoying Civil War so far, man? It's been a blast. Even though I've, you know, only had three hours of sleep in the last two days and all this flying and stuff, I'm still really enjoying it, and I've managed to rally and stay awake. So I've got now four hours of commentary in a row. Nice, two man. Two of them are going to be with you. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, obviously, the big story of the tournament, TSM Zero out to Lutai. Uh, at 49th, I think. Yes. 49th place. That's that's uh, his low career for zero. low. Yeah. yeah. An ally in losers bracket as well, thanks to uh, Locus. I know he's playing Zenyu and losers now, so that's going to be pretty rough as well. So both members of Civil War, the captains, uh, one has fallen and one in losers bracket, but Team Zero can fight back. You know, we still got a lot of members left, and uh, you still got your captain in losers bracket. So. Yes, and my man Champ is just backstage, you know, <laughs> poking needles into voodoo dolls and stuff, just yeah. getting rid of these guys. Curse one is by too one. real. Curse is too real, man. All right, so we're going to be getting back into the action real soon. Yep. I'm actually not sure who our first players are going to be, so uh, it's, it's going to be e a nice surprise. There's somebody. I can't see who's playing back there, but I know it's Esam. Cool. Well, Esam actually with a very close call in winner's bracket against yeah. Rafi X from Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I think, as you described, he had the kill confirmed. He could have just done the up throw with Rob to finish out game three, but he choked, went for the down throw at the last second. Yep, story of the set. Pretty upsetting stuff there for Rafi X. Don't know how he did uh, down on loser's bracket, but... Loser's Bracket is actually hell. I would not want to be in Loser's Bracket for this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of the few events where Losers is way more of a shark tank yeah. than Winner's Bracket is. We've got MK Leo, formerly Zero, but uh, Ally. And, I mean, those those alone. Tweak yep. is now also in Loser's Larry's Bracket. Larry's down there. Larry. Uh, is he yeah, out? yeah, okay. I, I was watching the Wadi set, and I forgot <laughs> it was best of five. Yep. But I saw Wadi win 2-0 or 2-1. I was like, yeah, oh, no, my God, Larry Larry actually, uh, he reversed 3-0'd him. Yeah. And then game five was pretty... Uh, Pretty commanding, so yeah, we're still in there. I think we're gonna be good to go right now. Yeah, I think you guys can start. Is this Isam versus Kirihara? Yes, it is gonna be Isam versus Kirihara. I think these guys have played pretty recently. Do they play a Frostbite? I'm not quite sure. Hmm. That was a whole month ago. Was it? Yeah. Time maybe. is flying, man, in the world of oh, Smash maybe, 4. Maybe Frame Perfect, then, is what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I'm thinking of Frame Perfect. Kirihara, the Frame Perfect 2 champion. Yeah. Uh, that was a pretty. 
incredible upset, if you ask me. Because, I mean, I don't think anybody expected Kiri Hart to do that well. Obviously, he's a very, very good Rosalina player. But we're going to get right into game one. And Mewtwo, or um, Esam has actually opted to go Mewtwo here. And, yes, this actually does remind me they did play at Frostbite. And okay. Esam did try the Mewtwo. Gotcha. It was looking a little bit better than his Pikachu in that set. So mm -hmm. I think he's just going to try to stick to it this time. Although this character is a lot less developed for Esam yeah. compared to his Pikachu, who he's been playing with since the earliest days of Brawl, even. Mm -hmm. I actually think this matchup comes down to fundamentals, though, because Mewtwo has a lot of ways to get rid of Luma, especially just with down tilt. You can space out so that Luma can't really jab you, and you can just do down tilt and then a couple fairs. Actually, like your normal character combos just work on Luma. Um, so, oh, but that is one of the disadvantages of playing Mewtwo in this matchup. You die so early to that up air. Yeah, these characters are both glass cannons. So much knockback, but they're also incredibly light and susceptible to just dying at those ridiculously low percents. Yeah. Kirihara going to draw that first blood, though. Let's see if Esam could... Make a fighting stand here, though, in this first game. Yeah, Rosalina's pretty light, too, so 76% is not too bad. Just got to tack on a little... Oh, no. Oh, no! I was going to say, that's that crucial percent range where you can actually just get wiped off the board. And that was a record speed for game one, I'd say. For, for uh, Rosalina, for sure. Yeah, she's normally, you know, one of those characters you expect to kind of sit back and camp a little bit, but right. she can also wipe your stocks out super quickly. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, amazing play there from Kirihara, and <laughs> Isam is switching to Samus. Actually not going to switch over to, to his tried and true Pikachu. He's going to try out the Samus. Doesn't really believe the Pikachu is just the best bet in this matchup, I guess. Which is I funny because he's beaten to buzz with Pikachu before, but I guess it was a long time ago, so maybe people just figured it out and it doesn't work as well as it used to. Yeah, I think the Rosa metagame has been evolving at a much faster pace than the Pikachu metagame. True. Especially being that Isam is really the only major pioneer. Of course, there's other strong Pikachu players out there, but I mean, so many people are playing Rosa and pushing her to her limits now. Yeah. All right, Sam is actually working out here so far, even for sense. Uh, a little bit of stage control for Kirihara, but he's got no Luma to really back him up, so uh, Sam's going to be able to take stage control back relatively easily. I think that's the deciding factor and why he chose Samus as well. Pikachu yeah. has a lot of trouble getting rid of Luma. You pretty much only have last hit of forward air and dash attack to send her into tumble at low percents or before dealing any damage to Luma. Whereas Samus' dash attack is a lot better. Much larger hitbox. Sends Luma further as well. Biggest problem with this though is like a lot of Samus's flaws are covered by the fact that she has uh, good projectiles. And those are almost nullified by uh, Zero Suit, or, um, <laughs> sorry, Rosalina entirely just because of down B. Very true, but then she also has that Zare, the grapple troop, to contend with the extra range provided to Rosalina when Luma's out. So yeah, that's true. Rosalina can't just really sit there with Jab going in front of her because Samus could actually just reach right past her. So. But that being said, Kirihara is still going to take the first stock. We might have to see the Pikachu come out if uh, things keep going like this. Yeah, fortunately for Isan, this is the best of five, so he's going to get to try all three characters if he so chooses to. Kirihara playing amazing today. Okay. Oh, Luma coming to the rescue there. Yeah, Kirihara was one of those players that was uh, kind of just not known to be such a threat in the American scene, but right. everyone who came from Japan spoke very highly of him. Mm -hmm. and I know Mr. R talked a lot about him. Right. He kind of floundered out at EVO 2016. I believe he only finished with 33rd place. Okay. But after Frame Perfect, there are some very high expectations for him. All right, let's see if he can get this final edge guard. Nope, he's saying I'm going to fight back with a fair. And Isam is just really struggling to find any form of kill here. But that forward smash is finally going to do it. Puts himself on the board and gets a charge shot that, you know, maybe he'll be able to get off at a time when Kirihar doesn't expect it or just right away. And you don't even need gravitational pull to nullify projectiles with Rosalina. True. As Luma just body bags that entire right. charge shot. Yeah, I don't think gravitational pull even works at point blank range. So it's, it's good that he didn't try it and he just shielded. Kirihara, though, master edge guarder with this character. Mm -hmm. Very contrary oh. to a style like DeBuzz's, where he plays very reserved. Kirihara will try to execute every single edge guard, go for those down airs when he sees the opportunity, but he's actually just going to go for a back throw rather than yeah. forcing Esam off stage. Not sure. I mean, maybe he just wanted uh, wanted a little more stage control or, or like to, to waste a little more time because Tam uh, Samus can just get back with the tether, so he can get back pretty quickly. The thing that Kirihara needs to worry about right now is. Uh, up B. Samus is up B in Rage. It works in a really strange way because the hitboxes no longer connect uh, properly. So, <laughs> oh, nope. Not going to have to worry about it now. Up Smash seals out the second game. Kirihara looking really dominant in the set so far. And that's two up smashes to close it out, actually. The first one was at a pretty early percent. Even yep. though Samus is so heavy, she does have very low falling speed, which makes her more susceptible to vertical KOs than mm -hmm. someone else in her weight class would be. Man, Kirihara just sipping on him. And... I know I'm definitely not the first to bring this up, but Kirihara does have an uncanny resemblance to Zero. So he's carrying the Team Zero <laughs> torch right now through the winner's bracket. 
He's our backup captain. And we've got Esam actually coach. Or I'm sorry, DeBuzz actually coaching Esam mm. against his fellow Rosalina player. Maybe he's a little jealous of that frame perfect win. You know, <laughs> DeBuzz was at that tournament and didn't That's place true. quite as high. Yeah. But yeah, I think he's just, in winner's bracket himself here, too. The buzz? I actually haven't seen him play at all today. I, I somehow, I was commentating earlier. I missed him. was spectating earlier. Totally missed him. So I don't know where the buzz is, but hope he's in winner's still. All right, he's going to stick to Samus. He's actually not going to uh, try the Pikachu at all here. Just believes that it's not the right call. So Yeah, again, that makes sense. Just the lack of range, the lack of options to kill Luma. Mm -hmm. Though I don't know if switching from Mewtwo to Samus was the right move. I think D1 was mentioning in the cast on their set from Frame Perfect that he should have just had a little bit more faith in the Mewtwo I and agree. maybe stuck it out. Granted, yeah, no. that game one was disgusting. That game one was disgusting, but all he has to do is watch out for that. That was the one setup that Kirihara managed to get. Um, and I feel like he won neutral quite a bit of times. Uh, he just didn't, you know... I, I just feel like he should have given it one more chance. I agree. Uh, I don't think game two went well enough with Samus to, to validate not going back to the new two. Right. Well, it was vastly less of a shutout. Like, he at least True. took a stock, so can't blame him for feeling a little bit more confident in this pick. Either way, Kirihara just with a jab to grab. Looking like Captain Falcon here. Yeah. <laughs> that and Luma it, jab is just so good. It is. Amazing kill move at high percents. Really versatile. Just can be used in a lot of ways. Wow, that Luma is dead. Ooh, within the grab, that's going to be a huge punish. Forward Smash actually not dealing enough damage to kill, though. Yeah, Rosalina very short on knockback without yeah. her little partner. Yeah, but no jump there from Esam, so he's just going to uh, be forced to shoot a missile and, and give up that life. Okay, and now the chase down begins. Esam down a stock here. Has to be aggressive with a character designed really more for holding leads than yeah, creating them. Definitely. Uh, Luma creates a wall, and then once you get past that wall, you still have a pretty good character with a decent frame data. So. But there goes Luma, so step one is complete. 87, uh, now 92 is actually not that bad for Esam if he can you know, land a kill opportunity. He's just not finding anything. Kirihara is doing an excellent job of avoiding uh, the necessary things that he needs to kind of get rid of. I'd definitely like to see Esam go for a little bit more of the charge shot. Yeah. He's been winning neutral and then chasing Kirihara rather than charging up his projectile. But he's actually just going to spend it there, and now he needs another few seconds alone to build that up. Yeah, I feel like that uh, charge shot was pretty crucial there, especially for Kirihara. Probably breathing a sigh of relief that it's gone. Very similar to Cloud's Limit, except yeah. you can't really force her to spend it on recovery or something. Exactly. And also, Samus is way more reliant on that than Cloud is on Limit to score KOs. This is looking like a pretty strong 3-0 if uh, Esam doesn't change up something pretty quickly. There we go. Okay. That helps. That definitely helps. Getting rid of Rage uh, Luma. Right, but now he has to deal with a very healthy Rosalina as well. The stocks are tied, but this advantage is quite large for Kirihara right now. Gets in with the short hop air dodge Nair. I like it. Creative ways to approach with this character. You know, it's funny. Samus isn't a character that you see very often, but Kirihara just really seems to know what uh, what to do and what not to do. I haven't seen him make too many mistakes, like flaring mistakes at least. That's what he has to watch out for, though. That dash attack into up B is uh, <laughs> extremely volatile right now. Yeah, you just got to clip them with the right hit of it. Exactly. I believe there is actually a very strong Japanese Samus player who is restricted only to Wi-Fi. I think his name is YB. Huh. I'm not entirely sure on his name, but I've definitely heard some very good things about him. But either way, Kirihara looking like he had a very solid handle on that matchup. Isam not able to pull one over on him with the surprise counter pick. Yeah, just uh, not going Pikachu. I, th I think he should have uh, at least given Pikachu one game or a chance, or at least gone back to Mewtwo. Because like I said, the, the kills were very early game one, so I, I don't think he really got a chance to test out the Mewtwo. Right, and when you have a best of five to play with, you've got three games to drop, so I don't know. It could have been worth the risk, exactly. but either way, he's going to go out in a very dominating 0-3 fashion. Yeah, yeah. Kiri Hart looking really strong, continues on in a winner's bracket. I believe that puts him in top 32. Uh, so, yeah, he's sitting pretty right now, man. And without ally or zero in, in, uh, in winners, there's not much uh, to stand in his way. Yeah, Kirihara definitely looking like one of the favorites to take the tournament. However, Nairo is notably still in winner's bracket. That's true. And I personally would set him as my new favorite to win this tournament. Yep. Yeah, I, I can wholeheartedly agree with that. I mean, Nairo has kind of a dream bracket. He doesn't have to deal with Diddy's, which have been a huge problem with him in the past. Uh, you know, there's no ally in his way either. So he's, he's got a good... Uh, a good shot here at making top eight, if not taking the whole thing. Right, and also no MK Leo, who went out very early to surprise competitor Meteor from, mm -hmm. I believe, SoCal. Yeah, yeah, he's in the Inland Empire, so yeah, yeah, we got some sleepers in there. Yeah, SoCal is definitely full of killers, man. Like, I've gotten here, I've played friendlies with a bunch of people, and 
I've definitely fared a lot less well than I would have expected against yeah. you know people yeah. who aren't like top twenty premier names. Right. No, we have like a, a top twenty PR, and then probably twenty through thirty can still take names off of anybody if they're playing well on that day. So right. It's, uh, you just gotta catch them on the right day, man. All right. So our next competitors are going to be Debuzz and MVD, who actually were both on the stage during that last set. Yeah. MVD as Esam's moral support, and Debuzz as his coach. This is. I can't think of the last time I've seen these two play. It's definitely been a while. Yeah. And I know MVD was kind of lamenting this being his opponent in bracket. I spoke to him very briefly earlier, mm -hmm. congratulating him on making it to top 96 winners. He's like, yeah, man, but I got the buzz next. <laughs> so if that speaks to, you know, the kind of outlook he has on this opponent, like, okay, Rosalina, pretty tough for Diddy. Yeah. Not so easy. So I don't know. I'd like to see MVD... You know, buckle down and get this done, though. He's been having kind of a turnaround in his results lately. Right. He was very, very strong at the start of Smash 4. Kind of went into a little bit of a dip in results, but now he's on the upswing, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what MVD can bring to the table here. You know, I really feel like DeBuzz is that one player that you never want to run into in, in winner's side, or in loser's at all, but uh, it just seems like no one really has his number, and he's got data on everybody. I mean, he's literally got a whole laptop full of info on players that some people that aren't even ranked. Like, he just looks up everybody just in case. So it's, I, it's just such a giant wall to get over uh, once you run into him in bracket. Quite literally, too, mm -hmm. because of his play style. Very defensively oriented, focuses on keeping you out. Not an aggressive Rosalina at all. I mean, not that Kirihara is like particularly the type to maul your face and right. really go all at you, but uh, DeBuzz is even more reserved than that, like even more than you'd expect just of this character. Yeah, no, we're going to see very different play styles coming out from the, the two Rosalinas that we're having on stream. So. Right. And also from MVD, too, who's kind of a face mauler himself. That's true. Yeah, MVD's invented a lot of the Diddy tech that you see um, that's pretty much popularized at this point. I know he's been a Diddy fan since the very beginning of this game, so... Yeah, he placed a very solid 7th at the first Super Major for Smash 4, which was Apex 2015. And since then, you know, he's just consistently been at the upper echelon of this game, able to take out pretty much anybody. I've seen MVD fare better than most against Zero, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, last weekend, even, at Frame Perfect, he had a very close set with him. Okay. Uh, okay. Who did MVD actually beat to make it into winners this tournament? Uh, he definitely told me before, and it escapes me. But, again, that's that three hours of sleep. <laughs> Typical and, and team flying. ally yeah. players. Hey, man, is your guy even still in the tournament? <laughs> See us in the crew battle, man. See us in the crew yeah. battle. <laughs> and also, you don't know who he beat either, so. That's true. Uh, yeah. I guess we're on equal footing here. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Anyway, guys, we're going to be cutting into the set very quickly. Mm -hmm. Just getting some technical stuff sorted out. Oh, okay. So apparently there's a glare on one of the TVs. That's one of the disadvantages of playing outside, but we'll get it fixed up really quickly, and uh, then we'll get right into this best of five. That dang sun, man, always messing up my video games. MVDB Wadi. MV yes, that's who it was. There we go. You okay. definitely mentioned that to me earlier. And actually, I think that's uh, a revenge set from a tournament called Smash Valley that happened at Penn State University hmm. last month. I believe Wadi was able to take it over MVD okay. in the grand finals there. Good stuff there to MVD then. This is a, definitely the tournament where you want to stay in winner's bracket. I cannot stress that enough. It really feels like if you drop down to losers before top 16, you probably aren't going to win this tournament. That's just realistically looking at it. Uh, I think two of the people who could do it are Zero and Ally, and obviously Zero couldn't do it. So Ally's, Ally's the only one left that I think that could could come back from losers all the way. You got no faith in Mexico, man? I got a little faith in Larry, because I have to. But, yeah, right. Yeah. You guys are roommates, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta yeah. always be pulling for your boy. Oh, yeah, definitely. He, he can do it. He can totally do it. I was actually very ready to bet money on my boy, Angel Cortez, taking it over zero if they mm -hmm. met in the Diddy Mirror. But unfortunately, they both kind of underperformed at this event. Did Eon Wave beat Angel Cortez? No, Eon Wave got upset before even making it wow. to Angel by a player named Stealthy from Utah that's, who plays Rosalina. That's really heartbreaking to me. Yeah. I love Eon, dude. He's a he's a SoCal player, and he literally just showed up to, like, one local one day and got top three every time he showed up, and he was amazing. Just out of nowhere. Yeah, and he didn't go to any other locals, so no one really knew about him. And then he, like, uh, I think he got top eight at the Arcadian, so he just he's an amazing player. I love seeing him do well. He played zero um, at the last Saga, and I think... One of the games out of the two was last hit, so he's wow. really, really good. Yeah, so he was taken out by Stealthy, the mystery Utah player. Okay. Uh, ranked number six hmm. in Utah. He plays Rosalina, one of the most technical Rosalinas I've ever seen. Hmm. Uh, just, you know, very clean movement game, perfect pivot jabs and stuff. Really just 
hard to take down, and I think Diddy Kong kind of suffers in that matchup. And he went yep. on to take Angel out right after wow. beating Eon. Yeah. And then Dang. Angel lost to Vinny from uh, New York, who he's played many, many times and actually has a very good record against. Dang. That's how it goes sometimes, man. Yeah. I think they're still trying to figure out this glare. I mean, I'm definitely feeling it too, you know. I'm a little squinty yeah, here too. But yeah. I just honestly reflects off of us. So I'm just okay. happy to be outside in this beautiful weather. Yeah, it feels really nice. I think the the sun going down was timed very well with us getting up here cuz before I was like, I don't know how you're going to deal with that suit and the sun at the same time, but Oh yeah. Very fortunate that I've been inside the whole day until now. <laughs> so, it's actually, you know, nice breeze and stuff going on. Well, I'm going to check the bracket real quick. Yeah, for see, sure. Uh, see what else we can talk about in winter side. Also, we've got the giant PG Stats playbook for Civil War. I want to give a huge <laughs> shout out to my man Swar for putting this together. This is just like an incredible amount of data. It's got pretty much any statistic you could look for in the head to head records between all the top 50 players, as well as their placements at relevant super major tournaments and just all the uh, S through C tier. Is there anything events. on MVD ESAN or uh, MVD DeBuzz by any chance? Uh, I don't believe they've played in quite some time, mm -hmm. but I'm going to check. We have uh, the top Ooh. tens head-to-head -head records against each other, which is definitely a really cool little snapshot. Nice. One of the coolest things, so Earth basically took over Zero Seed because Earth beat uh, XX, who was right. able to upset Zero in winners. So Earth is going to go up against Captain Zack, which is something I don't think we've seen, which is going to be really cool for Top 32. Uh, Mr. R plays Neotono, Locust plays Kirihara, and on Winter Side, that's actually the only people that are in Top 32 so far. So there's still a lot of work to be done tonight. Yeah, this Top 96, you know, a very expansive way to move on from mm -hmm. pools, but I think that really speaks to how deep the talent pool is at this yeah. tournament. Top 6 making it out of pools sounds pretty easy, but then, you know, you look at who those Top 6 were, mm -hmm. and these are people who are usually winning their local tournaments, at the very least. So, uh, yeah, definitely so many killers in the building here at Civil War, guys. And, again, we'll be getting into this game very quickly. Yep. Uh, not sure if any of this was on stream, on the, the secondary stream, which is twitch.tv slash ESA Smash. Uh, it's Esports Arena Smash. But Foe was able to 3-0 Lutai. So Lutai, after beating Zero, unfortunately not going to make it to top 32 for tomorrow. Uh, 9B beat Con Con to make it in, loser side. Mr. E over Kameme. Mm. And uh, Larry Lair beat XX, who was obviously allowed to, or able to beat Zero earlier. Vinny's still waiting, and uh, Ally and Zenyu are playing right now. I really hope they're playing on stream. Because, oh, they are. You guys should go watch uh, those two play on stream while we're getting this lighting situation figured out. Yeah, multi-twitch or just, yeah, you know, open something. that Because Ally has been able to, or Zenyu's been able to beat Ally uh, before, and they're just such different Marios, and it's always so fun to watch them play, and Zenyu kind of considers them rivals, and it's just, it's really, really, it's going to be a good set. Oh, it looks like we're off to the races here. Esam, I'm sorry, DeBuzz and MVD. Oh, here we go. Actually going to fight at this point. Okay, so DeBuzz just taking the slightest lead to start with here. Yeah, don't get fooled by that. Uh, there we go. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, MVD uh, kind of got a little bit of snake control. Gives it up, though. Oh, no, he doesn't actually give it up. That's a really cool trick that uh, Diddy players actually can do. They can walk all the way to the ledge and then run back and, like, forward air, like, just a short hop bear, and it's so hard to react to. Um, gives a nice illusion that they're, like, walking away from you. But in reality, they've still got the advantage. Yeah, Diddy Kong's forward air, just an absolute staple of his game. But it kind of gets shut down by a character like Rosalina because when Luma hasn't taken damage, the forward air doesn't send her very far. Mm -hmm. And then you can just have Rosalina sitting in the back waiting to whiff punish the fair. Okay, MVD trying to fight his way back to stage. Actually, that was a perfect flip kick. If he could have continued that string or if the Smashville platform wasn't there, that would have been so beneficial to him. But, oh, because he's not able to do it, the back air seals it out for DeBuzz. And man, Luma's knockback values are so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. She only does like three to five damage with every hit, but boy, do they murder him fast. Yeah, it counts. All right, the buzz just uh, kind of doing bread and butter Diddy Edge guards. Uh, just waiting for the kick and reacting based on uh, how high or low he goes and throwing out a move accordingly. Also, his anti-monkey flip game looking very crispy. Yeah, probably pre prepared a lot for zero. <laughs> very true. And also watching the uh, Kirihara versus zero set from last week, mm -hmm. 
that was a perfect example of how to play around that side B. Yep. Kirihara with the amazing reactions, allowing him to stuff it every single time. I think one of the biggest reasons uh, Diddy Kong still does so well in a lot of brackets is flip kick is a really difficult move to learn how to punish. And it feels sometimes like it's unpunishable because that kick has the, like a giant sun-like hitbox. But uh, I feel like when players figure out how to punish flip kick properly, Diddy Kong will kind of drop in the tier list just a little bit. I don't know, man. I've got faith in this character's longevity at yeah. the top. I mean, I still Pretty think he's real. an amazing character. Don't get me wrong. He's by no means bad, and he can compete with anybody. It's just uh, I feel like he gets a little tiny bit worse when, when people start figuring out the tricks behind him. Wow, that was a great edge guard from MVD. Just not letting up at all, and that's kind of that style we were talking about before. MVD really likes to just get up in your face, throw these attacks out, and hope that you get lost in the flurry. Mm -hmm. Whereas the buzz, a lot more calm and collected. We're seeing him just try to play that anti-projectile game with gravitational pull. 113%. This is really rough for MVD. He basically can't miss a step, especially if he gets a grab and overcommits. Luma could just be right there to seal out the game. Got to be very careful. Play around that blue star. And MVD taking kind of a patient approach here. Even though he is aggressive by nature, he definitely doesn't want to take any unnecessary risks. That flip kick will seal out uh, Luma's stock at least. Oh, he had the air dodge read, but just misspaced it. That's wow. kind of the luxury you get when you fight against a character with no hitbox on their up B. Yep. A lot of footstools coming out from him to Buzz to trick up the landing. That was really, really smart. Just in time for Luma to come back. I actually think that's crucial against Diddy Kong mm -hmm. because he's so dependent on waiting and shield on the ground yeah. with a banana. Ooh. It, wow, that was great. So he allowed Luma to take the hit for the flip kick, which uh, allowed him enough time to actually react with an up smash. Really good stuff. Again, just, just covering that side B option uh, really limits Diddy Kong at the ledge. Yeah, to Buzz knowing that flip kick is pretty much the best answer Diddy Kong has to Luma, being that it's able to get him in that zone mm -hmm. and also sends Luma flying in tumble. Yep. So if you're looking for that in this matchup particularly, there aren't too many answers Diddy Kong has. However, that's by no means to say that it's heavily in Rosalina's favor or even in her favor at all because there are so many other factors that influence this matchup. But yeah, dealing with Luma is certainly tough for this little monkey. All right, MVD off to a pretty good start here. Got a lot of damage on Luma. Jesus. <laughs> Look at that. He hit her like six times, and she's nowhere she's near fine. dead. Oh, there she goes. Flip wow. kick will actually, uh, will actually take it. So. And now DeBuzz is immediately going to the other side of the stage. Uh, the, the funny thing is, though, is like DeBuzz can't really afford to just run away because that allows MVD to pull Banana, and you never want to like allow Diddy Kong to just pull it for free. Right, unless you have that anti-Banana tech that we've seen all the Rosalina players of the day really exemplifying uh, gravitational pull True. being the most obvious, but also what the buzz was just doing before with footstooling off of Diddy Kong's head, making sure he's not going to hit that shield haphazardly and just get the easy out of shield punish into whatever. Very true. Wow, gravitational pull <laughs> using that peanut, but MVD, I should be able to take Luma out here. Yeah, there we go. Kind of struggling there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Luma always puts up a little bit of a fight. Yeah, Diddy Kong's best answers are, of course, flip kick, as we mentioned, forward smash, and I believe the back hit of down smash. Great wait there for MVD to uh, kind of sniff out that spot dodge, and he's going to take it with down, uh, down tilt up smash. Sitting pretty comfortable, too. 51% is not terrible against Rosalina as long as he's not killed off the top. And we've certainly seen <laughs> Rosalina's potential to do that. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, nice flip kick. Yeah, and another reason that that move is so ridiculous is we were just talking about how you know, deceivingly safe mm -hmm. that flip kick can be. This move is like rock and scissors all in one. I you know. know. You've got to grab, <gasps> but you can just decide to make it an attack if you want. Just because. Yeah, it's a great 50-50, and it's really, really hard to react to it unless they throw out the flip kick like preemptively, like the kicking aspect of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, you have a while to decide which variant you want to go for. All right. So DeBuzz was able to take the first stock with a nice dare. Uh, very well placed, and now he's just looking to wait for Luma to come back before he can start racking up the damage on the second stock. MVD not letting up at all, though. Dubuzz not really getting a chance to breathe here. And now that he's got the banana in his hands, he is both a more powerful offensive and defensive presence. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. You can't really miss a step. You can't just because you hit Luma or just because you hit Rosalina doesn't mean that Luma's out of the picture. Yeah, in interactions like grabs and knockdowns, Luma is able to act very quickly afterward. Mm -hmm. It's so weird, too, because you're used to, like, just trying to do hit confirms, right? Like, you get a hit, and it's like, okay, I, like, on every single other character, I can follow up very easily. 125% and the barrels still don't kill. I've seen a lot of Diddy Kongs do that recently against Rosalina. Yeah, blowing themselves up with yeah. the barrels. Yes, absolutely. Not going to do it just yet. 
The buzz coming to life here. 144%. That back air is going to seal it out, though. We got an even set 1-1 one, one here. Okay, MVD with a very quick, victorious <laughs> hand pump or fist pump there. Yeah, this would be uh, this would be a nice mountain for MVD to climb. As you were saying, he, he has really struggled with him in the past, and he didn't want to play him today. So, Yeah, back on that up and up. Like seeing, you know, a comeback story for mm -hmm. sure. And now we've got a 1-1 one, one set. It's basically a best of three at this point. And I think DeBuzz is the type who generally excels in long sets. Yeah. You know, he's able to discern all this information on his opponent, make these very well thought out reads. You know, mm -hmm. it's like he's using the sum of his notes, all of the interactions from the previous games, etc. However, I think MBD, you know, he could just end up steamrolling him mm -hmm. here. Yeah, no, DeBuzz's mental fortitude and just his longevity and stamina is ridiculous. But yeah, MVD, I feel like he just has to keep the momentum the whole time. I think he's a really momentum-based player. Uh, if he starts getting a lot of damage, it's kind of one of those uh, situations where like he takes an inch, he takes a mile. Or he gets an inch, he takes a mile. Okay, just going to go for those double up airs. And oh no, this is exactly the opposite of what I was just talking about. <laughs> yeah. DeBuzz commanding the stage with those up airs. DeBuzz also thrives very well with momentum and also, you know, kind of can suffer when it's not in his mm -hmm. favor as well. <gasps> I don't know if he wanted to actually flip kick on stage there or not. Yeah, he may have been looking for the edge. That's like something you see sometimes from Fox players. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh no, I was definitely not going for the stage. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're dead. Either way, DeBuzz was ready for it. And this is looking like a pretty dominant lead with MVD at the ledge as well. And just turn it around, but he's not able to take out Luma. I love that tricky use of star bits there, mm -hmm. the side B. Not a very often used move by Rosalina players, but it's unique because it keeps Luma in place even right. when you're moving. So Luma stayed on the ground even though <gasps> Rosa was jumping quite high up. Punishes <laughs> that up air with an up smash out of shield. Really, really risky to do on a stage like Dreamland, but that would have killed from anywhere. So Fairly reminiscent of DeBuzz's love for Olimar's up smash out of shield and <laughs> Brawl. That was yeah. kind of his lifeblood in that game. And also in this game where he plays Olimar very proficiently as well. Yeah. I love every single time that MVD doesn't have a banana, DeBuzz actually isn't afraid to go in for a dash attack because he knows the punish isn't going to be as severe as if uh, MVD was holding that potassium. And we've got that lovely color coordination here from DeBuzz, his Rosalina and Luma, both wearing black. <laughs> okay, is he going to be able to close it out here? Oh, yes! Oh, oh no! Whoa, what? That's probably the longest I've ever seen somebody survive that. MVDI. I, I can't believe that they were that close to the blast zone on Dreamland. He was over 100, and that didn't kill. I'm blown away. Good stuff to MVD for, you know, doing a magic trick. Oh. This okay, is not Tech's away. Good. Yeah, this isn't good at all. Um, even at 52%, there's really nothing Diddy can kill with right now. So MVD has a lot of work ahead of him if he doesn't want to be down a game. Yeah, this tri-platform layout really working out for DeBuzz. He's just been able to make MVD's life a living hell trying to get back down to the ground. He can wait for Luma so easily on this stage, too. He can basically just circle camp the three platforms until Luma comes back. Yeah, that was excellent by DeBuzz. And uh, he's going to go up 2-1 in the set over ESAM, or uh, MVD. Very wise of him to go for the trade on that forward air, too, mm -hmm. knowing that ground moves and aerials are not capable of clanking. If you you know have the hitbox and hurtbox overlap, they're always going to trade, unless it's special circumstances like Olimar's Pikmin or something for mm -hmm. that uh, of that nature. So yeah, he knew, okay, I can take 10 damage from a fair. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to win the game right here. All right, looking like they're uh, debating something over the stages. We're going to go into game four here. MVD on his winner's bracket life. He's actually going to pick Lilac Cruz, a very controversial stage. Yeah. Especially depending who you ask. But MVD, one of the strongest advocates for its legality. Hmm. I know he does really like playing on the stage. Let's see how much use he can make out of it. Ooh, right. Very you, interesting uh, approach. Just runs up and up smashes. Right. Do you, do you think he has any like tech on the stage versus Rosalina, or do you think it's just like a comfortability thing? I think it's definitely a comfortability thing. I feel like most players don't like the stage as much as MVD does. Yeah. And a lot of people even get kind of frazzled when mm -hmm. the stage comes up. In oh, general. yeah. As soon as they select it, they're just like immediately at a disadvantage because they think something silly is going to happen. Right, and independent of who it was that picked it, I think Rosalina does kind of struggle to recover on the stage just because her recovery's a little bit finicky sometimes right. with the angles. This is already looking 10 times better than the Dreamland game. Uh, DeBuzz doesn't look as comfortable here at all. He, he can't really camp as easily when Luma's gone. So, yeah, I, I agree with this pick a lot from MVD then. Oh, my God. Ooh, ah, DeBuzz yeah. looking like a hungry shark. Oh, geez. And MVD just like a bleeding giant fish in the water. <laughs> But there's still, uh, I was going to say, there's still some signs of life. I mean, even still, even after the stock loss, it's definitely possible for MVD to bring it back. But it's certainly going to be an uphill battle. Oh, great pivot grab from DeBuzz. Again, there's the flip kick punish. 
Yeah, it's one of the best ways to blow that move up. Mm -hmm. Especially right. if your character has good vertical grab range. The buzz with all the stage control, all the momentum, and only one stock more to take before uh, eliminating MVD into loser's bracket. Okay, just applying that aerial shield pressure, but the buzz, yeah, it's very wise. Vain. Yeah, he's just holding shield, yeah. man. He's not going to drop it for anyone. He knows Diddy can do double aerials and a short hop as well. Oh, Esam getting a little... <laughs> I'm so sorry. MVD getting a little greedy there. We just had Esam play a Rosa, so I keep saying Esam. Right. Feels like it's just one continuous Yeah, set. exactly. This is one big Rosalina match. MVD, however, actually able to score that one game. Yep. Yeah, very true. Not looking like a second, though. The Buzz just needs one more edge guard. Okay, not going to take any risks, go for an up smash that wasn't there or anything. Mm -hmm. Got to applaud that kind of patience from DeBuzz. Even in this huge advantage time, you know, he knows he doesn't want to play around with his lead too much. Right, and that's going to do it. MVD is going to roll behind uh, DeBuzz in an attempt to kind of get some stage control. DeBuzz sees right through it, gets the triple jab, and that's going to be the set. Yeah, he was like preemptively turned around mm -hmm. too. Yeah, he knew. That was the locust, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was so dirty. Okay, so... The buzz gonna advance further into winner side top 96, and MVD taking a trip to the losers bracket. Panda yeah. Global now kind of populating that losers bracket. Mm -hmm. I believe the next match we're gonna get is uh, Salem versus Shuton. Ooh, I think that's gonna be good. Yeah, that's, that's our that's the good. last uh, last winners match for this pool. So I think we're gonna switch over to the other pool after this. But Salem Shuton is uh, is interesting. I don't actually think I've seen Shuton play a Bayonetta yet. Shuton, definitely my favorite of the Japanese players to watch. Just the mm -hmm. tactics behind his Pikmin arrangement. Mm -hmm. All the decisions he makes are very nuanced. You know, you're like, he's literally thinking two, three steps ahead just based on the knockback and damage effects of which Pikmin he's going to use. And even if he had all the same Pikmin, for example, like, he's still just so smart. I've seen one of my favorite tricks from him is when he's on the edge. Like, Olimar doesn't have a great return to the stage from the edge right? Game, right? But... Uh, one thing that really stuck with me, he does drop off, second jump, aerial, and then before touching the ground, he goes to the up B, which he can act out of, just like Rob or Game oh. & Watch, and then he gets a second aerial or just drifts down to the stage and then goes for a grab or some kind of mix-up. That's really tricky. Yeah, he's really, really good, man. We were ordering food, and uh, and Larry asked him where he thought Olimar was on the tier list, and he said, hi, tier. He says he thinks Olimar is really, really good, really underrated in this game. I actually have to agree with that. Really? Yeah, uh, ever since I saw DeBuzz start busting the character out, on some kind of regular basis, I was like, yeah, we're totally clueless about this character. Like, he's yeah. so much better than everyone thinks. I mean, hardly anyone plays him, and uh, the players who do play him don't have you know, quite the results to really back up the, the claim until we see Shuton here. So, Right, and I feel like in his case, it was definitely not a matter of not having results. It was just not having the exposure, exposure in yeah. the North American scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But shout outs to Vaseth and the Frostbite staff for getting him out for his first big debut appearance. Yeah, that's amazing. He's just been sticking around since. Actually, was he at FPS? I don't think he was. I think so. Really? Then he must have had a fairly quiet bracket run. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe I could be wrong. But either way, he's here at 2GGC Civil War, and he is one set away from making top 32 winner side at one of the hardest tournaments to do that win ever. This tournament, man, this has been the event of the year mm -hmm. for sure. We're only... You know, 1.5 days into a three-day <laughs> event. And I'm pretty sure nobody, absolutely no one on planet Earth is going to have an accurate top eight prediction for this. Nope. Yeah, I was doing an analysis stream of the bracket, and uh, we said that the biggest upset of all would be if the top 32 was actually who it was supposed to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's kind of the nature of Smash 4, man. It's still a very young game. A lot of characters that are completely untapped. Mm -hmm. No matchup has been refined even to, like, the 75% mastery mark. No, I mean, until today, we thought that Zero Suit Diddy Kong was, was almost unwinnable for, for a top-level ZSS. And, and then yeah. we see Lutai come in and completely prove everybody wrong in the, you know, best way possible. Yeah, what's your take on that, by the way, on his ability to take that set from Zero? Do you think the matchup's just not as bad as it's cracked up to be? Or, you know, was Zero kind of off his game? Was I, the, the curse getting to him? Did you see Game 5 by any chance? I did. It because was a crazy Zero, rage comeback. Right, exactly. Because uh, honestly, I think Zero was doing everything right, and he just he screwed up in a moment where you can't screw up against Zero Suit. So, um, But the, the whole rest of the set, Lutai did look very comfortable. Exactly. So uh, it might not just be as bad as everybody thinks it is, but Zero might have also been a little off, and Lutai might have just been playing like a god in those moments. So. Right. Yeah, there certainly was that you know crazy rage comeback factor. However... 
Lutai was up 2-1 at one point. True. Or, I'm sorry, Latai. I keep saying it wrong, too. Yeah. But yes. Sorry about that, man. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, it's, I would have thought the same thing. Yeah. You know? I had to specifically ask him before the interview. All right. Button check on a, a band stage. Yeah, I think that's good protocol, by the way. <laughs> yeah. That's something we do at New York City Locals. Hmm. It's like, if you're going to do a button check, make sure it's on, like, Midgar. So we know so it's not knows. starting. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. Also, Duck Hunt's still a little bit deceiving. When I see it, I'm like, this could be a game. <laughs> Obviously not for game one. But <laughs> right, no. right, right. Yeah, not everybody completely acclimated to the new rule set yet. Right. I, I still hear people argue about if DSR is, is, a, is a thing in this rule set. It is. Okay, thanks, because I was actually just going to ask, but I, you know, I would have to do yeah, it you silently can't. so I don't look like a fool. <laughs> you can't go back to the last stage you went on. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. MVG Salem versus Shutan. And uh, this is the last winner's match of this pool. Winner will go on to get into top 32, and loser's going to have to fight someone really, really good <laughs> in order to make a loser side. So I know they both want this really badly. Game one on Smashville. Both of these guys themselves are very, very good, and also pioneers of their characters. Shutan really the only one bringing Olimar to this kind of top-level recognition. And Salem was the first Bayonetta to really turn all those heads. He took out Zero, yep. Nairo, MK Leo, all very early into this character's release. A lot of people believe Salem to be the best Bayonetta right now. So. Yeah, but Captain Zack actually doing a great job of challenging that. Guy. Very true. There's a, there's a lot of great Bayonettas, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like when they're when they when they're just running hot on their good days, it's amazing to watch. Okay, Salem definitely with the stronger start of the two players here. Oh no. Yeah, th this matchup is actually really really rough for Olimar, I think, just because Witch Time is such a threat. Uh, side B is is your best friend is Olimar most of the time, but in this situation, if you're too close, uh, or even if you throw out a Smash Attack or anything, like Witch Time is just right around the corner. Right, when the Pikmin are battering you, that actually does count as a counterable hitbox for Witch Time. So Bayonetta can purposely let Pikmin latch onto her, then run up to Olimar, press down B at the right time, and you can see some ugly stuff start to right, happen. But Shutan doesn't care Whoa. about any of that, sealing out the first stock pretty early and uh, taking a nice lead here in Game 1. The craziest thing about Olimar is that I feel like almost nothing happened. Like, he didn't do all that much <laughs> to get that damage, but sure as, sure as it is, man, he got... A forward smash to kill him at like 100%. Yeah, it never feels like they throw out that many hitboxes, and then you look at your percent and you're in death percents. Shutan is on his way to a two stock right now if he keeps playing like this. Oh my god, he read that dive kick, but he just wasn't spaced properly for the forward smash to connect. I think I saw this man get a down tilt to up air, and it looked like a true combo with Olimar. I mean, who would have known? <laughs> Olimar has true combos. Definitely a lot of them. But, yeah. I mean, we just haven't seen Again, yeah, really the full extent. Yeah. There's not a lot of exposure for this character. Oh, and now he's got two blue Pikmin in his lineup, which yeah. is particularly dangerous because that means he can KO with a throw. Back air is going to go ahead and seal that stock out, though, so Shutan's going to get him a fresh new line. No blues to worry about right now, and without Rage, the, uh, the up throw won't kill yet. Oh, that will. Bad DI on that, and Salem is going to go down a game here against Shutan. Yeah, and those red aerials are real strong, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was actually super dominant. That was almost a JV2. Yeah, I was just talking about how bad this matchup is, and Shutan proving me wrong, man. He's doing just fine. Yeah, I mean, which time being a threat is kind of a factor you have to take into account for every matchup Very against true. Bayonetta, right? Yeah. So I guess that's not really enough to push it over the edge against Olimar. And, you know, thinking about it, I think Olimar would fare fairly, uh, pretty well against this character just because he can play that keep away game. Right. And that's really where Bayonetta struggles. As you said before, her neutral lacks a little bit. And she does get a lot of reward on hit, but if you're just never in her range, you don't have to worry about that punishment. Very true. And you know, I've actually only seen Shutan throw Pikmin when it's a purple or a white. So when it really matters, like if you're going to get knockback or you're going to get a ton of damage and it's actually worth the risk of getting Witch Time. That's a really good observation. Yeah. Again, he's very reserved. It's, it's a lot of tilts and then uh, combos off grabs and like Nair. But he doesn't side B very much at all. Okay, Salem playing that edge trap game. Very reminiscent of Zero, who just... Oh! What? Oh, no. Well, I mean, <laughs> dropping a stock like Zero did today, yeah, I pretty guess. pretty much. Okay, so again, Shutan all of a sudden. Nice little lead. This is around the same percent he was when the, the last stock was taken. Great okay. tech. Got to be good at teching if you're going to play a character like Olimar, because you're yeah. going to get edge guarded to hell and back. Exactly. We know that as uh, Falcon Boys. Oh, yeah. Ex-Falcon Boys. Yeah, basically, if your character doesn't have a hitbox on that recovery... You are a sitting duck. You've got to be ready to hit that trigger. Okay. Gets rid of the yellow. I guess he just doesn't find it useful uh, in this situation at all. Narrowly avoiding the, yeah. the Beyblade there. That was a great fade back from Shutan. 
just sitting with a purple and a blue, apparently that's enough. Yeah, you don't always need three Pikmin necessarily. Yeah. And plus it makes your recovery go a little faster without having to throw them away. Ooh, the double air dodge. And again, that was a Matrix air dodge. <laughs> yeah, getting past that, that Beyblade. Bayonetta can just hold A, spin repeatedly while going down, and that covers so many oh options. Oh, that red stage. Pikmin's range for the forward smash. So much range that actually almost connected. And Shutan gets out of a big combo there. That was Shutan, or, uh, Salem's big chance, I think. Almar's like more of a sword character than Toon Link is. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> He's got those disjoints. However, one thing to note about his Pikmin is that uh, like I mentioned before in that MVD versus DeBuzz set, the Pikmin actually can be clanked out by aerials or any move yeah, that any collides move. with them. Yeah, they don't have priority at all. Yep. They just feel like they do because when you get hit by them, you go flying at 100 miles an hour. Right. It's actually the same as Luma. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a purple and a blue. Really good mix-ups between grabs and big meaty hitboxes like that. Yeah. And uh, Shuton's up 2-0 right now. Over, uh, I, I would say a lot of people expected Salem to get top 32 winner side. So, yeah. Shutan really showing us how, how to work this matchup. I kind of would have expected to see Shutan there as well. Mm -hmm. However, you know, being that they have to fight each other for that spot, obviously only one of them is going to get that title. Yeah. Also, kind of an unfortunate way to take that first stock. Salem just overextended off the stage for yeah. a combo that wasn't really there. But then, good recognition by Shutan catching that air dodge lag on the edge as Salem was trying to come up with some kind of fancy movement. But now he's getting some counsel from Captain Zack, basically his main rival for the title of best Bayonetta. <laughs> Judging by what, uh, you know, the, the hand motions they were making, I think he was just talking about the rhythm of the, the Witch Twist combos. Mm. Because Salem was getting him all the way to the top and then wasn't able to seal out the stocks. So I'm pretty sure Captain Zack was just teaching him uh, where and when to up air. Definitely makes sense. And Olimar being such a light, floaty, and short character mm -hmm. makes him one of the most difficult, I would imagine, to combo with Bayonetta. True. One of the easiest and hardest to kill at the same time. Right. Also, the Japanese players are kind of the pioneers of Smash the Eyeing away from Bayonetta's combos. That's true. They had that whole chart that came out pretty much, even in the pre-patch days, like weeks after the character was released. <laughs> these guys hit the lab and tried to figure out every possible out to that combo. They just knew she was going to be a threat. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> everyone did, even after the oh, trailer. Oh, yeah, dude. We saw the trailer and yeah. we're all like, okay, well, <laughs> GG's. There's another top tier in town, boys. All right. Oh, there we go. That's that low priority on the Pikmin coming back to haunt Shuton as the Witch Twist is able to just plunge right through the down air attempt. Whatever Captain Zack told Salem, it's working out so far. Nice 30% lead here and stage control. I know he was looking for a back air there, but Shuton managed to fight his way back. See, like, what did he do to put him to 93%? Exactly, <laughs> man. That's what I'm saying. You know what? Again, that's Champ in the back with the Voodoo Doll oh, yeah, on the pins. He's poking him, man. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so hard to time a down air punish on a witch twist. I can't believe no, that, was that a, connected. That was after burner kick. Yeah, yeah, after burner kick. My bad. But either way, it's that yeah. hitbox is a monster, and it's crazy to time that. Yeah, but it is very vulnerable vertically. Mm -hmm. So if you go under it or on top of it like Shutan just did, it is definitely snipeable. Shutan, man. Every time it looks like he's about to lose his stock first, he, he managed to find a way. Okay, got to pull some Pikmin. Looking a little dry. Yeah, build that army back up. This is a civil war after yeah. all. See, again, only throwing the white one. Throws, throws the blue in there as well to, to kind of add a little bit of pressure, but he's never thrown a, a Pikmin when he's close by. Are you about to see the 30 and a handshake? I, it's looking like it, man. Salem looking a little lost. Is Team Zero about to take another hard L? Hey, hey man, we don't need to go that far. Come on. <laughs> I was actually curious, so I just had to look <laughs> to see which team Shutan was on. It's good to know okay. he knows what's up. Shutan uh, definitely going to lose that stock to a win. Oh, my God. Salem putting a mark on it, man. It's like, uh, you know how in Spongebob, the episode where they have the curse words, like, if you need a lot of, add a little mm to your sentence, just... I don't, I don't watch Spongebob, Max. Are you, are you joking? Yeah, I didn't watch Spongebob. You would, like, you're an adult, you're too old for a cartoon? Shoot on! Wow, shoot on. <laughs> All right, yeah. Wow, okay. 3-0 for shoot That on. was clean, man. That was not that competitive of a set, I would say. Game oh. two was the closest call, and mm -hmm. it wasn't terribly close. You know, the more I think about it, uh, there are a lot of Japanese players who have either have a Bayonetta or a secondary Bayonetta, so it, it makes a lot of sense that Shutan is well-versed in that matchup. Yeah, I actually played Abadongo in winner's bracket today, and he busted out Bayonetta against me. I'm like, Yeah, exactly. They all have me? one. It feels like they all yeah. have one. And, of course, there's uh, Ekep, QB. Mm -hmm. uh, what other prominent Japanese Bayas? I mean, just those two. Yeah, right off the that's better. enough. <laughs> that's enough yeah. to learn the matchup for sure. Okay, well, it looks like Shuton's going to advance to top 32 winner side. Definitely. And Salem's going to have to do it the hard way if he wants to take this tournament home. I can't believe how convincing that was. It's ridiculous. Yeah.
I think Bayonetta, as strong of a character as she is, mm -hmm. she really does suffer against those zoning-based characters. Yeah. Like, everyone already has been talking about for a long time how Diddy Kong is one of the best answers to her. Mm -hmm. And that's because when she's forced to approach, especially against a character with such a dangerous out-of-shield game like Diddy Kong, she really does suffer. Right. And I think we saw that exemplified by Olimar as well. All right, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying 2GGC Civil War. We're on the main stage out here at 2G Gaming. I'm joined by Max Ketchum. You can follow him at Ask you Doom, and you can follow me at underscore. Or no, I don't no. have the underscore anymore. I trick everybody uh, at Sean Pluto. At Sean Pluto. <laughs> Just so they know, that's oh, a it's man. a capital I, man. You did you ever play Maple Story as a kid? Yeah, I did. Yeah, dude. That's where you learn that trick, right? I just. Because when, when the names are taken... Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you also, just, like, yeah. yeah, pretty much every game back then when you were trying to find a handle, yeah, you, yeah. you could uh, you could cover it up. But if you look up Jean Pluto, I'm still the first one that comes up. Okay, so that's, just, that's good. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. Good. Yeah, at Max Ketchum is taken too, so I definitely such a feel your pain. It's such a bummer, dude. I still have people calling me Juice, even though it's, like, actually a, a crew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it looks like we're going to have Nakat versus... I do not know this player by face. T. Okay, it is T. Oh, let's go. The okay, so T. I was commentating T earlier when he was playing against uh, Meteor, the Sonic, who ended up beating MK Leo, and or was it MK Leo? Yes. Yeah, it was MK Leo. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This guy is so hype, man. He uses Nair so effectively. His uh, his bomb setups are crazy. He's just he's so fun to watch. I'm so happy that he's still in winners. The first time I ever watched T, I was very taken aback by his playstyle mm -hmm. because uh, back at home I played with a very very technical lab monster heavy Link named Khakis and T is kind of the polar opposite yeah. of Khakis playstyle in that he just plays a very walk heavy fundamental footsies game nothing too crazy over the top you know but he gets it done so efficiently right no I actually feel the same way we have Scizor here in SoCal and Scizor is all about tech all about knowing exactly percentages and like really weird tricks that you just have never seen coming. So, yeah, to see T play the character in a completely different style is really, really cool. And to see it work out is even better. Okay, so I'm assuming that we're going to have a Link versus Fox, but the cat may also try the Ness. Mm. I think Ness versus Link, although, you know, you look at the tier list, you'd expect Ness to be a couple pegs higher. I think uh, he definitely suffers against zoning characters and against sword characters. So, right. yeah, it is indeed going to be Fox versus Link. Let's see what this mystery Link from Japan, who's, I believe, only been to... This is his third American tournament. Yeah, probably, right? man. There are a lot of the Japanese players that are showing up recently. They're, it's their first time coming here, so... Right. Third major, let me Yeah, third myself, major, of course. They've all been hitting a whole bunch of <laughs> various locals when they stay. Yeah, Wednesday Night Fights was literally, like, top eight Japanese, like, tournament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's a fair footstool, but he messes Ooh. up! Yeah, T not going to go for anything crazy, like we said. You know, he's not going to take any risks. He's just going to get back stage control and, uh, you know, <laughs> thank the Guardian Angels that he's not dead. Yeah, and the cat trying to hit him with that honesty hour right there. <laughs> T is like, sorry, man, my DMs are closed. Oh, All right, good forward tilt to relieve some pressure and get stage control. That is really scary. And the cat's going to have to watch out recovering high from now on. Yeah, T was looking for that forward tilt, which just has such a wide arc and covers Fox Illusion and various moves like that really well, but unfortunately just has too much startup and the cat able to fight his way back on stage and take the first stock here. Yeah, really nice uh, Nair and then reading the tech and just running back and getting the up smash. That said, he is definitely bleeding right now. 89% against a powerhouse like Link, you're certainly in danger. Yeah, yeah, his forward air is crazy. I just learned how... Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. It's I don't even really need to talk strong. about it. Look at that move. That's ridiculous. Yeah, and if you hit with both of the hits of it, it's something like 25 damage. <laughs> that's does real. It does a lot, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, that actually doesn't work at really low percents against Fox. Yep. He falls so fast that he's able to get to the ground and shield. Now it'll work. Yeah, you pretty much have to go for up throw until about 10, maybe 15 percent. Nice grab. That's, that kind of speaks to the differences between players like Scizor and Khakis versus T. Whereas, like, I've literally seen on Khaki's computer, he has a whole chart of when down throw combos into what on every character, yep. including Rage and all that. But T is just like, eh, you know, it probably works. I'm going to try it. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. I'll never do it again. Right, right. Kind of figures it out as he goes. But, you know, sometimes winging it is the best way to do it because if you try going according to a certain plan and, you know, things start falling apart, that could be your downfall. Nice up he had a shield there. That's going to be a big threat against Fox, too, because Foxes love to pressure your shield just over and over and over with a bunch of hitboxes, so... The threat of being uh, completely sent off stage at a weird angle is could be really scary for Nakat. Both these guys just one solid hit confirm oh away God. from death. So cool. If that was anywhere near the edge, that would have been it. Again, T trying to snipe out 
uh, he actually, the cat's illusion. Yeah, he had the right read on the illusion, but he just wasn't there in time to punish it. And the cat actually had a punish as well. He's able to avoid death. Very good by both players there after Nakat did the landing dare into the ground to just hold shield. They, they yep. both made the right choice right. there. But Nakat reacting faster, getting that grab. And oh, the pivot forward tilt oh, going to close it out. It. Actually, I think Nakat pushed a button in the blast zone, and that's what killed him. I saw him uh, maybe throw out a jump or something. I really? He could have lived, yeah. Oh, wow. It looked like he was dead just based on Yeah, the, the speed he was going, it yeah. looked like he was He might have died either way, but I know he pushed a button. Whew. All right, so T taking game one. Wouldn't it just be crazy to have a link in top 32? Yeah, it would, but it wouldn't be the craziest thing at to happen tournament. at this tournament. To yeah, be that's honest. true. That's that's oof, good point. However, Nakat definitely a very very strong player. Even though you know we haven't been seeing too much of him, and I'd say the last like year, yeah. in the last couple months, Nakat has been showing up. Yeah, and he's been definitely pulling some big wins. He actually almost took Void out of winners bracket at Genesis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those two living together, I think, really lends itself to Nakat uh, having a decent advantage over him. But Nakat looking really strong on Fox's best stage right now. Okay, wow, that was barely safe on hit. Yeah. It was like frames away from actually Nakat getting another hit. Dude, every time forward air hits, it looks so powerful. And I love T's keep it simple kind of game plan. Just shooting the arrows at that perfect lateral range. Ooh, did he just try to two-frame him with the grass chopper? I think so, dude. I love the way he used um, he used the boom, the gale wing at the edge. It actually prevented Nakat from grabbing the ledge, and he was able to land that forward tilt. Yeah, that move is so tricky if you master it, you know, obviously being that it has no hitbox on the way back, but instead the win makes it very tricky, but a player like T, I mean, his job is literally to learn the ins and outs of Link. Falling down with that downer is actually going to take the stock. I don't think the cat was expecting that at all. Uh, T, I, I very rarely see him land with uh, lag on that down air. Exactly. He, he times it very well. See, there it is again. Man, T, I like T. Every time I commentate about something he's doing, he just showcases <laughs> it. Thank you, T. You're making this very easy. He's got one of those auto-translators <laughs> in his ear. He's like, you got it, boss. Okay, whiffing a grab there. This is the cat's big chance to even up the stock count. Ah, that, that's there so fast. Very hard to react to. Even grabbing ledge twice. Okay, he's edge pressure looking pretty tight, but the cat able to find his way back to the center here. <gasps> Ooh, oh. the long-lasting hitbox of neutral air actually not lining up with yeah, that recovery. Yeah, he just didn't line it up pro properly, but I think this could be it. Oh, oh, that would have been so cool. Trying to hit him with the forbidden technology right there. <laughs> this could be a stock. Whoa, that was great from the cat. Very creative way to get it done. I like it. Uh oh, oh, but this is bad. This. Oh, oh no, my boy. A little Green charge air dodges. Measure. Oh, yeah, that was great. So basically, it becomes a 50-50. Link gets a 50-50 off the down throw. A nice little pop up there from T. But after the down throw, you could basically do an up air. And even if they air dodge, the up air usually lands, but you can't do it under a platform. So he might as well just go for the up smash and uh, get the air dodge read. Yeah, that actually is a very solid 50-50. Mm -hmm. Link's down throw into up air slash up smash. But did you see the eSports eating grin on T's face <laughs> right before that little fist pump? Like, dude, he's feeling it right oh, now. Oh, yeah. You should have seen him. He went crazy against Meteor. He, he popped the hell off. It was great. Oh, actually, is that my boy GSM Korean? Yeah, that's coaching Korean, man. Yeah, he was he was coaching uh, he was coaching Void earlier, so he might as well coach the other members. I love that guy. Korean, recently great. married. Yeah, by dude, the way, congratulations, so, Korean. Yeah, congrats. congrats. Oh, he is gonna bust out the Lucina. I actually really like this pick by Nakat. Huh. Uh, as you know, not just because I play this character, but I've played this matchup a lot, and I really do think that uh, it's pretty heavily favored for the Falchion characters. They're just able to chase Link down off stage, be very safe on his shield with things like landing up airs and down tilts. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're just able to outframe data him, yeah. out edge guard him, out pressure him, and you have the speed to navigate through those projectiles. Yeah, on paper, this makes a lot of sense, but he's been playing so phenomenally today that uh, we'll see if Nakat can pull it off. Right, and despite all those advantages that Lucina has over Link in this matchup, she is also combo food. She's just that perfect weight and falling speed, and also she's very tall which makes Link have a field day comboing her. I like that little mix-up with the Gale Wing and throwing out the grab, hoping that he'd be uh, kind of winded into him, but it's not going to happen. <sighs> See, one of the biggest things is like it feels like Nakat doesn't know how to punish uh, when T hits a Nair on his shield, and, and T's all about that, man, because you have to shield it. If you don't shield it, you get dash attacked, or even worse, and you could die. Right, if it's fully spaced and you can't shield grab it, then there is next to nothing you can do, aside from, I guess, Dolphin Slash. Mm -hmm. Lucina, one of the few characters able to actually do that. He's rolling in quite a lot. I wonder if Nakat's going to eventually pick up on that, get a forward smash read. Ooh. Ooh. 
he was so close to just getting executed there, and he actually yep. just DI'd in, which Here's makes... the 50-50. Yeah, that makes it even easier, yeah. honestly, if you don't DI out. Like, Link at least will be forced into dashing. Yeah, I don't actually think he DI'd at all, because I think even if you DI in, you it, it kind of works in a way where you get a little bit of leverage, right? Uh, no, I think you just go straight up. Oh, okay. DI in. Yeah. Oh, never mind then. Yeah, but it, it is very oh. deceiving. <laughs> because, so much damage. Uh, Toon Link's down throw sends you backwards by right, default, right. so you want to DI in. Yeah. Wow, he went for it. Oh, yeah. wait, he didn't grab. Oh, okay, okay. He's not able to really punish it. T playing so amazing, though. The cat really struggling with what? it. What? The counter doesn't have a way to hit you if you hit the right. feet or the head. Yeah, uh, well, also because he bounced off. Yeah. Because when you make contact with Link's down air, you get that bounce for additional safety. Yep. The cat's able to take the first stock. Japan is absolutely going off for their boy T right now. I can hear it all the way from over here. Yeah, <gasps> they're known for having very Ooh. modest crowds, too. Yeah, not like not today, man. T yeah. brings the hype. <laughs> Are we fair? One hit from seeing Link in top 32 winners at Civil War. <gasps> oh, oh my god! god! He is actually a god. That oh. was insane. Uh, we got the Pac-Man mural for absolutely no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Let's go. That was a phenomenal edge guard. That's the best edge guard I've seen all day. That yeah, that was nuts. Drops the bomb, and even though uh, Nakat was able to tech the bomb, he covered it with forward air perfectly, covering every single option. <sighs> wow, well fought by Nakat. I think maybe he should have busted the Lucina out second game. Um, I do see where Fox can struggle in that matchup, being that he doesn't have a disjointed hitbox to really contend with Link's sword. Right. I uh, I don't know, man. I can see him staying Fox just because he had the battlefield counter pick. So you want you always kind of want to try Fox on battlefield. But I, <laughs> T just commanded the stage, and then there on Smashville, the Lucina was looking pretty good. But T just seems to have a handle on every matchup that he comes up against. Yeah, and Japan really showing up today, guys. We have Kirihara, Shutan. And T, all sitting pretty in the winner's top 32 side. Also, shortly we're going to be seeing Captain Zack versus Earth. So we could see another member of Team Japan making it out there. I mean, we're talking about Civil War, but this looks like an international affair. It really point. does. Yeah, this is <laughs> Team Japan, yeah. man. They're yeah. their own thing. Exactly. Forget about who's going to win between Zero and Ally or whatever. Like Right now, I'm focused on the North Americans defending this turf. Yeah, dude. We got to get some Americans up there, man. Come on. Yeah, come on, man. All right, here we go. Oh, wait. Oh, we got my boy Two Scoops Nico. Oh. Two Scoops Fire and Dice Nico. Same uh, same sponsor, same crew, and he's going up against. Is that Neotono? Uh, it's going to be Sue. Oh, it's Sue. Okay, okay, okay. I couldn't tell from over here. Yes, yeah, so we have another Japan versus NA match. And actually, queued up are CLG Void and Hikaru. <laughs> There's so and, many Japanese players. Yeah, and Avadango and Elegant. So. I don't know, man. Somebody's got to stop these guys. They're they're too good right now. Yeah, every single uh, Japanese player we've commentated has made it in winner's side, right? Yes, so far. They're not skipping a beat, man. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, people have long talked about the prowess of Japan in Smash 4. Previously, you know, they've, they've come to the States. They haven't quite performed up to the expectations, with a few exceptions, like Abadongo has been consistently placing very, very well. Right. Kamehameha taking second at EVO. But now I feel like they're really getting into their groove. They're adjusting to the American tournament atmosphere where, you know, got louder crowds, just a, a generally different environment. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, they found their stride. Yeah. I, I got to talk about my boy Nico here for a minute because yes, Nico Nico was able to be anti earlier. That's that's what put him here. Um, he's he's uh, every once in a while he kind of struggles in these big tournaments. Uh, maybe he gets nervous or, or something like that. He did very well at EVO, actually. But other than that, um, he kind of falls short. So it's so nice to see him here, uh, possibly making top 32, possibly knocking one of these Japanese players into losers. We, we could really use that right now. But... Yeah, I'm just I'm just happy for Nico, and against Lucario, it's actually going to be interesting because uh, obviously Nico plays Shulk. Mm -hmm. He can go into Shield Art and basically have an extra stock against Lucario, and and the Rage slash Aura might be nullified a little bit. Furthermore, he can go into Smash Monado Never Art mind. and oh, I actually would like to see Nico bust out the the Cloud here. I think that matchup is very heavily in Cloud's favor, or yeah. at least noticeably. But I think he's going to try out Shulk uh, for game one, and if it goes horribly wrong, he'll switch to Cloud. He's been playing right. Cloud a lot this weekend. Yeah, we've seen Sue struggle against players and characters who are able to close his stocks out before that aura really becomes a factor. So I think, you know, Shulk having access to the Smash art and also a lot of range Yeah, really will be a tough obstacle for Sue to overcome. But you never know, man. This guy, I mean, and his character are <laughs> very well suited to making comebacks. And also, I just have to say, Sue's neutral? So sick. Yeah, this guy amazing. plays super clean with Lucario and... You know, kind of like Bayonetta, like really good punish game, kind of weak neutral, but Sue definitely defies the stereotype there. And Sue really, I mean, he makes it count when he gets that hit. 
Uh, <laughs> I've seen him do some ridiculous things with this character. I'm very excited to see him play Nico. This is actually probably going to be my favorite set of the night so far. This is one of my favorite stages. I wish there was, you know, maybe if just that was the stage. Yeah. With like the, and no wall, but That'd be the, pretty sick. the three equal width platforms. That'd yeah. be really cool. I miss old Corneria though. I definitely miss old Corneria. Yeah. Or Sector Z from Sector Z is good too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to be kicking off this set. Their buttons are checked. They're definitely working properly. At least I would hope so. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're in top 32. If their controller's broken, they're incredible. Or yeah. about to be in top 32. Excuse me. And plus, after that button check, that's kind of you just, you know, signing the contract. Like, okay, I accept. <laughs> no the controller, outcome. Johns. After yeah. This. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> it looks like uh, game one is going to be on Battlefield. All right. We're going to have Nico Shok versus uh, Sue's tried and two true Lucario. That is really hard to say. Tried and true Lucario <laughs> from Sue. There we go. All right. So Nico, this is actually, uh, I think this is his favorite stage, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he loves sharking under the platforms with up tilts. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be Dreamland as well, but. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah. that's really Shulk's strong suit. I think the triplats are absolutely where he should be looking to stay. Oof. Buster mode against Lucario is so scary. You're either going to eat a lot of damage, or, uh, you know, even if you give Lucario a lot of damage, it's terrifying. So Right, oh, and no. this, this basically makes a 0% Lucario like he has a little bit of aura, because you're taking more damage by being in Buster Art as well. Exactly. 115% already, Sue, looking really strong so far. And of course, now we're going to see him struggle to land the KO because he hasn't been damaged enough himself. <laughs> His character isn't good yet. Yeah, kind of a shame. It's like, Shulk can just turn on the kill. <laughs> <laughs> Lucario actually has to wait to get bodied. Yeah. I wonder what percent a uh, an auraless Lucario can kill Shield Monado uh, Shulk in. It's a good math experiment. All right. Going to go into speed form, though, which is... Oh, okay, wow. never mind. I was going to say, Speed Art is definitely one of the best ways to contend with Lucario, being that it allows you so much more lateral movement on your aerials. You can stay really safe, kind of circumvent his short range, or at least shorter than Shulk's. Do you know what region Kome, uh, Sue lives in? Is he like where Komei is? I do not know. Huh. Because he, he looks uh, pretty dominant in this matchup so far. So it wouldn't surprise me if he trains with Komei or at least has played him before. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, that we have another Shulk in top 96 winners, yep. that being Komei himself, who was able to take Tweak out in a surprising 2-1 victory. Okay. Nico really struggling to get a kill here. However, if he gets an up tilt or a grab in jump mode right now, he can still seal out the stock. He's got some really cool tricks uh, in jump mode. Okay, he's going to jump into it too. Yeah, this is a very Ooh. dangerous game, though, because Lucario with 84%, even though he's a stock up, can absolutely murder yeah. a Smash Monado Shulk. Sue is ever so patient under that platform, just waiting for Nico to kind of throw an aerial into his shield. This is almost over, man. One more good hit from Sue, and we're going to game two. Might pull out the cloud at the rate this is going. Yeah, this matchup does look kind of rough, but of course, Shulk being such a versatile character with all the different arts, you know, he can kind of change the pace of the match every single time. Like, especially because it's best of five. You can just go for a different order on which arts he's going to pull out when. And also oh. just adapt a different play style. <sighs> Back air from all the way across the stage still isn't going to do it. Up B, though. Nico likes to go really low for that. Not going to get it, though. Sue goes even lower and avoids it. Yeah, this just might be too little too late here. I don't know, man. So here in SoCal, oh. Nico, okay, here in SoCal, <laughs> Nico is known for this exact situation. He'll be at 150, 140, some crazy percent, and, and he'll somehow do it. We call it Nico stocks. So let's see if he can do have one now. Yeah, I mean... It's funny because that would certainly be a nice taste of karma for Sue. Yeah, exactly. Who has definitely been in this position way too many times. Oh, right. and the jump art actually making him go too high yep. to get the landing <gasps> control there. Oh, my gosh. Nico. Uh, this is what he does, though. He'll circle camp with jump. Oh, that's it. it. Does. Yeah, even in shield mode, that's going to seal it out. Okay, so Nico falling a game behind, but I don't know. He's starting to warm up there at the end, I think. Yeah, I think we're going to see him stick to Shulk after. I he, think he'll stick to Shulk one more game. Yeah, got a little momentum going, and that's really what you need in this game. Once you get going, it's a lot easier to make that comeback happen or maybe turn around after an ugly first game. Mm -hmm. I think Nico getting some coaching from Tremendo Dude right now, another another really no knowledgeable Shulk player. Oh. Okay. I don't think we're going to see character switches from either of these guys. It's not looking like it. I don't think I've seen Sue ever pick someone that's not Lucario. I haven't either. 
And of course, Nico does have the cloud in his back pocket in case of emergency. I feel like that's the story of most people's lives <laughs> in this game. Yeah, he's a good pocket to have, man. For sure. Covers a lot of those obscure matchups. You know, Cloud is, although not the best character in the game, definitely one of them and kind of the mid-tier killer. Very comparable to, I'd say, Melee Sheik and maybe like Brawl DDD, mm -hmm. although definitely better relative to the rest of the cast. <laughs> definitely. Where it's like, if you're not at this certain threshold of being good as a character, Cloud is just able to shut you down. All right, so we are going to stick with Shulk, and he's going to counter pick Smash Bros. here. Okay, that's Speed Art definitely making his areas a lot safer. He can just drift so far away. And it also extends his follow-up game, even though he sacrifices damage on each consecutive hit. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Nico. He needs to make so many uh, little like micro-adjustments that uh, like from mistakes that he was making on Game 1. Uh, he can't aerial into Sue's shield as much as he was. I noticed that a lot. He was getting shield grabs so much. And with Shulk, you can really avoid that situation if you space your aerials correctly. Yeah, the Cario's grab range is actually very deceptively large, at least just compared to the animation. Right. It looks like he barely puts his palm out, but he can get some surprising punishes with it. Ooh, nice tech chase from Nico. Going for an air dodge down air there. That's that's one of Nico's nice 50-50s. He can just continue that with a fair string or wait for an air dodge and go for the dare. It's kind of like the whack version of the Ken combo. Yeah, pretty much. Uh-oh. All right. He needs to get out of it. Sue, you know, while he's 20% down, you're never really down when you're Lucario until uh, you lose that stock. Yeah, and once you hit 80% and your opponent's higher than that, you have, like, the largest lead you yeah, could ever imagine. Yeah, ridiculous. This character, man, once he gets a stock lead, it's just over. Like, That's look exactly at what we're talking about. Is it up throw? It's up throw, right? Yeah. It's up air? Yeah. Yep. And there's a small window during which that's pretty Ooh. much guaranteed, or at least very, very tough to get out of. Sue doing that light speed fastball air dodge, even though Lucario is so floaty. But smash mode uh, back air is actually going to seal out that stock, and we're at even count here. Yeah, and just not allowing Sue to accumulate any kind of a lead here. I mean, it's so easy as Lucario for that to just snowball into either a, a two-stock or at least a, a very easy time closing the game out if your opponent does manage to scrape that one stock off of you. Yeah, Nico being at zero and uh, is, is just really, really crucial because the more damage he racks up now, the less chance he has of, you know, Lucario doing something crazy. I can't believe he's going into buster mode. That's so risky. But it's working out, man. He's it makes been, sense. Uh, he's had him at the ledge for so long. Yeah, you just build him up to, like, 85 to 100 and then switch into Smash real quick and get it done. But... Very curious that he's going to jump. I guess he just wants to really chase him off stage. Yeah. Squeeze the life out of him. But here we go. We're going to see Smash if he can get his B presses correct. <laughs> I think he's going into Shield Art here. He, yeah. uh, oh, that's it. Wow. Just nails him with an up smash, and we've got an even set. Sue just unfazed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that Raspberry Arizona man, definitely the best player. That's a good call. Yeah. That's definitely a good yeah. call. Probably why he won that, that game. Okay. Won a piece here. Nico definitely looking a lot cleaner in that match. Maybe just had to adjust to the matchup. You know, his game plan was relatively similar, but just his execution on everything looked a lot better. Yeah, one of the big things I saw is, like I said, he wasn't getting shield grabbed as much that game. Uh, he was a lot safer with his aerials, and then when he got a hit, he kept it going and, and really kept the momentum. Maybe right. Battlefield just allowed too many different landing options for Sue. Possibly. Now he's got no landing options because we're going right into Final Destination. No platforms to escape to. So a uh, little bit of a tighter space here. Right. However, it was Sue's counter pick, and that does make a lot of sense yeah. because now he can just kind of throw those Aura Spheres without worrying too much. Or rather, there will be a, a much higher chance of the Aura Sphere actually landing and trapping Nico's attempt to get back down to the ground. Right. While there's no uh, you know platforms, there is a lot of horizontal advantage. So Sue can just run away, charge Aura Sphere, and get a lot of room if he feels uh, really threatened. Because I think Smash was a little too small for him, just too close quarters, and Nico was all over him. I mean... Shulk's sword pretty much covers half of Smashville. Wow, and just these combo extensions from Sue. Yeah, nice. stuff, it doesn't look true, but he makes it work. Okay, Nico firing back, though. Okay, again, just staying out of that shield grab range. Really meaning a world of difference here. Oh, it, it, Sue has such an advantage here, though. Uh, Nico really can't lose the stock without at least getting Lucario to around 80. That's when Shulk can start thinking about, you know, big KOs. Actually, right now, if he gets a grab, it could be really big. I like that going for the up throw forward air and modifying the attempt on which Shulk's usually are looking for out of that jump mode up throw. But, wow, trapped at the edge. The Aura Sphere charge, man. So many active frames. Just very e uh, easily able to catch someone's attempt to get back on stage. Yeah, it was also pretty telegraphed. If you're in jump mode, you're probably going to jump. So, Sue throwing out that Aura Sphere was, uh, was a really good idea. 
Ashmo taking a big risk here. Nico just trying to play with these safe landings, but Ooh, he so goes he right into shield free. as soon as he gets grabbed. <laughs> just so scared. He knows what might lie in the future for yeah. him. Uh oh. Uh, just a side B. Wow, that sent him nowhere. I don't think I've ever <laughs> seen that go so little distance. Whoa! If that was in shield mode, he'd be absolutely destroyed right now. But we're hanging on. Still got to eliminate two full Lucario stocks, though. It's, it's not easy to do. Yeah, especially because he's already super powered on this one. Yeah. Oh, I love that. The charge, shield cancel, and anticipating Nico's jump, but he actually didn't give it to him. Nico, really uncharacteristic. He's so good at getting edge guards usually in jump mode, so it's 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 strange to see him flub it so much. Uh, Sue, however, man, he's doing great. That backer is going to seal it out. Even in shield art, that's enough to do it. 2-1 Sue, one game away from another Japanese player making it in top 32 winner side. Let's see, is Nico going to be able to stop the trend? <sighs> I, I don't know if he's going to switch to Cloud or not. That's that's a big question. Is, does he believe? <laughs> I think he's asking <laughs> he's himself. Yeah, he's asking himself. Yeah. Does he believe enough in the Shulk? Honestly, I, I do think it's a pretty good call. There are just so many ways that Cloud can stuff out Lucario with mm -hmm. superior range, roughly equal frame data. You know, Lucario does actually swing pretty fast. Yeah. Like his forward air, up air, neutral air, very quick moves. All right, he is going to stick to Shulk, and we're going Dreamland. Down throw dash attack. Yeah, nice early damage. And this is uh, part pretty much where Nico really excels is if he has you at the ledge, he's able to keep you there for so long. So I really commend Sue for, for being able to get off the ledge as much as he has against Nico. Because yeah. that's definitely Nico's strongest point. Just stems from melee. He was a big edge guarder in melee. So. Okay, I didn't know he had a melee background. Yeah, actually. yeah. He, Who did he play? Marth? He played Marth. Yeah. yeah. He played Marth in this game as well, and in Brawl. He was known as like one of the best Marths in Brawl. Okay. Again, Sue off to this kind of early lead. Though that doesn't mean all that much because as long as his percent stays in those whitish, yellowish numbers, yep. he's not going to be as able to get these KOs. Oof. There's just buster mode again. Yeah, and he's just winning neutral repeatedly, whittling away at that shield. Great roll read. I can't believe he actually read that, but Sue, uh, not quite in the position he needed to be to punish it, but it definitely sends a message. And that's really what sets apart a top player from a very good player. If you know the counterplay to your setup, like, for example, Aura Sphere Charge on Shield, most people are probably going to try to roll back because right. you can't shoot the Aura Sphere behind him. But Sue preemptively going for that roll read. Very crispy. Okay. Transferring over to jump mode, so maybe looking for a uh -oh. big finish here, but Sue just goes high and avoids the situation. Yeah, jump mode kind of like a surrogate smash mode yeah. at some points, just because you can get those super early kills by going really deep and chasing someone. Nico fearing death here at early percent, so going into shield art. Ooh, okay, nice back throw. Still in smash mode, so still a bit of a risk, but did he two frame? I'm not sure, I think it actually just reached so low through the stage. Oh my gosh, Lucario clung to the ledge. And down throw from the center isn't actually going to take it. What an answer from Sue. And when Lucario takes damage, he kind of gets a jump mode of his own because his recovery extends in yeah. distance so much. So Sue, knowing he had the time to press a button there. I don't even think Shield Art could have saved you from, from anything that Lucario was going to throw at 105% yeah. uh, when you're that high as well. So Sue, excellent awareness there, getting that up smash. And now he's, he's one stock away from uh, knocking Nico into losers. It's a three-piece combo, 28, and then a stray neutral air to 35. Nico it's risking counting. it all. Oh, Smash Mode is so scary against Lucario. Yeah, like he could die at 48 in Smash Mode. And also, jump makes you quite susceptible to dying as well. You yeah. do take additional knockback in this form as well. Okay, this is really Nico's last stand here. That's it all in the Smash Mode. This yeah, could be something. dangerous. Gets a down throw, but even betting it all, it's almost not even all or nothing because he didn't get a kill out of it. Up till we'll there do it, we though. There we go. That magical percent. <sighs> yeah, 69% is not terrible, uh, as long as he doesn't take any more, basically. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that Aura Sphere was Just cuts enough. it in half, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Physics. This is the Monado's power. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've still got a game. Yeah, it's oh, definitely. absolutely not over. No, not at all. Well, Buster Mode. Oh, that puts so much damage on. I want to see five. Let's go, Nico. Okay. Interesting little trade-off here, though. Completely unbiased, impartial commentary. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel like the most neutral stance to take is wanting to see every game or every set go to game five. Oh, definitely. These are two phenomenal players using pretty underrepresented characters as well. Shield Art saving his life there, 131%. 
Okay, Good grab. I, Sue is looking for that empty hop into Force Palm grab. Nice roll on. He waited so long, it really uh, made Nico question what he was going to do. Is that Ooh, it? That go. is going to be the set. Nico falls 3 1 to Sue, and he's going to move on to top 32 winner side. I believe that is the fourth Japanese player to do so after T, Shuton, and. Kirihara. Uh, Kirihara, yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, was, did someone shout that? In yeah, the back? someone yeah. shouted wow. Kirihara. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Thanks to the crowd for throwing us the assist. It's definitely been a long weekend so far, but is very far from over. Yeah. Do you remember who was queued up next? Oh, it's right there. Nice. Yep. It's going to be Void and Hikaru if they're going straight in the order that's shown to us. I'm so happy that Hikaru is still in winners. <laughs> he's so hyped to watch. I, me and Larry, Larry's a big fan of Hikaru. He loves, uh, he's been playing Bowser a lot recently, so he's a big fan of uh, Bowser and DK. Mm -hmm. So he's just talking about how big of a fan he is against uh, uh, for Hikaru. Yeah, and he's actually one of the Japanese players that we've seen the least of in the United States. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of damage he can do. I mean, winner's top 96, already quite an impressive feat at yeah. easily the hardest tournament I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. This is yeah. the most – we don't have the most entrance, but this is the most stacked Smash 4 tournament of yeah. all time. It's what? Just shy of 800 entrants, mm -hmm. but the talent is so deep. I mean, people coming out – like, how many Japanese players came in total? I think something like 15? Yeah, it was their whole PR, I think. Wow. Yeah. That's actually ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then, of course – Zero and Ally, top two on the PGR. Then I think the whole top ten's here. Yeah, uh, 47 out of 50 yeah. of the PGR. 47 right? out of 50, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I'm just going to grab the book. <laughs> but, yeah, man. It's this easier is... to name the ones who aren't here. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, uh, Hikaru, it's going to be interesting as well because, uh, like we said, Hikaru plays DK and Bowser. Void is kind of known to struggle against DK just a little bit. We knew uh, Larry, when he was really struggling against Void, he started counterpicking uh, DK as his answer for a while, and it was working. It took a couple sets just solo DKing against Void. Um, I know Nairo, Nairo whipped out Bowser against Void uh, pretty recently as well, and while it didn't work out, it was still close. Right, I'd say it's more like Void struggles against getting killed way before his time. Yeah, you know, he exactly. just outplays people in neutral repeatedly, and, you know, 20%. Rage Zero stood up B as we've seen so many times against Nairo, just these heartbreaking finishes. So I don't know if we're going to see that same kind of narrative play out in this set. I know Hikaru is definitely going to be looking to make that happen. Yeah. And in a matchup like DK versus Sheik, where it's so heavily in Sheik's favor in the neutral game, he really does need to do that to make it happen. Yeah. Uh, interesting enough, though, I was commentating Void's match earlier, and he did play Day in order to make it out winner's side. Mm -hmm. So he already had to deal with a character who kills you know, mm -hmm. Matt early, even if you're outplaying them over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. So, and he, his kill confirms were consistently just on point. So maybe he's just, uh, he's figured it out and he's able to get these kills as early as he needs to without anything silly happening to him. Yeah, that really is just the constant struggle of Sheik. She's so good at actually fighting you, actually getting the hits, making them last long with huge combos. But when it comes to taking that stock away, she can definitely struggle. Yeah. However, she's got the tools. Like, when played at full optimization, she definitely does. She can get the kills. And this is what I was talking about when I was commentating him earlier. I think Void's kill confirms are a lot more on point than a lot of the other uh, high level Sheiks. And that's what really excels him in matchups like this. Okay, but it looks like he's actually selected Fox. We have, uh, we mm -hmm. have access to the gameplay screen here. And I don't know if he's going to be switching off. I think. Personally, that he really should go with Sheik. Even though Fox has that, you know, the KO power, the yeah. raw knockback that Sheik lacks. Um. I'm, uh, I don't know, man. Actually, Larry being, you know, kind of like a connoisseur of both of these characters, he mm -hmm. says Fox absolutely destroys DK. Mm -hmm. um, it is so hard for DK to land against Fox. So I can agree with it. Void's Fox is uh, just as technical as the Sheik. He has a lot of confirms as well. So uh, it's a best of five. I don't disagree with him trying it for at least a game. Uh, especially if it's against the DK. If it's against the Bowser, I think you should definitely go Sheik. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I definitely see the merit in this choice, and of course it's a very difficult matchup for Donkey Kong. However, if you know Void, you know him for his Sheik. That's true. And Can't argue with that. Yeah, when you're playing with Fire here and this making it to top 32 situation, you might want to just stick to the character you have the most experience with. But, I mean, Void is one of the best players in the world. He's, I believe, sixth on the PGR, and of course I can fact check this here. But... The dude's a beast, so his intuition is definitely trustworthy. Yep, he's number six. Yep. <sighs> yeah, and uh, I've actually never seen Hikaru play, so I'm just really excited to, to watch the dude play. Um, I've just heard good things. <laughs> All good things. Yeah, carrying the Donkey Kong uh, torch for Nyanko, mm -hmm. who is not present, I believe. Or at least definitely not present in the top 96 of this event. <laughs> Playing the most handshake. awkward game of 
rock paper handshakes. <laughs> I still don't know what exactly they're going for there, but I don't either. I I know Void when you try to fist bump him, he just gives you scissors. So oh he yeah, just, he gives you the win. Yeah. No, no, dude, you gotta <laughs> when they fist bump, go for paper and say paper beats rock. All right, so he is gonna uh, try Fox here for game one. Like I said, this matchup pretty brutal for DK. Uh, I mean, DK can always kill early with the with the ding dong mm -hmm. combo, so that's not something. You know, oh wow, that was a lot of footstools. <laughs> I love how you can do that even if they're sitting in shield. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a very unexplored option in the Smash 4 metagame. This is exactly uh, yep. what I'm talking about. Like, DK cannot land against Fox. It is so brutal for him to try to get back to the ground. And even when he does, Fox usually has a lot of pressure tools to, like, just keep up the, the pace. Right. That said, though, if DK does get his hands on Fox, yeah. it gets ugly real fast, being that he's light and a fast baller, super combo food, and goes out super early to the Ding Dong confirm out I of really, the cargo throw. I really like that Hikaru's not coming down with a lot of air dodges. Oh, no, nah, not yet. Now it will. What? Oh my god. I mean, on Town and City with Rage, I would not have been surprised to see a kill. Yeah, that's true. But that was still just like the coolest attempt at a combo <laughs> I've ever seen. Not even attempt. He did get it. Okay. Nice snare. Gets a forward throw here just to you know keep the stage control. Definitely doesn't want to get grabbed right now. Now, even though Void has more than 100% lead here, <laughs> this is dead even. Yeah, I know. Only uh, one of these characters can kill for oh, one grab. Wow. So that's actually going to seal it out, and uh, Void's going to take a nice lead here. 73% though, you can't get grabbed, so... Ooh, and you see Hikaru fishing for it already. This guy is scheming. Yep. Oh, there it is. Yeah, here we go. That's even <laughs> the equalizer, man. We're back wow. to one stock apiece. And this is exactly why I don't like this matchup. Even yeah. though, on paper, Fox destroys Donkey Kong. And we're probably going to see the up air storm again. It's just such a risky play. 36% <laughs> off one grab. Just claps him up. Oh, and look at him struggle to land here. Oh, I like that. Using Ooh. the forward air to kind of stall his ascent. Yeah, that was really cool. Setting him up maybe for uh, beating an air dodge with an up air. Also has to be wary of, uh, of the Donkey Kong punch, man. Yes. He's fully powered. As long as that little head underneath Donkey Kong's name exists, as long as he has a stock and this match is still going on, Anything can happen. Oh, I'm very surprised he didn't go for jab to grab. Yeah. Oh my god, the shine stall was perfect. That's exactly what Void needed. And he finds the up air he needs. Takes game one over Hikaru. Beautifully chasing that arc. And the uh, real blessing of fighting against a big body character is that you don't have to be so precise yeah. when going for stuff like that. Right. What a close set already, though. I yeah. mean, if that dictates the pace of the, the set, it's going to be a good one. Really curious as to who Void is going to stick with for the remainder of the set. But it looks like it's Fox. He has not had anything to say to the contrary. I mean, hey, it was working. Yeah, so why when you broke, don't fix it. Switch when you lose, or uh, if you just feel like it's not going to work out anymore. Right, and even though Hikaru was able to even that game up so quickly, as long as you're able to take the stocks first, that's what really matters. That's so ridiculous to me that that's a 35% combo at zero. Yeah. It just looks so funny. And it's so simple, too. Yeah. Okay, looks like Hikaru has made some kind of adjustment here, because Void has not... That's it, that's a stock. Uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> that's that's gross, man. So yeah, that's what I mean, man. Killed like you know, so sometimes early. paper is not the, the end oh, yeah, of the things. Yeah. yeah. But Hikaru, very demanding lead so far, or commanding lead. Of course, oh. those oh. auto cancel up airs, making it so difficult for Donkey Kong to get back down to the ground, trapping all sorts of air dodges. Ooh. Why why spend it there though? You know. Okay. Either way, both these players. Yo, some did he actually go for that? He did. I'm I so happy. Being that Will lives pretty close to me, you know, I've seen <laughs> that happen before, and it's always just painful. You see the opponent's soul get crushed. The car is so good at calling the 50-50s on the up airs uh, after getting hit with up tilts. Never there mind. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All That's right. Void so evening up the stock count here, but Hikaru just a little bit of percent away from actually sealing out the game if he gets a grab. Yeah, he can't get grabbed. Void actually absolutely cannot make another mistake. Well, and that up tilt almost was the mistake, but it was just out of range for the grab. Of course, that moves. Oh, no. Oh, that's it. That's, that's it. Wow. Hikaru takes game two, and we got an even set. This might be where Void thinks about switching to Sheik. Yeah, I think once you drop one, now it's a best of three because it's 1-1. One, one, but right. if he were down 0-1, I, I would expect him to immediately take that cursor over to Sheik. Right. But I don't know. Maybe he's going to still keep playing with it. I'm sure after so many sets with Larry, he... And actually against False as well in Hawaii, That's I true. believe it was last week. It was a very close call. Void almost did drop the set with Sheik to False's Donkey Kong, which is, of course, way less polished than Hikaru's. Right. Uh, yeah, he's or sticking with Fox, and we're going Final Destination.
Also, no shade to my ball, my boy False's DK. <laughs> it's really good, but I mean, you know, you don't see it in tournament every day. Let's put it that way. A lot of damage here from Void. It really feels like one of these uh, players just comes right out the gate swinging and gets so much damage before anything actually happens to them. Man, this juggle game is just devastating. Yep. That's, no that's a stock for DK. No platforms to retreat to. Void looking so good on this game three. This Fox has definitely ascended since the last time I got to see it. Oh, yeah. He plays it a lot. Yeah. Of course, you being a SoCal native, definitely know better than I do on the subject. Yeah. Okay. What's the edge oh, trap? Bad get up attack there from Hikaru. This could be pretty bad. Yeah, that's when you really sense the desperation. It's like get up attack is really kind of the trump card that you only can pull out in the last... You know, when, when you're down to your... Absolute last right. choices. With DK, it's actually a pretty good mix-up simply because he has pretty bad ledge options anyway. True. That's going to be a stock. But yeah, uh, DK's get-up attack is kind of like a 50-50, but Void wasn't even close to the ledge when he did the get-up attack, so he was kind of like trying to predict a run-in. Oh my god, the invincibility. Wow, and that was such a weak hitbox. It only did 18%. That was so weird. This time, Hikaru, oh, no. though, choosing to press an attack button instead of air yeah, dodging down. There's no platforms to retreat to. Might actually come back to bite. Void in the butt now. If he gets... Oh, that's that it? That is game. That's it. Oh, my God. Hikaru brings it back in the last 10 seconds. Void calls that timeout, man. Might be having some flashbacks. Some old Larry War flashbacks. Okay. Wow. That was a, such a fast comeback. You blink and you miss it. Again, question of the... Well, really of the set, not of the day. But will the Sheik be coming out now? I think now's a good time to pull it out. Yeah, but again... Kind of just traumatized by some past encounters with Larry. Yeah, he might just feel like uh, sticking to the better matchup is just the better idea. So this is what I was seeing earlier. Korean actually taking a ton of notes, and then when uh, Void calls timeout, he gets all these notes uh, delivered to him. It's really cool. This is what happened versus Day 2. And Game 2 versus Day was a two-stock. So. Of course, only a 30-second coaching allowance for yep. each player, though. I'm so glad that we have like a firm rule on that yes, now. It was, yes. it was such a such a weird like thin blue line before. Yeah, I definitely like seeing that kind of structure put into place. I think coaching is a really valuable thing for the Smash scene. You know, creates a lot of essentially job opportunities. Yeah. Dude, this man's going back to FD. Uh, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> but, All right, man. Hey, Let's man. See how it goes. Void is an extremely talented player and very, very smart as well. Just one of the most cerebral players. So I would not be surprised if he's got some kind of master plan here. Hikaru's got a plan of his own, man. Get Void to 60 to 70 percent and then grab him and end his life. Let's see. So far, he's got a tiny percent lead, but relative to the weight and KO power of these characters, or at least weight, DK is winning by a mile right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Fox has a, a lot to make up now. And the more he makes it up, if he doesn't take the stock, it actually just puts him closer to death. Yeah, exactly. And he's basically one hit into a grab away from dying. Yeah, However, rage actually, it'll, it'll kill. Yeah. Okay, Hikaru just going to choose oh. to jump this time. But now he doesn't have that option. So he's going to drift off stage. Very creative. Instead of just being hungry for the center of the stage, Making sure to really diversify his option choices here. I like that backup. <gasps> no. No, no way! No, 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 no. Not like this. Oh, my and God. One would think that DK has no answer to an opponent sitting in shield on the edge. Oh. But, boy, were we wrong. He had such a huge lead, and it's all completely gone. I just hope he can keep his momentum going, because he's been playing this game right, you know. Uh, but if he gets rattled. Okay, just going to fade back with the spinning Kong. Again, right. choosing these creative ways to get back out of disadvantaged positions. Boy, playing so patient, but that's so much damage. I mean, he's halfway to death. Okay, dash that's going to be another up air. And that dash attack just opens up a world of possibilities for yeah. Fox. Oh, great downer. He's a grab away. This is so close. Boy can't Hikaru. make any mistakes. Oh, he was going for the pivot grab. Yeah, Hikaru definitely knew oh, that. Oh, that's no, it. that's it. That's it. He oh, no, it. too much rage! Yeah, There's too, too much, much rage. rage! He can't do it anymore! Oh, that could have been an up smash. He needs to land this juggle. Uh-oh. Dragon Ball Z moment. Both players flying to opposite corners. In air? Oh, no, he does up air. Okay. Manages to get it up tilt. This is so close. Wow. Had his back turned to the stage, which worked out beautifully for Hikaru yeah, there. Hikaru, he, no! He didn't grab no ledge. way! He didn't grab ledge. He was so afraid to side be on stage because he couldn't get hit with back yeah. air there. Hikaru with an amazing upset. 3-1 over Void. And an emphatic pop-off. Wow, that was an insane set. And again, man, just kind of speaking to why I would have liked to have oh my seen God, the dude. Sheik. <laughs> Hikaru, oh, what? Hikaru's real-life DK. Yeah. Oh, my God. This guy is <laughs> hyped. This is anime Donkey Kong.
That's amazing, dude. I mean, good stuff to Hikaru. It's great to fly all the way out here and be able to do so well. Top 32 winners, yet another Japanese player secures their spot in yeah. uh, top 32 winner side. Man, how often do you get to see the combination of the King Kong chest pound and the Ash Ketchum and, and just <laughs> got a badge? You know, that's, that is just beautiful. Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't believe that set. That was insane. All right, guys, we have now five Japanese players in winner's side, top 32. Somebody please stop them. Our next please. match. Please. I Our mean, I love these guys. They're amazing players. They're great to watch, but, like, come, come on. on we you need know? some support. A little diversity yeah. in this top 32. <laughs> and speaking of diversity, we have it in terms of characters in spades right we now. Really we really do. Donkey Kong, Link, Rosalina, Lucario. I'm Dude, so many ridiculous characters. That, well, not... Rosalina, of course, but you know, like, <laughs> you don't see these characters every day. No, I mean, Japan's tier list is, is much different than ours, and they're just showing why they believe these characters are as good as they are right now. Yes. It's great to see them uh, come out here and kind of like clash with our, our ideas with it. Yeah, it's the East and West battle, you know? Again, really looking like a, an international war rather than a, uh, a civil war. Civil I mean, we war. gotta make it an Sorry. international war now, man. Zero's out. Yeah, yeah, what, come what on. What do we do? What yeah. does Team Zero do? <laughs> yep. <sighs> All right, so our next match is actually another Japanese player versus another American player. Yes. Abadongo versus Elegant, recently signed to Beefy Smash Dudes, which is really cool. Yeah, I think that's really sick. Yeah, picked up for mostly for his doubles play. Okay, so we're actually just going to cut to a break real quick before we get into this match, but it's going to be a real good one, so yeah. make sure you don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back in a few. See you soon. Hey guys, Suji Bam here, and welcome to Dare Down. I have my guest of honor, CLG Void.
Hey, it's Kate Taro here, and we have my boy DC, <laughs> and we're about to start off with some more crazy matches. I just saw the bracket. Actually, I went to sleep, woke up, and was like, oh. "Wow, I don't know how you possibly fell asleep during some of the matches we had on stream, even on you know both streams." What, what? Did you take to even you know close your eyes? Some of the hype matches we've had, uh, you know, even off stream, some it's been completely crazy. Katara, what's what's wrong with you? I'm I'm wondering what's wrong too, but I think <laughs> it's what happened last night. But speaking of what happened last night, we have my boy here with Bunny Ears actually about to come well, on. Up. What happened this, last night? Um, <laughs> so we have Elegant. This is Elegant, right? And we have um, uh, Abadango. Yeah, Abadango. Uh, wow, we're gonna go right into it. I guess you know no breaks at all. Guess, yeah, they must have been ready before we even uh, before we were. There's so many crazy matches and it was streamed so much. I'm definitely not surprised, but I'm excited to see this. So this is Top 96, uh, winner's side, Abadango. Yeah. I actually saw him uh, playing against someone earlier. He did a crazy combo, I believe it was versus AC's Falco. Yeah, I've seen a lot of uh, crazy Abadango plays this weekend. Uh, absolutely one of my favorite players to watch. I just love watching his V2s, man. He's so precise. And it always volatile. It's really scary to just be in the ground. So, look, look uh, Elegant already at 87% with me. I blinked, man. What happened? <laughs> Not too shocked to see. One thing that Abadango is going to have to look out for, Elegant is probably one of the best edge guarders in the game. But just by uh, spamming the down B attack, really good at keeping people off the stage and making them, after they use their second jump, die. And that might what, be a KO already. What were you saying, wow. what you, what were you saying about the edge guard situation? <laughs> Tell me more about that. Well, once he gets the person <laughs> off the stage, <laughs> he'll be able to edge guard. But... No, I, I mean, I, the, the thing about B2 is that at the very least, uh, one of the best air dodges in the game, you know, uh, Mitsu's recovery is amazing, so he's not going to have to worry about that too much. Obviously, it's always a threat, but uh, not so much when you have, you know, as many tools as Mitsu does to make it back to the stage. Very true, and Luigi's the type of character that if you're able to push him away, he doesn't pose much of a threat to you, so... Abadango are playing Mewtwo. Mewtwo is one of the best characters at, I guess you could say, spacing away. It's almost like he has a sword by using his tail. Yeah. Being very safe on the ledge. So Elgin, Elgin down by quite a bit. Mewtwo, of course, being one of the lightest characters in the game. 108%. This is more than enough for uh, you know, a good read from Elegant. Uh, maybe like a forward smash, well spaced. Wow. Possibly looking for the K already if he can get a fair off stage. Ooh, and that's the nature of being a glass cannon, Keitaro. Doesn't matter, man. He, he loves the rage. You know, 108 is a blessing and a curse. It's going to give you a little rage. And that forwarder off the side is going to do it. Extremely fast match. These Ooh, are best time out. five sets. Oh, timeout. Okay. I'm calling timeout early, man. How many timeouts do you get per set? Um, I believe it's one timeout per set. Each person gets a timeout. This um, is a three out of five, homie. You should. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it will probably have, I would assume, um, his other partner, BP Smash Dudes, Arvart, come in and give him some advice. Yeah. You know, it's good that that first match was a two stock. It didn't go too well for him. Uh, I'm sure he's probably looking for any type of, you know, any type of advice he can get from anybody at this point. So that's, uh, I guess, not a terrible time to call a timeout, but uh, relatively early. Kamehameha, of course, sitting behind Abadago. Just chilling. <laughs> no advice giving needed. him any advice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, like, he's just yeah. hanging out. He's like, oh, he's good. Two stock, <laughs> he's good. Hmm. And shout out to this production by a 2G gaming man. Look at this stage, it's beautiful. Yeah, it just keeps changing. Like, I did not see that Toon Link uh, pic picture up there. Yeah, they, up there. they've been cycling it through the weekend. They're the Pokemon. Right, Dreamland is the counterfeit. Game number two between Elegant and Abadongo. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know, what do, you, what do you think went wrong in that first game for Elegant? Um, I just feel like he could not approach Abadongo. He was getting comboed way too hard. He needs to block the, the, the beginning strings from Abadongo so he can at least you know, stay even. And there goes the down B. He's already looking for it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That air dodge is going to get him out of situations on top. That, that up B is being a, a teleport. He doesn't have to worry about trading with that down B, you know, like a lot of characters do. And it looks like he's trying to jump in with Fares. Um, but Fair doesn't actually reach that far, so it's almost like a bait. He tries a Fair, then he tries a fast fall, mm -hmm. land, and be able to hit Mewtwo. Oh, uh, Shadow Ball is going to eat that green fireball. Both down air is going to miss. But we see Abadango still on the attack here, man. Looking for that up smash. Did not quite get it. He did get the up tilt, but Luigi has one of the fastest attacks to come out. But we do have the down B coming out. Not able to get the KO. Good stuff to Abadango saving a second jump. And yeah, Mewtwo in such a good spot. You can trade with that down B as long as you have your jump. You know, you have, you have the air dodge to jump with. And the up B is going to be a teleport. Don't have to worry about uh, another down B or even you know, anything else Luigi can do. Elegant doing much better in this second match, though. 
Wow. Elegant already using two down Bs and simply just waiting for the air dodge in Mewtwo being one of the lightest characters in the game. Of course. Able to get that up smash with some rage. Oh, I believe it was below 100%. Very nice by Elegant. Uh, it's still very scary to work for that air dodge from Mewtwo. Of course, it's, uh, you know, the frame that is so good. <laughs> he keeps going for the down B off the stage, but I think Abadango may have watched Elegant matches or just knows and is saving a second jump every time. So one down B is not going to be able to make it work. He needs two. Yeah, but why, you know, why not? You know, the trade is in your favor. You're going to knock your opponent in a, a very, very bad situation uh, while you, you yourself are moving towards the stage. So uh, wow. uh, if you're not dying, then keep doing it. Yeah, might as well. It doesn't hurt. Great yeah. ledge cancels coming out from Abadongo. Going to keep himself hard to hit. Uh, still looking to close out this first stock. Wow. Don't think he's within up, or up throw range just yet. Yeah. Oh, possibly now. But he needs to be able to get in. Now it looks like Abadongo is going on the aggressive side. But Elegant's not losing his stage control. He's staying completely centered. Even though he's throwing out all these aerials, he's not leaving his spot. He's not even jumping on the platforms. And yeah, look how patient we see Abadango. I don't, you know, I love the patience coming out from him, but he is behind the stock. And now, uh, with the amount of rage Lewis, he has no jump. Oh! oh. Did wow. he have a jump? Maybe he did have a jump. Right? <laughs> it looked like he might have uh, burned it, but I guess not. Yeah. In any case, uh, yeah, that up there will finally do it. But uh, Mewtwo, of course, being such a light character, that's 76 on him. Usually, at, for most characters, that say, you know, that's not that bad for Mewtwo, though. You know, 10, 20 more percent that could be stock. Extremely bad. He needs to get these combos out pretty fast. And since, oh, he's 90% now, and up smash could probably KO. And if you put Rage onto Luigi, it's just going to KO even earlier. It's a very scary situation to be in, but that's, I guess that's kind of like what you accept when you choose Mewtwo as your character. Man. Yeah. Complete last cannon. The really good thing about Mewtwo is the ability to not get hit. If you play Mewtwo really well, it's hard to get hit ever. And speaking of, you know, Mewtwo players who play very well, I think Abadango is the best in the business. Yeah. What? <laughs> Let's go Abadango. Love the recovery. Good choice going onto the platform. It's always interesting to see players that stay very confident in those scary situations. No. That's, whoa, that dramatic zoom in. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Elegant. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Uh, well, wow. Bunny Man. All right. So. Okay, we do have Arvark back there um, giving some advice, so good stuff to Arvark for giving that advice to help Elegant take that game. Yeah, Possibly I don't know what he told stage. him, because that was not even close to the two stock from the game of one. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like he does really well if he can get the first stock off, and you will see Abadago, like kind of fishing for the KO, looking for fares, looking for a run in um, up tilt into up smash, and Elegant's just staying away from it, not going on the platforms, not overextending, is able to keep his lead. So if Elegant could do that again, especially on a stage of platforms like Battlefield or Dreamland again, I think yeah. it'll be fine. We might see a completely drastic change of stage. Yeah. Or, no, we'll just go to oh, Battlefield. Going to Battlefield, same track platform layout, uh, of course, wider blast zones, as you know, everybody in the world knows by now, but still gotta mention it, man. One of good things for Mewtwo on this stage is that up smash it does hit through the platform, so you might be able to get that running up smash. The cool thing about plat uh, tri platform is Mewtwo is going to get a lot of opportunities to ledge cancel his up B and make his movement a little bit more, uh, you know, hard for Elegant to deal with. Very nice. What? Ooh, oh, okay. <laughs> like Luigi out there, man. <laughs> He's like the combo master today, doing some weird combos that you just rarely see, yep. using like almost all three platforms for it too. Looking for that grab. Alright, this is very good by Abadango having a very strong start, but now he's off the stage. And this is the position that Elegant wants, having Abadango on the platform, just swinging while not even losing his stage control. Yeah, but there's a ledge cancel I was talking about. He's going to get a ton of movement options, you know, extra movement options, and have much, much easier time landing against Luigi that most characters will not have the ability to do. Overextended a little bit too much using that down B. Was, wasn't punished too hard. Oh, gosh. I love that. Staying patient while recovering back to stage. Doesn't want to fall into one of Luigi's traps. You know Elegant is the edge guard master. He's waiting for his opponent to make a bad move for returning back to stage. Oh my goodness. Don't go too hard. Off the stage. Good fighting, Elegant. Is that it? Oh, why is there so much? It's so funny to see, you know, how much recovery they have uh, after getting hit by that down B. You just see them slowly moving towards the blast zone. It's like, why aren't you pressing a button? So, well, I, can't, I can't, man, you know? That's so hilarious, though, because Elegant was off the stage. You would think that would be a good position, Rob. Oh, he's off the stage. Time to get him. <laughs> now you're dead. And that back air on the, on the shield going to shrink Luigi's hitbox and make him miss that grab. But uh, Abnango will end up taking that stock. Looking really hard for that grab, it seems. Going for the run and fairs. Using it as a bait once again. So far, this uh, looked like a great adjustment since game one from Elegant. Okay. I think tournament manoeuvres are definitely a big thing going into you know every match that we see on stream uh, from now probably until the end of the tournament. <laughs> everybody sitting, everybody still in the bracket right now knows, man, <laughs> there's been a lot of upsets. I could be the next one. Yeah. <laughs> they could be the next one. They could be the person that wins the tournament. Yep. 
it's, I don't know. It's, I don't even know what's real anymore, man. Looking really hard, trying to do jump and air dodge, mixing it up this time instead of fair, and good stuff not air dodging right there. Abadong was always looking for that air dodge so he could get the fair. That would have been a KO for him too. Considering it's the side of Sage. Both these players always looking for their opponent's air dodge. And Shadow Ball just gonna whittle down the shield a little bit more. Uh-oh. Oh, Dago doing this about recovering very high. He, he doesn't even want to be in that situation against Luigi. Yeah. Pretty strong rage coming out from Elegant too, so one up smash may be able to actually not this percent, but getting pretty close to it. 74%, possibly a slightly charged up smash, but he won't even be able to get in. Yeah. He's just trying to even get close to Abadango. Yeah, I love that. Charging a Shadow Ball underneath the platform gonna make it very hard for Luigi to approach him. Ooh. Falling Fair not gonna be enough. I wonder if that uh, Battlefield pick gonna come back and bite Abadango. Oh, and he's gonna sh shoot it? So hold on to it, you know. Keep the current his opponent. <laughs> he's there though. Wow. Set up for a grab, and that's gonna be enough. Wow, that quick camera change. These guys are prophets. They this knew. This is beautiful to see. Just seeing how Abadango keeps people out. He'll throw the Shadow Ball and you think like, okay, let me dodge it. And then that's, he's already waiting for your own position. Yep. He's waiting for your roll, your air dodge, just so he can grab you. Very quick by Abadango. Yeah, but it's really, really hard to approach MeTube, uh, you know, charging that or shooting the Fireball, or I'm sorry, the Shadow Ball underneath the platform. Because, you know, you only really have one area or one way to move towards him. And honestly, Abadango was waiting for that situation. Ends up taking game number three. It's now 2-1. Hmm. That was still pretty close though, so I feel like we might see another stage with platforms. Here we go. Two Lilat. Uh, we'll possibly find out why he decided to choose Lilat, maybe for those down B early intercepts. Let's look for that again. I think we're doing the world tour, man, you know? Oh my god! Oh, 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 oh. What a way for Abadong to start this game number four. That's exactly what he needed. Now Elegant has a huge mountain to climb if he wants to even up this set. Oh my goodness, Luigi is the perfect weight for that type of thing to happen. Yeah, wow, and the Lilat pick, man. I, Elegant probably not. Not that at all. I think that probably goes without saying. All right, but you never know what can happen. This is Luigi. Elegant loves to go for those up B hits if he can actually get in. Yeah, he's going to have to make crazy play to keep himself in this game. Um, Mewtwo already at 75%, so honestly, uh, you know, he's playing the best character to make a comeback against, that's for sure. Already looking for the up smash. Good choice. Might as well go for the KO option. If he can get it at this percent, it won't be so bad. But now 57, looking for the air dodge again. Yeah, it's really scary, man. Uh, you know your opponent's always waiting for your air draw. It's like, man, where, when do I use my air dodge? When is it safe? <laughs> Pretty much never against Abadongo, in my opinion. But nice back air towards the center of the stage, so I'm not going to KO just yet. But oh my gosh. I think he is holding on to his jump, though. So even. Oh, and again, Ledge Cast is going to save him and move him to the other side of the stage. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm pretty surprised he's able to ledge cancel two on Lilat. Say just moves. Now, Reza air dodge but doesn't get the up tilt that he wanted. Uh, you know, still working on a great stock here. Elegant needs to make something happen now. Needs to pull out the stock now if he wants to keep himself in this game. He's trying so hard for it, but we have Abadango consistently rolling backwards, just spacing so well. I feel like Abadango's already going to start looking for that fair pretty soon. Given the rage on me too. Yeah, uh, any type of damage, man, because he knows he's honestly is getting within a, a, a up throw range, not anymore, as he loses all that rage. Uh, Luigi 91, though, still a great, great way to start off the stock and this, uh... Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Gets him off stage, already looking for the down beat, but oh, Abadango so takes the high road. Uh, Elegant, oh please! Wow! Oh, and that <laughs> he oh, pretty much almost like, kind of <laughs> lost that because he grabbed the ledge twice for mistake due to being stuck under the yeah, lilac. That's, oh, man, stage. that's so, so unfortunate. Uh, the, you know, the way the end of that match played out, it, it almost seemed like Elegant was like, oh man, I gotta, <laughs> you know, getting flustered, accidentally getting stuck on the stage. And maybe like a delayed, like, panic response, yeah. you know, but... Oh, that's a little rough. And he grabbed the ledge twice, so he had to get off the ledge really quick. Yeah. Otherwise, Abadago may be able to just, you know, there's no more invincibility. So he tried to get off really fast, and that's where he just shot the ball. He might as well just shoot it. So good stuff to Abadago going through that with a 3-1 win over Beefy Smash Dudes Elegant. Mm. Yeah, shots to Beefy Smash Dudes. Uh, you know, sponsoring some of our players. It's great to see more sponsors in the uh, mix. Mm -hmm. uh, Good choice, <laughs> picking up people from SoCal too. Uh, SoCal scene, as you can see, is growing. <laughs> uh, yeah, just you know, like a little how beautiful bit. this is. <laughs> Shout out to this amazing crowd. By the way, we got a 2G Gaming Civil War. Shout out to all, all the people who make it out. If you guys couldn't make it out to this event, please try and make it out to the next one. I promise you, you will not regret it. All right, and we have some replays of the last match. Elegant just waiting for the double air dodge. That's one thing me two players love to do, getting that up smash KO. Yep, doesn't matter how good your air dodge is. If you air dodge the ground, you're going to have that recovery. I need a clean up smash by me too. It's, I'm sorry, up, up throw. Up throw, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so used to saying uh, up smash. And beautiful. 
leave yourself open for just a moment. You're Mewtwo at 150. You're, you'll pretty much die from anything. Yeah, I, you know, even long before that, honestly. <laughs> And that forward air, uh, yeah, that forward air from the middle of the stage is pretty surprising I was able to do it. Fair, fair, Ugh. fair. And that was a combo at the end, too. It was, you just couldn't get out of it. Yeah, just honestly an unfortunate series of events for Elegant in that, uh, you know, game number four. It's really good stuff. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no. stuff. I, just, oh, I gotta get out. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it happens, you know. Uh, that was just that was kind of quick, though. I, I, I feel like the tri-platforms was... Uh, not even just the tri-platforms, but any any platforms on uh, you know Battlefield Dreamland, Lilat. I think any platforms was definitely helping out Abdongo with the way uh, he, uh, you know get, give him extra movement options is not going to help out your character. Um, he you saw him in a lot of situations where most most players or most characters would have a hard time landing, and then you know Abdongo would be like, oh, let's cancel, jump, let's cancel. It's yeah. Like, Man, how do yeah. I catch this guy? He's already on the other side of the stage, you know. Exactly, and there's like three platforms too, so it just makes it even worse. And yep. they're all pretty much the same level. And it seems like he practiced there a lot. Um, that's one thing about the Japanese players or the Japanese scene. They usually don't play on the awkward stages too much. Yep. Back in the day in Brawl, they would play on FD, Smashville all the time. But now they've actually been practicing on these stages. So especially Abu Dango. He comes yeah. here the most of all the Japanese For players. For sure. He, he's, got a, he's got a lot of experience with uh, you know, the American stage list and just American players in general. So shout out to him. He's going to move on in the bracket. But our next match coming up. Wow, we have Javi here. Coming out from Mexico versus Nairo. I, I'm this sure you're Leo's very, cousin. Very familiar. I see you in Mexico like every weekend, homie. What's going on? <laughs> you know, are, are you moving? Like, uh, I'm just. Uh, are I'm you fluent <laughs> yet? <laughs> you gotta <laughs> be <laughs> close. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Pequeño. But here we go. <laughs> we have Energy Nairo versus, um, I believe it's Hydra. Hydra six, success. Hobby? Six X Hobby. There we go. This will be pretty interesting. It looks like he's going. Okay, good choice. Starting out with Cloud okay. against Nairo. All right, and this is game number one. Uh, very scary, man. Yeah, to play against Nairo, uh, any character you pick, you know this man probably has experience with the character. Uh, not just playing against him, but also playing him. If you ever seen this man stream, I swear I've seen him go through, you know, the, the character, character at, at least a couple times. <laughs> yeah, he definitely plays Cloud in doubles a lot too, and some singles. Oh my gosh. Yep, that that limit's gonna <laughs> let him get back to stage. He's very lucky he got the limit with that hit. But uh, not very lucky the way he started off this match is that down smash will connect almost, you know, half the stage away. Oh my gosh. Perfect timing coming out from Nairo. And that's going to be a stock. They call him no fun allowed Nairo. She's 12% on that first stock. Javi not off to a great start, but not quite out yet. Oh, this is rough. Do you remember that fair string he did on, um, it was a cloud recently he fought. He did fair, I think it was MK Lair. Fair, 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 and it took him off the stage. Pretty uh, much I, a zero to death. It's crazy. I don't usually hear you say anything, you know, anti MK Leo, but <laughs> I guess it's the first time for everything in Civil War, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> All these upsets. <laughs> Makes me know my favorite player's ally. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, so Javi, you know, he, like I said, he's down, but not quite out. It's going to be really, really hard to bring this one back against uh, ZSS. But of course, Cloud, a very explosive character. He can get that limit on deck and uh, get ZSS to. Ooh, is he going to get the chance, though? Jeez. Yeah, he can't even land. This might be a. Okay, good choice. He actually backed away as he air dodged. If he had decided to air dodge right in front of Nairo, Nairo would have likely got the flip kick and possibly a KO. Yeah, and of course, worst case scenario, as he's going to lose that limit, now forced to play from behind with no limit. This is like the worst possible part of the match you can be in. Nice dash attack. And one of the best things about Nairo fighting Clouds, too, he gets uh, Clouds off the stage and forces them to use their limit up. A lot of people get Cloud off stage. But they'll just second jump and grab the ledge, save their limit. Yeah. Nairo's really good at using the second jump and making sure they have to waste their limit. So you'll rarely actually see Cloud on the stage with limit charge. I don't think I've seen it yet. And you'll hopefully get it soon, and, and you probably start looking for that cross slash. I think Javi doesn't care too much about charging the limit due to the fact that Nairo is at 104, but that's another I down smash into I think F he should smash. definitely care about charging that limit because uh, <laughs> yeah, he wasn't able to, to get any other KO thing, really get anything started in that, that game number one. But uh, as we've seen all tournament, honestly, game number one doesn't really matter too much. You know, you're going to be down in the game if you lose it, obviously, but you get a lot of information about your opponent. And we've seen a lot of comebacks, you know, from losing game number one. We've seen a lot of, uh, on top of that, upsets. So I feel like the second still go either way. Interesting. Well, Sheik versus Zero Suit Samus is always interesting to see. We've seen um, Void do pretty well against Nairo um, pretty recently. So I want to see how Javi Sheik will do. He actually plays Sheik a lot with um, his cousin Surge and... Uh, MK Leo back in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Classic, does here. Classic narrow start. Oh my gosh, almost Sheik Mill. <laughs> that forward smash a little bit too early, I feel yeah. like. Um, and, and now we're you know, 0 for 2 on those dash grabs. 
Nice. He does have 56% already on Narrow, so this is a better start, but Much better this is start something you often do see with Sheik, where Sheik's able to do a lot of damage early on, but it's about getting the KO. Oh, oh my goodness. And yeah, all that damage early on, not going to matter at all for Javi as he again loses his first stock very early in this game number two. Uh, it's it's hard, man. Playing from behind for playing from behind for a second game in a row uh, that that really, really takes rough. a toll on your mental you know, your mental state. I definitely agree with that. But he did have such a great start that he might still feel confident. To think Sheik is the right answer. It's just I got KO'd a little early. And no bouncing fish. No, it just lets him return to stage. I think in this kind of situation, when you want to start going for things like yeah. that, you know, even if the bouncing fish missed, uh, he still I, I he still could have made it back to stage. Honestly, with vanished very true. I think he respected Naira a little bit too much and decided not to even go for it. Just wanted stage control. Just get back to stage, put Naira on the ledge and think, okay, we'll reset the situation and it'll still be in my favor. Yep. Uh, has Naira 103, so uh, he doesn't have any rage quite himself. He's going to need you know, something near the edge of the stage or near the, the top last one to get it. Yeah, possibly uh, neutral air into up smash also could work for yeah. neutral air into bouncing fish towards the side of stage. But I actually only really see Void go for the neutral air to up smash and before Masara goes, I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, not like this. Yeah, already 64%. This is perfect uh, rage percent for Zero Six Samus. Oh, oh, I feel like I feel like I was reaching a little bit, really overextending for that KO. But uh oh, Zer? Oh, that's very interesting. I, no, I like that. Very smart. Doesn't even go for the ledge. He knows there's a risk of getting two frames by that down smash. So I uh, just land on stage. Oh, interesting. He did a short hop B attack and a turnaround F smash. He's going to get punished for that, but it's not a big deal. He does only have, uh, I mean, he already has 85% on Javi, but this is Sheik. Yeah, this is Sheik. Very, very quick at racking up damage at low percents. Honestly, Javi plays, you know, makes a couple good reads or a couple good plays in neutral. He can bring it back, but he's not going to get the chance at all. Wow. Javi looking for that tricky up B onto the stage. Again, it did work during the last stock, but that time around, Nara saw through it completely and was able to get the punish. It has to watch out with that because there's a lot of lag after the up B when you land. Of course. And if you can see through, if you just block it, that's an easy punish, as you saw there. Yeah, I feel like uh, plays like that are plays you really can't make, uh, honestly, more than once per match. Or Your opponent's going to see it. Uh, the first time you get hit with a vanish like that, it's like, well, all right, now I know he can do it. And I know he's someone who's uh, willing to do that. I'm going to watch out for that every time he recovers. Yeah, especially you have to watch out for doing it twice in a row. Well, here we go. We're on to game number three. Javi decides to stay chic, knowing that he had such a good start and made pretty much one mistake and died at nearly 20%. Yep. Uh, let's hope that doesn't happen to him again, man, because that would be three games in a row he loses his first stock. Honestly, this entire set he's been playing from behind pretty much with one stock both games. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to see what he can do without losing his first stock very early. All right. Nice dash attack. Seeing that Sheik always goes into the air, so doing a dash attack will intercept Sheik's jump. Oh, my goodness. That was almost a KO. Yeah. <laughs> he was going for it again. That's the thing about Naro. He's always going for these early KO options, and his character makes him be able to do it. That's the contract you sign when you, you pick ZSS, man. You, you gotta go for some crazy stuff sometimes, especially off stage. Uh, very, very similar to Sheik, whereas you know, as long as you have your jump, you're, even if you don't have your jump, you still have a flip jump, man. You, you're probably fine. You're probably always gonna make it back. Going for the grab. Keeps looking for the grab. Good choice by Naro, knowing that she can't do too much at this percent to get a KO. So you can go for the risky grab. <laughs> Not bad. Obviously, he's going to get off that platform, off the stage. I think he want to put himself in a situation where he could lose the stock early again. Going for neutral air. Looking out for the second jump to do the up air, but Naro just lands straight on the ground. Looking for that back air and gets it. Yep. All right, Naro 88%. This is much, much better than the first two games for Javi. Uh, he doesn't waste too much time getting the KO on this stock. Then. He'll, you know, he'll be in a good position to... Hopefully, get some momentum. Oh, oh no. <laughs> you don't want to play Nairo when he's feeling confident. Yeah, Nairo's Nairo. definitely looking confident right there. Nairo feeling confident, and Nairo just like, <laughs> well, man. Uh, at no point has Nairo really been behind it in this set. He has such a tricky play style, too. Like, well, what even was that? <laughs> I don't even know what he did. I don't even know why he did that. Like, <laughs> that might actually be. Oh, it's, no, not the KO just yet. Honestly, he just did <laughs> like, He must have hurt us like, or something, right? Oh, I'm ready to fight Nara. I wonder what he's going to do. Flip kick back in there. What was he? <laughs> what? <laughs> All over the place. It just makes you look at your controller like, man, what? <laughs> Am I playing the same game as this guy? Uh, very clean 3-0 from Nairo. That was, that was kind of rough for Javi. I feel like, uh, you know, obviously the first two games he was playing from behind by quite a bit. That second game was much, uh, much, I'm sorry, that third game was much better for him, but still not able to keep up with uh, the man himself. Yeah, Nairo's very tricky. He's just able to mix it up and do a lot of things that people aren't expecting. And he's even though there's other Zero Suit Samuses, you'll likely or very likely won't see a player um, play like him with Zero Suit Samus. So good stuff to Energy Nairo. Sticking I'm around, not getting upset like the rest of the people uh, similar to CEO. So um, I'm actually glad you said that. What do you think about my boy Latai, the ZSS Wonder from uh, Arizona? Latai, not Luddy. I thought it was Luddy. I haven't been called him I thought it was day. Luffy. <laughs> 
I saw everyone. Like, Who zero Lucy? No F in his name I'm at like, all. What? Monk Monk <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, what do you think about him, man? Bin, Z Bin Zero and then losing to, I believe, Foe the, the next round he played. That's so how crazy. You, how do you, did you see that match at all? No, actually, I did not see the match. I just like went to get some food, came back, and hurt. Is that when you were sleeping? That's like the worst oh, no, time. Oh, no, I was actually awake. Uh, and I, I, I think I was eating food. I heard about the loss, and I was like, oh, no, Zero, I wonder how he feels right now. And then Zero comes walking right by, and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> it's that type of thing, though, where one of your friends loses. You don't yeah. want to... Like, be like, oh, man, sorry for your loss. Like, even just saying that can make me feel bad. There's nothing you can say in that situation that yeah, can make so you I just, feel better. So just, <laughs> just let it rock, man. Like, Trust yeah. me. Uh, you'll get your chance later, I promise. But uh, I, I don't know. I watched the entire match. I watched the entire setup, I should say. I think it was a really, very, very strong play uh, by, by Latai. You know, I think uh, Zero played well as well. Wow, but Zero Suit Samus versus Diddy Kong, correct? Yeah. That's that's wild. It, it was a game five. It was. But it's so wild to see, and I'm just happy to see new players coming out and doing things. And that's one of the things I love about this game. Mm -hmm. These upsets, even in the best of five, people say, "Make sure we have best of five, so there's no upsets." Okay, here's best of five. <laughs> <laughs> Leo's out. Sixty fifth. Zero got forty ninth. <laughs> is wait, is Alien? Is he still? Uh, I I have to look at the bracket, man. There's too many. I, I've I've, seen, I've heard that question all day today. Is is X in? Is you know is X out? It's like ah, man, I, I don't even know anymore. I, I can't out, say anything for sure. You know, I find out if they're in or not if I see them on the stage. That's yeah, much right. Like, hey, you, look, this one, he's still in. <laughs> Renai's still in. Oh god, and Mars, he's still in. All right. And of course, speaking of CSS, we got our third. Uh, you know, amazing CSS player. I'm sure that Mars. All right, this is gonna be a button check. Uh, I was gonna say our third very strong CSS player. Uh, how, how do you feel about Mars compared to Naro? I really hate of course, um, comparing. They comparing players to play the same character, but I think these are two players that uh, actually have pretty similar play styles. I like seeing both players play a lot. I feel like they're actually a little different in their play styles. Um, Mars is very... I, I feel like Nairo goes for more risky stuff. Really? Oh, that's, that's the one thing I was going to say about Mars. I feel like Mars goes for the more risky <laughs> stuff. I, I feel like Mars will just go for, a, a, not random, but uh, just completely gutsy upbeat. Oh. Shield, even in a situation where it looks like the upbeat is not even going to hit. Like, he's like, whatever. Like, a worst case scenario, I trade. Yeah. You know? He's very upbeat happy. That's one thing about Mars. Extremely upbeat happy. But um, I feel like a lot of his plays are a lot of neutral airs on shield who just play really patient. Um, Nairo, I just feel, goes for some crazy stuff that you would just never expect. But um, we have Mars looking a little tricky right now while doing these button checks. And this is Renai. Uh, it's always interesting to see Renai. The man needs no introduction. Of course, you know him. You love him. Yeah. Uh, the villager from Japan. Uh, I don't know what the hell he's doing right now. <laughs> Trying to look like a background character or something. <laughs> For all documentary history, guys, uh, Renai's old name used to be Gambadanai before he changed Gambara it Nai, to yeah. Hayase, and then he decided to take away the Gambada and keep Renai. So uh, good stuff to Renai. He used to play Pikachu, Snake. He used to always uh, beat QB back in the day. He was actually um, considered the Japanese anti because back in the Jeez, day. How, how old is Renai? Because he looks pretty young right now. I yeah, can he imagine was, he how, young he was, how young he was back in the whole days. Yeah. yeah, I actually saw some pictures of... Um, of Nairo back in the brawl days. I was like, wow, oh, what is that? It's like he's 10. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy thing. Yeah, these players have been playing for so long and that, you know, they're still here, still relevant. It's awesome to see. I'm just so happy to see it. I hope there's other players that come back. So like how Renai did, um, players like Atori, uh, Mika Neko. Hopefully we'll see them one day. Masha, maybe one day. But here we go. I feel like nobody ever really truly retires from this game, but let's start with this game number one. Okay, we uh, do do you, have. How do you feel about this matchup? Uh, ZSS versus Zero. Or, or, ooh, this is a tricky one. Villager. I do remember seeing Renai and Nairo play at EVO 2016, and um, Renai won last hit game three. And it was really epic to see because Nairo just kept going way off the stage to try to get the KO. We'll see if Mars goes for that too. Yeah. Good thing about Villager, he does have one of the best recoveries in the game. Of course, he's not going to have or have the ability to attack while recovering. We're wow. talking using that grab armor to go through the gyroid. <laughs> he actually flip kick the gyroid instead of hitting, hitting Renai. I'm telling you, man, he's just attacking anything on screen with a hitbox. That's, uh, that's Mars in a nutshell. Here we go, the consistent neutral airs he likes to do. Landing neutral airs on shield. Plays very safe. He's still throwing out aggressive attacks that can hit if they hit, but um, just in case, it's very safe since it's a neutral air. You can just back up after he does a neutral air. Yeah, Mars can hit with a lot of these forward airs. Uh, really trying to make his way in, but it's <laughs> Oh <laughs> my goodness! What a what an optimal punish from Renai. He says, you know what? I have enough time to throw out this bowling ball. Oh no, you do not want to be on the edge versus Renai. Good stuff to Mars by actually going on the platform, but he does have the tree out, so he's likely going to look for the axe. Yeah, of oh. course. Oh. Okay. What? Oh wow, Mars. The Mars special. Yeah, um. he, he like I feel like he faked himself out with that, you know. Uh, it didn't look like Renai really did much aside from trying to recover and Renai just went completely around him. I felt like he was really confident in that edge guard. However, Renai just went super low. He does have pretty much the highest vertical recovery in the game. 
So it was good stuff for him to delay it, letting Mars SD. Have you noticed that Mars actually does SD a lot? Um, uh, it happens, man. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter where you are on the PGR. You're going to have your, your games where you SD sometimes, you know? Yeah. And it's going to be a punish. Not yeah. a KO just yet, but he takes out the tree. Oh, and there's oh the tree out of gosh. nowhere. I didn't even see that sapling, man. Wow. Tree out of nowhere will get that KO and Renai the first game. Okay. Well, Mars did SD that time. If he does SD, it's usually once per set. So now that he's gotten it out the way, he can play just <laughs> Yeah, now I can play my game. Yeah. So we'll see what Mars is going to do. We'll see what stage uh, he picks, too. I feel like Smash Roll is a good choice since he's able to go on the platform instead of trying to always recover on the ledge mm -hmm. and get his stuff hit, get hit by stuff like a tree at 71% and KO'd really early. Uh, something I do want to say, I feel blank Mars is getting punished a lot for these dash grabs. Uh, I think he's... he's ooh, did I hear Lucario? Mm. Hold on, Guitar. Did I hear Lucario? Mm-hmm. Which one of these people plays Lucario? And it seems to be Mars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's news All to right. me, my friend. Been looking at the suit, you know. <laughs> Hey, it happens. I, I watched Earth play. I tried to play Pit today, and I got completely bodied. So, <laughs> hopefully, uh, I personally have not seen uh, Mars's Lucario. Uh, have you? No, never. Right. I, I did not know he has a Lucario, and he lives like four hours from me too. So this is shocking to see. Well, let's see what he can do. Wow, eighty-one percent. Uh, it, it's really, really interesting to you know pick to play this character against uh, somebody like Renai, who you know probably has experience with uh, you know Sue. One of the best Lucarios in the world. Uh, not to say, you know, I know what the skill level of Mars' Lucario is yet, but uh, yeah, I think you kind of know that Renai has the experience, so you don't have the, the surprise factor, really. Yeah. And he is at 107, but it's going to be a little harder approach for Renai. Renai is likely just going to run away yeah, <laughs> and why, throw a slingshot. Why not just use a slingshot? Like, what? Why approach? Uh, oh. if, you know, if he fires that shadow or uh, that aura sphere, he's going to have the pocket on deck waiting for it. Uh oh. Very high recovery Punish. from Mars. Wow. And you know exactly how to punish it, too. There's so much lag with that attack. Actually, it has one of the biggest lags of any um, recovery. Almost broke the shield. My goodness. Yeah, if you land on stage, if you land um, parallel with the stage, though, you have actually very low recovery. Yeah, very sure. Of course. I have but smash, but pretty much no rage, no aura. I will say so far, things are not looking that great for Mars losing that first time relatively early, and Renai honestly still looking very comfortable. It's almost like you forgot it's Lucario. <laughs> it's always looking good for Lucario. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what I was thinking. <laughs> I, in fact, oh I, my God. In fact, Mars lost that first stock on purpose. As far as I know. <laughs> but if he gets hit by this tree, it's over. Yeah. Ooh, forced to go hybrid. Like, how much recovery there is on that? I actually I can't even like fathom why it has so much recovery. Yeah. <laughs> It looked like Renai expected a little bit too much lag that time around. Yeah. All right, looking for that side BKO. Here we go. Oh, of course, that Uppy does indeed have a hitbox. That's a vertical um, horizontal recovery you were talking about that doesn't have that much lag. And breaks the balloon. Oh, I wonder if maybe that's why he was looking, you know, for the Lucario counter pick. Oh, that not very often you see somebody able to pop both balloons without actually hitting Villager. He will get tagged by that Aura Sphere, but still alive. As Mars still looking for this first KO. There's this weird thing where when you fight Lucario, you want to try to axe. Oh, wow! I just, I just <laughs> walked up and axed him. I just did. <laughs> there was no mix-up. Uh, I just stopped. I just stopped by analyst right there. It was like axe. He just, he just <laughs> oh my One day goodness! I was walking down the street and axe. I've never seen somebody so confident they're gonna get a hit in their life. He was. That's Lucario. Like he was like mad. He had a ton of rage. You know. That was Lucario just 100% uh, confidence coming out from Renai. So even, even if you shield this, I don't even care. I'm up a stock. What's the worst that could happen? Wow. Well, good stuff Oof. to Renai. Uh, seeing, just, seeing the ability to just be able to run up and do that. Did so. you see that hand motion from Naro? He's like, all right, no more Lucario. I love seeing Naro do <laughs> go, that. Go back. Whenever he's explaining something, he's extremely uh, expressive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I want you to make sure you throw, and you'll actually throw something to you know, show it. As expected, we see the return to ZSS. I, I think it was, you know, he's in the winners. I think that's good data, I guess, going into his next matches. In the event he does lose one or win this one, either way he's going to have some good data knowing that uh, Lucario didn't seem to work out too well against Renai. Hmm. Alright, well, I think 0-2 Samus is definitely a better choice for him. That was a pretty clean two stock coming yeah. out from Renai. Um, he does have Sue and Goma, a couple other Lucarios in his region. Alright, so this is game number three. Currently up 2-0 in favor of Renai. Not looking too close the last two matches. We'll see if Mars can change it around. Talon City is a counterpick, of course. Uh, needs not be said why this is a great stage for CSS. Oh no. I had a feeling that would be a death right there. Ooh. Oh, gonna go for the four tilt to maybe another up, up air. Either way, good damage. Clean start coming out from Mars this time around. Actually ducking under the slingshot. Good choice right there. Look at that. He's going for it again? Okay. 
And if that crawl will go underneath the sling song, slingshot and uh, any gyro that's not sent on the ground. That was beautiful, that pivot back area that he's look like. Looks like he's already looking for the KO. Oh, is that the more special? Oh, not again. Oh, no. Uh -huh. What is going on? Mars oh, no. just miscalculating, you know, a lot of his offstage edge guards. Don't see that very often from Mars. It's rough. It's like he's focusing on the edge guard without realizing where the stage is. Yeah. And that's where he goes a little too deep. And I mean, he plays the assess for the most part. This character can't make it back from most distances, but he's just going a little bit too far. Nice back here. And looking for another one, but Renai doing really well to back away. I like how he upbeat away from the stage to try to get him off the stage and still be able to recover yep. or get the KO. Mm -hmm. Gonna have the outward facing hitbox. And definitely not a hitbox you want to trade with. Looking for the slingshot again. And good run and up smash, but that's not gonna KO. Good DI coming out from Renai. Beautiful dash attack, knowing that Renai is going to keep jumping in the air. The dash attack will cover jumps. Yeah. Uh, uh, honestly, Mars not too far behind. If you can get a KO right here, which uh, down throw is not going to be up air. No, go for the Zare instead. All right. Interesting. I do believe Renai had enough time to air dodge out of it. 46% uh, not too bad for ZSS, but he needs this KO as soon as possible. Good stuff to Mars. Actually staying really patient this time around. Getting the fair. Not able to KO, KO yet. 171%. A lot of players, or a lot of people in general, like to jump over the gyro and kind of put themselves in a position to get hit by the slingshot. Wow. Almost a combo off of the up airs. Two up airs. And that should be KO this time. We'll finally get the KO, yeah. He can get some uh, stun attacks right now. I feel like he'd really need that. And grab, good choice. Oh, again, watch out that grab, but again, any damage is good damage here. This is the Zare afterwards. He keeps looking for that down smash. He knows if he gets that middle edge, he can do the flip kick and possibly get a KO, even at um, early percent such as 24. Yeah, I think he's going to need a little bit more than 24%. Of course, you know, villager vertical yeah. recovery is the, the best in the game. Oh my god! <laughs> that delayed neutral air into the gyro. Oh, and very nice. Gyroid. His, uh, his actual name is Lloyd, but uh, I'll forgive you. One of my favorite singers. <laughs> 112 for Mars. Can tag with that backer, but it's not gonna be enough just yet. You see another tree, and that one will do it. He went a little too close to the tree this time, and that's another KO from the tree. Good stuff to Renai taking that 3 0. Over yeah, in his, Mars. in his defense, though, that tree hitbox is actually kind of ridiculous. It almost like sucks you in. I feel like you can't get away. It's actually a wind box that pushes you away, but you know, in case you got hit by it. <laughs> but it feels like it's it, actually the complete opposite of what you just said. But sure, sure. Uh, I know you're talking about though. It's it's really it's it's sometimes when you get hit by it, it's like ah, I thought I was pretty far away from it. But yeah, yeah, because it does push you away. But I guess it's due to the fact that the sapling's so small. Yeah, uh, it feels like okay, it's gonna hit me here, and then it's just like hey, it's all over here, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So good stuff to Renai. For very that. very clean 3-0 from Renai. I think it was a good set regardless. Uh, I, I'm glad that Mars was able to get that data, you know, about his Lucario uh, against Renai. And just in general, I feel like I, it looked like he. I don't know if it was just a matchup or the way Renai was playing, but it, I feel like he wasn't as comfortable with Lucario. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, again, though, it's like could be anything. Could be on stage. Yeah, that's a matchup he probably doesn't practice that much. Um, you don't see too many uh, villagers in the New England area. There is Captain Awesome, but I don't know how often they play. Captain Awesome maybe Captain awesome. from Connecticut. So bring it. Oh, I, I bring my customs. I miss those. Oh, days. customs. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Awesome still had a lot of really good wins even without co uh, customs. So wow, I did. That's some crazy. More. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as they took away customs, that was it for me. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, <laughs> oh, but we have another Japanese player coming up. Uh, Japan has been doing really well. Um, we have Abadango advancing in winners. Just had Renai. And now we have Komura Kiri. Looks like he'll be playing oh, Lycan, I like believe. It. Rocking that Yata Gaming. Is that my saying right? It looks like yeah. Yata Gaming. Lycan actually had a pretty good win today. Um, I was asleep through the win that he did get, but I heard that <laughs> it was a pretty good win. <laughs> Make sure you tell him that. Like, yeah, man, good, good win. By the way, good I was win. passed out. You know, I, I heard about the good win you had while I was sleeping, but <laughs> it just shows why he's still in winner's bracket right now. Mm -hmm. And Lycan does play Diddy still. So they're going to have a little bit of a button warm before they start. But so this warmer? Is, um, yeah, we have Cloud versus um, Diddy Kong. Uh, you know, the classic. I think we're starting to see this a lot more often. We're seeing uh, a lot of the, the pocket Cloud mains are starting to just... Go 100% cloud, you know. Of course, we have a ton of Diddy Kong players just around the country. No matter where you go, you're always uh, you better be prepared for this character. Yeah, yeah, very true. And there are a lot of Diddy Kong players in Japan. They have Niotono, they have Rain. Um, I know. I think Niotono may have switched to uh, 
uh, Sheik more recently. I heard he keeps like dabbling between Sheik and Diddy Kong, mm -hmm. but they have a lot of Diddy Kong practice, and we have seen Zero. He pretty much is the Cloud Destroyer. He almost, almost, you know, keep, keep in mind, almost, uh -huh. never loses the Cloud, uh, minus like a time or two. I'm, uh, glad, I'm glad you gave that this game, the disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> but he's really I can definitely good at, think like, of a couple times where he's yeah, lost the cloud. Like, he has lost the cloud, but when he wins, he destroys them. And usually it's like almost a free like win for him. Mm -hmm. uh, but looks like they didn't have too many clouds this time around. Yeah. Mm. All right. Komo Arahiri. Cloud, uh, definitely one of my favorite cloud players to watch. He's such a patient player. Uh, I think more than anything, I love watching his ledge guards. Uh, he will never leave the stage unless absolutely necessary. Just wait for you and try and read your get up, uh, whatever get up option you choose. And I feel like more often than not, he's correct on this read or, you know, guess, whatever it is, reaction. All right, well, here we go into game number one. Looks like we'll be starting on Lilac. This is not the same I was ever seen. I always wonder how people end up striking the Lilac. Like, what <laughs> kind of conversation did they have? Yeah, that is some weird conversation. Maybe they don't like each other or something. <laughs> Let's just both, both screw each other over and go to Lilac. I'm going right, to start man. doing that. Whenever I have a match, I'm going to be like, hey, do you want? Are, are you ready to start on Lilac? <laughs> you know, most people say start on Smash Bros. I just want to see their face <laughs> when you do it. Right. Anyway, uh, game number one, I'm sorry. Clean start coming out from Mike and 16% already, but he let Como fully charge his limit. Yeah, I feel like as a Sonic player, a former Sonic player, uh, Komo here probably has a ton of experience on the stage. On top of that, I think this is one of the stages we see him kind of pick very often. Yeah, I see a lot of clouds going here, surprisingly. Uh, having, having the platforms is great. The you know the spacing between the platforms is honestly the exact size as his neutral layer, and just about his down air, honestly. So it's going to be really, really hard uh, for liking to maneuver between these platforms if Komo here is throwing out the right hit boxes. Possibly going to forward throw off the stage, trying to make him force use his limit. And oh, what? What? Oh, no. Yeah, that he he tried to reverse up B, got reverse cross slash instead. Oh. Yeah, okay. definitely a missing put in that situation. Yeah, I was wondering because it looked like he could have grabbed the ledge. He missed the ledge, and then he cross slash off the stage. Everything went wrong. Yeah, that, uh, man, not a good start. But oh, beautiful start for liking. Yeah, good Yeah, good start for liking. <laughs> All right, I like how he's playing around the banana, not even trying to pick it up, just having it there so that Diddy Kong is forced to just hover over there. Yep. And, oh my goodness. I'm going to go very far off stage, but obviously wants to stay safe. He does have his limit, though. I feel like he can go a little bit deeper, but uh, again, Cobra Carry not really known for going deep for his ledge guards or really off stage at all. Well, good stuff to like him for actually doing the up B early off the stage. That's one of the things that Tweak has been saying, saying that up B is so much better than side B. Side B is really predictable and easy to punish. So don't even use your side B, just up B. And look, he keeps doing it. He's rarely using his side B. Just barely going to miss that cross slash. I think that Lilat tilt also kind of... Uh, you know, contributed with that miss. Okay. Come on, not too far behind. You know, 46% if he can get this KO, uh, he's going to be in a good position. Ooh, tries to go for that dash attack, thinking that Diddy Kong stayed on the ledge a little too long. Missing that back air. Very good for Lycan, but getting a little too close. Whenever you see Cloud near the side of the stage, uh -huh. you always have to think that he'll likely go for down smash, because if you just wing it out, might not get punished and get the KO if he does hit you. I don't know about that up smash coming out from Lycan. You know, uh, Cloud being at 46%, even if he connected with that up smash, he really would have done anything, you know. Uh, is either you get a small amount of damage or you get punished and he got punished for it. Oh, these back airs are finally coming out. Before he was doing these back airs, and he was landing a little too fast onto the stage, so they weren't coming out. But now they're actually hitting. And it seems like Koma Kiri loves to play this matchup in full limit charge every single time. He fully charges limit and then starts fighting. It's scary, man. You get pushed off stage by a ton of things. Uh, so why even put yourself in a situation where you don't have limit off stage? Keep hold on to it until you need that KO or you need to recover. Very nice. He took out the banana. It hit Cloud. It's good enough. That's some damage. It's like 2% or so. 2% <laughs> is an <laughs> extra 2%, man. Yep. That's 2% more than you had a couple seconds ago. So we take Ooh. those. Looked like he tried to up air, grab the banana, and get back on stage. That's a force limit? No. Nope. <laughs> All right, the same, the same edge guard, or I'm sorry, get up option. You know, three times in a row is going to be a combo punished. Took a lot of damage just trying to return to stage. Oh, that was actually very risky for Lycan to air dodge into the stage. Could have been a very strong punish for Como. And yeah, got Komo. banana throw, too. Oh, my. He rolled into the side. Oh, no. <laughs> he gets, yeah, that rage is going to help him get that KO. And the first game. Wow. Komo Arahiri, man, Lycan probably like, damn, I really had that. That was really my game to win, yeah. uh, you know, against Komo Arahiri, and then there it goes. I think he got a little too antsy. The banana was thrown at his shield. He blocked it, and he just thought, let me roll in. And that's one of the things you don't want to do against Cloud. He was at 80 or so percent, and there was a lot of rage on Cloud, so you don't want to get too close to him. You have to stay patient, um, stay strong. You ever watch Zero play? He always is holding shield against Cloud. He's either holding shield or he's doing attack. He'll yeah. very rarely ever roll in. So we'll see what happens on this stage. This is Smashville. Yeah, Smashville. And of course, game number one was looking pretty good for Lycan until that you know last mistake he made uh, at the end of game number one. So 
If he can keep playing the same way he was playing, he's in a good position. Wow, Coleman Curry really believes in this fully uh, charged limit approach on Diddy Kong. At the start of every match in the first 15 seconds, he always has to charge limit and then he starts fighting. I mean, honestly, why not? What do you, what do you, what do you really lose from doing that? He's he's going to be pulling out a banana. He's going to be trying to establish his neutral first and get some stage control. Uh, you lose stage control, but you get better stats overall. So why not? Very true. Very nice. Dash attack on the no tech. Okay, he missed the F toe, but he's still able to get the jab. Oh my god! Oh those! Oh my god! I was about to say those barrels come back, coming back to haunt him. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how he survived. I don't know how the barrel didn't explode, but uh, very, very lucky for Komori Curious. He takes the first stock. That was really good. He actually caught on to the fact that Lycan was always up these near the ledge instead of up being far away and was able to get that neutral air to take out the up beam and get an instant KO. No dare off the stage? Oh, okay. I'm joining him off stage. Alright, I'm surprised. Uh, he did just use his limit, so we won't see fully charged limit yet, but he will use this platform to charge his limit or the other side of the stage. Yeah, uh, kind of scary to look for the limit here, of course, being at 131. Uh, like it's going to be all over him as soon as he starts charging. Ooh, not too safe, but. Nah, he hits the shield punish. with the dare and no punish. That's, <laughs> I wish I could get away with that. Uh, Koma Kiri looks like he's just trying to get some space. He can finally use the platform to finish charging his limit. I likely. love that rising up air from the ledge to grab the banana and put pressure on his opponent. Ooh, that was a good choice using the side B, knowing that Como would likely stay in a defensive position, being under Diddy Kong. <laughs> I guess the forward air on the stage. Uh, I see Lycan actually recover before Como Rikiri does. Back throw is not going to be able to KO just yet, but does give good stage positioning. How for that platform? All right, so Como Rikiri with max rage right now. If he can get uh, Lycan to like 60, 70 percent, honestly, that's all right. He just swung it out, <laughs> and Lycan did roll in, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did. Roll he, did in. he did. So he saw it. I guess that's what maybe Cobra Curry was looking for. So a little bit preemptive, I feel like. But you know, if he did get the hit, that would have been 27 percent. So he really believes in it. And 64 percent, not going to KO just yet, but he does have limit, pretty much fully charged now. Having trouble landing. Oh, that was really nice of him, actually, to reverse his landing. And there's a down smash near the ledge. Almost gets the KO already. Oh, oh my gosh. Just barely. Narrowly avoiding that cross slash. 86%. Uh, not too bad. But leading him in the opposite direction will get Komori Kiri punished. I feel like Komori Kiri is having a lot of missing puts, or more than you, know, yeah. you usually see. All right. Doing okay, nice. charging on the platform. I love that. You know, Komori Kiri very apt to, to hold shield on that platform. Lycan taking advantage of that and going for the multi-flip hit grab, which has uh, connected almost every single time he's done it. Nice, just playing really patient, almost waiting for Diddy Kong to take out the banana or do a fair. And he might go off stage. Nope. Tell you, man, he will just wait on stage for you. Doesn't matter what you're doing. <laughs> Lycan gets a little scared and actually air dodges, but he sees a regular getup and gets the up B off the ledge. Good stuff to Komonokiri. Currently up in this set now, 2-0. Uh, Looking like a very clean set from Komori Kiri. Lycan has been playing pretty well for the most part, though, uh, but not able to clutch out. You know, these the stocks when he needs to with this game is obviously what he needs to. Yeah, it seems like Komori Kiri is spacing really well. You rarely ever see Lycan be able to go for the option of down tilt to up smash, which is something you very commonly see from Diddy's. I know he's a very different um, type of Diddy. You don't see this type of play style normally, but that's one of the main KO options. But Komori Kiri just keeps perfect pivoting away yep. using the platform. So you, you probably definitely do not want to go back to Smashville, I would assume, because that's one of the main reasons that Komori Kiri is able to charge his limit so easily against Lycan. So where do you go, Kickstarter? Where would you go? Diddy Kong, Cloud, down two games against Komori Kiri. Where would you go? I'd say possibly a stage like FD where there's no platforms for him to just jump on and charge limit. Um, but also Battlefield could be okay, but it looks like Lycan decides to go back to Smashville. Back to Smashville, interesting. This is what you said not to do. Let's see if you are the prophet, my friend. It's, a, it's almost... <laughs> I was just like... <laughs> I know I feel like... about that. <laughs> nice. That platform is going to help him out with recovery. Does not even, doesn't even have to worry about you know making it back to stage. As long as he can make it back to the platform, he will get a jump back. Very nice getting the jab attack, taking him off, and... Those times he did use the side view to get back on the stage was a good choice to recover high due to the fact that Komori Kiri is always expecting a lower coverage from Lycan. Banana gone. Oh, very nice. He actually got the down to work there. Fair, fair. Oh. <laughs> so that platform assist is going to help him get those multiple fairs. Uh, misses the third. But again, has complete stage control right now. Komori Kiri honestly on the ropes. Nice good stuff just backing away, regaining stage control. Looking for the back airs. 
it's always interesting to see a player, you know, be in a bad position, then kind of like just jump back on the stage and yeah. get stage control without really doing much. <laughs> Oh, Cloud, usually you have to go for the second jump, so good stuff to Coleman Curry seeing that. And that's going to be another up air. Oh, he has to watch out, don't air dodge onto the stage, he just did, and he didn't get punished. Though. Yeah, very early. Really, that was the, probably the, the best case scenario of punishes for him. Uh, just a back throw. Alright, he might be waiting for the roll. We saw it like him as rolling before. Just waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh, there's a roll. <laughs> waiting for it again. Will he go off the stage this time? Very oh, nice. Oh, he's going off stage and burning his limit. Oh, that's interesting. Using the neutral B attack. But now he has completely burned his limit, has no limit charge, and he's at KO percent. Yeah, again, we see Cooper Curry holding shield on that platform. I don't blame him. That's usually where you want to hold shield. Like it will close out that first stock with a forward air. And I think, uh, you know, since the first game, this is, this is looking like his best game yet. That was really good by Lycan, actually assuming that Cooper Curry would go through the platform. He did have the banana in hand, so it was a very good choice for him to just jump off and go for the fair. This is a really interesting way of the matchup being played. Pretty much limit charge. Um, Diddy Kong taking out Banana. Okay. Yeah, hopefully Lycan like, uh, you know, can stay patient, extend his lead a little bit before uh, looking for anything too crazy. He's, he doesn't have safe control, but he doesn't need it right now. Wow, Como's playing really bait heavy. He's not throwing out too many attacks. He's just jumping around, waiting to see what Lycan does so he can punish him. Oh. <laughs> Once again, we see that upbeat, you know, tagging that getup option. Uh, he didn't get both hits, so we didn't see that, that cool uh, zoom-in cinematic, but yeah. whatever it takes to get the KO, man. Usually he does it off the ground and is able to get the up B like when he do regular get up, but that was a jump and it was still able to KO. All right, nice fair coming out from Lycan, just racking up some damage. He's probably deciding he's fair to uh, do more damage or not waste his KO options. <laughs> the mix-up's coming out right now from Como. Uh, oh wow, <laughs> what? Yeah, let's talk about the mix-ups right there. Hold on to shield, that's when you know you're in your opponent's head. If you can just short hop in front of them, do nothing and let them grab. Oh, waiting for the air dodge. We're good stuff to like him for going high, but that's going to get him punished really hard due to the fact that Diddy Kong has trouble landing. In certain situations, wow, reading that getup option. I love that, throws the banana towards the ground, so it doesn't even matter if the neutral getup would have caught him, uh, would have tripped him, and that finishing touch would have connected. Komori T is hasting 3 0, clean 3 0. Yeah, that was a clean 3 0. I, I feel like Lycan, because um, Diddy Kong is you know, good at landing, mm -hmm. it's just that Lycan was consistently trying to land right where you know, he was. He wasn't side being or trying to up B to the ledge. Yeah. And he got punished really hard for that. Maybe he was re feeling really confident since he did have the lead. But good stuff to Komer Curry with that win. 3-0. That was so <laughs> smart, though. I love that. Rolls for the edge. Banana throw down. So if he went up for a neutral get up, he would have tripped instantly. got, you know, tripped into that finishing touch regardless. Yeah. They're very smart play. Like that Komer was Curry. Nice. That was a good read, actually, on you on that. I, I was wondering, why, like, I was like, wow, you got the finishing touch. That was really nice. But the only other way to get out of that would be to possibly second jump completely out of the way. And he would have dodged the finishing touch if he would have dodged the banana. But he most likely would not be able to punish Como. Yeah. So good stuff, again, to Como for reading through that. You could tell he plays a lot of Diddy Kongs over in his region. So uh, nice. that, was, uh, that was pretty – these sets on stream have been uh, pretty fun to watch so far. I am waiting for the next upset, though. You know it's going to happen. It's inevitable. Okay, Tara. So what, what do you think the next upset's going to be? Well, um, let me start looking at the crowd. <laughs> that guy's in. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like if there was an upset to happen that people would be like, you know what, this is perfect. Um, unfortunately, it would be Ally. Ally, yeah. <laughs> so I was going to say, it's, a, it's no. really unfortunate, but it'd be pretty, I want to say pretty comfortable to have both Zero and, and Ally out of, out of uh, But I guess that'd be kind of expected for a 2GG event where the curse reigns supreme. Nobody with their own saga can win their own saga. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it's like both of their own sagas. Yeah, that's so. what you get, man. You shouldn't have had it named yeah. after you. <laughs> Wait, I've named after who, me? About, no, both of them. No. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. uh, you'll get your own saga one day. Sure. <laughs> I actually kind of did Ktar saga, but let's, let's talk about that another uh, time. So yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a person coming up. Uh, we have, I believe it is Fatality, always Fatality. staying strong. Uh, best Captain Falcon in the world for a reason. Uh, just able to get these strong wins. I believe he took out Trella. Um, yeah. Earlier today, that's wild yeah. to see. That's Captain Falcon. Like all you have to, you know what he know? said too. He said, uh, "We asked him why or how he won. He's like, I, I lamed them out. So what does that mean? What's how's Captain Falcon lame out? Lame out someone? Really? I, I don't know. That's what he said. These are his words. I, I can only imagine Captain Falcon timing somebody out. I guess that would be hilarious. <laughs> that to sounds see. hilarious. One of the fastest <laughs> characters in the game. Well, <laughs> using a speed to run away. I yeah, mean, I guess. I don't Sonic know. Man. Uh, anyway, his opponent looked like it's gonna be uh, Kome. Oh, very interesting. Shulk. <laughs> I do want to comment, Keitaro, uh, how, how do you feel about this outside, I guess, commentary setup, outside stream setup? Uh, what, what are your thoughts on this? It's so beautiful. I, feel I think like it I'm looks in... amazing. I think it's amazing. Uh, it, it's worked out very well. I think it look, looks really good on stream. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, I think the first thing I said about this was uh, when we came on Friday, I said, man, once the sun sets, though, these commentators are about to get bodied. Are you and trying to say you're cold? Let me say, the <laughs> self-fulfilling prophecy <laughs> has come is, true, man. I am cold as hell right now. <laughs> the, the wind did pick I'll up be a honest, little bit. I'll be honest, dog. You know, right, right around the corner of 5th Street. And Can I get a wind blocker or something? I mean, man. you do have your blazer. You, I know you took it off to try to match me a little bit. <laughs> I'm about to put on my hoodie, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh. No, no, I'm still having a good time though. You know, it's it's keeping me awake, it's, it's keeping me brisk. Oh yeah, like if you ever start to feel chill, feel a little too calm, you like and blah 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 blah. <laughs> the breeze coming real hard. <laughs> so yeah, we we say epic. I heard that simple. But we're about to likely go to Battlefield. This is one of the weirdest matchups I've seen <laughs> ever. Captain oh, yeah. Falcon versus Shulk, and I believe this is winners bracket too. Oh, we're about to get blown back too, what man. What is this? I love. Doesn't matter what you do, you can know everything about this character Shulk. Uh, someone on Twitter will be like, "He's got there's actually, no nothing about Shulk." Actually, in Chilman Yago, he get plus five percent damage. We'll so what? That. What thing I said I was gonna do whenever I commented a Shulk matchup is uh, be like the anti commentator, just say everything wrong, uh, <laughs> but not even just wrong, just be like completely ridiculously wrong. Be like, "Yo, I love that Stone Monado. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. That's my favorite Monado. I like that." One. I like that. <laughs> Oh, here we go. We're starting on match number one on Town and City stage. We have uh, barely seen actually while we were commentating, and it looks like he is in Buster. Yeah, and how, I don't know how much experience do you think Vitaly has with this matchup. Um, I don't want to say it's rare. I feel like there's a lot more Shulk players as of late, especially uh, in some of these bigger events. But oh my gosh! He saw him wait for that. Herdachi did not get a punish to come out afterwards, yeah. but zero percent on Komei. I yeah, think he's not starting off too well for Fatality, but he loves his rage, and it's honestly, oh, right the second jump. Oh my god, Spike! Oh, and I was gonna say, man, I feel like being a Captain Falcon player, you're probably, you know, there's probably a lot of situations where you're playing from behind, and Fatality's staying very, very calm in that situation. All he knows, all he needs is like a clean dare off stage or like a falling up air to get that knee, and oh, Fatality takes that first stock. Oh, not ready to tech as Kome, Kome strikes back. <laughs> oh, what is going on right now? And it's like a complete reset. <laughs> but that was really nice by Fatality again. He got the second jump with the up air, the down tilt, and the spike. So beautiful. And then even right there, you see him looking for that falling up air to up tilt. Again, looking for, uh, you know, maybe like an early stalker. Just put Kome in a bad situation. Beautiful. Not able to get the grab coming out after the neutral air. And we do have Jump Monado. So he might be running away a little bit, just doing aerials, landing near Falcon, but not close enough that Falcon can punish. And Speed Monado, kind of the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it's going to give him a different buff, but you're kind of the same thing, sure. Oh, no, I mean, like, you could run away with oh, it yeah, yeah, throw yeah. attacks out. <laughs> <laughs> or you can ac actually go really aggressive off stage like that. Yeah, very scary situation to be as, uh, you know, Captain Falcon, because Shulk does have those huge, huge aerials that can kind of catch his upbeat from any distance, really. Good stuff to Fatality staying on stage, but Jump Monado is a little hard to time how to punish a jump since yeah. he jumps really fast and high. Immediately switch to speed, kind of keep up with Fatality. A retreating to the edge of the stage, that gentleman will send him off. That was a really scary recovery coming off the Falcon. And double jab, down throw. Oh, up throw. Instead up throw, wow. Chaos. Yeah, no, that's scary. I'm sure uh, Komei probably thinking he was going to go for a forward throw, DIing upwards. Wow, that was scary actually to see him use that up. He could have been punished pretty hard if he missed. But it is Shield Monado. Yeah, so he is a Shield Monado, so he's uh, for him to catch, you know, his opponent. Yeah, the, on top of that, the punish is not going to be as hard. All right, jump. Back air. That should be yep, it. That is going to be it. Game number one goes to Fatality after, you know, a very, very amazing first dog. That, that first dog was very fun to watch, yeah. uh, honestly, for both characters, you know. Hmm. All right, so we'll see where Koma is going to go this time. He did have it to start on Town and City, and I felt like he pre played pretty well. But Fatality, I think, owned that match completely because he was able to not only just have the lead, but Como got the KO with a stage spike, which is something like that you can tech. So that was kind of a mistake on Fatality's part for not getting the tech. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, again, I always say this whenever I commentate a Captain Falcon match. I feel like you really, really got to be on point with your techs because you're going to be in that situation a lot. I'm sure Vitaly not just, uh, probably just not expecting that kind of, you know, attack to stage spike. I mean, that was a really long, really kind of slow stage spike. So... Wow, and I just actually realized Town and City is really good for um, Shulk due to the fact that he can use Jump Monado and run around on the top platforms up there and not get hit. Oh, yeah. And we might be seeing a little bit. Oh, my gosh. Fatality going really aggressive. I love how he always goes for the dare, whether it's the two-frame dare or the dare off the stage. Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel like that, that goes without saying. Fatality being aggressive, this man. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's, that's the name of the game for him and his character. Did he get the up air? No, not even looking for it. Playing very safe. Waiting for Shulk to land. 
Yeah, oh it, ooh, misses the knee in that situation again. We see him looking for it right afterwards. Uh, you know, I wanted to comment on, I feel like, for the most part, we've seen Komei kind of stick to speed, and Jumpinado doesn't want to go into Smash and, you know, risk getting hit by a, a strong Falcon, you know, Smash attack, or uh, into Buster and getting, you know, risk getting hit by a Captain Falcon combo and taking a ton of damage. And Fatality keeps air dodging, but was able to air dodge on the platform and still be saved that time around. And wow, Koma switching, Koma switching between Monados so quick. Yeah, barely yeah. staying in Monados for even five seconds at a time. But again, very, very often cycling between speed and jump. Dash attack does beat grab, or attacks do beat grabs. Oh my gosh, air <laughs> that safe recovery coming out from Fatality. Koma tried so hard to get that KO. Yeah, that, again, like I said, it seems like a really bad situation for Falcon to be in, but. Wow, he switched off Smash Monados so fast. <laughs> yeah, I know. He just went into it, got knocked off stage, and switched off. Uh, off stage, you gotta get out of that as soon as possible. You know you're gonna take that extra knockback. <laughs> I'm getting blown away right now by Kobe. <laughs> He's, he went Smash Monado, got thrown off stage, took it off, <laughs> got on stage, put on shield, forward through Falcon off the stage, and switched again. Yeah, I say this very often whenever I commentate a Shulk match, man. This, this character takes a lot of micromanaging, and that's why we don't see as many Shulk. Uh, Shulk players, it's just a lot to think about, a lot to uh, to do while you're playing the match. Uh, you know, just playing Smash in general is not easy to do without having to worry about switching Monado, you know, Monado arts. I'm still blown away. He took out Shield Monado to throw. Let me Shield Monado to forward throw him off, and then I'll switch back later. <laughs> oh, fatality with the lead get up, Raptor boost, no fear at all. Uh, wow. You know, I guess 20, 23 percent, not too much of a punish Komei could have gotten anyway. And. Right now, Buster trying to get some damage, not going to be able to combo off the back air, but does still get the hit. <laughs> Finally, we see the Buster come out. Uh, not going to make much use of it. Ooh, oh. oh, tried to do the footstool. All right, nice up B out of shield. And can he combo him off the stage? Yeah, I feel like Shulk definitely has one of the most risky up B's out of shield. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's helpful, but if you miss that, you're going to get bodied. All right. See if he's trying to look for a dash dash. Oh my gosh, gets the read. Oh, baby. All right. Yeah. I was going to say, I was going to say, man, being stuck in Smash Monado for that situation. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, Fatality, relax. Yeah. His recovery is so good against Shulk right now. Shulk has a sword that's really long, and that neutral air, for example, sits everywhere, and he's still avoiding every single edge guard Komi is going for. And so many switches coming out from Komei. Now we see in Smash, the dash attack, just quick dash attack out of nowhere. I didn't even think. <laughs> I'm sure Vitaly was not ready for that at all. Yeah. Well, good stuff to Komei for getting that dash attack and then the KO. Looks like Town and City is working out for him this time around. Maybe he's starting to learn how to deal with Fatality's play style. He's still not getting the edge guards. Well, if he can just get that, it will be a lot cleaner for Komei to win. Uh -huh. This is Falcon. He does have, I guess people could say, one of the worst recoveries in the game. There's likely probably 10 characters that probably have worse, but yeah, of the better characters. Yeah, it's not a good recovery. I think yeah. it's uh, pretty, most people agree with that. Oh, and it looks like we're going to Dreamland. Fatality's counterpick stage choice. This is 1-1, one, one, winner's side of bracket. wonder what he's looking for. He keeps running into shield, but not doing anything afterwards. Oh, fa uh, Fatality or Komei? Yeah. I mean, uh, that's Captain Falcon Smash, man. Yeah. Dash grab, dash, dash shield, dash something, man. As long as I'm dashing, we're good. Oh my gosh, he got the second jump. <gasps> what is this? Who? Oh, what is this? <laughs> oh. I love the uh, no fear coming off Vitality, even off stage with no jump, still looking to get you know every hit that he can, uh, knowing that his opponent w was in Buster in that situation. Every every hit, maybe extra damage. Oh, very nice. Just waiting for Falcon to come back on. He read the high get up coming out from Vitality. That's gonna be punished. <sighs> Vitality's always going for that knee. All right. Uh, oh, oh no, no, again, that's a very similar to game number one. Wow, that's uh, ooh, that's super unfortunate. The Falcon without the tech. He probably just wasn't expecting that slash to come out. It, it's crazy because you see Fatality very often tech uh, stage price there much quicker than that, but that, that one very slow. It's like it's kind of it's kind of harder to react to because it's so slow, you know? Yeah. Wow, very tricky from Fatality. He actually ran off the stage to try to get a quick footstool and gets the back air. Good stuff for him. So it's only 32% on him. Starting out with Buster Monado usually goes for that. And going for the backers, it's really interesting to see. A lot of people will go for a neutral air, possibly into grab. Yeah. They get combos with the Buster, but he's just spacing out uh, Falcon. Really hard to catch, I guess you can say, but due to how fast he is. Jeez. It's like yeah. he tries to end people's lives at like 0% of me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's, that's, that's honestly what he's trying to do. Uh, I think the really, really bad thing about that is Akomi being in Buster, for a lot of these combos, taking that extra damage. And you really know Captain Falcon does great damage, so. Uh, 
Uh, it's really interesting to see how Komei plays with uh, Shulk, him deciding not to go way off the stage to try to get Falcon off. Oh my god! Oh, and that looks like some really questionable DI for Komei. Oh, oh, and it does not, you're, 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 it's not going to matter because you can't DI from that. That down air will close out game number three for Fatality. Wow. Look at his smile, look at his smile right yeah, now. He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> he always has a smile. This massive kid, Captain Falcon, for 20 years. Doesn't matter. Every time he does something like that, he's still smiling, still having fun. <laughs> Komei, on the other hand, not impressed. <laughs> He's chilling, he's chilling. He's like, whatever, man. Right, so we might see them go back to town and city. It seems like Fatality's not afraid of that stage. Or maybe Kome is going to go back to Dreamland. Oh, it looks like it will be town and city. He's really confident on that stage. And Fatality just doesn't mind going back there. Oh, yeah, this was uh, Fatality's counterpick for game number two, so I'm sure he's not. You know, he counterpicked it for a reason. Oh, actually, no, this was uh, Kome's counterpick. Yeah, it? it's yeah, Kome's sorry. counterpick. But Fatality did win the first game on it. So yeah, 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 that's fine. Man. He does probably feel confident here. And we consistently see the start with Buster Minato in the beginning. Uh, Buster Minato Art, Keitaro. Uh -huh. I, know, I know you're new. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you show commentator. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Keeps catching the second jump of Kome. Yeah, again, we see him look for a short hop. Up air will honestly lead to so many different things. I think even that percent a, near, a knee from the middle of the stage might be it. Going for the knee again. He hasn't gotten pretty much any of the knees to work, but might as well keep going for it. But with Shield Monado, makes it even easier. Yeah, whenever we're seeing Komei maybe try and stay out of Shield Monado, he knows Cap a lot of Captain Falcon strings. Uh, the Shield Monado less knockback is not going to help him out. It's going to actually get him comboed even more. Vitaly looking for that back air. He usually is able to get the back air to get the first KO on every stop. Shield Monado likely can't get the KO just yet, but can do combos. Switching out of shield right before he gets hit. I love that. Fatality reading the held shield on that platform. We're going to go straight for the Falcon dive. Oh! Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> How and many shots does he have in his region? Yeah, right. <laughs> he keeps getting these dares on him. I, I think that's number three for Fatality. Wow. And that was an angled downwards F smash coming out from Komei. Uh, do we always have these player camps? Is this? Is this? <laughs> I can't remember, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember either. <laughs> uh, in any case, well, it's great to see his player's expressions. <laughs> Going for the footstool again? Mm -hmm. Not able to do much out of it due to the fact of the height he was um, at. On top of that being above the... Above. He wasn't above the stage anymore, so... Yeah. Oh. I like that fat... Oh, no. Oh. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Just throw out that extra up there. You, you need it. You can come back, you're good. Komei's staying on stage still. There, there. Oh, now we see Komei. Being very aggressive against a spike as his own. Komei will take us into game number five with that down air. <laughs> he was, he, yo, I'm telling you, doesn't matter what his face looks like, he's, he's scheming. <laughs> after, after getting spiked three times, you gotta strike back. He's like, Even you, if you don't win the set, you gotta <laughs> you, make a statement. You spike me, I spike you. <laughs> All right, and we have Scat coming in from his region, Fatality's region, giving him some advice. All right, so what you gotta do, man, you gotta leaf shield. All right, you gotta leaf shield and gotta, gotta shoot some pellets. Okay. That is rough. 2 2. Sets like these where it could pretty much go either way. Yeah, this has been a really close set between both players. Uh, we'll say it's always good to have someone in your corner from your own region. Uh, you know, even if they don't play the same character, it's really cool to just have someone supporting you. Mm -hmm. I think the game is changing. We're, we're seeing a lot more coaches, just a lot more uh, coaching in general, which I think is. I don't know. How do you feel about coaching, Kitaro? Um. I'm not the biggest fan, but if it's something they want to do, then I'm perfectly fine with it. As long as there's a time limit, and they definitely seem to be adhering to that here. Yeah. Um, so good stuff to whoever made that rule of having the time limit. I feel like that's key. And once again, we have a start of Buster Monado Art uh, coming out. Nice, nice. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah, anyway, here we Monado's go. Monado's the sword, man. Come on. <laughs> nice. Going to switch out of Buster right before getting, uh, taking those extra hits. Uh, those add up, man. Every every hit you get, or every hit you take while in Buster. You know, take, take three hits, and that's an extra 10%. Going for the knees over and over. He has a really good start. Oh! He cannot read the DI coming out from Komei to be able to get the knee. He's, like, trying to predict it, but he's predicting wrong every time. But he still has such a strong lead. Yeah, we'll say that. I think that was the first time we've seen the counter coming out from Komei. Uh, did not get it to actually connect. But it's good to remind the fatality, remind fatality that you do have that counter. You can't always go on to be aggressive. Oh my goodness! <laughs> the jab into turnaround back air. Very nice coming out from fatality. Good mix up. Man, this game is looking so good for Fatality as that back throw will close out the first stock. It's only one stock away from sending Komei to losers. There. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was going to look for a dare right there, man. Oh my gosh. Went for it. But Fatality was able to up B before getting hit by the down air. 
They're uh, falling up here, but no follow-up afterwards. A little bit too far to get that jab. And a B to the platform. Good fair. Another early up B, possibly. Oh, he saved his uh, jump. He saved his jump. Wow. Yeah, I thought he wasted a while ago. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, no. oh, misses the dare. Jab lock. And uh, a little bit. A little, I looked like maybe a little bit too early with that. Oh, very nice patience coming out from Komei. Deciding to retreat back to the back air. But that recovery is not going to work out. However, it's the speed of Monado Art, so... Oh, yeah, well, great tech. I <laughs> immediate upbeat. I think if he went for the tear right there, it would have been very scary. All right, he does have Smash Monado Art out looking for that upbeat. Ledge guard. Wow. Cool. Uh, I, I must mention that Vitality is still on his first stock here. As he, well, oh, he was still on his first stock. He tried to go for charge F Smash and did. Oh no. Oh, oh Vitality, up. please, you're up 110%. Oh, and that, wow, that's just going to do it. I, I was going to say, Vitality, please, I hope you don't get too aggressive <laughs> and put yourself in a bad situation off stage, but it's not going to matter at all. Well, props to Fatality for winning that set. Um, it was very close up until the end. Uh, he was just getting all these grabs. I feel like he realized, hey, Shulk just keeps standing there blocking. There's a whole bunch of times on Town and City where Shulk or Komei would always just be blocking with up B. So he thought, if he's doing that on the platforms, he'll probably do it on the stage too. I'll just run up and grab him over and over and over again. Yeah, we see Vitaly being very confident in his grab breeze. Even one situation where uh, he came back from the Angel platform, faced the opposite direction, and just pressed grab. And we saw, you saw Komei kind of just roll into it. Mm -hmm. uh, very, uh, a lot of confidence coming up from Fatality. Even get, game in the final, where a lot of players would kind of falter with their confidence or, or momentum. So, shout out to Fatality. Uh, Staying something. strong with that cap in the Falcon. I don't know how he does it, man. <laughs> those dares. Those yeah, dares. Even yeah, those coming dares. out from Shulk, too. They were really impressive to see. We saw, like, pretty much no knees, but it was still really awesome. But good stuff to him. And one I think thing. that was our first team number five, was it? Um, I'm sorry? Was that our first game number five? Oh, um, yeah, I, yeah. I think it could have been, yeah. It could have been, yeah. And so, good. yeah, I'm happy to see closer sets coming up. And the really cool thing about that is it's Captain Falcon and Shulk. Yeah. Like, who, who you know, I don't mind coming. who moves ahead at yeah, that point. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind who moves ahead. No matter what, you're going to see a very unique character in the later parts of Brackets. So good stuff to them. Now, speaking of unique characters, he's not looking so unique as we have yet another Shulk player stepping up to the plate. Oh, yeah, that is very true. Testing our knowledge, man. That is very true. We have Nico. <laughs> I'm not too sure if he's still in the winner's side of Bracket, but I heard there was two Shulks in winner's side of top 96 Bracket. Uh, this is losers, impressive. as far as I know. Oh, really? We see, uh, this is the point of Trilla. And we know Trello was defeated by Fatality, so this must be losers. Oh, very true. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So we have Trello coming out. So we're going to have Ryu versus Shulk. This is going to be interesting. So one thing about Shulk people may not realize very often is that a lot of Shulk players, um, I don't know if Nico plays like it, but they like to use Jump Monado, Speed Monado, and Shield Monado at higher percents where they just keep running away. It's yeah. like you're, you're chasing them down. And one of the problems that Ryu has is catching characters. Yep, he's, he's not a very fast yet. character, and his, his jump angle is very goofy. Yeah, his horizontal um, aerial momentum is like, once you jump forward, you're jumping forward. You can't hold back and turn Commit, around. man. You got to commit. Yeah. Just like Street Fighter. We're going to go right into game number one, I believe. No button checks. All right, button checks are indeed a thing. Got to make sure that up tilt works. Props to Trello for coming back out and coming here. Um, one of the recent things he did do was beat MK Leo very convincingly in two sets a couple weeks ago. And people were saying, yo, he needs to come out to some more events. And here he is. He's at Civil War. So props to TGG for contacting him and coming out here. I don't want to take anything away from Trello, but I, I think, uh, you know, on top of Trello being an amazing player, I think uh, MK Leo is kind of weakness to Ryu. Oh, he kind of showed up. Yeah, he 100% has a weakness to Ryu. He lost to Klein in Mexico um, at a local before. And he lost to a Ryu today, I think. Uh, I forget his name, though. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, MK Leo? Yeah, didn't he? <laughs> I could be wrong about this. <laughs> I mean, that's a safe bet. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I'm, I'm like 90% sure it was a like Ryu. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I was hoping you would know the name, but uh, no. I, thought, I thought you followed all, every single one of his matches, man. I thought you were his coach. I thought you were just there. And so I You're asleep. Me up. <laughs> Come on, Kitaro. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. We have. Um, I know he did lose to um, AC earlier. Um, I was helping him practice uh, Falco versus um, Marth, but I kept saying, like, just so you know, he does have a Meta Knight, and MK Leo did lose to Tyrant before. So good stuff to AC. I think they that. did a Meta Knight as well, too. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Anyway, game number one Nico versus Trella. Uh, first here, Trella on the left side playing Ryu, but uh, yeah, I'm sure you know who's playing who. Yeah. All right. Committing a little too hard with the Hulu game. Yeah, I don't know. What do, you, what do you think about this matchup? Again, show not a character we see very often. Uh, even for you, honestly, not a character we see that often. I feel that it should be... I, I feel like it should be in the Shulk's favor just for the fact that he can just out-camp Ryu or be more defensive and not let Ryu approach him. 
Yeah, Ryu's gonna have a very hard time making his way in there, but once he gets in there, I feel like he's gonna be able to get that big damage we very often see coming out from Ryu. We're gonna see a lot of up tilts coming out. God forbid he has shield Minato art on deck when he, you know, he gets hit by a tag by an up tilt. Oh, that actually should have been it, but it looks like he did a mistake in the vision. I have not seen like such high level Ryu in quite a while, so it's very interesting to see how um, his movement is. Yeah, I think he's kind of in not as bad, but maybe in a similar situation to Shulk, where there's a lot of micromanagement with this character. It's not as easy as just pressing buttons anymore, you know? Now you got, you got real inputs, you got big boy inputs. All he needs is a down tilt to up beat. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, that works out too. <laughs> Doesn't try to get the KO, but probably put some fear in Nico's heart as we see him kind of retreat to that platform. Ryu almost always has stage has stage control in this uh, game, due to the fact that people are scared. Once they get Ryu in the air, they're more okay with it. But <laughs> once he has you at KO percent, they're just always running around on the platforms. Wow. And that might be it. Yep. Yeah. Again, Ryu. Yeah, he does have a lot of recovery options, but a lot, you know that a lot of them are kind of slow. If, if he's still recovering from horizontally. Uh, that tattoo is, is going to get punished our trade. Looking for that backer, looking for the up air, and another backer comes out. Wow, wow. And that's enough to do it across the stage. Jeez. Wow, Nico actually playing pretty aggressive this time around. Oh, just completely, he just stayed blocking it. That's actually pretty rare. I see uh, Trello going for grabs, too. Yeah, kind of unfortunate thing for Shulk. Doesn't have many multi hit attacks in the air, so. I think we're gonna see that focus attack coming, uh, coming in handy. Oh yeah, that's why he's probably always using the focus attack, knowing he can just escape to that due to Shulk having so much lag on his attacks and so much late startup too on many of his uh, aerial attacks. Yeah, late startup really is a killer for Shulk. Uh, you know, recovery's not too bad. I always say his recovery's not too bad, but that startup is really what hurts him. <laughs> that roll in, very nice by Trella, but he's still having trouble getting in. Oh, I like how he side beat to the stage instead of going for the up beat. Has to watch out with those air dodges. Yeah, it's like Nico all over him being very, very aggressive, even though uh, Jola not too far behind. And, good choice. Wow, and he's at KO percent. Oh my god, oh wait. Yep, that TSRK not gonna do it with Shield Monado art. Very nice, adding up the damage. Shield Monado still out, still out, still out. Doesn't even go for the up B, knowing that, or sure you can, knowing that. It's not going to KO just yet. He might be able to live. Does he even jump? Yep, he does. Oh, okay. Good stuff saving that. Oh, oh and the up B <laughs> will do it. I, it wow. That's, uh, you, you know, Nico was looking for like a, a falling there or a falling or anything, really. They would have traded and just sent Ryu in a bad position, but doesn't quite get it. Yeah, I think uh, Nico went a little too aggressive when he decided to go off again to try to get the, he was either fair or neutral air, and that's where he got punished for grabbing the ledge twice. So good stuff to Trellis, seeing through that, getting the up B to hit. We'll see what stage we go to. That was Smashville. I have a feeling we'll just see Smashville again. Actually, we're going to Final Destination. Either way, they're very close first match. Uh, I feel like this will go either way. Definitely. Not getting too crazy with the counter picks. Yeah, not too much running away either. It's a little shocking to see. Ryu does actually run pretty fast on the ground. Yeah, I think for the most part, Ryu can kind of set the pace of this match. Of course, with that shield. I'm not sorry, not shield. Uh, speed and jump Minato art. Not really going to be a lot of trailer trying to keep up with him. Ooh, ooh, not, not Buster, not oh <laughs> this damage God. he's going to take from this. <laughs> Very beautiful. 88%? My goodness. All right, looking around for that grab. Okay, Chell actually going for the grabs this time around, and he got it to work. Yeah, it seems like both players playing very patient and neutral. Uh, yeah, not so many attacks coming out, especially from Trella. He's like just trying to bait Shulk to possibly run in and do something um, not good, so you can be able to punish with the Shoryuken. Oh. I love that Nico, uh, you know, playing great footsies against Trello, keeping those uh, aerial attacks just out of his distance. Oh my, Shield Monado helps him not go as far, so he's just able to keep up tilting. Oh, oh and he's seen the future. Future is a KO for Nico, putting himself on the board. A uh, 94%, really not too bad for him. Uh, Ryu does hit hard though, so. Oh my Ooh. god! Oh, oh, he looks like he can see the future too. <laughs> my god! Yo, he definitely saw the future. On I that feel one. like a pixel towards the left, and he would have landed on stage instead of towards that blast zone. But uh, <laughs> he see through that. Yeah, <laughs> Double man. jump up there. That my was god! So high. Well, good stuff to Trello on that one. Bring it right back. Every time he gets KO'd, he just gets a KO back immediately. Very nice combos coming out from Trello. Oh my gosh! And, uh, taking all this damage in Buster too, 63% from the exchange, and that's, uh, man, 
trail up, put himself back in the game with that. Make sure you tech against Ryu, he could block you also. Oh, that's going to be damage, and that's perfect percent to actually KO Shulk. He needs to go into Shield Nado, and here it is. So he can live a little bit longer. Once he's like, oh, oh really, really <laughs> wanted that. I, I respect it. You know, that would have been a good damage. I don't think it would have got the KO because he was in Shield Nado art. Just doing an up tilt to get some. Oh my gosh, went for the shore you can anyway. Last Trello even looking for that KO. He knows the shield. <laughs> he knows he has less knockback, but he knows how strong that, that uh, true shore you can is. All right, and there's no shield model, and the shield model's back again. See the future. Once again, the future has been seen. It's not going to be enough for the KO just yet. Oh, wow. Looks like. Uh, Okay, and that actually should be oh, KO anyway. Even with the Shield Monada art. That is how strong the attack is, Keitaro. Wow, good stuff to Trello for taking the second game on FD. So I'm surprised we didn't see a stage of platforms for him to be able to just run away a little more. Maybe he doesn't care about running away against Ryu. So he just wants an open field where he can just uh, punish Ryu's landings. I, I felt like that actually might be a good option. Shout out to the boy. Tremendo dude. Shulk players unites when you come out with the advice for Nico. Amazing teacher, amazing dancer. You know, <laughs> did you see him last night? I didn't see him last night. Was he oh, was he going in? Check my Twitter. Oh, I will check your yeah, Twitter. Check Twitter. <laughs> he was going in. <laughs> uh, that's good to know. All right, I'll so. just keep tabs on who the best dancers are, man. Have you seen PB&J? PB&J? He, he went in. He went Oh, he in. always goes. Wait, last night? Last night, yeah. Well, speaking of going in, it looks like they're going to be going in to Final Destination. I appreciate as that segue. <laughs> good job, Kitaro. <laughs> Gotta keep you on your toes, man. <laughs> Game number the three will be on this right once now. again. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, starting out with Speed Monado this time. This is interesting. Instead of uh, Buster Art Monado. Yeah, again, I wonder if he's realized, you know, from the first two games, being aggressive, not helping out too much. Maybe I should start, or, you know, at least try being a little bit more defensive, like you were talking about. Uh, staying outside of his range, just kind of running away from him. Oh my gosh, almost get punished for that. Wow, he's doing fantastic this time around. I think the key issue is getting the KO. I feel like he struggles to get that a little bit, and he allows Ryu to come back with a lot of damage or a lot of combos. Yeah, as you're looking for that KO attack, you put yourself in a situation where, you know, uh, you can get punished really hard for things. And that's what we've seen Trello do a lot. A lot of playing from behind, a lot of catching up and getting that early KO with TSRK. That was a beautiful retreat. And it might be a little hard for him to come back because it's really easy to punish the side B, but he has to side B, otherwise he won't be able to recover. Oh, he actually had his second jump, too. Yeah, Trailer always saving his jump, man. Jeez. He knows where you meant again. It's almost like he has... His, oh, my. See into the future again. Man, once again, I, I, these are more counters I've seen from it, like any show player. Oh, a little <laughs> bit. A, held on to that focus attack a little bit too long. Wow. So this is looking similar to the last couple matches, or last few matches, where um, Sneeko would actually get the first KO, but then... Trello would immediately get a KO afterwards. Let's see if it'll be the same way. Alright, using the speed Monado so well. Tremendo dude, good stuff giving that advice. Once again, great, uh, you know, great spacing and footsies coming off from Nico. We see Trello really having a hard time getting his way in there, getting in there. Oh my lord, what is that? <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I guess he was in shield, so he didn't look uh, for the sh sure again instantly, like I thought he was going to, but uh, <laughs> any damage is good damage once again. <laughs> The classic up tilt, up tilt into down air. It's up to Trello for seeing through that, or seeing through the second jump that Nico decided to use. And this man really dropped from the angel platform with backslash. I respect it. I gotta, gotta see it come out sometime. Speed Monado. Speed Monado. Read, Side B forced. Yeah, I'm reading that air dodge. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> A striking bag just like, you know, Komei versus Fatality. If you get spikes, you gotta spike him back and let him know. Let him know. It's not just me. <laughs> oh, he let him know. He let him know, I'm sure. <laughs> well, good stuff seeing through that. I see he's taking more advantage of forcing Ryu to go way off the stage using the fares and then forcing the side B. That's yeah. a good choice. Um, good stuff to him by that. But we have Battlefield coming up, so this will be a huge change in stage choice for this matchup. Yeah, to play on what you just said, a lot of that matchup was Trilla trying to recover, trying to get his feet, his feet back on the stage. It wasn't working out too great for him, but uh, hopefully he can do better in this match. All right, already 31%, not looking too good. It's going to be a little harder to run away with these uh, platforms as a different escape option for uh, Ryu, actually. So, like, it's going to be hard for him to actually approach with his shield Monado. So he goes into Buster Monado art. Yeah, look at this. There's an impenetrable wall of aerials and hitboxes. Trello really having a hard time making his way in there. It looks very similar situation. We've seen this yep. many times before. How's this going to end? 
How is this going to end up? Does he have his jump? He's been known for saving it. Yep, saving it. Oh but my goodness. Trades with that dare. No amount of jumps is going to save you from that. Who trades with that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good stuff to him, though. He has a much better lead than he's had um, the last time around. And here we, we hear the crowd chanting for Nico. Uh, you know, he's, been, he's down one game, but in a good situation in this game, number four. Very tricky from Trello right there. Using the fully charge of the focus attack and still able to punish afterwards. Man, quick shout out to whatever device Tremendo dude hit him with because it's been working out pretty <laughs> well for him so far. I definitely think the choice to use speed against Ryu a lot more often was very good. Oh, that's weird. Oh no, punish punished. coming off from Trilla just barely missed that up tilt because of uh, Nico's shrieking hurt box. This might be it. Oh no, actually. I guess he thought he would drop down low for fastball. Instead, he decided to side beat to the ledge. Good choice by uh, Trello. He has a shield now, making sure he doesn't get the KO, even with all this rage. It's going to go off. He's going to see Trello off stage in most of this match. Wow. Oh, there it is. There's that multi hit. He doesn't have many of them, <laughs> but that up air is going to be a multi hit, able to go through focus attack and send us to game number five. Nico with the nod. Very, very straight face. All right, so I feel like he needs to go for those dares. I feel like he's winning because of those dares. Like, obviously, it's a change of play style that he's doing using the speed Monado. It's working out good. But getting those dares to work, uh, it's pretty much been a game changer right now. Absolutely. Game number five between these two players. Uh, these choke players are putting in work. This vet man, both of them uh, in winners right now. And Nico, one game away from staying in winners. Trilla, of course, going to try and fight back and not have to go into that shark pit of, uh, you know, a loser's bracket. Wow. That was pretty impressive. I feel like um, we might see a different stage choice coming out from Charlie. He went to Battlefield. Probably that's the stage he feels comfortable on, but that was a clean win. Actually, cleaner win than um, the last win for Nico. So we might see a stage choice uh, change. Uh, still thinking about it? Oh, it looks like uh, if I if I could read lips correctly, I think he said, it, I think I'll go back to Battlefield. No, oh, interesting. I didn't realize he had that ability. Had uh, lip reading ability? Lip reading, yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of, I have like the seventh sense, man. Seventh sense. Yeah, you ever what's seen what's the movie? <laughs> I haven't seen that movie. Are you talking about Sixth Sense, maybe? Yeah, there's a new one coming out. Oh, the sequel. Yeah, I'm in it. <laughs> so here we go. We're going back to Battlefield. <laughs> back to Battlefield for our game number five. Controlla and Nico worked out very, very well. Uh, you know, last time we saw the stage. Let's see if we can do it again. Speed Monado coming out from the start once again. That quick run and grab. It seems like Trello's just having trouble approaching. Before he was able to get his own grabs, but this time around it's looking a lot harder. All right, jump Monado, and he's going to Buster. Yeah, Buster right before he gets hit. That's not not too good for Nico. Uh, Trello looked like he read that roll away, but wasn't able to catch it with the dash attack. We might have to go back to speed Monado. See, yeah, there we go. It seems like Buster is not working out good for him. Every time he goes into that, he seems to lose the early lead that he has. And I feel like most of the matches we've seen Nico take, uh, he has not been Buster. It's been shield. Oh, I'm sorry, it's been speed and, and jump. Oh! <laughs> You better watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's just a statement, man. He doesn't get the KO, but uh, make him feel bad. He can dare you from the middle of the stage and KO you. <laughs> All right, should not a good choice, but it's going to run out pretty soon. And even so, I feel like it might not matter too much after a while. You should still be able to get the sure you can KO. Oh, what? He's there. Oh, I, I like how you look for that falling up here after that. Oh, my gosh. Jump, Monado? Oof. And oh. Charlie going to return to stage with that focus attack. We saw hit the focus attack lose the up, up air, you know, last game. Surprising to see him still confident in that. A little shocked to see him in this Monado right now. I guess he won't get KO'd by other moves. Or uh, the only one that can KO him is sure you can. And? Oh, he oh. misses the strong part of the sure you can. Yeah, that was weird. He'd like dash up reverse sure you can. Anyway, miss it. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That it's, move is ridiculous. it's unbelievable how strong that attack is. Even Nico gonna hang on to the angel platform to, you know, to kind of slow down the momentum he got from that. It's hilarious because it looks like Ryu's swatting a fly and you just go flying. It looks like he's flexing. Like he just <laughs> yeah. flexes and you die. All right, good back air, but he will need the smash Monado to get a KO pretty soon. Looking for the up tilt back air and like that. Gonna go into a smash, a smash art. Wait for the air dodge. Oh. <laughs> he saw through the air dodge, but it looked like Trello air dodge a little late on purpose. Yeah, oh. Trello was in that situation many, many times last game and the game before that, so I'm sure he's adjusted. Oh my gosh. This is the troublesome part about facing Ryu. He is at KO percent. And he decides to go smash. Yeah, he's going to go smash, but not an art, so that's very scary. <laughs> go for it all. A down to the Shuriken would have been a hit. 
Oh my gosh, okay. And he switched back to speed, but he speeded right into Ow, three, up tilt, up tilt. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, forward air. Don't see that one very often. Okay, good choice. Got the back air. Back and air. now he'll probably need to stick or go back to Shield Monado and run away for quite a bit. My dude needs to go with the Buster and go all in right now. That's what he needs to do. <laughs> That's wild. Will he go for it? I feel like he'll just go for I Speed Monado. I don't think he's going to go for yeah, it. Yeah, I feel like he'll go with the Speed Monado after this and just try to run away and stay alive as long as he can. Yeah, I But think if he goes for Buster, I want to see it. I think he's going to try to get Trello off stage in that situation we saw many, many times and just go for the edge guard. Doesn't matter what percent Trello is at, you know, 24 to 240. Uh, you know, forward airs, couple forward airs off stage will do it for his stuff. Good choice. Going back into shield. Running away just for a little bit. That's the show classic. Running away with Jump Monado on the platforms for a little bit. And then Did he, he use his jump. Oh, I think he oh used his jump. Gosh. Oh, my oh. gosh. Oh, oh, wow. The shout outs to the magnet hands. We'll save him. 182 cannot get hit by anything here. Oh, my gosh. He needs to go back to shield Monado pretty soon. He's there, but he still can get sure you can. Yeah, he can that. still absolutely get hit by something here at 192 and lose his stock. Wow. Trella trying to bait the rolls. And Nico's actually rolling quite a bit. Another roll. Still saying very patient. Uh, he knows the shield Monado art has to run out sometime, and there it is. Oh. Run away, run away. Yeah, he's <laughs> I don't even approach. I don't even think Nico ah! wants to play right now. We see Trello <laughs> read that with a run out. Sure, you can. And close out game number five. Wow, there were a lot of rolls coming out from Nico, and I think Trello was just waiting for it. That's one thing I noticed about Trello's play style. He's always waiting for a roll, and Nico was rolling a bit too much. He saw through it. It doesn't matter how fast you run. Do you blame him though? This man was sitting at over 200%, just lost his shield, not <laughs> art. He's just trying to get out of that situation. He was trying to make, uh, create as much space between those two characters as he could. Uh, unfortunately, Trella reading that and closing out that game number five, that was, uh, that was a great set between those two players. That was very good. It was almost a reverse 3 0, so good stuff to Nico for being able to bring it back, and tremendous dude for giving that advice. But yeah. we had low Whatever he said, man, that was, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, speed, run. <laughs> I, I feel like that's what he said, and I feel like it was working out so well, so good stuff to him on that. Well, yeah, we're seeing like a couple of game five matches or oh, games yeah. going we're, on. I'm, I'm yeah, we're getting sad. closer and closer to this top 32, and uh, players, <laughs> these players want it, man. There's a lot of money on the line, there's a lot of. Uh, and like everything on the line. Nobody wants to get upset. All right, uh, so we're going to check out some replays real quick and see uh, what was going on. It's how we got some of the KOs. Maybe we'll see some of those dares coming out from Shulk this time around. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Your face, man. My face? Your face. Ha-ha. <laughs> 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 uh, I think a situation we saw very, very often in the last few games uh, was that Trilla just trying to make it back to stage and uh, Nico bullying him with those forward airs, and there's really not much Ryu can do if he's not recovering low. Uh, if he wants to, to close that horizontal gap, he must have Tatsumaki. And, yeah. it's, and you know, a lot of characters will have to worry about trading with Tatsu. Uh, Shulk not one of those characters. That sword is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, once it finally comes out, once he finally unsheathes it, then, you know, then it's a great attack. <laughs> I like how you mentioned that part. Once he finally, because it takes so long yeah. for it to actually come out. The startup is not great, man. Yeah. Uh, but once it's out, once it's out, it's a good attack. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So good stuff to Shulk. Well, actually Shulk lost, but, you know, still good he, stuff. He played really well. He played really yeah, well. Yes, he played extremely well. well. Game five, I think Trella, I thought it was over. I think just making it this far in the bracket, everybody, like, everybody's done really, really well. So I, uh, even losing here at this point, it's like, man. First of all, you won the major that was your pool, you yeah. know? You won the, 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 the small major that was your pool, and then just making it this far in winners. When we, we see uh, players like Zero, who's out at 49th place, we see a lot of players who are already out of the tournament. That's, that's, <laughs> so that's crazy that's great, to you know? see. I knew this would happen, though, because when I heard, we have almost all 50 of the top PGR here. I wonder who's going to get top 50 at this tournament. <laughs> Not half of the PGR. I can probably Bruh. see that. As soon as I saw people on Twitter trying to say, man, all right, so let's look at this projected top 32 bracket. I'm like, wait, are you guys joking? Like, do you really think this is going to happen? Do you really think that you're going to see this projected bracket? Exactly. I could have called. I <laughs> Who's all these Shulks are playing still? <laughs> like, the Shulks are coming out more than you see Cloud and Cheek. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of crazy, crazy characters this weekend. I think it really is a testament to how, how badly these players want to make it farther and farther into this bracket and how great this event is so far. So It's a pretty amazing event. You have a... Food is like coming right into my face. I can smell it. Yeah, we got we got the food smells. Like we, got the, we got the ten degree weather. <laughs> that, the food smell coming right to me, man. Just oh god, good time. I'm about to hit up that food truck as soon as we're done, man. Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, we are going to go to stage in our next match coming up. Oh, Rosalina! Wow, wow Fallen. Fallen has gotten pretty far in this tournament. Good to see him uh, do so well. One of the reasons he's been PGR ranked in the past. Or currently, I'm actually not too sure if he's still PGR ranked, uh, but I, I believe he is. I think he is. My memory gets fuzzy after the top. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah there's so, it, it's changed recently, and it will change again. We will have the next PGR. Panda Global will have the next PGR coming out. And I think it's going to be, I think this one's going to be crazy, because now we have uh, a lot of players who are showing up 
Uh, you know, Sue. It's just a lot. Yes. Yeah, like, Sue. Uh, who <laughs> yeah. else? We have Kirihara. <laughs> Kirihara. Uh, so I think the PGR is going to change drastically. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, speaking of interesting to see, we have our next match starting up. It's going to be Komei versus Fallen. Gonna see sh <laughs> our third Shulk match in a row. They're really testing us. Wait, really? really? really testing us, yes. Wait, there's another Shulk. Oh, Komei. Okay, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Alright, Komei so versus Fallen. this game. Losers top 32. <laughs> Should get this game on deck for you guys. <laughs> Just a bit. Don't I think, think they're butt checking. I think it might be. I think, I think it might this be. This is the game, guys. I think it might be. Alright, All right, well, and it will, uh, <laughs> is it radio commentary. Listen, there was a time. There was a time. Um, back in the day when you couldn't even see the matches. You had to commentate the matches off the break. They couldn't even see the commentators, man. Yeah. So uh, right now, we see Kome off to a, uh, a lead with a 459% on Fallen. you got to say the percents because the players can't see. <laughs> Wait, you sure they can't see? Well, I'm looking at the stage. I don't think they can, man. Well, um, oh, there we go. There we go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All right, so slow. not too much has been done so far. So we have this start going to Sweet Monado. Yeah, this is a... Uh, you know, I feel like I say this every time we have a Shulk on stage, but all these matchups are very interesting to think about. Uh, what what Monado Art Shulk could be using and taking advantage of. Ooh. Nice up smash coming out on the ledge. See if we can get the downer. Oh, not able to get it. Yeah, I think this is going to be pretty hard uh, for Komi to return back to stage. Rosalina's down air covers. You know, even the trade with the air slash is not going to be favorable for oh Komi. Gosh, air slash aiming all outwards? No. Okay, looking for that back air. I feel like this isn't too bad of a matchup due to the fact that he does have a sword shulk, so he's able to actually just keep hitting Luma and possibly KO Luma. Not getting Luma off the stage and like how most people would, but just KO Luma with damage. And wow. <laughs> that forward air will do it. Yeah, that was some questionable DI. Probably wasn't expecting a forward air to come out, and we have Buster Monado art coming out. Mm -hmm. Can he do some damage? One backer did 14%. That's good. Uh, he know he doesn't he doesn't need the extra uh, knockback. He just needs the damage here to 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 extend his lead as much as possible. Wow, very nice recovery coming out there. Was it, that, that was actually pretty pretty scary. I thought he was gonna get attacked by that down air. <laughs> just like I was talking about, man. Finally Save the jump. Wow. Uh, it's really unfortunate because he may can't sweet spot with that. Good choice going shield now, deciding to actually be. Um, a little, uh, just stay alive a little longer. Controlling the stage somehow with Shulk. With Shield Monado. Yeah, it's Fallen really trying to establish a neutral. Uh, what, what is this? <laughs> yeah, once again, we see Buster coming out. He's just going to try and extend his lead by as much as possible. He doesn't care about the damage he takes now. Uh, being at 151, he's already at max rage. Uh, he knows that another good hit's just going to KO him, so might as well just try and get as much damage as he can. Alright, being a little aggressive with his. Uh, Speed Monado, look likely he'll go back to shield once he gets onto the stage, considering he's at 155%. Let's see if he does it. Great there job of using that hitbox. Second hitbox and air slash to create some space while he recovers. He might not actually need shield right now due to the fact he's fighting Rosalina without Luma. But just in case, he might have just stay in shield. Uh, yeah, I think without shield, that back throw might have been enough. But uh, he did, of course, have shield on deck, so. Very nice by Fallen for actually doing the Fallen fair. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that wasn't supposed to be a pun. Oh, okay, okay. The falling bear to right, push right, right, right. Uh, Shulk into the air is a really good choice. All right, and here's that Buster Monado art. Mm, it looked like he showed Hobby to read that roll towards the edge. Doesn't get the punish that he wanted, though. Speed, probably using that to try to get a landing by moving more horizontally in the air. I think we saw this coming out from Nico a lot more. Wow. Yeah. Shulk, of course, does have that counter if he needs help you know, landing on stage. I haven't seen Komei really take advantage of it, though. Smash Monado, this is a perfect time for Rosalina to run, and that's one good thing she's able to do, or Rosalina players know how to do, due to the fact that Nina goes away, they have to do it, otherwise they're going to get beat up. And I feel like I feel like Smash Monado R is the scariest one to use against Rosalina, because you know, she's a light character, you really don't need that extra smash, yeah. uh, like KO knockback, but uh, you know, giving Rosalina that extra knockback <laughs> is not something you want to do. Oh gosh, this is actually helping Rosalina combo her up airs easier. Just looking for a way to land again. Not even going to use that counter. I feel like that's an option that he might want to try, but... Ooh, he's not able to knock Luma off the stage, but that fair. Watch out for Luma. Jump! Jump. Oh. Right, I, thought wow. he was, I thought he was going to activate jump to maybe that's go, it, that's it. go deep, but doesn't get it. Instead, we see Komei able to close out that last stock. Wow, went a little too hard to try to get that up B read. Was not able to... Get it to work and got punished hard. That's why when you do that up you have to know it's going to hit, otherwise it's over. And yeah. he actually did the second part of the up too. Yeah, on top of that, he was in jumping out of art, so he got the <laughs> super high. Like, that was the <laughs> maximum punish. Yeah. <laughs> so good stuff to fall in for avoiding that.
for falling out of that um, attack. Still trying to make this work, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> we'll see uh, what stage choice are going to. That was Battlefield, so they, that was mutually agreed upon. And I do believe for the Shulks do like to go to town and city, so we might see his town and city choice. I'd be a little shocked, actually, to see Smashville. Okay. I, really, do you want to take Rosalina to town and city, though? <laughs> like, it doesn't matter how much you love that stage. Yeah. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's the last stage I want to take her. <laughs> Let her up air you at 10%. <laughs> All right, so game number two, Komei versus Fallen. Fallen, of course, up one game, starting in Buster, trying to get some extra damage early. Wow. So many hits from that each other. That's what you get for being in Buster, man. 62% uh, less than 20 seconds. I feel like every time a Schultz and Buster at early percents, they're not able to get what they want. If they're just getting damage put on them. It, so. it's, it's a risk, man. Sometimes you can get some really good strings. Uh, I feel like more often than not, we see and not work out for the Shulk. Wow, and Air Slash actually took Luma off the stage, but Rosalina is still in a very strong position. Actually very close to getting an up smash to KO herself without Luma. Yeah, once again, we see Buster coming out. <laughs> wow, I'm seeing a lot of strong punishes coming out from Fallen. Actually not deciding to run away. It's like he knows um, all the lag on Shulk, so he's able to punish her. Okay. All right, finally we see that Shieldman on R come out. I think uh, Komi's kind of realized, man, things are getting kind of hairy. Yeah, You've gotta stay on stage because uh, you do not want to be off stage against this character, especially when she has Luna on deck. Wow, gonna go off stage? I have the feeling it will happen. Super, super go off again? Jeez. Wow, no dare coming out from Komi. No, no really contest or contest against that uh, recovery. Yeah, it could be a little tricky to actually dare Rosalina. I just thought we might see a fair and good stuff, assuming that the second jump would come a or get a little too close to the ledge. All right, and he's starting out with the Buster Monado art again, but this time it seems to be working a little bit. Yeah, it's weird, man. Uh, the Buster, of course, would even extra damage, but it's really hard. It's a string, a string attacks against like, a, a character like this is very light. Uh, on top that has Luma to kind of protect her from combos. Wow, Rosalina is staying right outside of the range of the back air, so she's able to just run in and punish. Whoa, okay. Hey, very uh, low percent air slash, but he wasn't Buster Monado art, so he just wants that extra damage. Okay. Being really safe with his back airs, and he keeps going for these up B punishes with his Buster Monado art. It's really good. Uh, he, um, he did lose the last game for that reason, though. Yeah. <laughs> at least this time he's not a KO percent. Yeah, that's, that's true. a good thing about it. Oh, I for almost forgot about that. Seeing into the future using the um, counter from Shulk. Again, yeah, that's, that's what I was talking about. Komei doesn't seem like he uses it very often. Goes aggressive by landing with his neutral air. Yeah, interesting to see him go after Rosalina offstage instead of getting Luma off, you know, getting that KO on Luma, which is probably what you want. And? Wow, a very good bait by jumping right in front of Rosalina. Uh oh, here it punish. comes. Smash Minato Art. Okay. Up tilt, up I mean, tilt. You know what he's looking for? He's, not, <laughs> <laughs> he's, looking, he, he's looking for something, but yeah. <laughs> it looks like Fallen's not getting close enough to let it happen, but that grab will work. Okay, I was thinking he was really looking for that back air, uh, but instead goes for the grab. Very scary grab to hit by if, if your opponent's in Smash Monado Art. That's so crazy to see that even though he's in Smash Monado Art, he's able to get KOs of almost anything. Yeah. Back air, up tilt, up air, grab. He's just completely run away whenever he's in that. All right, so let's see what stage choice will go to. We did have Smashville just come out, and I don't know. I don't think this will be a timeout due to the fact it's in between the matches, but he has a question to ask. No, it is a timeout. Oh, it is a timeout. Oh, interesting. All right. <laughs> Uh, well, we see Z Fly coming up. Deciding to give um, some, or I don't know if this is advice. No, nah, I think they're probably just talking about maybe DS. Or I don't know. I don't even think Z Fly is talking. <laughs> Z Fly's just having fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it might be something dealing with the rules. Maybe Fallen's asking a question to make sure everything's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they might be talking about DSR, maybe. I, was thinking, but I don't even know at this point. All right, um, Komi does speak Japanese, so I don't know if Z flies. <laughs> Z flies, working on his Japanese, maybe. Okay, there we go. All right, and it looks like we're going to be going to Town and City. Shulk favorite stage, but this is also a stage that's really good for Rosalina due to the short ceiling and the platform is being able to help her combo into uh, combos off the top easier, or Kale's off the top easier. Yeah, yeah very scary. We haven't seen that yet from Rosalina, though, so maybe that's why we see the counter coming out uh, from, from Komei. We haven't really seen Fallen take advantage of uh, low, low ceilings or uh, just early KOs off the top. 
I think for the most part, Komi probably knows, hey, I can be in shield if necessary. You can't always be in shield at the right time, but you have to worry about it a little bit less than a lot of characters do. Okay, good stuff too. Actually, he's able to get 62% already and has Luma off, so it seems like Speed Lumano might be the choice for Shulk every time, but going into Buster at 75%, I'm a little shocked to see this. Like, I feel yeah, like you I might not need to rack up the damage. You can't do too many combos. Yeah, he okay. didn't say that very long. <laughs> yeah. he, at least he switched over to Shield really fast. But almost able to get a triple up air combo due to the fact he was in Shield Lumano. Look how fast the walk is for Speed Lumano. <laughs> okay. Looking for these jabs, just going for safe options, not trying to be too aggressive with Luma, but Luma almost knocked off the stage already. Yeah, seems like Komi uh, being more patient than he was in the first two matches. Forward throw, looking for a fair. Oh, neutral air instead. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> oh, no misses the tech on the stretcher platform. That is the worst way to go out. Yeah, he actually had a chance to do an aerial so that he can land without um, having all that lag, but missing the tech and not doing an aerial, that's, that's a death. Smash way off the stage. I don't even know what the hell happened to Luma over there. Oh my goodness! Right. That up is gonna put him back in the game, even things out. Man, this is such a close set between these two players. One one and zero percent to start off this uh, second stock of both players. Woo. Wow, so many up airs. The beautiful thing about that up B two is that the platforms are there on the side, so you can land on the platforms, or you can land on the stage, or land on the ledge after using the up B punish. Yep, that's crazy. So many options. Uh, let's see if he takes advantage of that. You know, we saw him get that that up KO, but again, we've also seen him lose a game because of that up Very true. So it's really good that he's deciding to use these up when he's not at KO percent, or if he absolutely knows it will hit. I yeah. don't know how he's getting them to hit so confidently. Yeah. Like he's just swinging it out and right at the perfect time of falling stop shielding. Oh, Talon City, please. Yeah, he does have the shield. Uh, like I said, now he doesn't have to worry about it too much, but he will have a much harder time landing against uh, Fallen, who I'm sure knows uh, the, the less knockback from shield than art is going to might even help him out. Wow, very quick. Nice cross up doing a neutral layer, landing behind Fallen. Getting the F smash, no tech coming out from that fair. Oh, has to be very safe how he lands. You know, the classic Rosalina thing to do at percents like these is just run up and do an up smash, even without Luna there. Okay, very safe. Going to shield him out a while in the air, too. So even if he got up he most likely would not have been KO'd. That was very quick for him to go to jump so oh, fast. Oh, Fallen going super, super deep for that. Uh, loses his Luma in the process. Wow, Fallen, Fallen really low uh, to, <laughs> to avoid um, the punish. Yeah, very scary now. You see Komei getting a little bit more aggressive once Luma's gone. But now Luma's back. I wonder what he's going to do. All right, throwing him off stage. Good choice, but we'll likely see Shield Nato come back out again. Man, that very sure. aggressive landing coming out from Komei. Doesn't get the hit he was looking for, but also does not get punished. Yeah, he definitely wants to be aggressive at that point when he has Shield Minato because there's not much else he needs to do. He can't get KO'd, but he needs to be able to add up some more damage on Rosalina so he can get the KO later. He very, very slowly brings one back. He does have max rage. So oh. if we're going to see him. Oh, oh my oh, gosh! Maybe switch into Smash. Now, no, he's going to hold on to that speed. Oh. Oh. oh there it is. There's the Smash we're looking for. I think a down throw here oh, might be enough. Goodness. No, not yet. Oh. Not just yet. He's going to switch back in the shield. Wow. A little shocking to see him go back in the shield. I guess he can't get KO'd. Maybe an F smash could work near the ledge, though. Or that. Ooh. Oh, again, a very aggressive. Moving back to stage. Air dodge through Rosalina at 178. This man has no fear at all. All right, looking for a forward throw. Not going to KO just yet. Possibly going back again. There it is. Minato. So Going what is right the there. play here, Keitaro? What is he going to do? So the back here is going to go for the, the grab, or maybe a forward air off stage. What is Fallen that? is going to put himself in such a weird situation. I, I, I don't even. I guess I, he dropped on the ledge, and he, I, I guess he realized, man, I can't re grab the ledge. Yeah, he got I have to go for platform, but he, I, I don't know why he dropped on the ledge in the first place. It seemed like a weird situation to put yourself in, but wow. I think that was a strong mix up. He was like, he realized he can't re grab the ledge again, so he thought, okay, I have to up B. If he's probably going to think I'm going to up B to the other side of the stage, or up B grab the ledge, so I'm just going to up B onto the platform and do a mix up and. Komei saw completely do that through that. Or I think he just stood there and was like, what's he going to do? I'm going to wait. Honestly, they, yeah, all, all, all Komei had to do was kind of stand there on stage. Uh, as soon as he dropped, I, I realized, like, wow, Komei's going to win this match. Like, there's really nothing or no way Fallen can go to kind of stay alive from whatever sure. he does now. Are they calling a timeout? No, just talking about the stage kind of quick, I think. Possibly. Anyways, very great set between these two players. Uh, again, this is a top 32 qualifier, so the winner of this match will... Be, uh, we'll go on to tomorrow's match. He is the loser.
Well, well, not. Yeah, it's very true. Um, good stuff to Komi, by the way, for playing so patient, using his shield and jump Monado in such good ways. Also, the smash Monado art, um, because it looked like he was going to lose. He had nearly a 100% uh, deficit against Fall, and he still was able to bring it back. It just shows you the power shield. Okay, starting out with Buster. So this is the usual Monado that they take out, and it doesn't work for them. It doesn't work out, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> for the most part, I think it really hasn't worked out for either of the 12 players we've seen on in the last three matches. It's a huge gamble. So here we are with Speed Monado. A good choice if he wants to be able to run away, but at the same time, Rosalina wants to run away due to the fact that Luma's already dead. But here's Luma back on the stage. Yeah, man, I, I feel like the Luma KO timer isn't long enough, but <laughs> of course the Rosalina players would not agree. Yeah, very true. I don't know, if you see players like Nairo, they'd never let Luma stay on the stage. Yeah. Alright, so here we are back to Buster Monado art. We have Shulk already at 60%, so he wants to catch back up on the percent on Zaluma. Yeah, yeah. Again, a very big gamble because he could catch up or he could just extend the lead even more for your opponent. But usually when he gets Buster Monado R, even if he does get a hit, it's only one. Yeah, that's what I was saying before. Yeah. Like he, uh, A lot of characters take advantage of Buster more than Shulk does. Oh, wow. The tap, the tap with the oh. down there is going to be enough for Fall to take the first stock. I'm actually surprised he didn't just immediately up B after he got tapped with the down there. Maybe he didn't realize his second jump was taken. And we have Speed Monado. This is usually the one that works out best for Shulk. Going for those back airs. Taking out, almost taking out Luma. Wow, took Luma out in yeah. damage. It's going for all these safe options as Fallen is sitting there on the platform. Mm -hmm. uh, Fallen, of course, knows he's up a stock here. Probably not going to overextend. Just going to wait till Luma gets back. Why well, even play this game right now? Run, to, run across the stage and not really do much. Fallen doing a great job of staying patient. And goes way off. Doesn't go for the fair off the stage. Seems like a lot of these Shulk players are very safe against uh, characters that have um, very, I guess you could say, predictable recoveries. But yeah. hey, they're, they've been doing they're th this far for a reason. And we're going with Smash Monado. Go off stage fair. Yeah, and wow, I didn't even realize Komi only taking 1% on the second stock here. Uh, Fall maybe being a little bit too patient, but... <laughs> oh, not able to KO even with that fair. Oh, went for the upbeat a little too early. Just trying to... What? Why this man held on shield as if you could block that, but no, you cannot block that, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. I respect that. You know, he hit the he hit the counter, and I, I think the like the right answer for most counters would be to hold the shield. Yeah. No. <laughs> wow, that was really nice by uh, Komei getting that counter to work. Luma being a little too aggressive, doing it damage onto. Him. I think that's great. Like I said before, Komei not one to use counter very often, but uh, using it when it really really mattered. And so, well, there goes so much for what I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> it's like counter. Not that time around. All right, we do have Speed Monado coming out, but it decides to go back to Buster. So let's see, Buster Monado. All right, let's see if this works. <laughs> well, sorry, we're off working. to a bad start. Yeah, <laughs> it's not working. Okay, maybe it'll switch up after a while. Uh, I, I don't know, man. Maybe, uh... I'm sure it works very often. There we go, he got the one here. Yeah, I'm sure it works very often against in, in, other, in other matches. You know, it can't work in every match Yeah. Uh, that he has on stream or, or off stream, but... All right, nice forward throw. It looked like he's trying to take out Luma with the back air. He's, I think he's done a part. really, really good job of bringing himself back in this game. You know, he lost that first stock relatively early. He's in Smash Monado already? He usually oh. doesn't do it this early. I don't know, man. 88 to, to 87. This is a I think like a forward air off stage. would be very scary for Fallen oh. to get hit by. Gosh, that was very risky by Fallen to go for the fair back onto the stage. Jump Monado. Oh, so deep. Oh, uh, Rosalina so will make it back, though. Fallen, very, great, uh, very, very smart, very quick recovery. He knows the faster I get back, the less time you have to set up for that ledge guard. All right, good choice to actually go shield Monado right now. Pretty much makes it so Shou can KO Rosalina, and Rosalina can't KO him. But we're going back to smash. Long. Going off the stage to possibly get the upbeat? No. Man, uh, Fallen had such a great, great first stock. I want to see Fallen kind of challenge that inner first stock Fallen. He's looking for that grab again like he did the last couple times to get the KO. Shield? <laughs> he looked really oh, hard for it, but it took yeah. too long. <laughs> He's like, wait, is it this one? <laughs> That's what he beat. That beep, 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 is beep, so beep. unfortunate. <laughs> Man, you know your micro manager, like, I gotta switch, I gotta switch. Where's my shield? You accidentally go past shield. It's like, all right, well, we gotta go back around again. <laughs> As we go to game uh, number five between these two players, uh, Fallen doing a great job of just, uh, you know, reading that landing. I can actually, actually imagine Shulk players practicing how they press B, like sitting there in training mode, just pressing B over and over. <laughs> like, all right, and if I pass shield, that means I have to press B four more times. Or if I want to trick him up, that's what one thing I think Komi might be doing. Maybe he's just taking forever to go to Smash or delaying when he goes to Smash. Uh -huh. But he'll go into Buster Monado art, and it looks like he's about to stay there, and then he switches to Smash last minute and attacks. <laughs> is, that, is that the tech? Yeah, I feel like <laughs> it could be. 
Confuser. I, I don't even know if that's even necessary because I feel like a lot of people when they play against Shulker, <laughs> they're just like, well, I want to hit this guy. I don't care what art you're in right <laughs> now, man. I'm just trying to hit you. I keep seeing it so much, though. It looks like he's going into Buster Monado art, and I'm like, oh, he's about to hit me? Okay, I'll just take like 50 damage from a bear. <laughs> and then he switches to Smash. I don't know. Boom. Smash. <laughs> so good stuff to Kome for uh, having these tricky mind games or just making a mistake when pressing the B button. Like that, man. We see Kome beating his chest, this man. Uh, feeling very confident going into this game number five. That's good. Uh, Fall, of course, keeping himself in there. Oh, you know, that gosh. last game wasn't looking too good for Fallen as Kome started to bring it back, but he was able to kind of clutch it out. You saw the Monado art he started with. Buster. Let's see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. Okay, he got that neutral error. Yeah, 11%. Yeah, he got the 11% from that error is not bad at all. A couple more of those. That's that actually a win, though, for once. But it, it's funny that when you think about it, because, you know, you, you put yourself in this position where you can take a lot of damage from your opponent. And a lot of times we only see Homey maybe get like one or two hits from Buster. I wonder, is, is it even worth going into Buster, you know, against yeah. this character? I can see why he'll go into it, you know, due to the combos you can do with Buster, Monado, Heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. bad time. Maybe not a great time to, to switch into Shield Monado, Art. Yeah, I mean, it's still okay because he won't get KO'd, but that's a lot of damage. Yeah, a damage. Lot of damage. Rosalina, more damage is better. She doesn't need it, but it does help. Uh, hoping for Rosalina to possibly do an air. Oh my gosh! Wow, he still lived, even though he was in Buster Monado Art. He got really lucky on that one. See so if he can land. He is in speed, so he's able to move away horizontally in the air pretty fast. Yeah, but still sitting at 116. I love that. Just <laughs> run, run and grab twice in a row. We're going to see it. Nope, not a third. Nice block. A backer, but hits him the opposite way, and he's in shield not Is he gonna go on the aggressive side of shield not Yeah, taking advantage of that Malk. That Monado art landing like cancel. And that's gonna be a KO. Good stuff to Fallen. Fallen is now one stock away from moving ahead in this tournament. This is top 32 qualifiers, so I believe if you do lose, you get 33rd. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I was actually getting great, greatly confused by the wording of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> top 30. Wait, so we're in Ooh, top there's a oh tap down there. Oh another down there. Oh. Is that going to be? Yes, that is going to be enough for Fallen to take game number five with the two stock and eliminate Kome from this bracket. Wow. Wow. That, <laughs> you know, I'm like, wow, he survived from that down, that first down air tap, but the second one, no, that's not going to be. Uh, that's going to be enough for Fallen. Beautiful, beautiful stuff by Fallen, getting those down airs to work. Getting the K KO first for once. A lot of times, Kome was getting the first stock, but this time around it was uh, in Fallen's favor. Yep. Took advantage of that, got the dares. Good stuff to him. Uh, yeah, giving a hug to his buddy Nico there. Yeah, Nico course, giving good advice. Probably giving good advice and probably some good practice, if I had to guess, you know, at some point before they played. So does that mean that every Shulka is currently out? Uh, I, believe so. I believe so. Wow. It's a sad day. For Shulka. Yeah. They almost all made it in, though. They almost all made it to top 32. A character that people think is terrible, doing so well. I think at this point we can stop saying the character is terrible. Mm -hmm. I think he obviously does have flaws. You yeah. know, it goes without saying. But I, I think he's a playable character, you know? Definitely a playable character. I feel <laughs> a lot of characters are playable characters, and people don't realize it. Lucario making waves. Uh, people think uh, Rosalina's only good when in the buzz's hands, and then you see Fallen making top 32. Uh, you see Kirihara uh, yeah, yeah, winning you know? tournaments over zero. <laughs> uh, people need to you know open their eyes a little bit more and not realize that you don't have to play the character that the number one or number two or number three player in the world is using. Yes. You can make stuff happen with almost almost every character. I like these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know about Zelda, man. <laughs> I don't know about she's I good. like Zelda. The I game's think, good. I think, Zelda, good. I think Zelda can do things, man. I think she can do things. I think uh, her making it very far into a bracket of terrible matchups over and over, it's it, it's less likely that every every match you play is going to be less likely you make it past that person. So uh, I think she's a playable character. Has has some stuff. You know, she has a lot of down throw combos. Yeah, where, she has some combos. Uh, but... The up B, you know. You're gonna play like you're gonna play a couple a couple sheiks. You're gonna play a couple clouds, <laughs> man. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you up B of Zelda and you, the other per the person doesn't DI, you know. Yeah, yeah. If they just hold, press nothing on their controller, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> right when the game came out, that worked a lot for Nairo. <laughs> and people was like, wait, let me just hold to the right a little bit and see what happens. Oh, yeah. I live. Yeah. So. But yeah, uh, uh, I think we're gonna see a lot. I, I think I said this in an interview with e, e for Yahoo Esports yesterday. We're gonna see a lot of characters. Um, that a lot of people expected were not that great or just not good enough to win a major start placing much, much better as we see with Sue coming out with Lucario or Frostbite and Kirihara with uh, Rosalina at Frame Perfect Series 2. And we're going to see that more and more often this year. So again, not just because we have more tournaments, but we have a lot of players grinding even, even harder. So. 
Oh, yeah, there's a lot oh. of interesting stuff. Maybe Falco there. someday. Maybe Falco. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, AC got pretty far. Uh, he, got, he got pretty far. Um, he beat uh, MK Leo with MK. That's that's interesting to see, actually. MK Leo losing to Tyrant before. Tyrant's a Meta Knight. No. And then now losing to AC's Meta Knight. It's pretty shocking yeah. to see. He, yeah, so uh, I think right. we're going to head over to the stage here. I see they're getting hype over there. Let's see what they're getting hype about. Keitaro. I'm about it. Now, we had some crazy matches tonight. Everybody said Civil War is going to be bloodthirsty, savage, ridiculous. And it's been that and a whole bunch more. But tonight... We take a break. We're about to have a good time, relax, and who likes to party? <laughs> now, as it turns out, I'm obviously not holding all of this stuff for my workout. This ain't an arm routine. Bam, hold that up. Do y'all see this right here? One lucky winner is about to walk home with an Ancia Bluetooth speaker sound art panel. Hey! Let me tell you about this a little bit. Ancia is wild. They take any image, blow it up, hook it up to your Bluetooth speaker so it's wonderful on your eyes and ears. It's ridiculous. They have a booth in the back. They've been there all weekend. They will be there tomorrow. So you can definitely check them out. Ancia sound art, everybody. Now, I'm going to find out right now if SoCal really gets loud, okay? I am thinking of a number 1 to 100. And the first person who gets my number is about to win this panel. Boom. I heard it. Him right there. Right there. You, you, get up here. Come to the front. No, it's all right. It's all right. Let him on the stage. Let him hold it up. Let him revel in the glory a little bit. Because that's what it's all about, the glory. Let's go. What's your name, fam? What's your name? Whatever. Your gamer tag. Just tell me. Batman, let's go. Give it up for Batman. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold that up. Woo! And now the fun part. Let's throw some stuff, baby. And we got hats, too. Let's go. Woo! <laughs> Cody, I love you, Coney. I love you, baby. I love you. You know what part is next? We got the main act tonight. It's going to be Pegboard Town. But first, who's opening it up, Bam? The Speaker of the House, baby. So make some noise. We about to start the party, right? Get up! Get up! Let's go! Let's go! 